Extra, extra, he roll about the crooked eye. Blackmailer slays the campless. Extra, big town, extra. I want a two grand payoff. Here's your payoff. I won't leave big town for peanuts. Get out of big town or you'll go in a box. Lay off, Wilson. I got nothing to lose drilling you. So your shakedown included murder. Okay, let's play it out. Yes, listen to this headline story of the crooked eye brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Light Boy Health Soap. Hear this exciting story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and the case of the crooked eye. This is the timely and dramatic expose of the dangerous and growing fake detective racket. And at its beginning in a quiet corner of a clip joint, as a young man unknowingly kept a rendezvous with a so-called private detective and with death. Hello, Carter. So you decided to meet me? Yes. What do you want, Denver? Oh, so you know who I am. I know my wife hired you to get something on me. That's right, Carter. And you haven't been able to get a thing. That's right. Because there isn't anything to get. All my wife wants is her freedom and plenty of alimony. And that's what I'm hired to fix. How? How are you going to manage that? I'll show you. Hey, Ruthie, come in. Sure thing. Why, hello, Jimmy, darling. I just knew you'd come back to little Ruthie. Hey, what's the idea? Get away from me. I don't know you. Why, darling, come on. Hug me tight. Kiss me. Get away from me. Hold that pose, Ruthie. Lay off with that camera, Denver. Okay, break the fence, Ruthie. I got all on you. Yes, get away from me, you little fool. Okay, handsome. I got to get ready for my chorus routine. (laughs) Don't think it wasn't fun. (laughs) All right, you slimy Seamus. What do you think you're going to gain by this frame-up? About 2000 bucks, Carter. What makes you think I'd give you $2,000 if I had it? Because it'll cost you plenty more if your wife gets a fat alimony settlement. Why, you dirty blackmailer. No, no, you got me wrong, Carter. I'm just selling you a very valuable camera. You're not selling me anything. Got a swell flash attachment, good fast lens, takes perfect pictures, never misses. Neither do I. Oh, don't telegraph your punches, sucker. <laughs> Come on, Carter, straighten up. I used to train pugs before I got in the detective racket. Let me show you how. Oh. Oh. Okay, sucker. Here's my card and address. When you come out of that slugging and raise the dough to buy this camera. Hey, mister. The managements of this joint don't like fist fighting so early in the evening. Get back on the door, you big comic. Nothing's doing because besides being doorman, I am likewise the bouncer. You'll beat it or I'll bounce you off the wall. Uh-huh. Tough guy. Yeah, take a look at that dope on the floor and beat it or I'll give you some of the same. Uh-huh. Two other fellas we both think we are. Let's take a hey. look. Stay off. Let go. Hey, hey, hey. How do you like this Russian bear hug? Well, lay off, will you? Crack my ribs. Yes, rib cracking is a specialty with Boris Gudunov, who forsook the ballet for making with wrestling grunts. <laughs> so you put me down, you crazy slug. Sure. First I raise you up high and toss you like a bull. <laughs> How you like some monkers, maybe? I'll get your job for this. I'll sue this stuff. You tell that Carter dope he better see me tonight. Hi, Steve. Got a minute to look at a batch of reactions to our safe driving campaign? Sure thing, Lorelei. Golly, look at these letters. There are hundreds of them. Good. We'll publish some of them. When the public takes over a campaign, we owe it to them to keep it rolling. Yes, you can't have a safe driving week and then forget it the rest of the year. I'll pick out the best letters and give them to Fletcher on city desk. Do that. And what about that upriver pollution scandal? I'm checking on that, Steve, but some upstate politicians are sitting on the lid. Well, they better do something before public indignation blows the lid off. 
and some of them out of office. Or into jail. Uh-oh, your private line to your so-called underworld listening post. Yes, I'm expecting a tip on the new racket in our own big town backyard, uh-huh. Laura Lai. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Mr. Wilson, this is Boris Kudanov, Nijinsky Pavlovich, speaking in person. Hello, Boris. How's the doorman business? Confidentially, Mr. Wilson. It is like something from nothing good, which is why I'm calling you. What's the trouble, Boris? Here in the checks room of the big town parrot's cage, I have got a beat-up nice young fella who's got plenty of trouble, Mr. Wilson. Is he badly hurt, Boris? Not much yet, but soon, maybe. Why was he beaten up, Boris? Blackmails he won't pay, I think. Blackmail? Who beat him up? One very tough private detective fella, but I am tougher, and him I bounce out. Nice going, Boris, but are you sure the man was a private detective? Absolutely positively, Mr. Wilson. On account of with this young Carter fella, he leaves a card along with a couple of black eyes. Now, wait a minute, Boris. Any real private detective would lose his license for that. What's the name on the card? On the card, it says, see, Denver. Denver. Yes, I've heard about him. His license was revoked six months ago, Boris. Can you keep young Carter there a few minutes? Sure, easy, Mr. Wilson. He don't feel like standing up much yet, let alone go any places in a hurry. Well, take good care of him, Boris. We'll be over at the parrot cage in ten minutes flat. Come on, Lorelei. Hmm. Another dirty racket. We'll get your coat and so-called hat. Yeah? Is that you, Sid, honey? Well, who else would be answering my phone, Featherbrain? Oh, honey. Save the Scarlet O'Hara Act. What's the idea of phoning me at my office? Well, I thought I'd better tell you what happened after you left the club. Don't tell me that punk complained to the cops. Oh, no. He's still half out on his feet from that beating you gave him. But, but that crazy Russian doorman called somebody. Who did he call? Some newspaper guy named Wilson. Wilson? Steve Wilson, the racket-busting newsie of the press? Yes. Yeah. Where are you, Ruthie? Back in the chorus dressing room. Well, get out of there, quick. But, honey, I've I, I been for my ass. Well, get out of there. Go to your apartment and pack your stuff. But why, honey? You're getting out of Big Town to where Wilson can't find you and quiz you. But I don't want to leave Big Town. I've got a contract. You'll have a busted head if you don't do like I say. But, honey, I ain't got any money. Well, get your money. Get out of there. Go pack your stuff, but quick. <laughs> Thus, dangerous cross-complications are developing as Steve Wilson moves into this vicious shakedown racket. And we'll rejoin Steve and Lorelei in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and tonight's headline story of the Crooked Eye as Steve Wilson and Laurel I approach a notorious Big Town nightclub in the cab of their loquacious friend and companion, Harry the Hack. Say, boss, Miss Kilpine. Say it, Harry. But get it to the parrot cage intact. Oh, fear not, Miss Kilpine. I have been reading them safe driving articles of yours in the press. And whilst I have always thought I was a pretty careful driver, I have come to the conclusion none of us cannot be a little more careful, if you get what I mean. We get it, Harry. Uh, what were you going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, I was uh, just about to offer the services of me and my trusty knock and knock in the event of any eventualities with this crooked eye with whom you are about to tangle. Thanks, Harry, but I hope we can settle this without any more violence. Just stop at the parrot cage and wait a few minutes. 
I may want to have you hack me to Denver's so-called office. The first is as good as done, and the second will be a pleasure. All right, Lorelai. Let's go get this Carter boy's story. Well, wait a minute, Steve. There's Boris coming out of the club half carrying somebody. Holy moly, the guy's luck and looks out on his feet. Yes, Boris must have a good reason for moving him. Mr. Wilson, maybe you better get this fellow away from here and to some doctor quick. God grief. He's unconscious. Yes. And when I'm phoning you, he acts like he's getting better. Then he goes out like a light. Boris, you shouldn't have moved him. He may be suffering from concussion. Hey, get him in the cab here. Yes. Let me give you a hand, Boris. We better get him to a hospital. Hey, just hold the hexi cab door open, Mr. Wilson. Him, I handle like a baby. Well, get here in the back with him, Boris. I'll sit on the jump seat. Yes. I hold him, and you see if there is anything you can do, Miss Killyburn. Oh, Steve. His head's cut. There's, there's blood behind his ear. Yes. Drive to the general hospital, hurry. Check wash on a double double. Maybe I should not have moved him, Miss Killyburn, but after I make with the telephone to you, something else happens, which makes me think maybe this fella, I should get him out of the parrot cages before something worse happens to him. What happened, Boris? After I'm talking to you, Mr. Wilson, I find a hoof dancer called Ruthie eavesdropping, and in the dressing room she makes phone calls to this Denver fella who wants her to get out of Big Town quick like rabbit. That means she's mixed up in the shakedown right No. And she dressed quick and runs to her apartment to pack some things. That fits. You know where she lives, Boris? At the big town arm. Perry, stop the cab. Check, Boris, but how come? Let us out. Come on, Lorelei. Well, what about this boy, Boris Steve? and Perry can take him to the hospital. I think we can take care of the rest of his troubles. We'll pick up another cab to the big town arms. Let's go. Come on in, see. The door isn't locked. What's the idea of wasting time? Why ain't you packed and ready to go? Oh, I'm ready, honey. I just packed a few things. Well, pack all your duds. You're clearing out. Oh, I don't want all that worn old stuff on the bed. I told the maid she could have it. I'll be getting a whole new outfit. With, with what? Why, with the money you're going to give me for getting out of big town and keeping you out of trouble. Listen, Ruthie, quit kidding yourself. Where you're going, those duds will be plenty good enough. Now, pack them. I will not. I wouldn't be seen dead in those old rags in Mexico City. You ain't going anywhere near Mexico City. All right, then. Get me a plane ticket to Hollywood. Hollywood? <laughs> okay, Florida. I can get a Corrine job down there. And the place is simply crawling with, with sugar, Daddy. Now, listen, Feather Brain. You're going to a hideout, a boarding house upstate about 50 miles from here. I am not. I'm not going to go twiddle my thumbs in some cheap dump to keep you out of a jam. Listen, you... <laughs> Stop it, Sid. You're hurting my arm. Well, wring your neck if you don't do like I tell you. Pack that stuff quick. Uh, see it. I, I won't give up my job at that parrot cage. My nice gentleman friends. For you or, or anybody else. You tin horn shamus. Oh, so now I'm a tin horn shamus. Am I? You, you, you keep away from me, Sid. If you beat me up like you did that Carter kid, I'll, I'll tell that guy Wilson everything I know about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Keep away from me, Sid. I'll, I'll tell all about the guys and dames I helped your friend for shakedowns. You've dropped your southern accent, honey child. Stop backing away from me. You'll fall out that window. Keep away from me, Sid. Don't you dare hit me. Well, you're going to talk. You're going to squawk. Oh, oh, no, I won't, Sid. I, I didn't mean it. I, I was only kidding. I don't go for kidding. I didn't mean it, Sid. You, you can't blame a gal for trying to make a good deal. I, I, I didn't really mean it. I, I'll go any way you say. I'll say you will, you double-crossing, two-timing little twist. Sid, let go. I, I'll, I'll go to that dump. I'll, I'll stay there. I've changed my mind. Why? What's happened to Carter? Is he dead? He was out cold when I left the club. It don't matter. You'd cross me up. You'd shake me down if you got a chance. Oh, no. Sell me out. No. Turn state's evidence if that dope dies. Oh, no, I won't, Sid. Please let me go. And I ain't gonna chance it. Hold still. Sid. What? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna make sure you don't squawk to Wilson or anybody else.
Thanks, Robert. Keep the change. Come on, Arlen. Okay, Steve. You know, I, I, I've been thinking... You may not have much time to think if we're going to question that girl before she skips town. Well, Arlen. that's what I've been thinking about. If we both go barging in on her, she may shut up like a clam. Well, in that case, she'll talk to the police as soon as they picked up Sid Denver. Well, hadn't you better notify them to grab Denver at his office before he hears young Carter is too badly hurt to meet him there? Yes, I'm going to phone Callahan from the lobby. Callahan? Homicide? You think Carter's so badly hurt he may die? He might, but whether he does or not, his bruises and cuts have all the trademarks of brass knuckles on a lie, and Denver's attack can be assault with a deadly weapon, and the charge can be manslaughter. Then it's more important than ever to get that girl to talk. Yes, let's get in there before she slips out a back exit of the big town arms. Steve, let me go up and try to get in her apartment and talk to her while you're phoning Callie. No, 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 no. It will only be take a few seconds, and that girl may think Carter is dead if you go up there and start pumping her. But, Steve, she may get away. Now, please, let me try. Absolutely not, Laura. I'd rather let her get away than risk your neck. Now come on inside and wait while I make that call to Callahan of Homicide. Oh, doggone Steve Wilson. Always trying to keep me from doing my reporter job because I happen to be a female. Oh, this must be Ruthie's apartment. As a female, I think I can handle her better than he can. Oh. We haven't missed her. Yeah? Oh. Hello. What do you want? I want to see Ruthie. Who wants to see Ruthie? I'm a friend of hers. Is she here? What do you want to see her about? It's personal. See her at the parrot cage tomorrow. Sorry, I heard she was leaving town tonight. Oh, you did? Who told you? None of your business. I'm making it my business. Come in here, sweetheart. Oh, you must be Sid Denver. That's right. Oh, don't bother to lock that door. Why not? It'll be broken down in a few minutes. Who by? Steve Wilson. Wilson of the press? Yes. So you're that dame crime reporter that tags around with him, huh? That's right. Only this time, because I foolishly disobeyed orders, he's going to be tagging around after me. Where is the slug now? He's downstairs phoning Callahan of Homicide. Homicide? Yes, we thought it might be handy to have him around in case young Carter dies of that beating you gave him. Who says I beat him? We have one good witness, and Ruthie will make two. Where is she? She's gone. She beat it out of town. Without any street clothes? Yeah. Kind of sudden, wasn't it? Yeah, it was awful. What are you keeping at? That piece of black crepe dress material caught in the crack of that closed closet door over there. So what? Black crepe could be so appropriate for some things. Wait, don't go away, beautiful. Oh, looks like I walked in on something. You sure have. Since you're so curious, come on. You're going in that closet for a better look. <laughs> All right, Sergeant, since you can't locate Inspector Callahan, you better pick up Sid Denver at his office. Carter is a general hospital, and I'm sure he'll sign the complaint when or if he regains consciousness. And tell Callahan I'm at the Big Town Arms, checking on an accomplice and come-on girl called Ruthie. Hey, boss! Boss! Harry, what are you doing here? Uh, the Carter guy started snapping out that slug, and so I left Boris with him at the hospital and hightail over here to see if I could be of some assistance. Where's Miss Kilpin? She's over at the switchboard getting the lowdown on that girl, Ruthie, from the operator. Come on, we'll see how she's made out. You called a lawyer on this yet? Yes, they're going to pick up Denver at his office. I tried to get in touch with Callahan of Homicide. That's what took me so long on the phone, Harry. There's a switchboard operator, but I don't see Miss Kilpin. I'm sorry, madam, but Mr. Jones does not answer. Is there any message? Oh, very well, madam. I beg your pardon, miss. Oh, good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Where is the young lady who just inquired about one of your tenants called Ruthie? Oh, her... Well, as soon as I gave her Ruthie's apartment number, she went right upstairs. Upstairs? Good uh -huh. grief. Doggone that girl. Oh, what, sir? Is anything the matter? I hope not. What is Ruthie's apartment number? Oh, golly, mister, what is the matter? Y you know, you're the second man looking for Ruthie. The second man? That's right. Holy moly, boss. Maybe Denver's here. What's that apartment number, miss? Oh, why, it's apartment 11A, but oh, what's the trouble, mister? There's liable to be all kinds of trouble if we don't get up there on the double. Come on, Harry. Let's go. <laughs> Holy 
but these automatic elevators are slow, oh, boss. Oh, even so, it's quicker than climbing 11 flights of stairs. Say right? nothing of the shape we'd be in when we cut up. Oh, this is it. Yes, come on, but wait in the hall. Denver may be carrying a gun. There's 11A just across the... Boss, door is opening. Against the wall, Harry. Check, boss, watch your step. Oh, wait a minute. It's Denver. Wilson. Yes? Why aren't you at your office waiting for your dirty shakedown payoff? I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go to the apartment and ask your girlfriend, Ruthie. She's gone. She left town. Where's Miss Kilburn? You mean that lippy reporter dame that tags around with you? Yes, I mean Laura Lie Kilburn. She ain't so. Sure. You're a liar. She came up here a few moments ago. Now, get out of the way. Laura Lie. Laura Lie. All right, you nosy newspaper slug. Shut up. Turn around. Oh. So now it comes to guns. Yeah. Your shakedown has turned to murder. Okay. Let's play this out. Thus, a swift chain of events has developed into a deadly climax. And for the surprising and ironic payoff, we'll return in just a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's deadly showdown with a blackmailing private detective in tonight's story of the Crooked Eye. Clam up, Wilson. Stay put while I give with the frisk. You're wasting time, Denver. I don't carry a gun. And even if you haven't committed a murder, you're risking a long jail term for possession of that one in your hand. I got a permit for this run. Your permit was revoked when you lost your private operator's license for being a crooked eye. And a disgrace to your profession. Keep talking and I'll knock your teeth in. Put down that gun and I'll give you a chance. Clam. Oh. So Laura like Kilburn didn't come here? Isn't in this room? Clam up and quit bunching yourself to get this gun or I'll let you have it right now. Your girlfriend Ruthie isn't here? She left town? Get away from that hall door. Get over there against the wall. All right. But those taps tell me Ruthie is in that clothes closet dead. You murdered her to shut her up about the Carter shape. So what? You shut up. I'm getting out of here. Let him come, boy. Stay out in the hall, Harry. Keep out of sight. Okay. Let him come out through the doorway. Don't show yourself, Harry. He's armed. Killed his girlfriend. Has nothing to lose by shooting his way out. You get a skin full of Tommy slugs if he comes this way. On account of the homicide, boys are coming up the elevator and the stairs. Oh, so you did call in the cops on if this, you huh? If you played according to that rule, you wouldn't have lost your license. Turned crooked, committed murder to cover up, and now find yourself caught like a rat in a trap. Oh, yeah? And I know my way around in and out of dumps like this. Don't try breaking for it. Not out that window, Denver. Stay put, Wilson. I ought to plug you for messing in this. I may need all the shells I got in this gun going down the fire escape. Stay put. Don't be a fool, Denver. Don't step out of that window. There is no fire escape in that court. Don't kid me, Wilson. Look. Look behind you, you crazy fool. And take my eyes off you for even a minute, I would be a fool. You will be a fool. It's only 11 stories to the pavement. Don't back out of that window, Dan. Shut up. Stay put. Don't crowd them, boss. Elevator coming up. Don't do it, Denver. Keep away from this window. I'm leaving. Uh, uh... Boss. Boss. 
Come on in, Harry. He's gone. It's finished. The law won't have to take him for his folly. You warned him, boss. You tried your best to stop him. Oh, yes, Harry, but even so. How did you know there wasn't no fire escape outside of that window? I noticed when I came in through the court. What's keeping those homicide men, Harry? Oh, that was my bluff, boss. I I don't know if they're coming or not. Steve, Steve, get me out of here. Good grief, Lorelei. In the closet with Ruthie, I've forgotten. Just a minute, Lorelei. I'll unlock the door. Oh, Steve. Steve, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I, I could hear what happened. Heard that awful falling cry. What about Ruthie? Is there any chance? No, Steve. I tried to revive her. She's She's been strangled. Good grief. That poor kid. Nothing more than a stooge. A... Come on, girl. Where did she get out of it, even in life? Won't they never learn, boss? Some do before it's too late, Harry, but not enough. Get on the phone, Laura I Call Fletch on City Desk. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, was just another story from the front pages of the Illustrated Press. Young Carter recovered, and we played up Ruthie's angle because I honestly feel it may help convince youngsters like her that you can't fool around the fringe of crime without the fatal risk of drowning in its whirlpool. And incidentally, Steve, wasn't Sid Denver, the crooked eye, an exception to the general run of private investigators? Yes, Farley. There are good and bad in every profession. How about next week, Steve? Well, next week we're going to dramatize a hard-hitting story of juvenile tragedy and parent delinquency and headline The Shiny Gun. But right now you seem to have something immediate on your mind, Laura. Yes, Steve. Friends, you've heard tonight how Life Boy gets skin cleaner in your daily bath, keeps you fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Now, I'd like to suggest that you try Life Boy Health Soap in the big new bath size... That size Life Boy is generous and luxurious. And that lather is so mild and refreshing. I love it, and I know you'll love it, too. Just ask for the new bath size Life Boy. Thank you, and good night. It's Opportunity Unlimited. Enlistment in America's armed forces today. For America's armed forces now constitute the greatest scientific enterprise in the world. Trained in the best technical schools, working with advanced techniques and equipment... Today's serviceman is a skilled professional with a bright future in civilian or military life. Investigate the opportunities offered in the armed forces now. In tonight's dramatization... All names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weiss, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Shoot you? I didn't mean it. 
No, Mr. Wilson. Not my son. Not my son. The gun crazy little fool. I told him to leave my gun alone. You're the fool, Brown. You're the irresponsible parent. And if that boy dies, you're the one who should go to prison. Yes, listen to this powerful story of parent delinquency on Big Town, brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. The story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, so that it may be a faithful servant to all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. <laughs> Now to Big Town and tonight's gripping story of the shiny gun. Of all man's symbols of power and security, the greatest and perhaps the worst is the gun. And this symbol of man's alter ego is the background of tonight's story, in which, reduced to its simplest terms, began on an old coal dock on the waterfront of Big Town as two young boys met for what was to be a tragic rendezvous. Hey, Billy. Billy the kid, where are you? Right here, Sonny. Did you get it? Yes, yeah, Sonny. I told you my old man had a gun hidden in his room. Oh, I'll bet it ain't a real gun. It is so a real gun, and it'll shoot real bullets. Let me see it. Sure. Look at it. You can see from the street light at the end of the dock. It's all bright and shiny like the cowboys and bad men use in the movies. Look at how it shines, even out here in the dark. And that makes it no good. What do you mean it's no good? It's a six shooter. Because you oughtn't be able to see a gun in the dark. Who says so? I know for a fact that a gun ought to be black and dull. So it don't reflect no light. Nobody knows you got a drop on them till it's too late for them to pull their own gun. Oh, that's a lot of malarkey. It ain't. It don't matter if you're quick on the draw. You can be just as quick with a black gun. Besides... Nobody carries shiny guns anymore except sissies and women. You're just jealous because your old man ain't got a gun. My old man says only cops ought to have guns. And if nobody else had them, the cops wouldn't need theirs. Yeah, but a lot of tough guys have got guns, and there ain't enough cops. And my old man says a person's got a right to protect himself. Yeah, get himself killed because he don't know how to draw quick and shoot straighter than the other guy. You're just talking that way because you ain't got a gun. A smart guy could take that gun away from you before you could pull the trigger or bat an eye. Oh, yeah? Let me see you try it. Okay, I'll show you how it's done. Oh, yeah? Come on, let's see you do it. Now, first I get hold of your gun hand. Yeah, and I stick the gun in your stomach. But I keep you from pulling the trigger. Oh, yeah? <gasps> Billy! Sonny, I... I didn't know it was loaded. Where'd it hit you? In... in the stomach. Let me down on you, hurt. I'm sorry, Sonny. I didn't mean it. You're my best pal next to Harmony. Does it hurt bad? Awful bad. I guess I'm gonna die. You can't. You beat it. Phone the cops for a doctor. Then hang up quick and hide. No, Sonny. I, I oughtn't leave you here alone. Go on, Billy. You didn't mean it, but they'll burn you if I die. I don't care. I gotta do something. Let me see. Maybe I can stop the bleeding. No. It's inside. You die when it's inside. Run, Billy. I hear somebody coming. You heard that shot. Run. Get Harmony to hide you out. He won't talk. I won't talk. Go on. Run, Billy. Run. Run. Hey, who's out there on the end of the dock? What's happened? It's Willie the Weep. The old moocher out of the shanty boat. Run, Billy, run. He'll get a dock. You run and hide. Run and hide. No, Sonny, I, I don't want to leave you alone. <laughs> Go on. I'm ordering you, Billy. We kids got to stick together. Okay, Sonny. So long. Hey, who's out there on the dock? What, what, what happened? I got to stop. Give Billy a chance to get away. <gasps> who's that? Who got shot? Who, who? Willie. Who? Willie the Wheat. Who are you, boy? Honey Mill. Well, what happened? Who just run past me in the dark? Nobody. I was out here alone, fooling with an old gun. I found it. It went off. 
It hit me in the stomach. No, but anything that ain't so. But it don't matter now. You lay still, Sonny. I'll go and get help as quick as I can. <laughs> A few minutes ago, Laurel, I via the press room. What's up? Well, I don't know, but Willie the Weep, our winchel of the waterfront, tried to get you on your private wire and then called Mamie on switchboard. That must be something important. Willie never has Nichols to spare. He wouldn't tell Mamie what it was, but he said he'd call you again in a few minutes. That oh. might be, Willie. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Mr. Wilson, it's me, Willie the Weep. Oh, what's up along the waterfront, Willie? I hear you've been calling me. Yeah, Mr. Wilson, for almost an hour, and this is my last nickel. I had to mooch that. Oh, sorry, Willie. I'll make it up to you. What happened? My boy got himself shot out on the old coal dock near my shanty boat. Good grief. How did it happen? He said he shot himself in the stomach with an old gun. He found in the ash can, but I don't believe Why not, Willie? Because another kid run past me in the dark when I came out of my shanty boat to see what had happened. Well, who is the boy who was shot, and where is he? His name is Sonny Mills, and I called the cops, and an ambulance is taking him to the general hospital. Well, what did the ambulance doctor say about his chances, Willie? The doc said his chances ain't very good. Well, what did Sonny say about the other boy? Well, Sonny said I was seeing things. There wasn't anybody with him. What about the gun, Willie? And Sonny said it fell in the river when it went off. That could happen. Are you sure there was another boy? Yeah, Mr. Wilson. And I got a notion. It was either a blind boy called Harmony. On a card, he's always playing a harmonica. Or another pal of Sonny's called Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid? Yeah, on a card he likes... Cowboy moving pictures. Sir. Did you tell the police about the other boys, Willie? No, sir. Sonny begged me not to. He said it would only make trouble for his pals and their folks. And besides, he said I was only seeing things. I wonder. I, I thought there might be something you could do, Mr. Wilson. There is, Willie. Where does Billy the kid live, and what's his last name? His name's Billy Brown, and he lives with his folks at number 10 South Street. Brown, 10 South Street. What about Harmony, Willie? No. Never mind, Willie. Meet us in front of 10 South Street in 20 minutes. Thus, Steve and Laurel I move in to investigate a tragedy that may well take more than one life before a shiny gun plays out its deadly role. And for the tense and dramatic developments, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets... Skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's timely story of the shiny gun. Suspecting that a seriously wounded boy is mistakenly shielding his playmates, Steve and Lorelei are on the way to the home of one of the other boys in the cab of Harry the Hack. Say, boss, Miss Kilbine, is there anything I can do to help in this kid and gun situation? I don't know, Harry. We're meeting Willie the Weep in front of number 10 South, the home of one of Sonny's playmates. But that'll be the next block. I'll hang around in case you need me to hack anywhere else. We may have to find another boy called Harmony. Hey, I know 
out, I kid. He's blind, but he plays harmonica like nobody's business. Blues, classics, anything. He's so good, he ought to be on a stage or on the radio. Oh, he's the one, Harry. Uh, there's Willie. Hello, Mr. Weston. Miss Kilburn. Harry. Hi, Willie. Hello, Willie. Have you seen Billy Brown? No, Miss Kilburn. And none of the other kids in the block have seen him since he went down to the dock early this evening. Have you talked to his parents, Willie? No, but just a little while ago, his ma came out of the basement flat where they live, and I heard her asking the neighbors if they'd seen Billy on account. It was getting late for him to be out. Well, it may be much later before he comes home if what I suspect has happened. Oh, Steve. You don't suppose he could have shot his friend, Sonny? Let's hope not, Lord and I, but something like that may have happened accidentally. That, Sonny's about the bravest kid I ever seen, Mr. Wilson. He didn't cry once all the time. We was waiting for the ambulance, and even when the doc gave him something to help the pain. Yes, Willie, but it may be a mistaken courage and loyalty that can bring more tragedy to the friend or friends he's trying to protect. Oh, gee, I wonder how they got hold of that loaded gun. That may be the real tragedy in this affair, Laurel. I come on. Let's go talk to Billy's parents and see what they have to say. It's down those steps, Mr. Wilson. Brown's the superintendent of the building. Thanks, Willie. Wait here with Harry and see if you can find out where Harmony lives. We'll ask the round for us. Oh, there's no need to ring, Steve. Somebody's opening the door. Billy, is it? Oh. Good evening. I'm sorry. I know you're expecting your son, Billy. Yes. It, has something happened? Yes. One of your son's playmates has been shot. Shot? Oh, which one? A boy by the name of Sonny Mills. Oh, Sonny. Oh, no. Is he dead? No, it's seriously wounded. Well, how did it happen? Where's Billy? We don't know, and Sonny claims he found a gun in an ash can and shot himself accidentally. Poor Billy. Poor Sonny. Where's my boy Billy? They're always together, and Billy went out to meet Sonny. And Billy hasn't been home? No. No, and it's long past his bedtime to school tomorrow. He's never done this before. Who are you? Are you from the police? No, I'm Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, Mrs. Brown, and this is Miss Kilburn, one of my best reporters. Reporters? Then it must be serious. It may be very serious, Mrs. Brown. And we need your help to find your son. My son? Will he be arrested? A lot of Sonny Mills sticks to his story that he accidentally shot himself with a gun he found in a trash can, but that isn't important right now. What is important? What do you mean? Mrs. Brown, we know there was another boy with Sonny at the time of the shooting. Probably your son, or a blind boy called Harmony. Yes, yes, they're usually together. What do you think's happening? I'm very much afraid your son, or Harmony... Maybe hiding somewhere in this neighborhood. Well, why should they hide? If it was an accident, they're all friends, good friends. Because they may not trust the grown-up justice of the world in which they live, Mrs. But Brown. But they'll be found and they'll look as if they're guilty if they hide. Yes, Mrs. Brown, that's why we must find them tonight. And I'm afraid there's another reason. What other reason could there be? We know Johnny lied about being alone on the dock to protect a friend. He may have lied also about the gun falling in the river. <gasps> the gun! Billy may have the gun. Daddy, oh, no. what gun are you talking about? Who are these folks? They're newspaper people, John. Well, what do they want? And what's this about a gun? I'm looking for mine. You're looking for your gun? Yeah. What business is it of yours? One of your son's playmates has been shot. Shot? Why, that little fool. John, what are you saying? That's what happened. That's why Billy isn't home. He took that gun after I told him never to touch it again. You had a gun in this house? Yes, and a permit for it. You're thinking of making trouble for me? Trouble for you? Yes. You had a loaded gun where your small son could get hold of it. Yes, and I licked him good the last time I caught him monkeying with it, the gun-crazy little fool. John, he isn't any more than any other boy. You're the gun-crazy fool. The irresponsible adult who puts a natural temptation within reach of a child. I'll beat the daylights out of him when he comes home. No, John, no, you're wrong. I begged you to get rid of that gun, to hide it, to lock it up. What if I needed it in a hurry? I'm the super of this building. I'm responsible. You're irresponsible. Guilty of the worst kind of criminal negligence. If your son's shot Sonny Mills and he dies, you're the one who wants to go to prison. Get out of here, you. Get out of here or I'll throw you out. No, John, no. They're, they're trying to help find Billy. I don't want to see that kid again. Oh, you'll never see me again. And I'm going with you, Mr. Wilson. I'm going to help you find Billy if I can. And I want to go to Sonny's mother. All me. right, Mrs. Brown. Go with Miss Kilburn. Come along. Come on, Mrs. Brown. Now get out, Wilson. Get out of here or so help me. I'm going and you're so right. So help you. If your gun has killed Sonny Mills. Because it also may kill your son. Get out. Get out! Get out! Oh, the poor devil. So help him now. Boss, 
what? Yes, what is it, Harry? I got a lead in the Harmony kid. Yes, where is he? Another kid says he heard him playing his harmonica. Where? Down where the street trains pour into the river. Good grief. Those big drains might make a good hideout. Yeah, a kid could crawl for miles if we didn't get a rain and he got caught and drowned. Okay, let's go question Harmony, Harry. Well, what about Mrs. Brown? I'm afraid of what we may find, Harry. I don't want her along. I'll get Lorelei and take her to the hospital to see Sonny Mills. <laughs> where I hid you. You're safe. Sit in the earth. It's dark in them drain pipes, Harmony. Don't you be afraid of the dark, Billy. He gets used to it after a while. It's always dark where I is. And I ain't afraid anymore. Much. But, Harmony, what if Sonny dies? I shot him. It's my fault, even if I didn't mean to. Don't take such a load on yourself, Billy. Let the Lord carry some. He know what happened. But if Sonny dies, nobody else will. The cops will find out it was my old man's gun that killed him, and he'll tell them I stole it. You was kind of unlucky when it was passing our papa's, Billy. But you was awful lucky when it comes to mama's. So it sort of cancels out. This is going to kill my ma. That's how come you wouldn't have to run away and hide. He'll put me in a reformatory no matter what happens. Ain't necessarily so, Billy. Then why are you helping hide me? To give you time to... to think. What's there to think about if Sonny dies, Harmony? The cops will grab me and an old judge will put me away. They won't believe how it happened. They don't know how I feel. Don't you be so hard on grown-ups, Billy. Most times they does the best they can when they hands out justice. Justice? It ain't right. Don't you be so woof on justice, Billy. Most folks would yell for justice yells loudest when they get it. What most of us want is understanding, and that's hard for grumps to give young'uns like us, because they're a long way off from where we is. But don't be too hard on them, Billy, because before long, we're going to be grown up too, you know. But, Harmony, what am I going to do if, if Sonny dies? If the Lord lets that happen, he's got a reason, Billy. Then you got to quit hiding in the ground. Only the dead stay in the ground, and they ain't hiding. Just resting their weary bones and waiting for the judgment day. What, what am I going to do with this gun, Harmony? It got me in all this trouble. Things like gun don't get us in trouble, Billy. No more than the fire that put out my eyes. It's us, Billy, because we do bad things with guns. How can you know so much, Harmony? Sound like a grown-up. Time kind of collapses itself in the dark, Billy. You got more time to think about things. Harmony. There's a car stopping over there. Maybe the cops. You get back in the drain. You won't tell. You won't give me away. I won't give you away. You get back in the dark and think. I won't give you away. Hello, Harmony. Oh, mister. What do you want down here by the river? I'm looking for something that's lost. The world's full of lost of things, mister. Who are you? The law? No, Harmony, a newspaper man. Steve Wilson. Mr. Wilson, the racket buster? I've heard of you, and it ain't bad. Well, thanks, Harmony. I've heard of you, and it's all good. Mind if I sit down? Sure. Uh, go on playing. You didn't come here to hear me play my harmonica, mister. No, Harmony. And I didn't come here to ask you to betray a friend. That's good. That's awful good. I'm sure you heard about what happened to your friends tonight. Sonny Mills was shot with a gun. And his friend Billy Brown has disappeared. You've heard all this, of course. Sure. Sure, Mr. Wilson. I don't see anything. But I hardly anything happens along the waterfront I don't hear about. I got plenty of time for hearing, listening. 
So you just keep on talking. All right, Harmony. Now, this is the way I see it. Two friends of yours are in trouble because of the stupidity of someone else. Someone older, supposedly wiser, belonging to that grown-up world that makes the rules and laws of right and wrong by which your generation must live until you're old enough to change them or grow to understand the reason for their seeming injustice. Keep on talking, Mr. Wilson, a little louder. What was that splashing sound, Harmony? Just water, splashing against something stuck in the drains. Don't pay no attention to it. Just keep on talking. I'm not really talking to you, Harmony. I know you're not directly involved in this tragedy. Don't matter. Keep on talking. The night's got a lot of ears. The darkness does a lot of listening. All right, Harmony. And I wish your friend Billy the Kid could hear me, would listen to me. Man to man or boy to boy, whichever is the easiest way for us to try to bridge the years between us. What would you say to him if he was here, Mr. Wilson? I don't know, Molly. What would you say? I'd say, uh, quit hiding. Come out of the ground and give up that shiny gun. I'd say, uh, come out. Come out wherever you are. Harmony. Harmony. You told him, Harmony. You might as well have told him I was hiding in there. You could have run through the drains, Billy. You didn't have to come out. But you come out all on your own. Because I've been in there in the dark, thinking like you said. I know I can't keep on running away. So take the second step on the road back, Billy. What's that, mister? Give me that cause of all your trouble. That shiny gun. No. I won't give it to you. All right, then. Throw it away, Billy. Throw that shiny gun into the river. No, I won't. Why not, Billy? Because I ain't made up my mind what I got to do with this gun. If Sonny dies. Thus, Steve Wilson is faced with a situation he can solve only by crossing the bridge of years. In a moment, we'll return for the climax of tonight's timely big town story. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, Get Skin Cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he faces a heartbroken young boy who has accidentally shot his best friend in tonight's timely story of the shiny gun. Don't you come near me, Mr. Wilson. Don't you try to get this gun away from me or, or I'll run back into the drains and nobody will ever see me alive again. I'm sorry, Billy. What are you sorry about? I shouldn't have asked for that gun. I don't want it. I hate guns and all they stand for. But you want to turn me over to the cops for what I did to Sonny Mills? No, Billy, there's no charge against you. No officers are hunting you because no one has accused you of any crime. Even Sonny, the boy you shot with that shiny gun. How? How is Sonny? Is he going to die? 
The doctors at the hospital are doing everything they can to save him, Billy. And he's fighting for his life. And yours by sticking to a white lie through all his suffering. Can't you match his courage by facing whatever is to come? I want to. I want to, Mr. Wilson, but I'm afraid of what will happen. We're all afraid, Billy. That's why some of us lean on guns, like crutches, to hold us up. Only to find that they drag us down. Isn't that true, Harmony? Yeah, Mr. Wilson. My pappy was killed, shooting it out with another man. They both died, and it didn't settle nothing. Nothing at all. Harmony. You never told me about that. You never said why you hated guns when I wanted us to play cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers. Sometimes, some things is too much to talk about, Billy. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Yes, Billy. Would... Would you take this gun, please? Are you sure, Billy? Are you sure you want to give up that shiny gun? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Please take it. Please. Good boy, Billy. You've won your battle with that gun. Now, let's go to the hospital and help Sonny win his fight for life. Friends, the results of tonight's story of the shiny gun were both happy and tragic. Happy in that young Sonny Mills lived and Billy was paroled in the custody of his mother. But tragic because in many of our states, there are no laws to punish the irresponsible parent who possesses and leaves a deadly weapon within easy reach of a child. But law or no law, hundreds are killed each year by carelessly handled guns. Needlessly, criminally. Don't let it happen to you. Or yours. How about next week, Steve? Well, next Tuesday, we'll bring you a really different kind of story, headlined... The Deadly Summons. But right now, here's our narrator, Dwight Weiss, with an important reminder. Remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Say, Dwight. Yes, Steve? Dwight, I'd like to emphasize that purifying ingredient of Life Boy. The doctor's report shows what remarkable properties it has. It's the reason Life Boy does all these wonderful things. Yes, and it makes Life Boy health soap milder, too. The purifying ingredient. That's one more reason why Life Boy is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Get Life Boy right away. Tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei, and is written and directed by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. 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 Extra Big Town, hero of a modest player gets deadly summoned. Extra Big Town, extra. Goodbye, Craig. I'll be back in an hour. And I don't want to find you in the... <laughs> Miss Kilburn of the Illustrated Press. Yes, who's calling? 
I want you and your editor, Steve Wilson, to witness a summons. What kind of summons? Thou hast all seasons for thine own, O death. Yes, listen to this strange and exciting big town story of a nearly perfect crime brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. Another headline story of fighting editor Steve Wilson on the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's strange and gripping story of the deadly summons. So live that when thy summons come, such is the poetic admonition behind tonight's headline story of murder that began as young Whit Blake returned home from the funeral of his mother to confront his stepfather, Gregory Kane, with the terrible suspicions of murder. So you're still here in my mother's house, are you, Kane? How could I leave? Confined to this chair for the rest of my life. I wonder if you really are. Now, now, my boy. I know your mother's death has been a terrible shock. Wait, uh, come here, son. Don't call me son. I'm no son of yours. All right, all right. But I am now your guardian. We are bound together by the terms of your mother's will. And we might as well make the best of it. Couldn't you have waited a few days to go into that? Life must go on. The play must go on. We are but actors. Oh, shut up, you hammy Hamlet. I was your mother's leading man. That was the one horrible mistake in her life. The mistake that cost her her life. Poetic fancy, my boy. I am not your boy. No flesh of your blood. No part of your warped and twisted mind. No, but a boy, nevertheless. A boy trying to live up to your namesakes, Whittier and Blake. Ha! A boy living in an unreal world of poetry, fancy, and music. Yes. And suspicion. Suspicion. Keep away from that electric organ. Why? Are you afraid the sweet, gentle ghost of my mother will come back from her chamber in the silent halls of death? Can't you speak without stealing, plagiarizing the words of your infernal poets? They are to be quoted. Not to yellow in uncut pages or gathered dust. Not to die as we must die. Stop talking about death. Stop playing that organ or I'll smash it with his cane. Oh, yes, that loaded cane. It's heavy enough to kill a man or a woman. Why do you keep it near you always when you say you can't get out of that chair? Even to go to pay your last respects to my mother, who gave you everything in life and half of all she had in death. You're crazy. I was afraid the shock would be too much for your milk and water poetic mind. Now stop it or I'll have you put away. Where? Where, my dear stepfather? Committed to an asylum. You're insane. Perhaps. Who knows? Is it better to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous oh, fortune? Rot. Or by opposing end them? To sleep? To die? Perchance to dream? Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? Stop it, which stop this, I tell you. Tell me, as an actor, how did you play Hamlet, my dear stepfather? Feigning madness or really mad? Shut up. Get out of this house and stay out or I'll have you committed tomorrow. No. Because I have a strange feeling there isn't going to be any tomorrow for one or perhaps both of us. Don't you threaten me. Get out or I'll ring for the servants and have you thrown out. Go ahead and ring. There are no servants in the house. What's that? You heard me. I gave them the night off. I wanted to be alone with you, my dear stepfather. Stop that thing. Get out of here or I'll brain you with this cane. Be careful. Don't get out of that chair or you'll betray your guilt. You know I can't get out of this chair. The doctors cleared me of any suspicion in your mother's death. Oh, yes. But there are more things on earth than are dreamed of in doctor's testimony, to paraphrase Mr. Shakespeare, or Bacon, if you wish. Stop that. Stop quoting. Stop playing or so help me. Yes, so help you. For now the stage is set. And we must have an audience, an impartial observer, to measure the madness that crouches in the shadows of this room like a hungry beast. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going to phone a newspaper woman I met at Mother's funeral. 
to come and witness a deadly summons from the grave for one of us. <laughs> Always for you, my lovely. Come in. Thanks. Where have you been? I've been to a funeral and digging in our morgue file on the deceased. Whose funeral and what did you find? The rather surprising death of one of our first ladies of the theater. Oh, Elizabeth Blake. Oh, yes. Fell down a flight of stairs in her townhouse. Uh Uh-huh. And that strikes me as rather odd. How so, Laura? Lots of people are killed by accidental falls. But Elizabeth Blake was an actress, trained if necessary to fall down flights of stairs without hurting herself. Well, acting and actuality aren't always the same, Laura. What else has aroused your repertorial suspicion? What her son Whittier Blake said as he knelt beside his mother's grave. What did he say? He quoted from one of Shakespeare's plays, Hamlet, I think, said, Murder will out, though it hath no tongue to Murder? Yes. But there was no suspicion of foul play, la la la. Not even a coroner's inquest. I know, Steve, and the boy looked rather wild and haggard and acted a little crazy when I tried to question him what later. What did he say? Oh, he just flung quotations at me about retribution and a summons from the grave. Well, what did you get out of the morgue file? Plenty of stuff about his mother's stage career, but not much about her private life since her second marriage to an ex-actor named Gregory Kane. Gregory Kane? Was he at the funeral? No, no, Steve. He's paralyzed. He stayed at the family townhouse. Young Blake hates him, and I think there's going to be more to this now that Kane will be his guardian. Well, it might be worth looking into and following up. Young Blake said I might have a chance soon. Yeah, just a minute. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. I'm told by your operator that a certain young lady, a reporter by the name of Lorelei Kilburn... Is it present in your office? Yes, she is. Who's calling, please? Simply say, we met at my mother's grave. Oh. Uh, just a moment. Well, I... uh, who is it, Steve? It's Whittier's Blake. Oh? You may have a chance to follow up that murder lead sooner than you thought. Golly, yes. Here, take the phone. Thanks. Hello? Are you still curious about my strange behavior at my mother's funeral, Miss Kilburn? More than just curious, Mr. Blake. Good. Could you come to my mother's house immediately, tonight? Yes, I could be there in ten minutes. Why? I want you and your editor, Steve Wilson, to be witnesses. Witnesses to what? A summons, Miss Kilburn. What kind of summons? Leaves have their time to fall, and flowers to wither at the north wind's breath, and stars to set. But oh, thou hast all seasons for thine own, O oh, death. Steve, he hung up. What did you get? Well, an invitation in poetic double talk to witness a summons to be served by death. Good grief. That kind of summons calls for two witnesses. Get your so-called hat, on a line. Let's go. Thus, Steve and Lorelei are drawn into a strange and deadly saga of hatred and revenge. And for the exciting developments, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and tonight's dramatic story of the deadly summons. Accepting a strange invitation to witness a summons of death, Steve and Lorelei arrive at the townhouse of a well-known actress who has died after a mysterious fall. And the door is opened by her son, 
an intense young man whose mind is tormented by the conviction that his mother was murdered. Good evening, Miss Kilburn. I see you've brought your friend. Yes, Mr. Blake. My boss, Steve Wilson, editor of the press. Come in, come in, Mr. Wilson. I've read of you in connection with the smashing of some rackets. Yes, I've been able to help the police break up a few. Good. You'll feel quite at home in this house of hate. And the hounds of jealousy strain at the leash. Uh, Mr. Blake, could you give us the facts in plain English? Yes, where is your stepfather? Upstairs, in my mother's music room. Chained in his chair by his own folly. Dreaming of tomorrow when he'll have me put away in a place of the living dead. As surely as my mother died upon those stairs. And awaits retribution to strike her slayer down. Now, wait a minute, Blake. Don't let your poetic fancy run away with your common sense. How could your stepfather be responsible for your mother's fall down those stairs if he's paralyzed and can't move out of his chair? I do not know. But I know he did. And I shall prove it. Surely you're not suggesting that doctors are wrong, that he isn't paralyzed. No. He cannot walk. He cannot move out of that chair without help. Nor can he move the chair. But by some devil's device, he made my mother die. Why should he want your mother to die? Jealousy of her fame. Envy of her fortune. Bitterness over his failure as an actor and a man. Why didn't you mention these things to the police before your mother's funeral? There is no proof of actual guilt. They would have doubted my sanity as you are doubting it. I would have been put away as I will be committed tomorrow if I cannot serve the summons of death tonight. Now, hold on a minute, Blake. Whether you're right or wrong, sane or temporarily unbalanced by the shock of your mother's death, you can't take the law into your own hands. And we haven't come here to act as witnesses to a murder. It will not be murder, Miss Kilburn. The sword of vengeance is not in my hands. It is in his. Go see Gregory Kane. Question him. I will join you in a few minutes. Well, where are you going? To prepare a surprise, as young Hamlet did for his stepfather's undoing. To set the stage and let the play be the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of this king of evil. You'll find him in the music room at the head of the stairs. What? Steve, what sort of ghastly joke is this? It may not be a joke at all, Laurel. I think we'd better go upstairs and talk to Gregory Kane. Come on. Oh, fantastic. Even these stairs are like a stage setting. Yes, except for the fact that an actress actually died on them only three days ago. Well, it could have been accidental. They're polished marble. Elizabeth Blake could have plunged head first. The medical examiner's report said her head was crushed and her neck broken. Yes, it could have been quite a fall from here. And this top step is worn, uneven, but... But I'm beginning not to believe it. Well, be careful of the power of suggestion, Laraline. Let's try to keep an open mind. That must be the door to the music room over there. Her back would have been to that doorway as she started down the stairs, dear. Yes, but I think we can discount the conventional notion that Kane fooled the doctors, was actually able to walk, followed her, and pushed her down the stairs. But he might have rolled his wheelchair. Well, according to the police report, he wasn't in his wheelchair, Steve. And even young Blake said he couldn't get in and out of his armchair without help. All right, then there's no use speculating on that angle at the moment. Let's go in and talk to Kane before young Blake starts something we can't stop. Yes. Come in. After you, Laura. Good evening, Mr. Kane. I'm Lorelei Kilburn, a reporter on the Illustrated Press. Yes, I know. And your companion is Steve Wilson. Please come in and close the door. Thanks, but uh, how did you know my name and the fact that we were coming here? This extension phone beside my chair keeps me well acquainted with the unbalanced activities of my unloving stepson. And I suppose you know he suspects you of murdering his mother. Oh, yes. And I would strongly advise you not to echo that suspicion in the columns of your newspaper, or I shall sue you for irresponsible slander, as great as the irresponsibility of poor Whittier. Do you believe he's insane? My dear young woman, consider the facts and judge for yourself. What is your version of the facts, Mr. Kane? My dear wife, Elizabeth Whittier's mother, suffered fainting spells. Three nights ago, she left this room, walked out that door to the head of the stairs. I saw her sway and fall to a death. She left the door open? Yes, and I could not move from this chair to help her. The servants were off for the evening as they are tonight. I phoned her doctor. He came and pronounced her dead, and her death an accident. And the medical examiner agreed? Yes, and examined me and confirmed my doctor's statement that I could not have moved from this chair to help or to harm her. I see. Good. So nothing more need be said. And I bid you good night. But 
Mr. Kane, you know your stepson hates you. He believes that in some way you killed his mother and knows that you plan to have him committed to an asylum tomorrow. Yes, Miss Gilborn. Aren't you afraid of staying here alone in this house with him tonight? No. I'm quite safe. I ask no help, no sympathy, no quarter. And I will give none. You seem to be a very bitter man, Miss Kane. Yes, Mr. Wilson, I am a bitter and a vengeful man. Would you mind telling me what put an end to your theatrical career? Put you in that chair? Helpless? I am not helpless. Any fool can walk. An ape can walk. It is the cold steel of the mind sharpened to razor's edge by adversity that is the measure of a man's power over other men and women. So you want power? I have power and wealth. And from this chair, I can pull the strings that makes fools dance like puppets. No! No more. No more. Good heavens, what's that? <laughs> that is Whittier, the young Hamlet, playing games. Whose voice was that, Mr. Kane? The voice of my late dear wife, Elizabeth, Whittier's mother. But how? Undoubtedly a recording of excerpts from some of her repertoire of plays. She did several on the radio. Are you quite sure? Yes. Or would your newsman fancy have it her ghost out of her grave and then... Oh, infirm of purpose. Wait a minute, Kane. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but its pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. <laughs> What's so funny, The Mr. stupidity Kane. of that idiotic boy. Wasting your valuable time bringing you here to watch me turn pale at the sound of my dead wife's voice, perhaps even arise from my chair in horror and betray the fact that I can walk. <laughs> Confess my crime. <laughs> Don't you agree, Wilson? What do you think of this? Now, since you ask me, and while we're quoting, I could say, methinks you doth protest too much. Miss Kane. Surely you don't think that... It is now the very witching time of life. Wait a minute, Kane. When churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such business as the bitter day would quake to look up. Soft now. My mother. The fool. He even distorts Hamlet to suit his own purpose. What? purpose, Mr. Kane? To prove I knocked his mother down those stairs out there in the hall. Did you say knock down the stairs? First of knock, what's the difference? It might make a great deal of difference, but that's beside the point right now. What's the point of your staying here any longer? To keep that boy from doing something he'll regret for the rest of his life. Murder me. Perhaps. Nonsense. Why is it nonsense? The two of you are alone in this house? So what? The servants are away for the night. You know the boy hates you, believes you murdered his mother, and by your own admission you consider him unbalanced enough to be committed to an asylum. And I shall. Tomorrow. And I will probably subpoena you and Miss Kilbert to testify as to his crazy actions tonight. If you live that long. I have nothing to fear from that poetic young fool. I don't propose to be frightened to death by his spooky recitation of a lot of ancient literary hogwash. I was thinking of more modern, practical means of getting even with you, Mr. Kane. Such as? A club, a knife, or a gun. Let him try. Now hear this. Now hear this. Listen to him now. He has a tape recorder in his room, probably attached to this radio. Yes. And now he's in this. the Navy? Yes, volunteer. It's a pity they didn't make a man of him. Hear this. Hear this. Greg, listen to me. What the... Listen to me, Greg. I found out the truth. The truth about what, my dear? How you were really injured and confined to that chair. How? Not defending me against slander, but in a drunken brawl over another woman in which you tried to kill another man with a heavy cane you always carry. It's a lie, Elizabeth. It's a lie. No. It's the truth. And I'm going to divorce you, Greg. I'll make a settlement that will keep you comfortably. But I want you. I want you to get out of this house. Listen, Wilson, Miss Kilburn, this whole thing is a fake. There never was such a quarrel. It never happened. Well, Steve, stop him. He's smashing the radio. It doesn't matter, Laura. I let him smash I'll smash you. I'll smash him. I'll show him. I'll show him. I'll... Yes, Kane. A remarkable demonstration of blind, senseless fury. And it has shown us a great deal. 
such as what, Wilson? That recording of your quarrel with your wife provides an excellent motive for murder. It never happened. It was fake. Was your voice faked, impersonated? No, taken from some scene I played. What play? What about that cane Elizabeth Blake mentioned? The one you used so effectively to smash yes. that radio. Let me have a look at that cane. Keep away from me. Keep away or I'll show you what I can do with it. There's a great deal, I imagine. It looks as if the head were loaded with lead. It is. More ways than one. Keep away from me. Yes. Keep away from me, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. He's really dangerous. What? No quotations now, you crazy young fool? No. I think they've served their purpose. And this tape recording of your last quarrel with my mother will provide the motive for the murder. Will you take it to the police, Mr. Wilson? Yes, gladly. Wait. Hand that here, Wit. Give it to me. Hand it here. What's to make me give it to you? Keep out of reach of that loaded cane, Blake. Don't move, any of you. I told you this cane is loaded in more ways than one. It's a one-shot gun. And the first to move gets that one shot. Steve, the tip of that cane is the hollow muzzle of a gun. Yes. So I see. Oh, so don't move, Wilson. And you wait. Toss that spool of tape recording on my lap. Toss it gently. Don't show it or I'll use the one shot in this cane on you. Thus, Steve and Lorelei and young Blake are faced with a strange dilemma. And for the surprising and exciting payoff, we'll return to Big Town in just a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to the music room of the townhouse of a murdered actress for the payoff in Steve Wilson's strange story of the deadly summons. Don't move, Miss Kilburn, Wilson. I've only one shot in this cane gun, but I promise it to the first one who moves toward my chair. Now toss that spool of tape recording on my lap, Wit. You better give it to him, Blake. It's obvious he's quite desperate. Can't risk the police having proof of his motive for murdering your mother. Even with a motive, you have no proof I murdered Elizabeth. Stop calling my mother by that name. She's dead. You murdered her. You're trying to have me put away so you can have her money, this house, the power over other people you're always talking about. Yes. Now give me that tape recording. Give it to him, Blake. All right. But I'm not finished. Here. Uh, I think you are, Wick. Now back up. Step back while I destroy this fake evidence. Why bother to destroy it, if it's faked? I'll not have the finger of suspicion turned on me by that moronic young upstart. You've created more suspicion by your actions, Mr. Kane. I've done nothing but protect myself. And when I've destroyed this thing... Wait, my dear stepfather. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? Stop that fooling, you crazy fool. You better listen, Kane. I think your stepson is trying to tell you it's no use tearing up that tape recording. Why not? Because that isn't the tape recording I played through your radio a few minutes ago. So it's no use destroying it. Or using that cane gun on any of us. Why not? It's killed once. Killed once? How did it kill once? You didn't fire it at Elizabeth Blake? You know I didn't. There was no bullet wound. But you did use it. The cane. Your tongue slipped and you just admitted that much. You'll never prove it. Perhaps not. But shall I tell you how you did it with that cane? Prove it. Circumstantial evidence will prove it to the satisfaction of any judge and jury. How? I wasn't within 15 feet of her when she fell. No, oh, but look at that radio you smashed with that murderous cane. What about it? The built-in aerial was torn out. 
It was used for some other purpose before you smashed the radio just now. You lie! So look at the loop at the end of the wire. It will fit that cane in your hand. The cane you hurled through that open door. Struck Elizabeth Blake and knocked her down the stairs to her death. You lie! No, you murdered Elizabeth Blake with that cane. You pulled it back to your chair with that aerial wire. Put the wire back in the radio and called the doctor. So that's how he did it. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! Keep away from him, Blake! That's all. You meddling fool. Give me that deadly weapon. Okay. Let go of it. Did he hit you, Blake? No, just missed me. Thanks to your grabbing his arm. Do you want me to help hold him? No. I don't think that will be necessary under the circumstances. Just take this cane while I see that he hasn't another gun on him or in that chair. Don't bother, Wilson. I underestimated you or I would have had another gun ready. No, Kane. You overestimated your own ability to commit the perfect crime. Are I? Uh, yes, Steve. You want me to phone Inspector Callahan of Homicide? Yes, then Fletch on City Desk and byline yourself a story of a deadly summons. Signed, sealed, and delivered to one Gregory Kane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you've heard the dramatiz dramatization of an unusual crime from the front pages of the Big Town Illustrated Press. It was but one of the hundreds of so-called perfect crimes which failed. Not so much because of the brilliance of the police or of private investigators, but because all criminals are their own worst enemies and usually betray themselves. And that's especially true next week, when you'll hear the headline story of the chill of death. Yes, Laura Lai, but uh, right now I see that Mickey, one of my cub reporters, is here with something on his mind. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Wilson. Yes, Mickey. Mr. Wilson, have you actually seen that report about Life Boy Health Soap? Indeed I have, Mickey. It's a remarkable document. It explains why the doctors know that a daily Life Boy bath does get skin cleaner. Does keep you fresh and attractive. Protects you when other soaps fail. And Mickey... Yes, Mr. Wilson? Here's the proof of the pudding. Life Boy is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Laurel I. Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. Friends, you can help make this Easter season a time of hope for crippled children by buying Easter seals. For Easter Seals provide the special services these children need to learn to walk again, talk again, lead useful, active lives. Be generous when you buy your Easter Seals this year. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Sure, and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weiss, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Her father is out there in the dark with that hound, armed with a right. Shut up, Wilson. If he gets me, he'll get you and Kilburn. But Steve, the lights have been cut off. Yes, Laura Lai, Cotton Mouth has cut the light wires. He could strike better in the dark. Yes, listen to this big town five-star record expose headline, The Chill of Death, brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. 
Another hard-hitting story of fighting editor Steve Wilson, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. Freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant to all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's strange story of retribution that caught up with a killer in a luxurious hideout in the sunny Southland, but began in a suite of rooms in the old Grand Hotel, notorious hangout of Big Town gamblers and racketeers. Look, Rocky, don't give me orders. Croc left me in charge of the numbers racket. Yeah, but he told me to see you didn't try taking it over. And he told me to see you didn't line up the book he'd take for yourself like you're doing. You're a liar. Who's a liar, double-crossing slug? You're a liar. Shut up and sit down. We'll settle this later. That's what you know, Joe, at the setups. Let the punk in, Cora, mate. Sure, sure, and you both better watch a step. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't be in such a doggone hurry. I'm sorry, lady, but I'm all alone on a desk tonight. Clerk, bellhop, switchboard, the works. Set the setups and beat it, punk. Okay. Uh, that'll be two bucks. Put it on the Crocs, Bill. Okay. When's Croc Miller coming back from Don South? When he gets warm. He can't stand a cold. Yeah, so I hear. Ain't that why he's called Croc? Short for crocodile? Yeah, his doc says he's thin-blooded. Chills easy. Now beat it. Croc ain't got blood. If anybody ever opens up, they'll spill ice water. Clam up, Nick. Come on, beat it, Joe. We got business. Yeah, I'll bet you have. It's grand, punk. Sure. Ring the desk if you want any more free service. Why didn't you tip the punk? Why didn't you? You think of the boss around here? I'll show you who's the boss. Why don't you boys relax? Croc's the boss. He's Molly sunning himself down there on the south coast. So just take it easy and relax. Shut up, Cormay. You mind your own business, Rocky. Stick the nick in the bookies and lay off my numbers racket. Quit telling me things, Nick. Quit phoning Croc. I'm muscling in. Crossing him up. I ain't tipped Croc or nothing, you rat. You're a liar. Somebody... Oh, somebody did. Oh... Yeah, I'll say somebody did. So you just had to go and do it, didn't you, Rocky? Yeah, so what? Croc ain't gonna like it, Rocky. He will when he hears Nick was crossing him up. Better get to Croc and tell him first. Yeah, go get the car, Cora May. We're heading south tonight. Tonight? What about Nick there? Maybe he ain't dead yet. We're taking him along in the car, dead or alive. <laughs> Wondrous girl reporter. Hello, Lorelei. Come in. Hi. Are you a fugitive from one of Fletcher's city desk assignments? Mm-hmm. I just finished one, thanks. The convention of travel agents and their talk of tours to sunny lands had given me the urge to get away to warmer climes. Oh, sorry. We're all out of assignments to Florida, California, and Point South. Well, couldn't you manage... Uh-oh. Your private line. Probably a tip from one of your tipsters. It'll take us to the North Pole. Oh, the waterfront, which would be just as cold tonight. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. I am, Mr. Wilson. What do you know, Joe, at the old grand? What do you know, Joe? Maybe plenty, Mr. Wilson. I think two of Croc Miller's head hoods shot it out. Where, Joe? Up in Croc Suite in this AC Ducey joint about an hour ago. An hour ago? Have you notified the police? Well, I didn't have no proof until after they left. Who left? Nick Collins, Rocky Kent, and a femme southern fry called Cora May. Who was shot, Joe? Rocky and Cora got Nick in a car. Said he was sick, and they headed south. They headed south? Are you sure Collins was shot? Well, I heard a shot after I took him some setups. They were having something out, and after they left, I passed keys myself in a crock suite, and there was plenty of plasma on the rug. Well, that should be evidence enough, but are you sure they're heading south in a car? Yeah. On account of I heard Rocky tell the gal they could make it to Crocs Beach House by tomorrow night by driving without stopping. Thanks for the tip, Joe. Uh, you gonna follow it up, Mr. Wilson? Yes, Joe. We've been trying to link Croc Miller to several big town rackets, and this may be the time to do it. Thanks very much, Joe, till you're better paid. But, Steve, Croc Miller is sunning himself in that fantastic hideaway of his almost a thousand miles from here. Yes, Laura, I, but you wanted to take a trip, didn't you? South to the sun? Yes, phone the airport and have them fuel a press plane for a takeoff early tomorrow morning. Why not tonight? I want to check a few big town angles on a shooting between two of Croc's gunmen. And we can still be there when they arrive at Croc's hideout tomorrow night. <laughs> Steve Wilson and Lorelei prepare to fly south to be in on a deadly gang showdown. 
And for the exciting developments, we'll rejoin them in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and tonight's racket expose, which has Steve Wilson and Lorelei winging southward in a fast plane belonging to the Illustrated Press. Say, Steve, there's the coastline. Well, we made it before sundown. Ah, now, if we can only spot Croc Miller's private landing field before dark. Yes. We should be able to get to him before his Big Town stooges arrive by car. This air map shows the field just back from the ocean beach and surrounded by a swamp. Right. It should be just ahead. Keep your eyes open, Lorelei. It's only a small field. Oh, I see something. Looks like a concrete strip parallel to the ocean and a, and a big white house. That's it. I'll drop down. Fasten your safety belt in case I've forgotten how to land this freight. I hope not. The wind's right to go straight in. That's Miller's place, all right. It was featured in a magazine in all its phony splendor. Yes, their way of showing that crime and rackets don't pay. Yes, neglecting to point out that the place is a flimsy stucco shell set in an isolated swamp for protection against Miller's enemies. Oh, but that beautiful, sunny, white beach, Steve. Yes, but Crop can't enjoy it without the shadow of an armed bodyguard near him. Well, I hope we get a chance for just one swim in that warm blue water before we have to fly back. You may in the morning. But I doubt if we'll get out of here tonight whether Crocs' goon guns arrive by car or not. Oh, hold your lovely hat, my lovely. I'm going to set her down. Oh, well, that's perfect, Steve. Couldn't have done better myself. Huh. Getting out of this small field may be something else. Uh-oh. Steve, you better stop here. We have a reception committee of one waving us down with a rifle. Yeah, so I see. You better stay on the plane. Oh, listen to that surf roll in on the beach. Well, that Ooh. will have to wait, Lorelei. This character rolling toward us with that rifle doesn't act like a greeter from the local chamber of commerce. Oh, it looks like a snake. Good evening. Hey, you get out of here, mister. This here's a private airplane, Phil. You take off again. Sorry. I've landed here to see Croc Miller. He don't see nobody what drops in like buzzers without an invite. I think he'll see me. Who are you, mister? Steve Wilson, editor of the Town Illustrated Press. Oh, newspaper fella from up north, huh? Yes. Who's that there woman with you? Well, the young lady is Laura and I Kilburn, one of my reporters. Now, where's Croc Miller? He ain't seeing nobody now. Why not? He's favoring himself over there on the sand in the sun while it's still warm. Oh, nice work if you can get it. Let's go give him something to think about, Steve. You hold on, ma'am. Hold on. Uh-oh. Don't throw guns around like that. Hey. You give me that rifle back, mister. Don't you get it away from me like that. And I'll give you another lesson if you try it again. You give me that gun back, mister. Sure, without the bolts here. You, you give me that bolt to this gun. <laughs> this revolver says give it to me. All right, here you are. Hey, doggone you, mister. Let me go. 
pick up that revolver, Lord of Ice. Quit. You better search him, Steve. He's a walking arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I guess that's all. Now, where's Crockmiller? Right here behind you, Wilson. Now, you better let go of Cottonmouth like his namesakes. He don't like to be manhandled. Well, then send him back to the swamps with the rest of the moccasins. I'll get you, mister. I'll get you if you don't get out of here before sundown. Yes, your kind like to strike in the dark. Put him back in the pit, Croc. I want to talk to you. What about? I brought you down here from Big Town in such a hurry. Well, get rid of this so-called bodyguard and I'll explain. Make him give me my guns back, Croc. I'll get him for you. Go up to the house and tell Mandy to set out some drinks. I'd rather set out some poison. You just wait, Wilson. You just wait. You've made a bad enemy, Wilson. Better say what you come to say and take off in that plane while you can. Sorry, Croc. You're due to have some other guests. And I want to be here when they arrive. I ain't expecting nobody. They're coming by car from Big Town, and I think they want it to be a surprise. Who's coming by car? Two of your boys and a girl called Cora May. Cora May? Yes. Come up to the house. What's the matter with you, Croc? Uh, what made you shiver like that? The sun's gone. It's getting chilly. That's right. I hear you can't stand the slightest cold. Yeah. Come on. Come up to the house. I gotta get inside. Yes, Croc. You'd better, because I think there's a chill wind of death coming down from the north. is now that the sun's gone down. Even the house is cold, damp, yes. clammy. It certainly is, Lorna. It's because of the swamps all around the land side. I wonder why Croc picked such a place if he can't stand the cold. To be safe from his rivals and enemies. The price any gangster pays for his brief hour in the sun. And I'm not being poetic. Where is he now? His heating plant is broken down. He's outside tinkering with it. That's why this house is so cold and damp. Cottonmouth! Go shut that hound up or I'll shut it, you hear me? I hear you, Mr. Croc. That hound don't like strangers. He's saying maybe somebody gonna die tonight. Ah, uh, cut that kind of talk. Go farm town and get somebody out here to fix my heating plant. They won't come tonight. Well, phone them anyway and keep that hound quiet. Looks like you'd have been better off in your suite in the old Grand Hotel in Big Town, Croc. Yeah. What brought you flying down here in such a hurry, Wilson? You haven't got nothing on me. No. You've been pretty clever in covering up your racket connections, Croc. But when your front men fall out over the division of your rackets, a lot of things can happen. What's that, Wilson? I told you Rocky, Nick, and a girl called Cora May are on their way down here in a car. So what? My pals drop in every once in a while. Not unannounced. They'll be announced before they get within a mile of here. How do you arrange that? Cottonmouth's boy lives over by the main road. And nobody comes through the swamp road without his phoning in first. You really trust your friends and guests, don't you, Croc? But can you trust Cottonmouth and his son? I don't have to trust anybody as long as I've got this rock. Oh. So even here, in your so-called tropical paradise, your happy vacation hideaway, you have to carry a gun. What do you do, Croc? Even sunbathe on the beach with that shoulder holster strapped on you? Yeah. Now I want to know what brought you two news hounds flying way down here. Uh, uh, news hounds are also supposed to have a sixth sense, Croc. Perhaps it's the same thing that's making that hound out there howl at the moon. What's that, wise guy? The smell of death. Cottonmouth, answer that phone. I heard it. I'm getting it out in the hall. That may be your guest, Croc. They've had time to get here from Big Town if they drove without stopping. Shut up, Wilson. If it's Nick and Rocky, tell Judd to let them come on out. What about the girl called Cora May? How do you know so much about who's coming? Well, we have 
birdies who tell us when the underworld apes of the big town jungle start fighting among themselves. What happened up there? Oh, come on, you two, Kev. I think you'll get the whole story firsthand in a few minutes, Croc. And we thought we'd like to be around to see how you handle it. Get out of here. Go get in that crate and fly out of here, Wilson. Sorry. That field is too small to take off in the dark. We'll have to wait till morning. Oh, yeah? All right, Cottonmouth, what goes? It's him. Cora May's with him. Okay, so she's with him. What about it? One of them's dead in the back of the car. Dead? Which one? One called Nick. How'd it happen? I don't know. I told you not to get my little old Cora May mixed up in no trouble. Ah, uh, shut up and get out of here. Cora May can take care of herself. Now, if these here newspaper hound dogs get away from here, write up about this in their paper. I'll take care of that. Now, you go out and meet that car. Make sure Rocky don't come in here carrying a gun. I'll make plenty sure of that. And, uh... As for you, Mr. Wilson... Yes, Cottonmouth? Don't you and your reporter gal get no notion of flying out of here. Because I done fixed your plane so you can't. You understand? Well, looks like we're going to be in on this whether we like it or not, Steve. What is Cora May to your bodyguard, Croc? She's his daughter. Oh, oh. And you took her up to Big Town and got her mixed up in the racket, And huh? now... Murder. Shut up. She's no swamp angel. She's a smart, tough dame, and she can take care of herself. Yes, but can you? Cottonmouth doesn't look much like a father, but he's acting like one. And he's liable to forget he's supposed to be your faithful bodyguard. Shut up, children. Now listen, Wilson. You're after a story. I'll make a deal. What is the deal, Croc? If Rocky shot Nick, you can have him. Take him back to Big Town with you and get yourself a scoop. Oh. The old double-cross truck. The sellout to save your own rotten hide. No, thanks. There's no room in the press plane for that killer. Okay. Cottonmouth ain't forgot you took his guns away from him this afternoon. Maybe I can get him to take you hunting in the swamps that I... Hunting what? Maybe what that hound dog is sniffing in the wind. What's the idea of having a cottonmouth character taking my heat away from me? Uh, shut the door, Rocky. Drafts give me a chill, you know that. Okay, but I want to know what... Uh, who's the guy in Dave? Never mind. Where's Cormay? Out there with that swamp rat, but listen, Croc. What happened to Nick? That's what I drove down here to tell you. All right, all right, tell me. Nick was crossing you up, getting set to take over. And you wasn't? No, I was playing it straight down the line for you all the way. You're a liar. I know different. Who told you? I told him, Rocky. You told him, you lying two-time and twist. You were playing along with Nick getting set to cross up me and Croc. What about that, Cormay? Croc, honey, you know I wouldn't try anything like that on you. After all you done for me. Took me out of this here swamp to the big city. Give me a good job just watching them city crooks you got working for. Don't you. believe her, Croc. Don't trust her. She's as slippery as her old man and twice as mean. Listen to him, Croc. He's mad because I wouldn't play with him to cross you up. Hey, who's that snappy gal, Croc? What's she doing here? Uh, not enjoying the surf and sunshine, Cora May. And you better start talking yourself out of this mess before you get in any deeper. That's right, Laura Lai. I'm afraid that when these three stop talking, there's liable to be shooting. Who's the big wise guy, Croc? A newspaper guy from Big Town. Wilson. Wilson, a racket buster. What's he doing here? We heard about your little shooting spree at the old Grand Hotel. Heard you were driving south and flew in ahead of you. Croc, are you nuts letting a nosy in on this? Eh, uh, forget about Wilson and the Cuban dame. I got a notion they ain't gonna matter. Not to you, Rocky. Why not? Because Croc has offered you as the fall guy to take back to Big Town for the murder of Nick. Come here, Cora May. Croc, make him let go. Let him have oh, it. Break away from him. Get out of the way. 
Lose. Come on, honey child. We're going places. Break away, Cora. Break away. A cave. Uh, a cave. Baby. crack. You can have her. Laurel, I see what you can do for that girl. Yeah, but you stay put, Wilson. Don't open that door again. <laughs> Now what, Croc? You shot Cora. Her father shot Rocky, and he's out there with a high-powered rifle. Shut up, Wilson. If he gets me, he'll get you and Kilburn. He'll get all of us. That bolted door won't keep him out. This is his jungle, Croc. Oh, dear. The lights have been cut off. Yes. Cottonmouth has pulled the light switch or cut the wire. This is his element, Croc. He can strike better in the dark. Wilson, I'll make a real deal. I got a rifle. I'll give it to you. Oh, thanks, Rock. You made a deal that you can't shoot your way out of when you got in the rackets a long, long time ago. Steve and Lorelei are caught in the middle of a savage showdown, and for the ironic payoff, we'll rejoin them in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to tonight's headline story of Steve Wilson and Lorelei, who have flown a thousand miles south to cover a gang showdown in tonight's big town story of the chill of death. Wilson, don't pull out of here. Don't leave me alone in this forsaken dump with that crazy swampy waiting for me out there in the dark. Sorry, Croc, you picked this place for a hideout. You hired Cottonmouth for a bodyguard. And you shot his daughter trying to kill Rocky. Uh, Rocky pulled her in front of him when I shot at him. That won't matter to Cottonmouth. He hates you like poison for getting Cora May mixed up in the murder of your other gun goon, Nick. Steve. Steve. Yes, Lorna. That's Cora May. I, I can't be sure in the dark, but I think she's dead. That done it, Croc. Now Cottonmouth will hunt you down like the stupid, murderous animal you are. He hates you too, Wilson. You took his guns away, made a fool of him. You can't do that to a swampy. He'll kill you and kill them too. Not if I can help it, where's your telephone? There's an extension phone on a table behind you. By the window. Thanks. Well, what are you going to do? Phone for the local law and... It's all right, Laura. I he must be... Hello. Hello, operator. Uh, put down that phone, Wilson. You ain't calling the local cops out here to take me in. Don't be a fool, Croc. If the police don't come, your pet bodyguard will kill you. It doesn't matter, Lana Lai. This phone is dead. Dead? Yes. Cottonmouth must have cut the line when he cut the light wires. Wilson, I tell you, there's a loaded rifle over the fire, please. Take it. Help me get that crazy fool before he gets us. No, thanks. Your pal, Cottonmouth, seems to be able to see in the dark. We're staying right here in this room until daylight. He'll get us. He'll get all of us. Quote and unquote. Keep down, Lana Lai. Keep away from the window. <laughs> It's getting cold in here. That broken window, I... I can't stand the night air. Keep away from that window or you'll never be warm again, Croc. Never bask in the sun of this fool's paradise again. Right. The back door to the hall. I didn't bolt it. It's too late. Get on, Lorelei. It's too dark. I can't see him. Be quiet. I've come for you, Mr. Croc. 
seen you shoot my daughter, Cora May. Where are you at? You miss me, you city hound dog. Oh, you're behind that there chair, are you? Here, shoot, Hope! <laughs> Shoot my youngin, will you? <laughs> now, where's my youngin? Where's my core of me? Core of me? You come home, you hear? You come home? <laughs> Steady, Lorelei. Wait till I light a candle. There's a couple on the fireplace mantel. All right, but, but I don't think there's a thing we can do for any of them, Steve. No. I'm afraid they've played out the old racket game of dog eat dog to the final bitter end. <laughs> You know from reading your daily newspapers that what you've just heard has happened many times and will happen again and again so long as racket mobs are allowed to flourish. You can help prevent it by cooperating with your law enforcement agencies, local committees, and by refusing to pay tribute to rackets in any form. What about next week's Big Town Assignment, Dwight? Next week, we're going to dramatize another headline story captioned, The Deadly Gimmick. But right now... Friends, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Say, Dwight. Yes, Steve? Dwight, I'd like to emphasize that purifying ingredient of Life Boy's. The doctor's report shows what remarkable properties it has. It's the reason Life Boy does all these wonderful things. Yes, and it makes Life Boy milder, too. The purifying ingredient... That's one more reason why Life Boy is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Get Life Boy right away. <laughs> Friends, if you'd like to see what the cast of Big Town and their real counterparts look like, see the exciting story in the April 12th issue of Look Magazine, now on the newsstands. The current issue of Look is complete with pictures of Big Town's leading characters and their real-life doubles. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weist, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting Extra Big Town! Editor gets murder threat! Gang goes strike on Big Town! Extra Big Town! Extra... All right. Pack your things, Lorelei. I'm sending you out of Big Town until I find out what's back of these racket threats. Oh, now, wait a minute, Steve. You're the one who's been threatened, not me. Now, listen, Wilson. Lay off my rackets and I'll tip you on who's trying to get you. Is it a deal? I'll make no deal with you, Lawler. And call off your gun goons or they'll get you the chair. Such are the highlights of the deadly gimmick of the squeaking rat on Big Town. Brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap.
another exciting adventure of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's headline story of the deadly gimmick of the squeaking rat. This is the strange story of a two- and four-legged rat. One, a vicious little criminal with a warped sense of humor. The other, a toy mouse with a squeaker in its rubber hide. Such is the background of this story that began as Lorelei Kilburn ushered an unexpected visitor into Steve Wilson's office at the Illustrated Press. Steve, could you spare a moment? Always for you, Lorelei, my lovely. Come in. Not for me this time, Steve. You have a visitor. Come in, Mr. Lawler. Thanks, Kilburn. Hello, Wilson. Well, hello, Lawler. We're honored. Save the wisecracks for an editorial, Wilson. I want to talk to you. Fine, sit down. Thanks. May we quote you, or is this off the record? Like most of your financial activities. Well, that depends. But I'm not talking in front of witnesses. Send your girl Friday reporter out to buy a hat. All right, go buy a hat, Lorelei. On the Illustrated Press expense account? That depends on Mr. Lawler. Okay. Make it good, Mr. Lawler. I will. All right, Lawler, what's on your mind? Just a sec. What about that, uh, that speakerphone on your desk? It's switched off. But, uh, a hidden microphone would have been a good idea. Especially if I'd known you were coming. Mm -hmm. That's why I made it a surprise. All right, what's on your mind? Plenty. How do you like our editorials and feature articles on your mysterious financial activities in Big Town? I don't. Good. You're causing me plenty of trouble. Fine. The white heat of publicity sometimes fumigates the rat holes of the rackets. Now, look here, Wilson. I simply loan money. If it is used to finance rackets, I'm not criminally responsible. Oh, yes, we made that quite plain in Miss Kilburn's series of articles. You have no cause for a lawsuit on the grounds of libel or slander. If I had, you'd have heard from my lawyer, not from me. Yes, I know. So why this personal visit? What's on your mind? I want you and your newspaper to lay off me and my activities. Quit writing me up. Forget me. Well, most legitimate businessmen would pay plenty to get the amount of publicity we've been giving you. Sure. But I'll pay plenty if you lay off. What's the matter, Lawler? Is your filthy finance getting too hot for your shady clients? The bookies, slot machine operators, and numbers bankers? Are they afraid to do business with you because it puts them in the same spotlight of publicity you're in? Yes. And I'm here to make you a proposition. Go ahead, make it. Now, I know there's no use offering you dough. Thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. But uh, lay off me and my activities, and uh, I'll feed you enough tips on the rackets to fill your front page with a scoop every day of the week. Why, you squealing rat. In your rackets, you wouldn't last a week. Nobody need ever know where you got your information except you and me. Don't kid yourself, Lawler. The sewer circuit of the underworld has a grapevine information service that would make a Hooper survey look like something out of a cup of tea leaves. That'd be my worry. Your funeral. So you won't trade. Listen, Lawler, I wouldn't deal with you if you gave me the inside dope on every unsolved murder in Big Town. Why not? Because men like you are behind and responsible for half the gang killings in this town. Prove that, Wilson. I'm trying. And I must be close to proving it, or you wouldn't be here. Well, you won't be anywhere very long if you don't lay off. Is that a threat? Not from me, no, but I got a lot of friends. Friends? Why, you haven't a friend in the world, Lawler. No one you can trust, and no one that trusts you. So you won't play ball. No, Lawler, and you better tell your so-called friends that if anything happens to any of my staff, they'll be putting a rope around your neck after the deal you've offered me in this office. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That'll be your word against mine, Wilson. Not quite. Just a minute. Lorelei. Yes, Steve? Did you get that choice bit of dialogue? Yes, Steve. You want to hear a playback of your conversation with Mr. Lawler? No, but I think Lawler would like to hear how his voice sounds. Why, you double-crossing newspaper slug. You had a microphone hidden somewhere. You sent Kilburn out to turn it on. Yes, in the Statue of Justice here on my desk, Lawler. Appropriate, isn't it? You slug. That won't help you, Lawler. Justice 
crushed to earth, will rise and weigh you on her scales. To quote and unquote a paraphrase... Lay off me and my business or you won't live to see it happen. Go on, Lawler. Is that microphone still working, Lorelei? Yes, Steve. The tape recorder is getting it all. You better lay off, Wilson. You've started something even I can't stop. Get out, Lawler. Get out of this newspaper office and stop whatever you started. Because if anything happens, to any of my staff, the recording of our conversation will be enough to send you up the river for the rest of your natural life. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient... Get Skin Cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei as they face a showdown with a big-time racket operator they have goaded into threats of retaliation in tonight's headline story of the deadly gimmick of the squeaking rat. Hey, gimmick, what's the big idea driving out in this old coal dock? I ain't in no mood for no neck and party, even if you was my type. Don't butter yourself on both sides, Ruby. You ain't my type either. So what's the idea? One of your gags? Yeah. I'm going to pull a yak on a guy. Ain't it kind of late for April Fool joke? Ah, this ain't going to be no joke. I fixed me up a gimmick for a guy that's getting in the hair of a hotshot pal of mine. <laughs> ah, you and your gimmicks. No wonder you got that nickname. Oh, what's it this time? A stink bomb or an exploding cigar? Yeah, hot, baby. Red hot. It's in this box. What's in the box, mystery man? <laughs> a toy mouse, baby. One of them rubber rats with a squeaker in it. Yeah, you squeeze it and it squeaks. So what? So when this guy gets this package and opens it up, he's going to find the mouse and see the squeaker. And he's going to be curious enough to try and see if the squeaker works. <laughs> So what's the yuck in that? The rat's primed with high explosive. It'll blow his top. <laughs> hey, how's that for a gag? Some gag. Hey, now, wait a sec, gimmick. That's liable to be murder, and I don't want to get mixed up in it. You don't want to go back to the hen pen, do you? No, no, but uh, listen, gimmick, do Now, I... you listen. Do like you're told. There's an old moocher named Willie the Weep that lives in that shanty boat over there. Is it him you're after? Nah, but he's a tipster for the guy I want to get. Who? A newspaper slug named Steve Wilson of the press. So, what's the pitch? Get out of the car. Go over there and leave this box in front of Willie's door. Hey, now, wait a minute. What if the moocher comes out and spots me? There's a light in the shanty boat. He must be home. Nah, quit worrying. Just put it in front of his door and beat it. I'll turn the jalopy around and be ready to haul out of here. Go on, go on, take the box, but don't drop it. All right, but what if the thing goes off? Don't worry. It won't go till somebody gets curious enough to squeak that rat. <laughs> that recording is all ready to play, Steve. Good. Uh, I phoned Callahan of Homicide, and I want him to hear it, Laurel. I... Come in. I have an assignment. Well, why Homicide, Steve? And what's my assignment? I want you to go to Washington for a few days until we find out what's behind Lawler's threats. Oh, now, wait a minute, Steve. 
Even if I did write those feature articles on Lawler's mysterious financial activities, surely you don't think he's going to do anything about it? I'm not taking any chances, Laurel. I, the notion that reporters aren't killed for racket exposés has been disproven several times, and I don't want it confirmed by your obituary. Well, then you better come along to Washington. Lawler threatened you, not me. Sorry, you're taking a night plane. Just a minute. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Hey, Mr. Wilson, it's me. Willie's a wee. Hello, Willie. What's up along the waterfront? Somebody left a package in front of the door of my shanty boat and beat it in a car before I could see who it was. What kind of package, Willie? Just a little old box wrapped in paper. And it's addressed to you, Mr. Wilson. Addressed to me? Yeah, it says, for Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. And the letters is cut out of newspaper and pasted on the package like crooks used on ransom notes. Where are you, Willie? Oh, in a payphone near the dock. Where's the package? I got it with me. What'll I do with it, Mr. Wilson? Willie, listen carefully. I'm listening. Be very careful of that package, Willie. Don't drop it and don't open it. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Wilson. I never open anybody else's packages, Mr. Wilson. But why do you suppose it was left in front of my shanty door? Because someone must know you give me tips about events along the waterfront, Willie. I want you to come to the press office right away. Watch yourself now, Willie. And be careful how you handle that package. Yeah, hello. Is that you, Mr. Lawler? Who wants to know? It's me. Jimmy Martin. <laughs> Louse the laughs. What's the idea of calling me on my private wire and what's the gag? The gag to get a certain wise guy that's been getting in your hair lately. Don't do me any favors, gimmick. Your tricks and gags are about as funny as a crutch. Don't worry. This one will pay off with a great big yacht. And already it's in the works. What's in the works, comic? You know that racket buster newspaper slug, Wilson? Wilson of the press? Yeah. You dope. What have you pulled? Relax. Just send him a little April Fool present. A little late, but he'll get the gag of the gimmick. <laughs> what kind of a present? What have you sent him, you dope? Hey, is that gratitude? I figured I was doing you a favor. Your kind of favor can tie me to you and your other punk pals I'm backing. What have you sent Wilson? A gimmick that'll blow his head off if he's curious. And newspaper guys are curious about everything. What kind of a gimmick, you laughing hyena? Just a toy mouse with a squeaker in it, and he'll figure it's somebody's way of calling him a rat. <laughs> oh. Oh, is that all? Yeah, nah, nah. That, that ain't all. That's just the come on. Listen. The payoff comes when Wilson gets curious and squeezes the mouse's squeaker to see if it works. And then what happens? Comes then the big yuck. The mouse blows up and blows Wilson right out of your hair. Oh, damn it, you dope. I left Wilson not half an hour ago. I warned him to lay off. I threatened him. They had a microphone planted on me, and if anything happens, they'll nail me for it. Creeps. How was I to know that? Never mind. How did you send that booby trap? Planted it with a moocher named Willie the Weep, one of Wilson's waterfront tipsters. Well, get it back, you crazy fool. Get it away from that mooch. Now, now, wait a minute. I don't know as I can. I've been watching him. Willie phoned Wilson as soon as he found the package. He's on his way to Wilson's office right now. Go after him. Wait for him outside the press office. Get that package away from him before you get me a reserved seat in a chair. Okay, Ruby, wait here, right behind the wheel. Say, what's the matter with you, gimmick? What's the idea of racing across town and parking right in front of the Illustrated Press? Shut up, Ruby. Stay under the wheel and be ready to roll out of here, but quick. Okay, okay, but what's the big idea? What you watching for? That mooch and dope, Willie the Wee? Yeah, I gotta get that package back. Ha! Huh? Now I've heard everything. A while ago, that was gonna be the yak of the year. Now you gotta call it off. What gives? Button up and get ready to roll. I see the moocher coming down the block, carrying the box. You gonna grab it? Yeah, get set to start the motor and, and leave this car door open so I can jump in quick. Okay, but you better watch that hacky leaning against his cab there in front of the press entrance. I'll sap him if he butts in on this. Get set. Okay, hurry it up. 
Hiya, Willie. What you doing up in this section of town? Oh, hello, Harry. Now I've got to deliver a very important package to Mr. Wilson. You walk all the way from the waterfront? Yeah, Harry. I didn't have a nickel for bus fare. I'll hack you back when you come on. Thanks, Harry, but I'll mooch my way back. Wait a minute, Willie. Maybe you won't have to mooch your way back to the docks. Who are you, mister? Let go my arm. Hold still, punk. You've got something I want. Give me that package. No, I won't. This package is for Mr. Wilson of the Illustrated Press. You let go. Harry! Harry! Harry the hat! Help! Shut up. Shut up. Give me that package, you dumb. I won't you let go. Harry! Come in, Willie. Let go of my pal, Willie, or I'll crack your cranium with this knock and knock. Oh, yeah! Uh, Willie, in a fresh building, quick. I'll hold this monkey. Well, hold him. I'll okay. get help, Harry. Uh, I'll get help. What's a big idea, you slug? This is the big idea, you meddling hacky dope. Uh. Ruby, get the motor going. Roll this heap. Let's get out of here. with the package and Harry, look at Come him. in, Willie. Good grief. What's happened to you two? Now, fella tried to get this package for me right in front of the press entrance, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, he jumped Willie and I jumped him, but he was plenty handy with a blackjack, boy. Harry tried to hold him, but he got away in a car that had a girl driver. Did either one of you spot the license number? Not me. I was seeing stars. Sorry, boy. And I was too busy holding on to this package you said to be careful of, Mr. Wilson. Now, let's see that package, Willie. Put it on the desk very carefully. What is it, Mr. Wilson? Uh, how come I got to be so careful with it? I don't know, Willie. But there's something clear about this whole affair, and we're not going to take any chances. Well, maybe it's a delayed April Fool's joke, Steve. Perhaps, Lord and I, but the fact it was left in front of Willie's shanty could mean it comes from someone who knows Willie works for us from time to time. Uh, Steve, maybe it's another one of those symbolic threats you get from cranks every once in a while. Knives, silver bullets, musical coffins, skulls with bullet holes in them. Yeah, uh, have you still got the desk drawer full of them, boss? Yes, Harry. And Steve still calls it his no-hope chest. Yes, but this package is different. Uh, how so, Steve? Because someone tried to recover it, Laura and I. Something must have happened between the time it was left outside Willie's shanty boat and the time he reached here. That wasn't more than half an hour, Mr. Wilson. And in that half hour, someone changed their mind about wanting me to receive this package. Steve... Mark Lawler said someone might get you, shut you up if you didn't lay off. Yes, and Lawler knows we have a recording of his threats. Holy moly, boss. Maybe that box is a bomb, a time bomb. It's about the size of an alarm clock. No, Harry, I'm sure there's no time clock mechanism. I listened very carefully, and it isn't heavy enough for a battery type. Now, Steve, be careful. Don't open it. Don't worry. In fact, Callahan has a couple of specialists who know how to handle such things. Take that call on a line. Tell whoever it is that I call them back. Okay, Steve. Steve Wilson's office, Illustrated Press. Hello, police headquarters. Inspector Callahan of Homicide, please. Steve Wilson calling. Oh. Now, who's calling me, Lorna? Uh, Steve, I think you better take this incoming call now. Well, who, who is it, Lorna? It's Mark Lawler, and he sounds worried. And he may have good reason here. Take this other call to Callahan. Ask him to come up here and bring one of his bomb specialists on the double. Okay, you talk to Lawler. He sounds like a cat on a hot stove. Well, he may be just that and a lot more. All right, Lawler. What's on your mind? I suppose you've got that wire recorder hooked up with this phone, Wilson. You'll have to risk that, Lawler. What's on your mind since you last talked? I got a hot tip for you, Wilson. I told you I'm not buying any tips from you, Lawler. I don't want anything for this tip. And I don't want any favors. You better listen, Wilson. Why should I listen to you? You're marked to get it and how. All right. How? Well, just for the benefit of your tape recorder... I don't know, but you're primed to get it, but good. Stop lying, Lawler. If you know anything, you know all about it. And you probably know your stooge wasn't able to get the package back from Willie the Weep. Hey, it wasn't my idea. I had nothing to do with it. Well, you'll have a tough time proving it. After the threats you made in this office tonight? Well, I didn't know about it then. I was just bluffing, trying to scare you off. Yes, I thought as much. What have you heard since then? Who sent that package? Talk. All right, Lawler. Talk if you want to get out of this. Now, wait a minute. Uh, what's the deal for me? I'm making no bargains with you, Lawler. 
Who left the package with Willie the Weep and beat him up with a blackjack trying to get it back? What's his name? What's his name, Lawler? All right. A punk numbers banker called Gimmick Mart. Gimmick Mart? Yeah. Where's he hang out? I, uh, I don't know. But he's going to call me again in a few minutes, and uh, I could tell him to be someplace, and you could pick him up. Tell him to be at your office in half an hour. My office? Yes, your office. But he'll know I crossed him up if you show with the cops. He'll know it sooner or later. Take it or leave it, Lawler. Okay, I'll take it. All right. Have him at your office in half an hour, or the gimmick's gimmick may blast you into prison for a lot of years. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei as they approach the office of Mark Lawler, a racket backer, in tonight's story headlined The Deadly Gimmick of the Squeaking Rat. There's Lawler's office, Steve, at the end of the corridor. Wait here, Lorelai. This is where you get off. But, Steve, you're not walking in there alone, unarmed. Oh, yes. But I'm not exactly unarmed, Lorelai. I have this little toy mouse the gimmick sent me with his murderous compliments. But what's the good of that toy mouse? I think it'll frighten a confession out of the gimmick. And Lawler, out of the business of financing rackets, wait here for Callahan at Homicide, Lorelai. He'll be here in a couple of minutes. Then come in and get the facts for Fletch on the city desk. Oh, all right. But you be careful. I don't have to phone in your obituary for the final. I'll try to avoid that. Oh, hello. Wilson. A racket buster newsy. Sit down, gimmick. Come in, Wilson. Close the door. Thanks, Lola. I see you got him here. Hey, what's the idea, Lola? Is this the way you pay off guys that try to do you a favor? I don't go for favors to tie me into murder and maybe the chair. I'll get you for this, Lawler. I'll get you for this cross-up if it's the last thing I ever do. You'll have to wait quite a few years before you have a chance to try, Gimmick. Oh, yeah? You ain't got a thing on me, Wilson. Not a thing, but this little present you sent me, care of Willie the Weep. Uh, hey, uh, what's that? I, I never seen it before. I'll refresh your memory, Gimmick. Let's see what's inside this box. Hey, take it easy, Wilson. <laughs> take it easy. Why back away, gimmick? Aren't you curious? Let's see what's so carefully wrapped in this tissue paper. Hey, take it easy. Well, if it isn't a little toy mouse, look at it, gimmick. Hey, cut it out. Take it easy. Stop backing away, gimmick. It's only a toy mouse. Listen, Wilson. Li <laughs> it was only a gag. <laughs> For a yuck. <laughs> Yeah, for a laugh. So you admit you sent it to me as a favor to Lawler? Yeah, yeah. A, 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 guy, a guy, give me it. I, I'm always picking up things for gags. <laughs> that's why everybody calls me gimmick. Oh, so that's just your way of calling me a rat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There ain't no law against that, Wilson. I, I can't be pinched for pulling a gag. <laughs> give me it, huh? Give me it back. Why do you want it back? It's nothing but a little toy mouse gimmick with a squeaker in it. A little whistle that squeaks. If you press it like... Wait a minute. Don't squeeze that rat, Wilson. Why not? Here, you take it. No. You press it, gimmick. Suppose you see if it squeaks. No, no, keep it away. Keep it away from me. You, 
It's loaded. Loaded, loaded. With what? High explosive. It'll tear us to pieces. So it is a deadly booby trap, a murderous little hand grenade in the body of a rubber mouse. Yeah, yeah. Take it away. Take it away. Put, put it down. I know. Loaded. And send it to me. Yeah, put it down. I fixed it. It'll blow if you drop it. Put it down. All right. You can stop backing away. Okay, Callahan. Nice going, Steve. We've got all we need. But put that mouse down on the desk. Easy. And for heaven's sake, don't squeak that right. Well, why not? Callahan, it served its purpose. It's nothing but a harmless substitute copy of the one your thumb squat boys took to headquarters. Wilson, you tricky slug, you pulled a yak on me. Yes, gimmick. Uh, would you like to hear this one squeak now? Hey, don't, don't, don't. Yes, Steve. Don't. Put that thing down, slow and easy. Well, why should I put it down, Callahan? Because my bomb squad boys made a mistake. They got them rubber rats mixed up when they repacked the box for you. They did what? Yeah. The one they took to headquarters was the Dutt. And this one is the McCoy, still loaded with high explosives that would have gone off if I had squeaked it? Yeah, Steve. To to quote and unquote, lay that squeaker down, Steve. Just lay that deadly squeaker down. Well, friends, we all make mistakes. I almost made a fatal one with that squeaking rat. As far as the vicious gimmick, he received a stiff sentence for attempted murder, and by treacherously turning state's evidence, sent Lawler to prison for criminal conspiracy. How about next week's story, Steve? Well, next Tuesday, there'll be quite a different kind of story from the front pages of the Illustrated Press, and headlined... The Lonely Heart. But here's Lorelei with another up-to-the-date bit of news item. Friends, you've heard tonight how Life Boy gets skin cleaner in your daily bath, keeps you fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Now, I'd like to suggest that you try Life Boy Health Soap in the big new bath size. Bath size Life Boy is generous and luxurious. And that lather, it's so mild and refreshing. I love it. And I know you'll love it, too. Just ask for the new bath size life boy. Thank you and good night. Friends, if you'd like to see what the cast of Big Town and their real counterparts look like, see the exciting story in the April 12th issue of Look Magazine, now on the newsstand. The current issue of Look is complete with pictures of Big Town's leading characters and their real life doubles. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Laurel I. Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Wiest, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Extra big town, extra. He's all about the lonely heart club expose. Extra big town, extra. Welcome to our Big Town Lonely Hearts Club, my dear. Come in and say goodbye to loneliness. Why not stay here at our club, Mrs. Adams? I promise you won't be lonely anymore. Please let me leave this place. Let me go. Please let me out of this horrible place. Please. 
Yes, listen to this up-to-the-minute story of one of the oldest rackets in the world, The Victimizing of Lonely Hearts, another dramatic expose brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. Another headline story of Steve Wilson, fighting editor of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, Hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's story of the Lonely Heart. A great city can be a very lonely place. Thousands, young and old, disconsolate and lost, seek friendship, companionship, or romance and find happiness. But the helping hand can also lead the Lonely Heart to tragedy despair, and death. Such is the background of Steve Wilson's story that began as a young girl rang the bell of a large brownstone house in the once fashionable section of Big Town. Good afternoon, young lady. Welcome to our friendly little club. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I'm looking for someone who... I understand. We are all looking for someone, friends, companionship. You've come to the right place, my dear. Come in, come in. I, I hope so. For, well, you see, I... Don't, don't try to explain, my dear. I understand. Please come in the parlor, and I'll tell you how our little club works. I'm sure you want to join, meet all of our members. Oh, but I, I don't want to join your club. I'm looking for someone who did several months ago. My aunt. Oh, your aunt? Yes. She came to Big Town last fall from upstate. What is your aunt's name? Agatha Adams. Agatha Adam. Yes. Oh, Aunt Agatha stayed at a hotel for a couple of months, but, but got lonesome and, and wrote she was thinking of joining some club. Did she say which club? Well, I think she mentioned your club. I, I didn't save a letter, but I'm sure. I'm afraid you're mistaken, my dear. No one by that name has ever been a member of our little club. Oh, but I'm sure. I, I remember the name and the address. You are mistaken. I am in charge. I know every member, past and present. No one by the name of Agatha Adams ever joined or lived in this house. Oh, but well, perhaps she used some other name. She, she was so shy. She was my father's sister and never married and, and cared for me until I went away to school. And, and then she felt lost and, and useless and came to Big Town. And... Yes, yes. An old, old story, my dear. But I'm sure she did not come to us. Well, how can you be so sure? We investigate our members very carefully. Their background, reputation, financial responsibility. Oh, but, and Agatha had money quite a lot. And, that's another reason I'm worried. Why I came to Big Town to find her. Why are you worried? Has she written you letters? Oh, no, I, I haven't heard from her since she moved out of her hotel. Have you inquired at the hotel? Yes. She must have left an address. No, she didn't. I inquired. Some man came for her things and paid her hotel bill and, and left no forwarding address. My dear young woman, you're wasting my time. But I, I must find my aunt. Why? She sounds like a mature woman of sense and independence. She wanted to see you or hear from you. She would write. Yes, but she always wrote me regularly until two months ago. People change. She's probably found new friends, new, new interests. But she hasn't even written her lawyer. Why, we've heard nothing. Don't, don't even know if she's alive, except for the checks. Checks? What checks? Why, the checks she's endorsed almost every week for larger and larger amounts. Checks? For how much? Almost $10,000. 10000 Almost half of all she has are... I'm sure something's wrong. Something's happened. Young woman, I don't like your insinuations. This is a respectable club. And I tell you, your aunt is not here. She was never a member, and I must ask you to leave this house. Oh, but, but couldn't I stay here a few days while I look for her? No, this is not a hotel. We have no room. If you want my advice, I suggest you go back home and wait until your Aunt Agatha sees fit to get in touch with you. Good afternoon. Oh, please, couldn't you give me a list of other clubs? No, good afternoon. Goodbye. Dear dumb Dora, that was a stupid way to handle that inquisitive young woman. Shut up, Mal, you double-crossing swine. Easy on the names, my dear. I have a few for you. But when thieves fall out, the profits fly out the window. They've been flying into your pocket, you dirty dog. Consider the compliment returned. What's sticking in your craw? Checks. Checks? Yes. You've been able to get that dopey Agatha Adams to sign $10,000 worth, and all I've seen is a measly grand. Oh, that. Yes, that. I was saving it for a surprise, a sort of uh, 
anniversary present on the completion of our first year of service to the cause of lonely hearts in Big Town. Save that corny line for the lonesome suckers. I want my share now. We're going to have to get out of here quick. Nonsense. Why should we beat it? Look through the glass curtain of the door. Huh? That girl's gone across the street. She's sitting on a bench in the square, watching this house. That's because your stupid behavior made her suspicious. How would you have handled it, mastermind? Not by practically throwing her out. She is watching the house. The upper windows. You better get upstairs and see that Agatha Adams doesn't get out of bed and crawl to the window. Ah, not a chance. She's weak as a kitten. You better go up and give her another treatment so she won't disturb any club members who drop in this evening. All right. But what are we going to do about that girl? I'm going out the back way to the alley. Watch that girl. See where she goes. What she does. She's liable to go to the cops, the missing persons bureau. They're liable to come here with a search warrant. That'll take time. If she goes to the police station, I'll call you. Get Agatha ready to leave. She's so weak she can't walk. We'll take her in a cart in the station wagon. Where? Out to the cottage up the river. Then what? Suppose she dies on us. Quit jittering. So what if she dies? That won't be the first one. Now get upstairs and get her ready. You wait a minute now. You give me my share of the 10000 you got out of her already. Hey, what's the matter? Don't you trust me, Dora? Like a rattlesnake. I told you to take it easy on names. Oh. Now, <laughs> go take care of Aunt Agatha while I go see what we've got to do about her nosy little niece. <laughs> Oh, sit down, Miss Adams. I'm only too glad to have a chance to help a friend of my old boss. He was city editor of this paper when I was a cub reporter. Yes, he, he told me. How is Bill Green? Oh, just fine, Mr. Wilson. Is he still publishing the best weekly newspaper in the country, except during the trout and hunting season? Well, yes, Miss Kilburn, and, and he asked me to tell you, Mr. Wilson, to be sure and come up for the trout fishing. Well, I'm going to try to make it, Miss Adams, but now about your Aunt Agatha. Oh, I'm frightened, Mr. Wilson. Really frightened. As I told you over the phone, I'm... I'm sure that woman knows something about my aunt. Lorelei, mm -hmm. what did you get out of our morgue file on that heart club on South Square? The morgue? Oh, Mr. Wilson, you don't think my aunt is dead? Oh, no, Miss Adams. Our newspaper morgue is a file of clippings and information on all kinds of persons and subjects. Oh, I see. What do we have on that club, Lorelei? Oh, nothing, Steve, except it's run by a Mr. and Mrs. Dean. It's either on the up and up, as most of them are, or it's managed to keep out of trouble and the papers. Yes, you see, Miss Adams... There are many such clubs in big cities, founded for the purpose of fostering companionship and friendships, even romance, between lonely persons who have no other way of meeting. Oh, I know, and, and I don't want to make trouble for anyone who is trying to do something good and, and kind. That's why I haven't gone to the police, but oh, that place, that, that woman frightens me. She, she seemed to want to get rid of me and told me to go home. Miss Adams, what about those checks you mentioned? Does the bank in your hometown suspect forgery? No, Mr. Wilson. They say my aunt's signature is genuine, but her monthly statements sent to the hotel here in Big Town have been returned because, well, they have no forwarding address. And you've heard nothing from her? No, no, not for two months. Not since she wrote me she was moving to that club on South Square. Are you sure the address was South Square? Yes. That much I remember for certain, but what can I do, Mr. Wilson? Oh, just a minute, Miss Adams. Laura Lyne? Yes, dear. How would you like to join this Lonely Hearts Club? Oh, golly, yes, Steve. That'd be one way of getting in and finding out what's going well, on. You'll have to dress the part. You don't look like a girl. It would ever be very lonely. Thanks, but a reporter's job doesn't give a gal time. And a little soap on the paint job and a severe hairdo will turn me into a plain Jane with a heart just aching for companionship. Oh, but Mrs. Kilburn, I, I can't let you do this. Well, why not? Well, because, well, there's something else I haven't told you. Oh? What's that, Miss Adams? Oh. After I left the square and phoned you, I... I think I was followed. Followed by that woman? No, no, by a, a man, a tall, good-looking man. Well, you're an attractive young woman, Miss Adams. But he didn't try to pick me up, Mr. Wilson. He, he didn't come near me. He just followed me. He watched me. Did he follow you here, to the press office? Yes, but he, he didn't come in the building. That does it, Lorelei. I think you better stay here, Lorelei. And Miss Adams... I'll go along with Miss Kilburn. Oh, but, Steve, it'd be a dead giveaway if we went there together. Yes, but I don't like the looks of this. 
And I don't think you'd better go to that house alone. Well, well, then let me take Harry to Hack. He can hang around the square and keep an eye on the house while I get the lowdown and the setup. All right. Well, I pick up Harry and get down there. Uh, will you be here in case I get anything? No. Give me a good description of your shadow, Miss Adams. Well, he's tall and dark, and wearing a tan hat and, and tweed suit and, and a sporty-looking polo coat. Well, that'll be enough. You'd make a good reporter, Miss Adams. I'll wait here in my office, Miss Adams. Come on, Lorelei. If that man is still waiting, I think he'll also lead me to the house on South Square. Let's go. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy health soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and tonight's headline racket expose of the Lonely Heart. While Steve Wilson follows another lead on an elderly woman who has vanished in Big Town, Lorelei is on her way to a social club in the cab of Harry the Hack. South Square coming up, Miss Kilpine. Uh, you want me to drop you in front of this here now so-called heartache club? Uh, yes, Harry, but don't wait. Cruise around and keep an eye on the house. Jack, I'll roll around through the back alley and scout the layout in case of contingencies. All right, Harry, and keep an eye open for Steve tailing that character in the tan polo coat we spotted in front of the press office. Right, he looks like a sharp operator. Here you are. What's cooking? Uh, I think they've got Miss Adams' aunt in a vicious swindle. Uh-oh. In which case, watch your step and holler if you need any help of a knock and knock can nature. Thanks, Harry. I'll be careful. Uh, you better get going. Okay, I'll be around. Uh, front room curtains moved. My arrival has been duly noted. And I shouldn't have to wait. Don't I go into my act. Uh, good evening. Good evening. What can I do for you? Why, I heard about your friendship group, and I thought I'd like to see your club. Oh? Who told you about our club? We don't advertise. Well, I was dining alone in a restaurant the other night, and I heard a couple talking. They'd met here, and they seemed so happy together, and I thought... I'm sorry, young woman. We don't take anyone unless they are recommended by someone we know. Oh, but I could give you references. I have a very good job. I'm sorry, we take in very few young people, and you'd find it quite expensive. Oh, but I'd be willing to pay. I have money, a small inheritance. Oh, I see. That makes quite a difference. Come in, come in. Thanks. Uh, why should it make a difference? We have to be careful of our reputation. Young girls looking for wealthy men to marry can cause us a lot of trouble. Oh, I understand. And I'm just looking for companionship. Intellectual companionship. Uh, perhaps someone who likes good music. Yes, you look the type. We have several gentlemen who just like good music. But first, your references. Oh, yes. I work for a publishing house. I write. You write what? Oh, sort of true stories about people. Oh, confessions? Yes. Sometimes you might call them just that, if I can get the true facts. Just a moment, young lady. Hello? Yes? What? Are you sure? How soon? I don't wait. I can manage. In ten minutes. Park the station wagon in the alley and I'll have everything ready to go. 
I'm sorry, miss. I don't think we care to have any writers as members of our club. Oh, but I wouldn't write about... I'm sorry. Try some other club. I'm very busy. Goodbye. Just a minute. You wouldn't be busy getting rid of one of your present members, would you? What do you mean by that? What kind of an act have you been putting on? What kind of act are you putting on in this plush trap for the lovelorn? Just who are you and why are you here? I'm Lorelai Kilburn, and I do work for Steve Wilson, the newspaper editor. Newspaper? Yes, and I am a writer, a crime reporter. Crime reporter? Yes, and by your actions, it looks like I've come to the right place. What are you talking about? What crime are you talking about? Didn't your partner in the polo coat just phone you that Mary Adams went to the Illustrated Press? Didn't he just tell you that you had to get Agatha Adams out of this house? Why, you nosy little twist. Where is Agatha Adams? There's nobody by that name here. Well, there won't be in another few minutes if you and your partner can manage to get her out of here. Now, get out of the way. I'm going up the stairs. Oh, no, you don't. Let's go, Mrs. Dean. Like nothing. See? You're big, but I happen to know a little about judo, and in that kind of contest, the bigger you come, the harder you'll fall. Now, get out of the way. No, you don't, Kilborn. You don't. Nosy little newspaper fool button in here. Now we've got to get out of here. Get out of here quick. Hey, boss. Mr. Wilson. Yes, Harry. Where's uh, Lorelei? In that house around on the square. You, uh, you telling the station wagon that just pulled in the alley a minute ago? Yes, Harry. The driver is the man in the polo coat who followed Miss Adams to the press office. That's what I figured. What's he up to? I don't know. I trailed him from the press office to the garage where he picked up that station wagon. I think he spotted me because he made a phone call and tried to shake me in traffic before he cut back here. Well, you sure got him cornered in that alley, boss. Oh, how so, Harry? That's a blind alley running behind the houses on the square. He's got to come back out this way with that suburbia jalop. That's a lucky break, Harry. Where's your hack? Uh, parked right over there across the street. Perfect. Drive in that alley and block this exit. Don't let that station wagon out of there until I can get into that house and see what's going on. Fear not, boss. And if that polo quarter poor cat comes out and gives me argument, I will restrain him with my trusty knock and knock. No, Harry. We have no proof he's involved in anything criminal and no right to stop him if we had. Just block the alley. Keep him from rolling that station wagon until we can find out if Agatha Adams is in that house. <laughs> Where's Agatha Adams? Why haven't you... Hey! Who's that girl on the floor? A newspaper reporter, you dumb smart Alex. What's he doing here? Why have you taped her up? She's here looking for Agatha Adams. What brought her here? Adams' niece went to the newspaper office and spotted you following her, you stupid dope. Well, all right, leave her there on the floor. Let's get Agatha Adams and get out of here, quick. Never mind that dopey old dame. Get your things. we got to get out of town fast. Miss Kilborn Dane said somebody was trailing you. Yeah, I know. That's why I phoned you to get ready. I shook the guy in traffic, but he may come here. Come on, let's get going. Where's that money you got from that Adams dame? I got it. You'll get yours. I'll say I will, and I want it Wait now. Wait a minute. The door. Maybe that guy that trailed me. It'll be this Kilborn dame's boss, an editor called Steve Wilson. Wilson, the racket buster. So that's who's been tailing me. He works with the cops. He'll call him if he doesn't get in. He'll call him anyway if he gets in and finds this lippy Kilborn dame, and she tells what she knows. Let's beat it out the back. No, no, no. We gotta have time to get out of town. How are we gonna get it? Let him in. Stall him till I can get this girl out of the way. And get set to take him. Wait a minute. With what? You ain't using no gun and getting me mixed up in no murder. Shut up! Go stall him, then bring him in here. These fire tongs will cut him down to size and shut him up till we can get out of the state. You better hope. Get that Kilborn dame in the back room and get set. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm coming. Yes? What is it? Good afternoon. Are you, Mrs. Jean? Get here. The idea you're pushing your way into this club. Let's call it bad manners. Where is Miss Kilburn? I don't know any Miss Kilburn, and this is a private residence. It's a club, then licensed as a public boarding house, and I want to see one of your residents. Who do you want to see? I intend to find Miss Kilburn, one of my reporters who came in here a few minutes ago. Oh, a girl reporter. Why didn't you say so? Where is she? Right in the sitting room, just down the hall, interviewing my husband. Good. I want to ask him a few questions myself. Go right ahead, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure he'll be glad to see you. Walk right in. He has an answer for all your questions. Step right this way. (laughs) 
Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy health soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he enters the parlor of a so-called Lonely Hearts Club in search of Lorelei Kilburn in tonight's racket expose headlined, The Lonely Heart. After you. Go right ahead, Mr. Wilson. Your reporter, Miss Kilburn, is in the parlor interviewing my husband about our little club. Thank you, but I think you'd better come along with me, Mrs. Dean. Why should I? I'm busy. I have to get things ready for our club meeting tonight. That can wait. After you, Mrs. Dean. Very well. But you've no right to come crashing in here and ordering us around. Malcolm. Yes, my dear daughter. This is Mr. Wilson of the Illustrated Press. He wants to ask you a few questions about our club. Why, certainly. Come in, Mr. Wilson. Thanks very much. But first, where is my reporter, Miss Kilburn? Miss Kilburn? Yes, I told him she was here, Malcolm, interviewing you about our club. Oh, yes, of course. Her name slipped my mind. Where is Miss Kilburn? Why, she's gone upstairs to interview some of our resident members. Uh, won't you sit down and wait? No, thank you. Do you mind telling me what you're doing with those fire tongs, Mr. Dean? Fire tongs? Oh, I was about to build a fire in uh, a fireplace. It's getting rather chilly in here. Yes, very chilly. What have you done to Miss Kilburn? Where is she? I told you, she's upstairs. Upstairs with Agatha Adams? I don't know what you're talking about. Grab him, Dora. Hold him. No, no. Now. Why, you murderous rat. That was meant for me. And there's a good chance you killed your wife with those fire tongs. I'll, I'll kill you for nosing into my business. Your racket. A filthy racket of preying on lonely men and women. Now, where's Miss Kilburn? Where is Agatha Adams? Right here in this house, but you're not going to get out of here. Phone the cops or send me to prison. Prison is too good for you, Dean. And if your wife dies, you'll be lucky if you don't go to the chair. If I go, it'll be for smashing your head. Not telegraphing your punches like that. Now, where's Miss Kilburn? Where you're going to be when I get through with you. All right, let's see. Come in. Come in here, Harry. Holy moly, boss. What a wreck, Chang. And boy, are you beat up. I'm, I'm all right, Harry. Hey, who's, who's the dame on the floor? And a uh, gory gent laying in the corner like a, a corpus stalacti. Yeah. The management of this rat trap, Harry. And uh, where's Miss Kilbane? Open that other door, Harry. She may be in the back room. Oh, just to take it easy, boss. You took quite a beat in taking that guy. Hey, she's here, boss, on the floor, taped up like a mummy. Is she all right, Terry? Well, her eyes are open and snapping like snapping titles, so I guess she's okay. Wait till I get this tape off her mouth. Harry, is, is Steve all right? Where is he? Right here, my lovely. Oh. Are you hurt? Well, my dignity is hurt and my professional rep ruined, and I'll never live this down. Get the tape off my hands and feet, will you, Harry? Sure thing. Halt still. Oh, well, be careful of my nylons. 
Have you found Agatha Adams, Steve? No, Laura, but she's here in this house. She must be upstairs. Oh, the poor woman. I wonder what they've done to her. Phone Callahan of Homicide as soon as Harry gets you on tape, Laura. I'll go upstairs and get the Lady of the Lonely Heart. Well, friends, we found Agatha Adams and most of her money. They treated her pretty rough, but she recovered and was happily reunited with her niece. As for the lonely heart racketeers, Dora Dean didn't die, but she and her husband were paid with long sentences to prison, thus ending a vicious racket that made a mockery of thousands of real friendship and lonely hearts clubs, clubs which honestly and sincerely operated to fill the aching void of loneliness so many find in big cities or in any other place. How about next week, Steve? Well, let's hear from our narrator, Dwight Weist, on that news item, Lorelei. Okay, Dwight, go to press. Right, Lorelei. But first, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Uh, say, Dwight. Yes, Lorelei. Dwight, I want to tell the women about that purifying ingredient of Life Boy's. That's what makes Life Boy milder, so safe and gentle. Yes, friends, and it's the reason Life Boy keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you when other soaps fail. It's one more reason why today Life Boy is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Get Life Boy health soap right away. Next week, another big town story concerns a real threat to the freedom of the press, and it's headlined, The Iron Fist. Tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilburn. Special sound for tonight's show was created by NBC soundmen John Powers and Chester Hill. And The Lonely Heart was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weist, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. in our mother tongue, but it fights only for loyalty to America, our adopted land. Listen, Anton Groda, you will do as you are told to do. You will take orders, or we come to see you. All right. You've beaten my father almost to death, but his paper still goes to press tomorrow. Yes, listen to this timely story of the courage of a loyal editor of a small foreign language newspaper of Big Town, brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. Hear this exciting adventure of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the press as he goes to the aid of a fellow editor in defense of his newspaper creed that stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance, violence, and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's headline story of the Iron Fist. Symbol of brute force and violence, the power of the Iron Fist is the issue behind Steve Wilson's story for tonight, 
which began not in the city room of the Illustrated Press, a great metropolitan daily paper, but in the tiny office of Anton Broda, editor, publisher, printer, and sometimes delivery boy of a small foreign language weekly. We should be proud of our European heritage, but our first loyalty should be to our adopted land, America. Ah, never will I be able to think good editorials on the typewriter. An old dog, you cannot teach new tricks. Yeah, Anton Broda speaking. Hello, Pop. Are you still up? Yes, my son. Tomorrow the paper must go out as always, and my editorial is not finished. You're killing yourself, Pop. You can't get the paper out alone. Listen, let me come downtown and help you. No, no, Jefferson, my son. Your college education you must get. You must learn much, become a thinker like your great namesake, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> I'm trying hard, Pop. But you sure gave me a tough name to live up to. Yeah, but here in this free land, everything is possible, my son. Nothing impossible. You, because you are born in America, could even be president. Yeah, but that's one tough job these days, Pop. Oh, say, did you hear President Truman speaking a few minutes ago? Yeah, and his message I must also translate and put into paper for tomorrow. It is true we must all buy bonds, keep America strong financially, strong in faith and hope for the future. All must share in our government, support it, and in buying bonds, save for the bright, happy future, which is the inalienable right of free people only. Yeah, Pop, but that idea is going to burn a few of your readers. They don't want America to be strong enough to stand up for what we believe is right. Uh, it does not matter, Jeff. Uh, they are only the very few, the misguided ones. We must show the truth. Some of them don't want the truth, Pop. Have you had any more threats? Yeah, but all my life I've had threats. Blackhand letters from those who hate the truth. Watch your step, Pop. These babies do more than write letters. Remember, they kill the editor of another foreign language paper here in Big Town? I know... But they could not kill his ideas, my son. Yeah, but I've only got one, Pop, and I want you to live to see me graduate. <laughs> Even if you don't want to stick around until I get to be president. Uh, so go back to your studies, Jeff. Do not worry. I will be careful. I will live to see you graduate with honors and be proud I have given a good son to America. You're quite a guy yourself. Good night, Pop. Good night, my son. God bless you and keep you. Good evening, Broda. Good evening, madam. Come in. What can I do for you? Plenty, as they say here in America. Come in, Hammer. We are invited. Close the door. That's good. It's better to be invited. In. Lock the door. We do not want to be interrupted. What is this? Who are you? Do not get up from your desk, Editor Broda. You will want to write what we tell you to write. Yes, and if you don't, you won't have so far to fall to the floor. So they are tired of telephoning threats. They are tired of writing letters penned with poison. Who are they? Those few people blindly loyal to our enslaved homeland instead of to their adopted You're land. Why? It is an imperialistic lie. Save the dialectics, Hammer. It is plain the line would be wasted on him. He would never be a convert we could trust because he would insist upon thinking. Then why are we wasting time? Because this time we are not going to make of him a martyr to his ideas. There are enough already, enough graves to hold your doctrines of violence, terror, and fear. But enough here left to silence you, Mr. Broder. Please to begin, Hammer. You are fools if you think a beating with that chain wrapped around your fist will silence me. Ah, oh, but such a beating you have never had before, Broder. I am expert. Are you ready? I made the choice to be ready always. Long ago. Good. Let us begin! Steve, Steve, has City Desk called you? No, Lola, what's up? Your old friend and fellow editor, Anton Broda, has been beaten up. Good grief. I've been afraid it would happen. He was given the iron cyst treatment. What are his chances, Laura? Fair, but he'll be in the hospital a long time. According to the police report, he was given professional treatment. The slugger knew how to maim without killing. Did the police get the slugger? No, not even a lead. And his enemies have silenced Broda for quite a while, unless his son Jeff can get the paper out. Young Jeff, good grief, that's right. He could do it with a little help. I phoned Broda's office. Jeff's there. His father wouldn't let him go to the hospital with him. Wanted Jeff to get back to law school. Yes, that's been Anton's great ambition for his boy. Well, he's going to have to wait. Jeff says he's quitting school, going to keep the paper going and track down those who beat his father. Oh, isn't there something we can do, Steve? Yes, Laura, Light. two things. I want you to go down and help Jeff get that paper out while I track down the murderous swine who think they can silence the man who is fighting our fight. (laughs) 
Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, Get Skin Cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy health soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and tonight's timely headline story of the Iron Fist. While Steve Wilson hunts the hoodlums who have beaten the editor of a small foreign language newspaper, Lorelei Kilburn has been assigned to help the editor's son get out the weekly paper. Tonight, the cowards have beaten my father, your editor, almost dead. Oh, it's no use, Miss Kilburn. I'm studying to be a lawyer, not a writer like my father. The thoughts and anger are all in my mind, but I can't put them into words. All right, Jeff. Dictate what you want to say. I'll take it down in shorthand, type it out, and then you can translate it. Even that I can't do well anymore, Miss Kilburn. We of the second generation in America have almost lost the power to use our parents' mother tongue. Oh, that's a shame, Jeff. You should be proud of your parents' language and heritage, which, which has contributed so much to the greatness of America. Not blindly and arrogantly proud any more than any of us, foreign or native-born, should be blindly and arrogantly proud of America. I know. All his life, my father's preached that to the readers of this little paper. And he's made a lot of good citizens. But now, lately have come among my father's people here in Big Town a few fanatics and hirelings preaching hatred and destruction of free people everywhere. There are only a few, Jeff. But what can we do against such methods, Miss Kilburn? How can we fight this thing without violence, without becoming as they, savages, animals, beasts? They walked in here and silenced my father. Beat him almost to death. Oh, that's steady, Jeff. Your father's a tough old fighter. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. What about Mr. Wilson? Do you think he can get a lead on those devils who put Pop in the hospital? He's trying, Jeff. He's working with the police. Oh, that may be Steve now. Will you take it? See if I can't write this editorial? We've got to hurry if the paper's going to be ready tomorrow. We'll get it out. Hello, Officer Banton Broda, editor and publisher. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, hold everything, Jeff. There's a woman on the wire who hates parrots. Listen carefully. And tell Anton Broder's son to get out of that newspaper office of stupid lies or he would go to the hospital like his stupid father. Sorry, I'm probably too stupid to be able to give him the message. Would you like to talk to him in person? No, just tell him. And who are you? Oh, just call me Stupid Kilborn, a stupid crime reporter for the stupid big town Illustrated Press. The Illustrated Press? What are you doing at Broder's newspaper? Mr. Broder happens to be an old friend of my editor, Steve Wilson. Besides, in America, we downtrodden newspaper folk have a habit of sticking together. And if you care to give us your present address, we'll be right over, period. Stupid swine. You know, your command of the English language seems to be as limited as your understanding of the American people, even those of your own nationality. I am of no nationality. I am a citizen of the world. Whose world? We'd all like to be part of one world. We want it to be everybody's world, not one run with clubs and an iron fist. You will know more than the Iron Fist if you are not out of that newspaper office in ten minutes. For ten minutes? What's going to happen here in ten minutes? In ten minutes, it will not matter to you. You're talking as if you left something here. Yes. It uh, wouldn't just happen to be a good old-fashioned time bomb, would it? Yes. And it is hidden where you will not find it in time. Aren't you getting soft-hearted by warning us and soft-headed risking our tracing this phone call? No. I am telephoning from a public place. And the time is not yet when we are ready to kill off the stupid fools who oppose us. Thanks. That's big of you. Jeff, start taking this place apart. There's a time bomb somewhere set to go off in about ten minutes. I look and hang up on that woman and get out of here, Miss Silver. Not on your life. Hello, are you still on the line waiting for the sound of the explosion, or have you run out of nickels? You stupid little fool, get out. Go 
back to your illustrated press. No, thanks. But I hope you don't mind if I hang up now. I've got to help young Jeff Broder find your bomb before it goes boom. Broder's place as ordered, boy. Thanks, Harry. Wait here. I want to see how Lorelei and young Jeff Broder are making out with the paper. Hey, boss. Look who's here. The blind gypsy. Yes. I wonder what she's doing around here this late at night. Uh, not taking in any dough for her plan. That's a cinch. The block is deserted. But being blind, maybe she don't know that. She knows, Harry. The gypsy may be blind, but there's very little goes on in this section of Big Town that she doesn't hear. Maybe she's heard something about the knuckle goons, what must up Broder. I rather think that's exactly why she's here, Harry. Wait a minute. Gypsy. Gypsy. Who calls? Who calls me? The voice I seem to know. Who calls me? Steve Wilson, Gypsy, a newspaper friend of Anton Broder. Oh, yes. You helped the street players win the racketeers, tried to shake us down for a share of... What little we get for bringing music in these streets. Well, I was able to help you, Gypsy, because you and your friends, the street singers, weren't afraid of our homegrown racket rats. Now I'm trying to help Anton Broder and his son fight some imported rats. Oh, yes, I know, Mr. Wilson. Oh, you have been asking many questions in the streets tonight. Do you know anything, Gypsy? Have you heard anything? I know that a strange man and woman came here to Anton Broder's office tonight. A man and a woman. Yes, the man is but a dumb animal, but beware of the woman. I'll be glad to be aware of her if I can find her. Gypsy. Steve, Steve, come here quick. Oh, just a minute, Gypsy. Yes, what is it, Laura? We just had a phone call, a warning about a time bomb planted in the office. Well, good grief and get out of here. Where's Jeff Broder? In the back room. He found it near the press. Good heavens, he's liable to get himself blown up. Stay here. Oh, now, wait, Steve. He's taken it out in the back alley. I, I phoned the bomb squad. No, we're lucky. It won't do much damage if it explodes in the alley. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. You just missed some excitement. Yeah, so I hear it. And you just missed having your head blown off, Jeff. Yeah, and how? Steve, they're really beginning to play rough. Did you get a lead on them? I think I have a lead, Laura La Gypsy. Yes, Mr. Wilson. The name of the woman you would like to know. I'd appreciate it very much, Gypsy. The woman I could not see, but the voice I shall never forget. Take me to a place called... The blue samovar. I think I shall be able to point her out. Good, Gypsy. Now let me help you into Harry's hack. Stay here, Lauren and I, Jeff. Tell the police what happened. Then phone Callahan of homicide. Have him meet me at the blue samovar. <laughs> Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy Health Soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he watches the exit of a smoke-filled basement cabaret in the foreign section. Watches for a man and woman who have beaten Anton Broder, editor of a small foreign-language newspaper. 
happened. I phoned Inspector Callahan to come here and left Jeff Broder to report on that explosion to the bomb squad. Good. I hope Callahan gets here before that woman and her imported bruiser come out. How will you know them? And what's Gypsy doing standing there playing? Well, Gypsy went to the cabaret a few minutes ago, Laurel. I wandered around from table to table, playing her violin. She heard them talking, recognized their voices. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, if they come out before Callahan gets here, Laurel, I want you to keep out of whatever happens. Well, I won't promise. What are you going to do? And Gypsy's going to stop playing the moment she hears their voices. Fine, but how are you going to keep them here until Callahan arrives? We have no proof they're responsible for the beating of Anton Broda and the planting of that time bomb. No, but I think we'll have it before I get through with the little act Gypsy and I have prepared for the occasion. Come, Hammer. Enough of the laughter of these heedless donkeys who do not know their days are short. There they are, Lana Line. Now, here's where Gypsy and I go into our act. Catch every word of it. Oh, wait, friends. Cross my palm with silver, and I will give you music to gladden your heart. Get away, you Gypsy beggar with no time for music. Then give me but a stone, and I will tell thy foul future. Get out of our way, you stupid Gypsy fool. Wait, wait. To, to stop that. Who are you? It does not matter. You are stupid fools. You have been sent here to big town on important business. You will make mistakes. After the mistake. Now you make a stupid scene in the streets. Do you not know we have local stooges for that? Who are you to talk to us like you that? You will find out soon enough. Anton Broder's newspaper, you will not cite in Stephen for a day. You fail in your mission. And as you well know, failure is the unforgivable sin. We have not failed. We will silence Broder and his son if the young fool is still alive. Why should he not be alive? Because we have left a time bomb in his press room. That by now has blown up his newspaper. You're boasting, telling lies. So many lies you have been trained to tell you can no longer speak the truth. It is the truth. The truth, you hear? The truth. Good, I believe you. And the gentleman getting out of that car will be glad to hear you've admitted it in front of witnesses. Hello, Callahan. Hello, Steve. Are these two our out-of-town visitors? Yes. Did you bring the keys to the city? The keys to a couple of pair of handcuffs. And I'll throw them away if you have enough to hold them for that beating and bombing. Well, Gypsy, Laura, and I and myself as witnesses to their free confession, Inspector. Inspector? The police? Yes, and don't turn around and run. Our police officers don't enjoy having to shoot escaping prisoners in the back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tendency to say it can't happen here, but watch your daily newspapers. Listen to your radio news broadcasts. Ask some of the thousands of loyal, foreign-born American citizens if they do not know of such cases where cruel and terrible pressure has been applied to force them into a divided loyalty. Help them all you can. They need our support, sympathy, understanding, our strength, for it is the hope of a free world. Thank you. We all echo that, Steve. And I, for one, am going to buy all the bonds I can. How about you, Dwight? And I'll echo those sentiments, Lorelei. Government bonds are the best possible way of saving for future security. Not only our country's security, but also the personal security and happiness that comes from having a safe nest egg ready for that vacation or the many, many things that we want to buy. Say, Steve, there's Joe, your copy boy, with something on his mind. Yes, what uh, is on your mind, Joe? Say, Mr. Wilson. Yes, Joe? I've been practicing writing a news story, Mr. Wilson. Will you look at this? Doctors prove amazing results. Life Boy Health Soap gets skin cleaner found a true fact. Don't say true fact, Joe. Say true or a fact. Not both. If it's true, it's a fact. And it is, Joe. A daily Life Boy bath does get skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you when other soaps fail. And here's another fact, Joe. Life Boy today is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. That's right, folks. Get Life Boy health soap right away and ask for the big new bath size cake at your store. Next Tuesday, another newspaper story of a killer stalked by a tiger in the heart of Big Town and headlined The Hunter. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. 
Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilburn. The special music of the Gypsy was played by Miss Edith Laurent, world-famous conductor and concert violinist who has just returned from a European tour. And tonight's story of the Iron Fist was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weiss, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC. Extra big town. Tiger slays captor in private zoo. Extra big town. Extra. <laughs> Look at her, June. My tigress is jealous of you. Stop tormenting the poor beast, Leo. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Tigress is jealous of you, June. Jealous of my wife. No, she's just hungry. You're starving her to make her vicious. No, she's hungry for freedom. Jealous. Full of hate. Yes, hear this tense and dramatic big town story of a wild beast and its captors, headlined The Hunter, and brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Bright Boy Health Soap. Another exciting adventure of Steve Wilson, fighting editor of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of violence and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, and guard it well. Now to Big Town and to an estate in its suburbs, an estate surrounded by a high steel fence, the gates of which are locked night and day. For in the center of its heavily wooded ground stands a group of cages housing a deadly assortment of wild animals from the four corners of the earth. Such is the scene of Steve Wilson's hair-raising story, headlined, The Hunter. Look, June, my dear. Look at my beautiful tigress. How she envies you your freedom. My freedom? Might as well be in that cage as confined to this wheelchair. Don't be bitter, my dear. It was your own fault that a mother mauled you before I could kill her on that last safari. Oh, I don't blame you for that accident in India. Yes, you do, my dear. You didn't want to go. You hate my big game hunting. You resent the money I spend bringing these wild, savage beauties back alive. Yes, I do. Because you're not like other hunters. You don't give them to museums and public parks. You keep them here to gloat over them. You let no one else see them. I am the true hunter, June. Leo, the king of the jungle. <laughs> they hate you. They all hate you. No, my dear, they fear me. They're all man-killers. But I am a match for any of them. Yes, as long as you keep them in cages. Oh, please roll me back to the house, Leo. I, I hate this place. Why, my dear? Are you afraid of my pets? Even in their cages? No. But I'm afraid of you when you're around them. Just what do you mean by that? You're different when you're down here with the animals. How so, June? Oh, you seem to change. You, you become like them, savage, full of hate. You're imagining things, June. I sometimes wonder if your unfortunate injury hasn't affected your oh, mind. Stop it, Leo. Push me back to the house or I'll wheel myself. You can't, June. Head up the steep path. Leo, take me back to the house or I'll call for Nanny. It's no good calling for that old fool nurse. Why not? I discharged her this morning. You, you got rid of Nanny? But why? She's much too bossy. Been with you too long. She forgets her place. The fact that she was a servant. She wasn't a servant. She was my mother's companion. She's been my nurse since I was a child. Yes, but she's old. She depresses you, my dear. You need a younger woman for a companion in your lonely hours in that wheelchair. I have arranged for an agency to send a young woman tomorrow. 
I don't want anyone else. I want Nanny back. This is her home as much as mine for as long as she lives. Do you understand? Yeah. Control yourself, June. You're upsetting my friend. I don't care. Oh, get rid of that tigress, Leo. Get rid of all these poor wild beasts. But get Nanny back here or I'll leave you. Leave me? Yes, I'll divorce you. <laughs> divorce me? And who would you name as the other woman? The tigress there? Are you jealous of her? No. Now listen to me, Leo. I will not share you with a lot of wild beasts. I will not finance any more expeditions into the jungle. I've had all I can stand. Very well, my dear. In that case, perhaps I'll have to turn my beauties loose. Stage one last safari on the grounds of your precious estate. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? How about it, my friends? Shall I turn you loose? All of you! Shall we hunt each other? Tonight! To the death! <laughs> Oh, judging by your tone of voice, an hour, a day, or a week. What's wrong, Laura? Something that's given me a horrible premonition. Will you come in Mr. Wilson's office, Miss Harding, please? Thank you, Mr. Kilburn. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? How do you do? Please have a seat, Miss Harding. Thank you. Miss Harding is, or rather was, the nurse and companion of June Stanton, the wife of Leo Stanton, the sportsman and big game hunter. Senior. Oh, yes. We've run quite a few stories on his exploits. Wasn't he kicked out of the Explorers Club last year? Yes, Steve, and he's been barred from several African wild game regions because he slaughtered so many wild animals just for the sake of killing. And they won't let him go back to India, Mr. Wilson. Why not? Because he killed a guide, almost caused an uprising of the natives. Is that why you've come to us, Miss Harding? No, Mr. Wilson. I've come to your newspaper for help because I believe that Leo Stanton means to murder my poor mistress, Miss June. Murder his wife? Well, in that case, this is a police matter, Miss Harding. I have gone to them, but I have no proof. They don't believe me because I've been discharged. They think I'm only being spiteful, trying to make trouble for Mr. Stanton. Well, why were you discharged? Because I've tried to protect my mistress, keep him from frightening her to death with those wild beasts he keeps in cages on the estate. Have you checked on this, Laura? Yes, Steve. Stanton has a private zoo, half a dozen animals, all dangerous. A gorilla, a black panther, two lions, and a young tigress. Tigress is the worst. Its mother crippled my mistress before Stanton shot it in India three years ago. He kept the cub in the house as a pet until it got too big, too dangerous. I see. But what makes you think your mistress is going to be murdered? Because Miss June is beginning to realize what a wild beast she married. She's threatened to divorce him and... Oh, no, he'll kill her rather than risk losing her money. Well, that is a very serious charge, Miss Harding. Are you quite sure. I have no proof, Mr. Wilson, but I am sure, desperately sure. I've done some fast checking, Steve. I'm convinced there's something ugly going on, and Miss Harding has given me a way of finding out what it is. Well, it's certainly worth investigating. How can you do it, Laura? Well, when Leo Stanton fired Miss Harding, he phoned an employment agency to send a younger woman out to the estate to be interviewed for the job of nurse and companion for his wife. Do you think you could get that job? I've arranged that for a consideration that will go on the expense account. Okay, how? The agency is sending me... Nice going, Laura. Even a few hours in the house might give you enough to call in the police if there is any immediate danger. There's only one cat, Steve. Leo Stanton doesn't want the new nurse and companion until tomorrow. That means June Stanton will be alone in that private zoo tonight. And poor Miss Joan ought to be left alone with him for a minute. She's helpless in that wheelchair. Do you think you could get the job today, Laura? I can try. I can go out there and say I didn't understand the appointment was for tomorrow. Yes, that might work, unless she has a special reason for not wanting anyone with his wife tonight. And that reason could be murder. And the quicker we find out, the better. All right, Laura, go ahead and see if you can get in and get the job. I'll, I'll phone you if I do. No, Laura, if there is anything to Miss Harding's fears, it might arouse Stanton's suspicions if you phone me. Oh, there is, Mr. Wilson. I know there is. He may try to murder Miss June tonight. Have you any idea how he might try to do it, Miss Harding? I don't know for sure, Mr. Wilson, but oh, I'm afraid he might even turn the animals loose. Well, in that case, Laura, I... You... Don't say I can't go. We can't leave that poor crippled girl alone in that place. No, we can't. You'd better get going, Lorelei, but be prepared for your boyfriend to call on you about 10 o'clock tonight. My, my boyfriend? Yes, yours truly, Steve Wilson, accompanied by his monkey wrench friend, Harry the Hack. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, 
Get Skin Cleaner stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy health soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei Kilburn in tonight's headline story of The Hunter. Checking on the strange story of an old and devoted family servant, Lorelei has gone to a suburban estate and applied for a job as nurse and companion of a crippled girl who may be marked for murder by her husband, who is now questioning Lorelei in the library. Very well, Miss Kilburn. Since the employment agency made a mistake, sent you out here tonight instead of tomorrow... You may as well stay. Oh, well, does that mean I get the job? I'm hired? Yes, you seem qualified. My poor wife, June, doesn't really need a trained nurse or a companion during the times I must be away. Are you away much, Mr. Stanton? Yes, for months at a time. I hunt big game. Oh, yes, I read about your wonderful adventures. But incidentally, are you afraid of wild animals, Miss Kilburn? Not as long as they're in cages, behind bars. Yes, a sensible attitude. There are several here on the estate in my private zoo. Sort of jungle back of the house. Did you hear them? Yes. What, what's that one? That is my favorite. A beautiful young tigress. I used to keep her here in the house. But she became jealous of my poor wife. And being almost full grown. Dangerous. I can imagine. She also mauled one of the servants rather badly. Oh, yes, incidentally, that's another matter. There are no servants at the moment. Oh? Yes. The cook left when I was forced to discharge my wife's companion. Why did you discharge Mrs. Stanton's old nurse? For good cause. Now, if you will go to your room, I will explain your duties and introduce you to my poor wife in the morning. In the morning? Yes. Uh, but I don't mind starting now, tonight. That will not be necessary. I look after my wife in the evening. I'm about to take her for a little trip in the moonlight before she retires. Now, you may go to your room. Very well, sir. Uh, but, but, Mr. Stanton... Yes, what is it? Well, well, I, I hate to ask this my first day, but I wasn't sure I'd get the job. Yes? And a, a friend said he'd drive out about 10 o'clock and pick me up in case I didn't. You may telephone him you're staying. Well, I'm afraid I can't reach him. I'm sorry. Well, in that case, meet him at the main gate. But I understand you keep the gates locked, Mr. Stanton. Yes, and the entire estate is surrounded by a high steel fence as an added safeguard against any of the animals getting out of their cages. Well, could I go out and, and meet him for a few minutes? Yes, very well. Here's a key to the main gate. But you must lock it when you leave, and again when you return. And I hope you will not make a habit of having your boyfriends call on you. Oh, I won't, Mr. Stanton. I, I promise, just this once. Well, see that you don't, or I shall be obliged to get someone else. Yes, sir. Well, now, what's the matter with the animals, Mr. Stanton? They're just restless. They're always like that on moonlight nights. The moon seems to arouse their primitive instincts. It is a night for the hunters. Man and beast. A night for stalking. For the kill. Creatures give me the meaning. Ditto, Mr. Leo the Lion Stanton. Oh, that must be his pussycat girlfriend. Oh, poor June Stanton. He's taken her down there to those cages. Oh, come on, Steve. Doggone it. Something's liable to happen here tonight, and it's liable not to be pretty. Golly, it's after ten. I hope that's Stephen Harry. 
I must kill Barney. Oh, Harry, thank heaven. Well, how did you make out, darling? Well, I got the job, Steve, but I haven't met Mrs. Stanton, and I don't like the way her husband is acting. How so? Well, I'm not sure, but he's got something on his mind. He's, he's nervous, jumpy. Where is June Stanton? He's taken her out in her wheelchair down toward the animal cages, and she didn't like it one little bit. I heard her arguing with him as he wheeled her down the path. Did you have any trouble getting out here to meet us? Well, he didn't like it. Said I wasn't to do it again, but he gave me a key to open the gate and strict orders to lock it again. Molly, Molly, Mr. Kilburn, what has this guy got in there? A gorilla, a black leopard, and a couple of lions and a pet tigress, Harry. They running around loose? I certainly hope not, Harry. They're supposed to be in cages down there in a gully this side of the main house. Well, they sound restless tonight. Stanton says they get like that on moonlight nights, and that's something else that worries me, Steve. Oh? What is that, Laura? Stanton's like a cat on a hot stove, and his eyes have a, a kind of funny look when those beasts started yowling at the moon. Sort of wild. And he said something about this being a night for hunters, for stalking, for... for the kill. The kill? Uh-huh. Ooh, yeah. Jeepers, he gives me the creeps. But there was nothing I could do about seeing June Stanton talking to her without making a scene. Yes, he would have fired you. What are we going to do, Steve? We have absolutely no proof of anything wrong. Just Nanny Harding's hunch he means to kill his wife. Laura, huh? are there any dogs here on the estate? Well, I don't think so, Steve. I haven't seen or heard any. Good. Why good? I'm going back in there with you, scout the grounds, and keep an eye on Stanton for a couple of hours. How about me, boss? My trusty noggin knocker might come in handy if you met up with one of them here and I yowl and pussycats. Thanks, Harry, but I'd rather have you here by the gate, ready to go for the police in case there is anything to Miss Harding's premonition of murder. Steve, <laughs> that must be June Stanton. Good grief, jump in your cack, Harry. Go get the police. And how on a double-double. Oh, those screams came from near the animal cage, Steve. Come on, Lorelei, open that gate. Miss Harding's premonition may be right, and tonight may be the night. Steve, the animal cages are, are just ahead in a little clearing in these woods. Yes, I see one of the cages. I wonder why the animals are so quiet all of a sudden. I hope they're not out of their cages. Prowling around in the underbrush, I hope, I hope, I hope. Wait, Lauren, I listen. Hmm? I don't hear Stanton or his wife. I haven't heard a thing since those awful screams. Maybe, maybe we're too late. Maybe she's been killed. Uh oh. I think that's an ape. The gorilla. Oh, yeah. And it sounds like he's still in his cage. Yes, praise be for that much consolation. But it still leaves two lions, a black leopard, and a tigress to be accounted for. I think you better go back, Laura, and I get outside the main gate and wait. Oh, no, Steve Wilson. You may not be Tarzan, king of the jungle, but you're human. And I crave company in this dark woods. All right. Let's move up to the edge of the clearing and see if all the animals are in their cages. Then we'll know what we're up against. <laughs> The ape hears us coming. There's no help for it. Yeah, the rest of the cages, but I can't see the... Oh, well, the lions are still in their cage. Yes. And that black leopard in the end cage... Wait, Lana. Well, what is it, Steve? Look right over there on huh? the left, in front of that first cage next to the stone house. Oh, Steve. June Stanton, sitting in her wheelchair alone. She has moved. Just seems to be sitting there. She... she may be dead. I, uh, I don't think so. She's... she'd be slumped over. She's sitting up straight in the wheelchair. Yeah. Frozen. Facing that patch of woods beyond the stone house. Uh, her hand moves. She's alive. Watching something. Oh! Oh, Steve. The tigress. She's out of her cage. In that underbrush. Good grief. Yes. And moving this way. Oh, we can't stay here. No, come on. Move slowly, Laura. Mm. Out into the clearing toward Mrs. Stanton. June Stanton's seen us. She's motioning to us to stay away. We can't leave her there. She's cornered between the cages and that building. Oh, what can we do? There's one chance, Laura, and I, if that cat will just wait a minute. Mm. Steve, I think it's 
behind us now. But still in the underbrush circling. Don't turn around, Marla. Mm. Don't look back. Mrs. Stanton? Mrs. Stanton? Get away from here. Get away from here, please. The tigress is out of the cage. Yes, we know. Are you hurt? No. No, but we're all liable to be killed if my husband doesn't get back with his rifle in time. Who are you? <laughs> that doesn't matter now, Lorelei. Yes, Steve. Turn slowly. Reach out with your hand. Don't make any quick movements. What do you want me to do? There's a cage door right behind you, partly open. Yes, it's her cage. My husband opened it to feed her. She got out. Yes, we, we think he let her out, Mrs. Stanton. That's why we're here. Now move slowly, Lorelei. Open that cage door wider, then step inside, and I'll push Mrs. Stanton's wheelchair into the cage. Oh, golly. It would squeak. <laughs> She's coming closer. She'll spring if you try to wheel me in the cage. Leave me here. No, steady. We can make it. It's open wide enough for the wheelchair seat. Good girl, Arla. Get inside the cage. We'll be safe until the police arrive. If we can get in and get the cage door closed. I see her behind you. Crouched in the brush, ready to spring. Oh, don't try to push me. Save yourself. No, hold on to your chair, Mrs. Stanton. I'm going to give you a quick shot. Save it out! <laughs> Did she slash you? No, just ripped my sleeve open with one of her claws. Oh. Sorry, old girl, you missed your supper, and we're staying right here in your cage until the police come and take care of you and your master. How, how did you know my husband let her out? Who are you? I'm, I'm Lorelai Kilburn, a reporter, and this is Steve Wilson, my editor. How, how did you happen to come here? How did you get inside the estate? Your nurse, Miss Harding, came to us. She was convinced your husband fired her because he meant to murder you. Oh, my poor nanny, she warned me, but I wouldn't listen. I couldn't believe he meant to do it until tonight. Just what happened here? We heard you screaming. And he wheeled me down here. He, he said he was going to feed the tigress, but he opened the cage door and left me where you found him. Oh, where is your husband? Where'd he go? He went up to the house. He said he was going to get his high-powered rifle. Well, what happened when he left? When you screamed? Well, she didn't come out of the cage at first. I, I, I tried to close the gate again, but, but she sprang through, and I, I thought she was going to turn and bounce on me. But she didn't. It's a miracle she didn't. Well, it... It might be because I used to get Nanny to wheel me down here. When I knew my husband was starving her to make her vicious, I'd, I'd feed her. She's hungry now. He hasn't fed her for days. I think she was closing in to spring on me when you arrived. I... I owe you my life, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. Not yet, Mrs. Stanton. The police are coming, but we're not out of this. This cage is a deadly trap if your husband comes back, discovers that we know he tried to have that tigress murder you. <laughs> Speak of the she-devil. You! Oh... You, my dear. Speak of both devils. He's back. Don't answer him, Mrs. Stanton. Oh, but, but he'll think the tigers killed me. Let him think so. We've got to stall for time. There he is, Steve. Standing on the steep path down from the house. Yes. With a high-powered rifle. He could so easily shoot us and claim he was firing at the tigers. <laughs> Steve. The tigers is moving away from us into the brush. Towards them. Good heavens, she's stalking him. Poetic just. Yes, but we can't let it happen, Laura and I. We've got to warn him. And get a bullet for thanks? How do you feel about it, Mrs. Stanton? Oh, yes, yes, please call to him. Warn him. Even if he tried to murder me, he, he, he's sick. He must be insane. All right, keep back of me. Both of you. Stanton? Stanton? Who are you? Who's that? Never mind. Your murderous pet tigress is stalking you. Come this way. Bring that rifle. Get in this cage! <laughs> Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors have proved it. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared results. They found that Life Boy, with its quick, rich, purifying lather, cleanses and protects better than any other leading soap. And Life Boy is milder, too. So bathe with mild, refreshing Life Boy every day. Remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Buy Life Boy right away. Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson, Lorelei, and June Stanton as they face a deadly showdown with her husband in his private zoo 
in tonight's headline story of The Hunter. Listen, Stanton. Get in this cage with us or you'll be torn to pieces by that tigress you let out to kill your wife. Who are you? How did you get in here? It won't matter if that tigress springs on you. Where is my wife? In this empty cage. Get in here while you have a chance. Leo! Leo, get in here with us before it's too late. So you did get away, June, my dear. My pet didn't get you. Steve, you must be mad. He isn't watching that beast. Wait, Lorelei. Get in here, Stanton. That animal is behind you, moving in. Ready to spring. Dash for it when I open this cage door. Save your concern. I'll deal with my pet when I've settled with you. You meddler. You trespasser. Don't be a fool, Stanton. Get in this cage while you have a chance. I make my own chances. Who are you? Who was that other woman with you? Miss Kilburn, one of my reporters, the girl you hired to take the place of Miss Harding. We know all about your plans to kill your wife, and that rifle won't cover it up. Why not? The police have been notified. Get in here and take your chances with them before those the tigress claws you to death. Let her try. I'm her master. She failed me once, but she'll obey me now. Get in here, Stanton. She is the hunter now, not you. We'll see about that. Oh, my beautiful pet. Get Back in your cage with those fools. Get back in your cage, you devil! Oh, dear. Stanton's one shot killed the tigress, but the dying animal killed him with one blow of its powerful paw. And thus saved the law the grim necessity of putting him away for the rest of his strange, unnatural life. And kept us from being served as a main course for the hungry tigress. But how about next week, Steve? Well, next Tuesday, we have another story from the front pages of the Illustrated Press and headlined, The Fatal Alibi. Now, Lorelei Kilburn has news of another kind, a special offer for every woman listening. Yes, it's really big news for women about our sensational new self-drain aluminum saucepan. You can get it at half price when you buy two cakes of Life Boys. It's an amazing value, friends. Genuine, regal, heavy aluminum, two-quart capacity. I repeat, an amazing value. You bet it is, Dwight. And that self-drain feature is a big improvement in America's favorite saucepan. Now you can drain hot water from food without removing the cover. There's no danger of scalding hands, and, and it prevents food from spilling into the sink. A slight twist turns the cover to cook and to drain. It's a marvel. Yes, friends, this dazzling, regal, heavy aluminum, self-drained saucepan is a marvel. An amazing $2 value that's yours for only a dollar when you buy two cakes of Life Boy Health Soap. Here's all you do. Send two Life Boy box fronts with $1 to Lever Homemakers Club, Box 27, New York 8, New York. That's Box 27, New York 8, New York. Do it today. This offer is limited to the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weist, bidding you good night.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting Extra big town. Perjured witness hunted in fatal alibi. Extra big town. Extra Listen, Clara, tell your brother Sam I'll slit him open if he busts my alibi. Mr. Wilson! Yes, Willie? Sam Miller's gonna get killed, Mr. Wilson. He's gonna get his throat cut if he talks. Thanks for the tip, Willie. I'll phone Callahan of Homicide. Meet me at our friend Mozart's Harbor Cafe in half an hour. Yes, listen to this five-star story of the fatal alibi presented by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. Another headline drama of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of violence and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword that it may be a faithful servant of all the people. Use it justly, hold it high, and guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's tense and timely story of a perjured witness who gave a fatal alibi. The false witness places himself in a no-man's land between crime and the law. And such is the case of Sam Miller, owner of a small diner near the waterfront of Big Town. How are you coming with those dishes, Willie? I'm almost done with this pile, Mr. Miller. Oh, on it. This ghost must suffer. Now I'll have to wash every dish in the diner to make up for what I broke. Oh, forget it, Willie. <laughs> We're all nervous and jumpy around here tonight. Pick up the pieces. Get yourself anything you want to eat. Oh, golly, thanks, Mr. Miller. You're just about the finest fellow I ever washed dishes for my supper for. I'm a fool, Willie. You mean on account of alibi and that Rip Rawson for the knife of that truck driver on the docks the other night? Yes, Willie. I didn't know the driver was dead when I told the police Rip Rawson was here at the diner at the time of the knifing. Where well, was he here, Mr. Miller? Forget it, Willie. Get your supper. Eat it, then beat it. And forget it, forget it. Sam, come here. What is it, Clara? Rip Rawson's here at the counter. What's he want? He says he wants to talk to you. Hey, Sam, come out here. What do you want? First, I want a cup of java and a piece of apple pie. Go get it while me and your brother have a talk, Clara, baby. I wouldn't be your baby if you were the last lug on earth. Go get him the coffee and pie, sis. Okay, but I hope it chokes him. What have you been telling us, Sam? Nothing, nothing. What do you want here, Rip? Guess. You tricked me into alibi and you on the murder of that truck driver. Now, what else do you want? I want to make sure you don't change your story. Tell the cops maybe I wasn't here in your dog wagon eating apple pie at 10 o'clock. I'm stuck with the story. They'd nailed me for perjury if I changed it. With my rep and record, they'd nail me to the chair if you do. Ah, don't worry, don't worry. I'm worrying plenty, Sam. And the kind of guy that worries plenty about nervous guys changing their minds. Well, forget it, forget it. No. <laughs> You're like a cat in a hot stove, Sam. You're scared. So I'm going to give you something to be really scared about. Yeah? What's that? You change your story and I'll take the shiv and change your sister's pretty puss so as you won't know her. Savvy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know what to do now. Shut up. Here's your coffee and pie. Hey, wipe up the jab you spilled, baby. Wipe it up yourself. Eat your pie and get out of here. Leave my brother alone. Clara. Yeah, pin her ears back, Sam. I'm going to be a freewheeling customer around here from now on, so tell her to be nice. Clara, keep out of this. Hey, looks almost as good as the apple pie I had here the other night. Sam, he didn't have any apple pie here the night the truck driver was killed at 10. Shut up, Clara. How do you know? He wasn't here, baby. Because we were all out of pie when I left at nine o'clock. Sam. Yes? You shut this babe's mouth. Shut it tight or I'll open it. 
from ear to ear. Capital? Just a few minutes ago. Come in, Laura. Thanks. How is his honor, the governor? Busy. And pretty concerned about Big Town's crime waves. Did you suggest he try to keep the upstate hoodlums out of Big Town and out of the hair of our understaffed police force? Yes, I did exactly that. Anything new on the waterfront hijack and murder of that truck driver? No, the police had a prime suspect, but he had an alibi. As they usually have alibis ready-made for any occasion. Who's the suspect? A knife artist appropriately called Rip Rawson. Rip Rawson? Yeah. I seem to remember him. Uh -huh. He has a record as long as your arm, but he's beaten most of the reps. Any tips on the case from Willie the Weep or Mosar? Not a thing, Steve. I went down to Willie's shanty boat this morning and asked him to keep his eyes and ears open, but... Uh-oh. The private line, Steve. Yes, maybe Willie or Mosar's heard something. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Mr. Wilson, it's me, Willie the Weep. Oh, hello, Willie. Miss Kilburn was just telling me you are scouting around on that hijack killing. Get anything? Yeah, Mr. Sam Miller, the owner of the diner where Rawson claimed he was eating at the time of the killings? Yeah, Mr. Wilson. Only I know for a fact you what? How do you know that, Willie? Because I was washing dishes for my supper at Sam's just a while ago, and Rip Rawson come in. What happened, Willie? I heard that rat Rawson tell Sam's sister, you know, that sometimes waits on the customer, that he wanted some coffee and pie, just like he had at the time of the killing the other night. Yes, go on, Willie, but take it easy. Now give me the facts. Well... Sam's sister Clara got mad. She said Rip couldn't have had any kind of pie at 10 that night. Why not? Because the diner was all out of all kinds of pie when she left at 9 o'clock. Are you sure the girl said that? Absolutely, positively, Mr. Wilson. Then what happened, Willie? What did Rawson say to that? He told Sam to shut his sister's mouth and he'd slit it open from ear to ear. What did Sam Miller do? He told Miss Clara to keep quiet and wound out after Rawson like he was scared to Good grief. He went after Rawson alone? Yeah, he took a gun out of his cash drawer and went out, and I followed him. Did he catch up with Rawson, Willie? No, Mr. Wilson. That rat was nowhere in sight. So I followed Miller until he went into Mozart's Harbor Cafe. Mozart's Harbor Cafe? Is he still there? Yeah, Mozart's got him in the back room. Where are you, Willie? Phoning from a cigar store down the street. Hang up, Willie. Follow Miller if he leaves the Harbor Cafe before I get there. I sure will, Mr. Wilson. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and keep Sam Miller and his sister out of the river or the morgue. What's up, Steve? Get your hat, Laura, and I. I want you to go to Sam Miller's diner and stay with his sister, Clara. While you're doing what? I'm going to Mozart's Harbor Cafe and persuade Sam Miller to go to the police and exchange that fatal alibi for a new lease on his sister's life. <laughs> Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. The cleaner you are, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Remember, there's not one, not two, but 13 parts of the body where everyone perspires. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets you cleaner all over. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors prove that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. The cleanest people in America use Life Boy health soap. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive after your daily bath. Get big new bath size Life Boy in the new red and white box. Get that clean, clean Life Boy feeling. Make friends with Life Boy. Now, back to Big Town, the fatal alibi, and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei as they hurry to the waterfront in the cab of their loquacious friend, Harry the Hack. Say, boss, Miss Kilburn. Say it, Harry. But drop me in front of Mozart's Harbor Cafe before you take Miss Kilburn to Sam's diner, Harry. Well, that is practically dumb, Mr. Wilson. 
And I was wondering if you would not want me to come back and hang around outside of Mozart's joint in case this uh, Rip the Ripper character should decide to crash the party. Thanks, Harry. But I wish you'd stay near the diner and make sure Rawson doesn't go back there and carry out his threat to mark up Sam's sister. Okay, boss. If he shows, I'll stall him with my trusty monkey wrench and I yell copper like crazy. Mozart's Harbor Cafe. Oh, all seems to be peaceful and quiet around here so far. Good. But I'm going to look around the neighborhood before I go in. See if Rip Rawson is hanging around. Be careful. He doesn't step out of a dark alleyway and carve you up just to keep in practice, Steve. I'll make a point of avoiding that, Lorelei. I'll get on down to Sam's diner and stay with his sister until I phone you. Right, Steve. I'll get her story about that mysterious piece of pie while I'm waiting. Do that, Lorelei. Get going, Harry. Roll this hack. Diner. Hi, Clara, baby. Who? Who's calling? Why, it's me, Rip Ross. Remember? What do you want? Where's my brother? He's okay. So far. But well, where is he? He's over at the Harbor Cafe, drowning his jitters in straight slugs of juniper juice, and listening to that musical bum Mozart beat out the blues in the back room. Good. I was afraid he'd gone after you for threatening me. <laughs> he's working up enough nerve to try that, and that's how come I'm phoning you, baby. What do you want, you murderous little rat? Easy, easy, baby, and listen. I want you to go get Brother Sam and take him home before he spills my alibi, and I gotta get to him and spill him all over the joint. You keep away from my brother, or I'll go to the police. I'll tell him I know my brother lied to alibi you out of the murder of that truck driver. Nah, you're talking like you shouldn't talk, baby. Shut up. Listen to how it's going to be. Yeah. I'm listening. I got to keep that alibi airtight or I go to the chair. You listening? Yeah. I'm listening. You and Sam are the only ones that can louse up my alibi with that dope about being out of pie. So, uh, let me slice it good and thin for you. All right. Go on. I got nothing to lose, so here it is. You clam up and keep Sam clammed up, or I'll clam you both up before the cops get me like chowder. Catch me. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Good. So go get Sam and keep him clammed, or the next thing you'll hear will be my ship springing out like this. So get gone, baby, or I'll be seeing you. But you won't be seeing me. <laughs> Mozart, give me another slug. I got troubles. My nerves are all shot, and I, I got something I got to do. Sorry. No dice, Sam. Uh -uh. Are the troubles you got won't fold their tents like the Arabs of song and story and silently flit away in an alcoholic mist? I know, Mozart, but I'm scared. Scared. I, I think I'm a coward. Sam, we all get scared. We all live to taste the bitter cup of cowardice at least once before we die. Or when we die. I'm, I'm not scared for myself, Mozart. Yeah, I know. You're scared for your sister Clara. Yeah, yeah. Then you shouldn't have left her at the diner alone. Well, I, I told Mulligan, the cop on the beat, to watch the place. But you didn't tell him the truth about Rip Rawson's phony alibi. Why not, Sam? Because Rip came to the diner a while ago. He said he'd get Clara if I talked to the cops. Hello, Mozart. Oh, hi, Steve. I was about to phone you. Oh, Willie, the wee beat you to it. Hello, Sam. But who are you, mister? Uh, meet Steve Wilson of the press, Sam. Wilson? The racket button newsy. I mean, I ain't talking. Wait a minute, Sam. I'm not here to ask you to talk. From what I hear, there's no need for you to talk. Yeah, but even being seen with you is enough. I'm getting out of here. Wait a minute, Sam. 
You can't run away from this thing. I'm not going to run away. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish this thing. Not with that gun you're obviously clutching in your hand in the pocket of that top coat. Let go of my arm, Mr. Wilson. I know you want to help, but I ain't going to risk my sister getting carved up, maybe killed, just to put Rip Rosson in the chair. Now let me go. Let me go. Wait a minute, Sam. Stop and think. Think? About what? Are you an expert marksman? Oh, no, but do you really know how to handle that gun in your pocket? No. I've never had it out of the cash drawer before. I've never fired it. But I'm going out and I'm going to find Wait Rawson. a minute, Sam. Think about what you're doing. You want to go out in the dark streets looking for a man who is a trained sneak thief, a knife artist who knows every alley and byway of this waterfront section. I don't care. I'll find him. I'll find him. Don't you care what happens to your sister if you fail? If you're killed? The cops will get him if he gets me. Yes, but perhaps not before Rawson gets to your sister, Sam. Silences her because she's the only one who can smash his alibi in the killing of that truck driver. I'll get him first. Now let go of my arm. Now, Let's Sam. Go. Sam. You listen to Steve. He's tangled with a lot of rats. Knows a lot of angles. No. i got to take care of this myself. I got Clara in this chain because I was a coward. Didn't know that truck he was dead when I alibied Rawson. Two wrongs don't make a right, Sam. You made one mistake. Now you want to take the law into your own hands. Go out there in the dark and hunt a man to kill him or be killed. I'll get him and turn him over to the cops. Tell the truth. Smash his alibi as soon as I know he's behind bars and can't get at my sister. Use your head, Sam. Rawson has murdered once. He's set for the chair if he's taken and you tell the truth. I know, but... Even if you find him, he won't be taken alive with that gun. You'll have to use it if he gives you a chance. Shoot to kill, or you'll be committing suicide. I don't care. I'll get him. He won't have a chance to get Clara. Now let go of my arm. Let go of my arm. Sam, Sam. You put away that gun. Now don't you be a fool. You stop pointing it at Mr. Wilson. He's trying to help you. I don't need any help. Let go of my arm, Mr. Wilson. Help me out. All right, Sam. All right. Wait. I'm going to let go of your arm. But first, listen to me. Yeah? We'll make it quick. I hate to have to do this, Sam, but I've got to prove to you that it's suicide for you to walk out there, go hunting for a killer with that gun. Well, how are you going to prove it? By showing you that you don't know how to handle that gun. Well, you trick slut, let go. I'm still going to get that gun. I'm going to get it. I'm, going to get I'm sorry, it. Sam. We can't let you get yourself killed. Nice going, Steve, right on the button. I hated having to do that, Mozart. Well, he'd be okay in a few minutes. Well, Steve, he'll thank you when he comes out of that hidden acre, but... Now what? If Rawson is scared, Sam will bust his alibi. He must have followed him here. Maybe waiting outside. I'm sure he is, Mozart. I scouted the block before I came in. I didn't see him, but a kid on the corner said he saw a skinny rat with a jailhouse shuffle hanging around. Uh, that could be Rawson. He's only been out of the pen a couple of months. So what do we do? Keep playing, Mozart. It may throw him off. If he's hanging around outside listening. Yeah, but uh, has the time not come, Steve, to uh, misquote the walrus, uh, to speak of many things to Inspector Callahan of homicide? Yes, but first I want to phone Sam's diner. Laura lies there with his sister and Harry the Hag is watching outside. All right, go ahead, Steve. Sam's number's on the wall pad. Yes, here it is. Uh Uh-oh. Watch it, watch it, Steve. The side door to the alley. Motel. Motel, where's my brother? Holy cow, what are you doing here, Clara? Where's Sam? Oh. What's happened to Sam? Now, take it easy, Clara. He's okay so far. Oh. Thanks to Steve Wilson here. Sorry, Miss Miller, but I had to knock him out to keep him from going after Rawson with a gun. Mr. Wilson, why didn't you keep out of this? My brother will be killed for talking to you. Not if we can help it. Why did you come here, Miss Miller? Did Miss Kildren come to the diner? Tell you what we're trying to do? Yes, but just before she arrived, I got a phone call from Rip Rawson. From Rawson? Yeah. He said if Sam or I talked to anyone, he'd kill us both. Where is Miss Kilburn? Why did she let you leave the diner alone? She didn't know. I slipped out the back through the kitchen. Well, you're lucky you got here, Clara. You've got to help me get Sam home, Mozart. If Rip Rawson finds out he's been talking to a newspaper man, he'll come after us as sure as if we talk to the police. Please, help me get him up and out of here. Now, just a minute, Miss Miller. You're in far greater danger than your brother. Your testimony can smash Rawson's alibi. He won't bother us if we keep our mouths shut. Now, please, help me get him out of here. Well, Rawson can't be sure you will keep quiet. He'll go to the chair for one murder if you do talk. 
There's only one way he can be sure you won't talk. He'll get us if we do talk. He said he'd get us before the cops got him. So the answer is to get him before either of you leave this cafe. But how? He must be somewhere here in the neighborhood watching and waiting. If you phone the police, he'll know we've talked. He'll get away and hide and wait for a chance to get us. Not if you help me set a trap for him. A trap? What What kind of a trap, Mr. Wilson? I have a plan. Now, watch it. Watch it, Steve. Side door. More visitors. Steve. Lorelei. Oh, well, thank heavens Miss Miller got here alive. I had to find my brother, Miss Kilborn. Good heavens. What's happened to him? Oh, Steve had a belt him to keep him from going out gunning for us and Lorelei. Oh. He's starting to come out of it, Steve. See that he doesn't get up and dash out, Mozart? Please. Please, Mr. Wilson, let me take him home. I'm sorry, Miss Miller. We've no right to keep you here, but it would be suicide for you to leave until we can trap Rossum. That would be a neat trick if you could do it, Steve. He must know this waterfront section like a book. Yes, Lorelei, but I think it can't be done. Where's Harry the Hack? He's out front. He drove me over from the diner when I discovered Miss Miller had given me the slip. Good. He can keep an eye on the front entrance of the cafe. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Wilson? Well, first, we're going to get the police in on this and have them throw a net around this whole neighborhood. Phone Inspector Callahan of Homicide, Lorelei. Right, Steve. Mr. Wilson, he, he may get away through the alleys or, or over the rooftops. Not if my plan works. Oh. Clara. Sam. How'd you get here? Oh. What are you doing here? Inspector Sam. Callahan of Homicide. Homicide? You call it Homicide. You crazy, Wilson. Do you want to get my sister killed? She'll be safe here, Sam, at Mozart's until we get Rawson. How are you going to get him? Even find him? I think I have a plan that will draw him out of hiding, Sam, out in the open where the police can nab him. How? He's a smart little rat. Well, you and I are about the same size, Sam. Yeah, so what? So what? I want you to lend me your hat and top coat. My hat and top coat? Uh, what for? I want to walk out of here wearing him. In the dark, Rawson will mistake me for you. You're crazy! You'll get his knife in your bag, same as that truck driver. Well, let me worry about that, Sam. I think I know how to handle knife slingers. Get me an empty bottle, most Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Steve. At least take Sam's gun. Well, I have a better plan than that. Rawson won't be suspicious if he sees me stagger out of here with a bottle in my hand. It'll be another reason for thinking I'm Sam going home drunk. No. Let me try it. This is between me and Rawson. No, Sam. You'd be no match for him in the shape you're in. Get me a heavy, empty bottle, Mozart. Okay, Steve, but you're taking an awful chance. Uh, I've got Inspector Callahan on the wire, Steve. I told him what's happened. Uh, Want to tell him what you plan to do? Yes, let me have the phone, Lola. Hello, Callahan. Hello, Steve. What's your plan to get that Rip Ross and Rack? How long will it take you to throw a tight, tight net around the neighborhood of Mozart's Cafe? About ten minutes. Where does he hold up? I don't know, but if you'll pull into the alley alongside of the cafe in exactly ten minutes from now, I think you can have him there. Now, hold on, Steve. You're a lucky guy, but there's only so much luck in anybody's horseshoe. I'll bear that in mind, Callahan. Be here in exactly ten minutes, and I won't need luck. Here's your bottle, Steve. An empty bottle, but a lucky brand. Just in case your own luck runs out. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. The cleaner you are, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Remember, there's not one, not two, but 13 parts of the body where everyone perspires. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets you cleaner all over. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors prove that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. The cleanest people in America use Life Boy health soap. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner keeps you fresh and attractive after your daily bath. Get big new bath size Life Boy in the new red and white box. Get that clean, clean Life Boy feeling. Make friends with Life Boy. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he and his companions await a deadline for the payoff in tonight's five-star story of the fatal alibi. (laughs) 
Time's running out, Steve. It's exactly seven minutes since you asked Callahan of Homicide to pull into the alley in ten. Yes, Monsignor. That leaves me three minutes to walk out that side door into the alley and hope Rip Rawson will mistake me for Sam Miller and come out of hiding. Ready to put a knife in your back, Steve. Don't forget that. I won't. And don't think he won't try, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure he will, Sam. Now, give me your hat and top coat. All right, here you are. But I wish you'd let me go. Give me my gun, and I'll cover him and hold him till your inspector friend gets here. No, Sam. As I tried to tell you, Rawson is prime for the chair for killing that truck driver. He's tricky, Sam. And if he shows at all, he wouldn't give you a chance to use that gun. Then the same goes for you. No, Sam. I'm going to try to use a little applied psychology. Now, hand me that lucky bottle, Mozart. Here you are, Steve. Are you sure you don't want me to come along? No, thanks, Mozart. Rawson won't show unless he thinks I'm Sam, intoxicated and alone. Now, Rawson, you just come to the side door with me, will you? Open it and shove me out. Call me Sam and tell me to go home and sleep it off. Okay, Steve. I'll make it a real bounce. Let's go. Watch yourself, Steve, and, and good luck. Thanks. Right. All right, Sam, you've had enough. Now get out. Take your bottle with you and beat it. Go home. Hey. Go on. Go home. <laughs> A fix most for this. A fine thing throwing a man out when he's got troubles. All kind of troubles. That's what I got. I'll say you have. Hold everything, Sam. Oh, you. Yeah, me, Rip. And I hear you got a gun you was thinking of gunning me with if you could lick yourself up enough nerve. Uh, yeah. So hold still while I get that heat out of your pocket or I'll open you up where you'll spill out all over the alley. Hold still. Drop that bottle. Drop it, you slug. With pleasure. Never mind the knife, Rip. You'll never find it in the dark. Now you, hold still. Hurry. You slug, you slug, you ain't Sam Miller. No, and your murderous scheme to silence Sam and his sister is all washed up. How you doing, Bush? You got him? Got him, Harry. You hold him while I see if he's sporting any more knives. Yeah, hold still or I'll massage your noggin with this trusty monkey wrench. See? We've got him. Phone Fletch on city desk, Lorelei. Byline yourself a beat on one fatal alibi. Well, that's the way it was, friends. A narrow escape for Sam Miller and his sister. But when Sam reversed his perjured alibi, Rip Rawson was arrested, tried, and convicted on a charge of murder. And friends, back of this deadly incident is the grim lesson that any perjured testimony given on behalf of any criminal could place any of us in the same dangerous situation. How about next week's Big Town Story, Steve? Well, next week there'll be another and very different story from the front pages of the Illustrated Press and headlined, The Confession. Now, Laurel, you have a more immediate news item for our friends. <laughs> right, Steve. Friends, you've heard tonight how Life Boy gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Keeps you fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Now, I'd like to suggest that you try Life Boy Health Soap in the big new bath size. That size life boy is generous and luxurious. And that lather, it's so mild and refreshing. I love it. And I know you'll love it, too. Just ask for the new bath size life boy. Thank you, and good night. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company has amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Wiest, bidding you good night.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Extra Big Town Extra. Recorded confession traps killer of nightclub comic. Extra Big Town Extra. Yeah, yeah. Come on in, baby. Close the door, honey. I'll be with you as soon as I get the grease paint off the old pan. <laughs> Fix yourself a drink. I gotta go and listen to that poor sap Nate shoot off his mouth. Yes, I hated him. I mean, Yes, listen to The Confession, another headline newspaper story of Big Town, brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. Another hard-hitting crime saga of Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's headline story, The Confession. A recorded confession of murder, freely admitting motive and opportunity, might seem sufficient proof of guilt. But listen to this strange story of a girl caught in a terrible trap of twisted words. A story that began in the dressing room of a nightclub comedian as he removed his makeup after the last floor show. Yeah? Mike Evans, in person speaking. Burley Q's gift to laughter and the ladies. <laughs> Lay off the billing, you dopey comic. Are you alone in your dressing room? Sure, all alone by the telephone. Who wants to know? Your boss. The dope that's paying you to be funny on the floor of this club, not over the phone. What's the matter, Nate? I wowed him and rolled him on the last show. <laughs> yeah, you rolled him right out of the club, and I want to see you in my office before you leave. Okay, I know what's eating you. And if you keep that dame out of my hair, we get along. I'll be up in five minutes. As soon as I get the grease paint off my puss. <laughs> puss, uh, can't handle dames. <laughs> dames. Uh, treat them rough. Push them around. They love it. Yeah, yeah. Come on in, baby. Ah, close the door, honey. I'll be with you as soon as I get the grease paint off the old pan. Fix yourself a drink. Uh, I gotta go and listen to that poor satinate shoot off his mouth. No, no, no. Ready to call it a night? Almost, Laura and I. Come in. Thanks. Perch on the corner of the desk and take my mind off these late dispatches. All right, but I don't think it'll work. You're married to this headline deadline routine, and last time you were shot, I'm sure they gave you a transfusion of printer's ink. Don't be too sure. Spring is here, you know. Yes, I know. Could I tempt you to a whirl at some dine and dance owl joint now that you've put the illustrated press to bed? That's an idea. Just a minute. Uh Uh-oh. It was a good idea. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Hello, Wilson. This is Nate Hill over at the Big Town Club. Remember me? Yes, I remember you, how you failed to cooperate with the police on that reefer ring operating at your club. Well, the cops cleared me in that, and I've learned my lesson, Wilson. Good. What is it this time? Real trouble this time, and I'm playing it straight. What kind of real trouble, Hill? Murder. Murder? Who's been murdered? One of my headliners in the floor show. Mike Evans. The comedian? Yeah, the comic and lady killer. He got funny with one too many dames, and now he's in his dressing room with a hole in the back of his head. Shot from behind. Any idea who did it? Sure. I got it all wrapped up for your pal Callahan of homicide as soon as he gets here. The dame, her confession, everything. Wait a minute, Hill. When did this happen? Well, a few minutes ago. If you want a break on this, you better get over here. You don't owe the Illustrated Press any favors. Why tip me? Because I want a good press story on this, and I want to prove I can cooperate. Make up for last time. Who's the girl who confessed to shooting Evans? Myra Taylor, Evans' partner. She'd been playing straight to his corny comedy routine. What was her motive? Jealousy. And I've got her full confession on the recorder in the rehearsal room. A recording of her confession? Yeah, she can't deny she made it. Can't get out of it. Come on over and get an earful before I call your pal Callahan and he takes the record to headquarters. Thanks for the invitation, Hill. I'll be right over. Oh, what is it, Steve? I don't like the sound of this, Laura, and I call police headquarters. Get me Callahan of Homicide. Miss 
Callahan, Steve. Thanks, Ronline. Hello, Callahan. Hi, Steve. What's up? Plenty if Nate Hill hasn't called you from the Big Town Club. No, he hasn't. Why should he? It's just a little matter of murder. Murder? How did you get it? He'll just phone me. He wants me to have a scoop so he'll get a good press. He claims he has the body, the killer, and the confession. Great. What do we need a police department for? Who got it? A two-timing comedian shot in the head by his femme foil. Hill claims he has a recording of her full confession. Fine, fine. So all we have to do is go over and make the pitch. What's Hill's angle? That's what I'd like to know, Callahan, and I wish you'd give me a few minutes to play along and find out. Now, wait a minute, Steve. If it's murder, I can't hold off to give you a news beat, no matter how much you cooperated in the past. I'm not asking for a news beat, Callahan. The press final is on the street, and this wouldn't rate an extra, no matter how it turned out. All right. What's your angle? I don't believe Nate Hill could ever play anything straight. Nor do I. But you've reported a murder, and I've got to check on it. You know that, Steve. Yes, but I've got a hunch there's a lot more to this, Callahan, and I think I can get it if you'll bend the rules enough to give me a few minutes with Hill before you move in. And what if the killer moves out and I'm left holding the body well, I... and the bank? I'm not asking you to risk that, Callahan. Get your men over here, throw a ring around the big town club, let anyone go in, but have them hold anyone who tries to leave the club. All right. How much time do you want? Give me 15 minutes with Hill, and I'll see if I can find out why that leopard has changed to spots. Yeah, come in. All right, Hill, what's the gag? Close the door, Lorna. Right, quick work, Wilson. Didn't take you long to get here. Where's Inspector Callahan, the medical examiner of the body of Mike Evans? Now, take it easy, Wilson. I said you'd get a break if you got here quick, and I haven't called the cops yet. I don't scoop the police. I thought you were playing this straight. I am. It's cut and dried, all wrapped up. Where's the body of Mike Evans? In his dressing room over there. Now, what's a few minutes difference making calling the cops? They won't care as long as we hand them the killer. Where's the girl you and... say confessed to killing him? Well, now, wait a minute. She's in her dressing room next to Evans. She blew her top after she confessed. I've locked her in so uh, she couldn't run before you got her story. Quit doing me that kind of favors, Hill. Lorelei. Yes, Steve. Want me to talk to her? Later. Get on the phone and go through the motions of notifying Callahan of homicide. Right, Steve. Mind if we use one of your phones, Mr. Hill? Yeah, help yourself. There's one down at the end of the hall. Thanks. Yeah, I've got a record of Myra's confession, Wilson. Want to hear it before your pal Callahan shows? Uh, listen to it when Callahan hears it. Let's see Evan's body. It's right in here. Nobody's touched anything. Yeah, there he is. Sprawled across his makeup table just the way I found him. You found him? Yeah. I phoned him from my office right after the last floor show. Asked him to come up to see me after he'd changed. When he didn't show, I came down here to find out why. How soon after you called him? About uh, ten minutes. Where was Myra Tyler? In her dressing room, packing her things like crazy and crying like a fool. And she confessed to shooting him with that gun lying there on the floor? Well, no, not at first, but I pumped it. Why? Well, I I knew Mike was playing around, meant to get another partner, that she was jealous. That was what I meant to talk to him about. Since when have you taken such an interest in the personal problems of the acts you book into your club? Now, look here, Wilson, I'm giving you a break. You've never given anyone a break unless it included a break for yourself, Hill. You said you were playing this straight, wanted a good press. Yet the first thing you do is to hold out on the police. I've got the girl, I've got a confession. What more do the cops want? They want to be notified the minute a crime is committed. Steve, Callahan's busy on a case, but he'll be here in a few minutes. Good. All right, Hill. Now we'll take this break you're offering us. Let's talk to Myra Tyler. Well, okay, but you won't get much out of her. She's pretty scared, busted up. How did you get the confession out of her? Twist her arm? No, I didn't have to. Wait till you hear the record of her confession. I'd rather hear her repeat it. This her dressing room? Yeah, wait till I unlock the door. You better hope she hasn't climbed out a window. There are no windows in these dressing rooms. Oh, oh Steve, look, on the floor. Good grief. Hey, she was lying on the couch when I left her to phone you. Oh, oh Steve, is she dead? no. And no sign of a wound. She's breathing. She may have fainted and fallen here. Let me help you get her on the couch. Maybe she took something. She was pretty jittery. I'll huh? get her up. Look around, Lauren and I. See if there is anything she could have taken. Well, there's a glass here on her dressing table and a bottle. Good heavens, Steve. Sleeping tablets and the bottle's empty. That's it. An overdose. We've got to snap her out of it. Get her on her feet. Wake her up. No. No. Let me go. Oh, she's still conscious. Let me go. Try to make her walk, Steve. Keep her moving. I'll phone a doctor and get some coffee out of the kitchen of this dog. Hey, I never dreamed she'd try anything like this. Anything I can do? Get out of the way, Hill. You've done everything you could to close this case. Oh, give me a break, will you? If this girl dies, you'll get a break. A break you'll never forget. <laughs> Oh, 
Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy health soap every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's headline story of The Confession. Tipped off on a murder by the owner of a nightclub, Steve and Lorelei Kilburn arrive and find the police have not been notified and the partner of the murdered man almost unconscious from an overdose of sleeping tablets. Now, a few minutes later, Steve tries to question the girl as they keep her walking, trying to keep her awake. She's better, Steve. I think the coffee helped. Yes, I think she'll be all right if we can just keep her moving. And talking. Keep asking your questions, Steve. We may find out what really happened here tonight. Yes, I'll try again. Listen, Miss Tyler, listen to me. Yes, I'm listening. But I'm so tired, so sleepy. Please, let me lie down. No, Miss Tyler, you've got to keep moving. Keep awake. If you go to sleep, you'll never wake up. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Why aren't you let her alone? Keep out of this hill. It does matter very much, Miss Tyler. Listen carefully. Nate Hill, your employer, says you admitted shooting your partner, Mike Evans. Mike's dead. I hated him. I'm glad he's dead. Hey, you hear that, Wilson? That's what she said a while ago out in the rehearsal hall. I've got a recording of it, her whole confession. Then why didn't you notify the police right away? I told you I called you first. Wanted to give you a scoop so you'd give my club a break in your story. If we can't keep this girl conscious until Callahan of Homicide arrives, you'll answer for delaying the call. Well, why should I? I've got a confession to the murder right out there on the machine in the rehearsal hall. The case is all wrapped up. She admits she killed him. No, no. She's lying Shut now. Shut up, Phil. She's trying to say something. What is it, Miss Tyler? What are you trying to say? I... I hated him. I'm glad he's dead. But what I... Oh. Uh, we better keep her walking, Steve. She's still on the verge of unconsciousness. Yes. Come on, Miss Tyler. Keep moving. Talking. You mustn't go to sleep. Now, why don't you let her go? They'll burn her for killing Evans anyway. You heard her. She hated him. She's glad he's dead. She was jealous. Shot him. No. No. Laura Lang, can you hold her up? Keep her moving. I think so, Steve. Oh, what are you going to do? Get the rest of this. All right, Hill. You want to be so helpful. Let's have all of it. Who was Miss Tyler jealous of? Lola Lynn, a specialty dancer in the floor show. Lola Lynn? Yes. Evans was going out with her. He was going to get rid of Myra, team up with Lola in a new act. There's your motive. Where is Lola Lynn? I don't know. She left right after a number in the last floor show. How do you know she wasn't here at the time of the shooting? I saw her leave. Well, then you must have been back here. Backstage. I thought you said you were in your office. Phoned Miss Evans to come see you before he left. Well, I did. I I wasn't back here until I came back and found Evans. Lola went out the front way through the club before the last show finished. Well, how do you know she didn't come back, return by the service entrance? I don't. What's it matter? I tell you, Myra admitted doing it. I've got it on the recorder, all ready for your pal Callahan of Homicide, if he ever gets here. He'll get here. Meanwhile, let's hear that confession. All right, come on. It's out in the rehearsal room. Can you handle Miss Tyler, Lorna? Yes, Steve. She seems to be better. I'll try to get her to drink some more coffee. I'll send the doctor in as soon as he gets here. Now, let's hear that record, Hill. And suppose you tell me how you got it. Sure. When I caught Myra packing and getting ready to beat it, she ran out here in the rehearsal room and I grabbed her. I told her it would look like she did it if she left before the cops got here. What did she say to she that? She said she didn't care. Said she hated him. Said she was glad he was dead, just like you heard her say a while ago. Yes, but I didn't hear her say she killed him. Well, that's when I switched on the recorder. Got the whole thing right down here on the record. Listen to this. All right. Let's hear it. 
This is going to save your friend Callahan of homicide a lot of trouble. Not if that girl changes her story. Why not? She can claim you forced her to confess. I didn't, and she won't deny it when she hears what she said, what she admitted. Listen. I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad he's dead. I hated him. I hated him. I did kill him. Let me alone. Let me alone. Yeah, how do you like that? What more could Callahan want? I think he'll want that statement repeated word for word from her own lips. She'll deny it now, now that she's had time to think what she's saying. But they won't believe her. That'll give you everything. Motive, opportunity, the confession, give Callahan the works. Now, what's the matter with that cop? What's keeping him? What's the matter with you, Bill? What's the hurry? Why didn't you call Callahan the minute you discovered the body? I keep telling you, I wanted to give you a news break, so maybe you'd lay off riding my club for a dive and a clip joint the way you did last time. Last time you held out on the police, and I think you're doing it again. Well, why should I? What have I got to gain except maybe keeping my club from being closed up because that comic had to go and get himself knocked off in my place? That's a rotten motive, Hill. Your kind of place thrives on this sort of thing. The more scandal and violence, the better. And I suppose you think I arranged it as a publicity stunt. No, I don't think you'd go quite this far for that reason, but there is a reason, Hill, another reason. There's got to be another reason. Why? Why? There's the record. Yes, but let's look at your record. What about my record? I've been in scrapes, but I've never been convicted. The cops have tried, but they've never been able to pin anything on me. So why be so cooperative now? Why go out of your way to wring a confession out of Myra Tyler? You admit Evans was a two-timer. He was set to double-cross her, get rid of her. Yet you got her when she was hysterical, dragged her out here in front of this recording machine and pumped the confession out of her. Why? I told you, and you can take it or leave it. Your pal Callahan of Homicide will take it when he gets here. Yes, he'll take it. He'll have to take it. Take what? Lola, what are you doing here? I thought you went home after your last number. I did. Not that it was any of your business. You only pay me to dance in this dump. Who's your friend? Wilson. Steve Wilson of the press. Newspaper guy. What's going on here? What brought you back to Big Town Club this time of morning, Miss Lynn? What's it to you? Call it curiosity. But it may mean more to the police. The cops? Hey, what's happened here? You started something Mara Tyler finished. With a gun. What are you talking about? What did I start that that blonde had a finish with a gun? She blasted that... Wait a minute, Hill. What brought you back here, Miss Lynn? Well, if you must know, I came back to find out what was keeping Mike Evans. You had a date with Evans? Sure, why not? Well, where is he? What's happened to him? Right in here. Take a look. Mike. So somebody finally got him. Maybe that'll learn you to leave other dames guys alone. Oh, you crumb. You lippy crumb. You lippy crummy crumb. Cut it out, you crazy two-time and twist. Wait a minute. Just a minute, Miss Lim. Let go of me, Wilson. I'll tear his cop eyes out of his head. What's he trying to pull? Get me mixed up in this mess? You are mixed up in this mess. I'll say I am, but not the way Nate wants you to think. Shut up, Lola. Shut up or Wilson will smear you all over the front page of the press. What for? I wasn't here. I don't know anything about what happened. Can you prove it? Why should I have to prove it? What reason would I have to bump off Mike Evans when we were all set to pull out of this dump and start a new act? What I tell you, Wilson? There's your motive for Myra blasting Evans. Who says she did? Hill has a record of her confession right there on that recorder. I don't believe it. That poor dope wouldn't have had the nerve. I caught her packing a leaf. She confessed it's on the record. I don't give a hoot. She ain't the type. I would if he'd crossed me up, but not that poor little sap. You better be careful what you say, Miss Lynn. Why should I be careful, Wilson? Because if Miss Turner changes her mind, denies she killed Evans, you're a likely suspect. And you admit you may not have an alibi. Yeah, shut your mouth and keep out of this, Lola. I won't shut my mouth. And while we're lining up suspects for the cops, let's have all of them. Shut up, Lola. Let her talk, Kill. Let's get the whole story and have it all wrapped up for Inspector Callahan. Who is the other suspect, Miss Lynn? Him. That bug-eyed worm right there. You're a liar, A Lola. liar, am I? Well, you had a better reason for blasting Mike Evans than any of us. You've been after me ever since I came to work in this dump. You knew I was pulling out, going away with Evans. Well, you had a fight with him last night. You said you'd fix him if he hey, ever you're tried it. Now, we're getting some facts. Uh, 
you. Getting down to Casey. Oh, uh, say you are, Wilson. Look at him. Frothing at the mouth. Why, he'd kill me in a minute if he had a gun right now. He'd kill anybody who crossed him. Let go of me, Wilson. Let go. All right. But keep away from Miss Wheeler. It's okay. But I'll get you for this Lola trying to frame me. You should live so long. Steve, what's going on out here? When is Callahan going to get into this? Any minute now, Laura Lai. The puzzle is beginning to make a picture. How's Myra Tyler? Well, she's all right now. I got her to drink some more coffee. She doesn't need the doctor, but she's beginning to make sense, but it doesn't add up. Doesn't add up to what, Laura Lai? Myra says Hill made her take those sleeping tablets, and she swears she said she never killed Evan. She's lying. You heard the record, Wilson. It's right down the record. She can't change that. Yes, I heard it. Can you bring Miss Tyler out here, Lorelei? Yes, but take it easy, Steve. She's still a little wobbly. Uh, will you come out here, Miss Tyler? Please? Yes. Yes, Miss Gilbert. Lola. Hello, kid. I hear they've got you in a jam. Sorry. I don't blame you, Lola. Thanks. Tell Mr. Wilson what you told me, Miss Tyler. What Nate Hill did to you. I... I came back here and... found Mike Evans shot. I screamed and... Nate Hill came in and said I killed him. He said I'd better get away out of town. He dragged me out here, asked me why I did it. Right here in front of this microphone, this recording machine? No. Over there, uh, near the new machine. The new machine? Yes, the one he just bought. He turned it on and kept asking me why I did it. Wait a minute, Miss Tyler. This machine? He turned this one on? Yes. And kept asking me why I killed Mike. What did you say? Can you remember? Yes. I said, I hate him. I was glad he was dead. But I did not kill him. You said, but I did not kill him. Yes. I remember because he made me say it. Over and over again. Over and over again. Oh, so that's how you did it, Hill. That's how you tried to frame this girl. Frame her confession. Go get Inspector Callahan, Lorelei. He's waiting outside. Oh, you don't. Oh. Stay put, Kilburn. Oh, oh, Steve, he's got a gun. Yes, while you dopes were being so smart, I got the gun that blasted Evans. That dame stealing rat. Yes, and now it's in the hands of the real killer. This time, your fingerprints are on it, Hill. Yeah. And I'll blast the first one that tries to keep me from getting out of here. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors have proved it. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared results. They found that Life Boy, with its quick, rich, purifying lather, cleanses and protects better than any other leading soap. And Life Boy is milder, too. So bathe with mild, refreshing Life Boy every day. Remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson, Lorelei, and their companions for the payoff in tonight's headline story of The Confession. Listen, Hill, don't be a complete fool. You can't get out of this club. Callahan and his homicide squad have had the place covered for the last half hour. You're bluffing, Wilson. Lola walked in. Nobody stopped her. Kilburn never called the cops. You were playing this thing alone for a scoop. Play that hunt, Shill. Walk out of here with that murder gun in your hand and they'll mow you down. So what? What have I got to lose? They'll burn me anyway for killing that dame stealing comic. He couldn't steal something you never had, you rat. Shut up, Lola. Clam up or I'll give you what I gave Mike Evans. So you admit killing Evans? Trying to frame Myra Tyler with a faked recording of her confession? Yeah, sure. Why not? I would have got away with it, too, if Lola hadn't come here shooting off her mouth. Steve, how could he fake Mara's confession? It was easy, Laura Lai. How about it, Hill? You want me to show them how stupidly clever you thought you were, Hill? Hey, right where you are, Wilson. Try any trick while I'm getting out of here, and I'll give you what I gave Evans only right between the eyes. All right. I guess that'll do. You've admitted killing Evans. Confess twice, using different words. And this time, the tape recording won't be cut and spliced. Oh, so you know how I did it. 
Okay, but I told you to stay put, Wilson. Oh, put that gun down, Hill. I took the shells out of it before I let you get your hands on it. Oh, yeah? Yes. Lorelei, go ask Callahan to come in and listen to a playback of Hill's confession on his own machine. With the greatest of pleasure, Steve. Wilson, you tricky slug. You turned on that tape recorder a while ago. It got every word I've said in the last few minutes. Yes, Hill. And this recording won't have to have the words deleted, cut and edited, then transferred from tape to wax. Ladies and gentlemen, Hill was guilty and he was convicted for the murder of Mike Evans. And if you're still puzzled as to how he faked Myra Tyler's confession, here's how he did it. First, he tricked her into talking into the microphone of a tape recorder. She said, I hated him. I'm glad he's dead. But I did not kill him. That's what she said. But like movie film, words can be cut out of a tape recording. Hill deleted the word but and the word not spliced the tape, and re-recorded the confession on the old-style platter recorder. And that is what he wanted the police to hear. I hated him. I'm glad he's dead. I did kill him. There you are. Two little missing words. But they might have sent an innocent girl to her death. Oh, talk about twisting words. Well, what about next week, Steve? Well, next week we have an unusual story about a young girl who goes on a murderous rampage against her ex-college roommates and headlined... The Weeping Killer. But now, Lorelei Kilburn has some big news for women. Yes, it's really big news for women about our sensational new self-drain aluminum saucepan. You can get it at half price for a limited time only. It's an amazing value, friends. A genuine regal heavy aluminum saucepan, two-quart capacity. I repeat, an amazing value. You bet it is, Dwight. And that self-drain feature is a big improvement in America's favorite saucepan. Now you can drain hot water from food without removing the cover. There's no danger of scalding hands, and it prevents food from spilling into the sink. A slight twist turns the cover to cook and to drain. It's a marvel. Yes, friends, this dazzling, regal, heavy aluminum self-drain saucepan is a marvel. An amazing $2 value that's yours for only a dollar. Here's all you do. Send two Lifebuoy box fronts with one dollar... To Lever Homemakers Club, Box 27, New York 8, New York. That's Box 27, New York 8, New York. Don't delay. Do it today. This offer is limited to the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. New 1950 Rinso is here, a year ahead, the greatest development in soap history. 1950 Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. New Rinso actually gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. Yes, Rinso, only Rinso, contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. Yet Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Wiest, bidding you good night. Good evening. This is Sergeant X. In most enterprises, differences of opinion are settled politely and without violence. No matter how annoyed the ordinary businessman may become with his associates, he very seldom goes looking for them with a gun. But your underworld businessman, carrying not a snap for Emily Post, will often settle his arguments with a forty-five automatic. As you will hear tonight, 
in the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight, the Mystery Playhouse presents an exciting story of hot music and sudden death as it occurred in Steve Wilson's Big Town. Steve and Lorelei return to our stage tonight in a drama set in Big Town's underworld. Like most big cities, Steve's town has its share of tawdry clip joints masquerading as nightclubs. One such dive is the Crazy Coop, operated by one Lippy Lambert. Lippy, by his own admission, blows a very mean horn. In fact, he and his trumpet are the main attraction at the Crazy Coop, which isn't hard to do if you run the joint. And running a joint like this one isn't too tough either, especially if you're a heel, which Lippy is. Well, one day, he was in his office doing whatever it is heels do when the phone rang. Hello, Crazy Coop. That you, Lippy? Yeah. Let's call him. Make it snappy, will you? It's my busy night. It's me, Tony. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, hello, Tony. Uh, l- listen, Tony. Make it good, Lippy, and quick, or this will be my busy night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, Tony. I've I... been looking for the tech from that dive I set you up in. Where's the dog? Well, I, uh, I lost it, Tony. What's that? Uh, the track. Uh, but I'll get it back. J- just give me a week. Huh? You stoop. Well, give me till tomorrow. You're all washed up as of now. Oh, Tony, t- uh, give me a break, will you? T- Tony. Look. Okay, Tony. The way you want it, too, can play that game. Hey, Madge. Madge, come here, will you? Yes, Mr. Lambert. Want a pack of cigarettes? Yeah. Not the kind of weed you sell to the suckers. Look, put on your tray, baby. I want to talk to you. I can't now. I gotta get back to the check room and take care of the customers. We don't have customers at that crazy cool baby. Only suckers. And they can wait. Come on to my office. Not now, Lippy. What's the matter? The afraid little boy Blue will blow his horn and scare the honey lamb? No, but you promised me a chance to sting when I took the hat check job. Oh, sure, baby. That's what's cooking. So come on to my office, huh? We'll beat out the deal. Have you told Yvonne she's through? I've given her the off key tonight. Tell her first. And then we'll talk. Okay, okay. So listen, baby, will you? Not now, Lippy. You better get ready for your blue spot fellow. <laughs> I don't have to get ready. My horn's hot, but it's sweet and low down. So listen a minute, will you? Beautiful. Stop it, Lippy. Yvonne's coming backstage. Uh, so what? Let go. I don't want any trouble with her. Who cares? Ha-ha! So Lippy the log makes hey-hey with little Miss Big Town. Well, Yvonne beat the brains out for the suckers, no? No. And don't get ideas. I get the big ideas. So What? So I think I slept her. Silly. She got it out, Yvonne. Oui. Keep away from Lippy. Or I cut you out like some paper doll. Well, look, lay off, Yvonne. Go get your feather and get out of here. What's that, Lippy? You heard me. You wash. Come on, beat it. Madge is taking your spot for the last show. So, this is it. The double crosses. The pro shots. You, espesso salo. Come on, beat it, scram. I'll send you your dough. You push me. You dare push around Yvonne? Hey, hey, what's the big idea, Lippy? Oh, play with your drum slap. Keep out of this. Lay off, Yvonne, or I'll beat you like a chimp. Go on, get out of here, both of you. I run this dump my way. You are a big liar. You're just the funny front. Yeah, and we know who's backing you up, too, you lug. Get out of here, I'll kick you out. All right, Lippy. Yeah, Mozart. Hold everything. Keep out of this, Mozart. Oui, Mozart. Go make up some more nice concerto for piano. Nobody ever plays but you. Yeah, Mozart, go tank yourself up and moon for Madge Mason while the lip takes her away from you. Lay off, Madge Mason. She's gone places we never been and nobody's busting a ladder she needs to climb out of this rum hole where we fit like corn on a cob. Set it to music, Mozart. Sure, Mozart, this ain't Carnegie Hall, ain't you heard? Come on, Slap. You come with Yvonne while she gets her things out of this salve, what? Next, Yvonne. You get out of here. I got things to do. And don't come crawling back, you slugs. You know something, Lippy? Where's Madge? That's all I want to know out of you, Mozart. Getting ready for your Vaughn spot that you promised her in the second show, remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Don't uh, change your mind, Lip. Look, don't give me orders, you beer hole, Beethoven. <laughs> 
Name calling's gonna get your throat cut one of these days, Lippy. Yeah? Just let me know when you're ready to try it. Well, you're safe from me, Lippy. I wouldn't kill a flea. Go on, go on. Get out there and give me the build-up. Okay. Now, look. Give me the introduction, then douse the floor glims and bring up the blue indigo when I come on with the hot stuff, see? Yeah, save the air for the high notes. Go slick your top while I tell the suckers what a terrific guy you are on a horn. Hey, hey, you... Customers ain't allowed behind the drapes. Tell them what's up. Tony. Well, what's the czar of the big spots doing in this crummy dump? Just checking out. Oh, so hippies only a front, huh? The crazy coop's one of your joints. Well, uh... You'll keep your mouth shut about that. And about seeing me here tonight, Mozart. Sounds like it might be worth the price, Tony. Sure. Everything's got a price, Mozart. But don't make yours too high. Well, look, there's a kid here, Madge Mason. Good looker. She can sell a song. Well, they are a dime a dozen. This one ain't. Look, he's giving her the femme spot in the next show. Wait and hear her. I ain't going to be here, and you're going to forget that I've been here. Okay. If she opens at your classy uptown club, I'll forget. Okay. It's a deal. But remember, nobody watches on a deal with Tony. Or the devil. That's right. So long, Tony. I gotta go out front and give Lippy Lambert the old build-up. Yeah. And uh, make it good, Mozart. Okay, Tony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if any, <laughs> don't you people ever get tired of that gag? Okay, suckers, here's another laugh. The maestro of this monkey menage, the one and only Lippy Lambert, is going to appear out of darkness into a blue spot provided by yours truly and amaze you with a few well-chosen notes on his golden horn of plenty of stuff. <laughs> Okay, Lippy, there's your blue spot. Go get it, you hog. Park, the body beautiful. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Huh, could you say the same for my mind? Well, not while you're sitting on the desk of the managing editor. Well, how about coming out from behind that desk and being just Steve Wilson? Okay. What would you suggest Steve Wilson do with what is left of the night? I'll tell you what. Now, don't tell me you just thought of whatever it is. Cynic. Okay, where do you want to go? Well, that story I did on post-war food planning made me hungry enough to eat a, a whole broiled lobster with gobs of shoestring potatoes and... And nightmares? Well, lobster nightmares. It's like being here in the office when a nice axe murder breaks. Okay, Crump, but let's see if Eddie the Hacker is still on the job out front. Hey, boss, Mr. Wilson. Uh-oh, speak of Eddie and you hear him. Sounds like Paul Revere. Come on in, Eddie. Hey, boss, I'm sure glad I found you before you went. Well, we were about to wimp. What's on your mind? Plenty, boss. Do you remember a pal of mine named Mozart? Mozart, the piano player, has given us a lot of hot tips on future events in the underworld? Yeah, boss. He's the sad pan ivory tickler that drifts through the dives like cigar smoke. Well, the poor guy just won't stay put. He says he's lost his uh, alter ego, whatever that is. But what a musician. Why, he can play back Bach. Uh, I mean, Bach back. <laughs> I think I mean that anyway. Well, what about Mozart, Eddie? Well, uh, he is in very serious trouble, Mr. What kind of serious trouble, Eddie? Well, uh, to bust it to you, gradual, he has lost his job. Well, I thought you said he was always losing his job. Yeah, but that ain't all, Miss Kilburn. Uh, you see, a hacky pal of mine was parked outside the crazy coop where Mozart works, and in which the boss, who was a crumb and also a trumpet tutor, got himself bumped off. Murdered. Yeah. Shot right in the middle of a pink note whilst hogging a blue spot in a black townhouse. That would be Limpy Lampert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know him, boss? I've heard he's one of the false fronts for a nightclub syndicate. Yeah. So now Limpy's false front is stuck with legged slugs. And where's Mozart fit into that setup? Well, that's the trouble. It's got Mozart behind the eight ball. Did Mozart shoot him? Yeah, well, Inspector Callahan, a homicide, is over there, and he says he did. And Mozart's got no more alibi than a monkey caught stealing coconuts. Steve, I've talked to Mozart. He's, he's the loneliest person I've ever known. 
I don't believe he'd ever kill anybody. That's what I keep telling myself, boys. Uh, buy that, Eddie. Get your hat, Lorelei. Callahan may be on the wrong track. If he is, there may be a story in this that will shake the underworld of Big Town from the gutter to the chair. Now, listen, Mozart, lay off that jive and answer me some questions. Ain't you got no respect for the dead? Sure, Callahan. With the edification of your tin ear, I'm jamming the funeral march. What more could that horn tutor ask in Requiem? Okay, okay, for the tenth time, lay off the keys and tell me what happened here. Or I'll book you for murder on what I've got. Go ahead, Callahan. I'm all you've got. Except the corpus of Lippy the Lug. Hey, Inspector, Steve Wilson and Larlai Kilburn are the presser out here wanting to see you. Oh, I'm not surprised. Okay, let them in. Okay. You can go in. Hello, Callahan. I hear you have a great A murder on your hands. And only one suspect. Hello, Mozart. I hear you're it. Hello, Lorelei. Steve. Oh, well, Callahan, what have you got on Mozart? A confession? No, but a nice case of circumstantial evidence. Where are your witnesses, Callahan? Locked up at headquarters? Well, when I got here, this joint was empty. With Mozart sitting here at the piano and playing crazy stuff. Lippy's hottest routine, Callahan. Lambert still sprawled in that blue spot. Yeah. Reaching out for his golden horn. Like he was swimming in a pool of his own blood that somebody spilled a slug from a 38. To find the murder gun, Callahan? No gun, no customers, no waiters, nobody backstage, no records or nothing in Lambert's office. Just. Mozart and the roaches, Callahan. Lots of roaches. Have you questioned them? Ah, but maybe I'd get more out of the roaches. At least they don't play the piano. And you cut it out. Okay. What uh, really happened here, Mozart? Gabriel was blowing his horn and the walls came tumbling down. You see what I mean, Steve? That's the double talk I've been getting for the last half hour. The trouble is, Callahan, you don't speak Mozart's language. Do you? I'd like to try. Okay, go ahead. I gotta check up on what my boys have found in Lippy's office, if anything. You better spill what you know, Mozart, or I'm gonna come back and book you for the worst. Okay, Mozart. Who are you covering? Eddie the hacky tipped us off. You're in hot water. <laughs> Good old Eddie. Well, how's his adjectives? He doesn't believe you killed Lambert. And neither do we. So. Thanks. Mind if I beat it out? Helps me think. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Steve. You didn't make quite a story for you. Oh, hang the story, Mozart. You're in a jam. I'm sorry, but I made a deal with the devil. That's the devil of it. Listen, Mozart, you never made any deal for yourself. Could you be covering up for Madge Mason? Leave Madge out of this. Why did you wait for the police? Somebody had a hold of Wake. You're lying, Mozart. Covering for someone. Who had a good reason for murdering Lippy? If wishes could kill, the lip has died a thousand deaths. Won't you let us help you, Mozart? Thanks, Lorelei, but this is my symphony, and right or wrong, good or bad, it's solo with a soft pedal all the way. To the chair, if you don't open up, Mozart. Why not? Why not, Steve? To paraphrase a better man than I am. The ladder to fame and glory leads but to the grave. Steve. Yeah, Lola. You want to hear a tale of woe? Come in, close the door. I just come from police headquarters. And they booked Mozart for killing Lippy Lambert. Oh, so Fletch told you. No, it was bound to happen since he wouldn't talk. Has Callahan uncovered who really owned the crazy coop? No, no, it was a dummy corporation in the name of Lippy Lambert and died with him. Well, what about the customers, waiters, and entertainers? They've all been rounded up for questioning, except that singer Yvonne. Meanwhile, holding poor Mozart in case nothing better shows up. That's about the size of it. The underworld wall of silence has covered this killing like a blanket. And Yvonne may be under it. Steve, why do you keep saying this is a gang killing? It has all the earmarks of jealousy and revenge. Maybe Yvonne shot him. It's too pat. Too much in the groove. Then why is Mozart risking his neck? Lippy fired Yvonne and promised Madge the singing spot at the crazy coop. So Madge had no reason to kill Lippy. Well, perfect logic as far as it goes, Laura. Have you puzzled it any further? Yes, and I'm waiting for the payoff. What payoff? The payoff of the deal Mozart said he made with the devil. Steve Wilson. 
What's going on in that Machiavellian brain of yours? What do you know I don't know? Nothing for certain, Laura Lai, because nothing in the philosophy of killers ever makes real sense to the mind of those of us who never have indulged in the gentle art of murder. I'll digest that later. What have you got up your sleeve? Now, you were cheated out of a lobster dinner last night. I'll say. How would you like to visit a nightclub after we put the Illustrated Press to bed? Where? Well, that depends on the word from Eddie the Hacky. Eddie? Why don't you put him on the payroll and be done with it? Now, because, Laura Lai, as a hacky, he can mingle in circles where a newspaper reporter would be found dead. Come in. Hi, Tony. I hear you wanted to see me. Yes, Slap. I got another job for you. Hey, you mean drumming? Beating it out here in your club? No, Slap. I mean the same kind of job you did at the crazy coop last night. Hey, wait a minute, Tony. The cops nailed Mozart for that job. Ain't you read the papers? Yeah, especially the Illustrated Press. That guy Steve Wilson ain't as easy to fool as the cops. What's Wilson got? I got the notion... He's got the notion. The notions have burned guys like you. What about you? You was there. Sure, Slav. But you and Mozart's the only ones that know that. What about Yvonne? She's in on the deal, too. She's been taken care of, Slap. So what? I ain't saying, and Mozart's clammed up because he don't want Madge Mason mixed up in the mess, the dope. Yeah, but Mozart ain't such a dope. He's clam up. He's liable to cost me plenty. What's the shakedown? I got the headline that hat check canary here at my club starting tonight. Well, okay, what's your squawk? She looks like a million and warbles plenty sweet and hot. That dame opening here tonight is liable to add up to my being the real owner of the crazy coop like two and two makes five in our business. So what? So, you're going to fix it so this Mason dame can't sing for a while. Now, wait a minute, Tony. Helping you knock off Lippy because he can't me and Yvonne is one thing. Unwind. We knocked that Mason dame off and Mozart would open up and sing us all into the chair. Then how are we going to keep him from? Can I help it if she should uh, fall down the dressing room stairs just before she's due to go on for the first floor show? Oh. Huh? I catch. Sort of a, an accident, huh? Yeah. So you fix it. Or I'll have one of my boys rig up an accident for you like the one that washed up Yvonne. What's that, Tony? You said you settled with Yvonne. Sure. Like Mozart, she tried to make a deal. But the price was so high... It was cheaper to rub her out. Oh, you want me to get that, Steve? No, no, I'll get it. Hello, Steve Wilson. Hey, boss, I've been watching that Madge Mason all day. And late this afternoon, I trailed at the Tony's Club. Tony's Club? Well, why didn't you phone me? Because before I got a chance, she left the club. Well, then what, Eddie? Well, I trailed her to the jailhouse where she had a very weepy visit with Mozart. And from there, she went to her apartment. Where is she now? Well, that's how come I call you, boss. She's back at Tony's Club. That's it, Eddie. Where are you? Uh, at a drugstore next door. Should I wait for her to come out? Stay there. Wait for us. We'll be right over. Right. Laura Lyon phoned Callahan to bring Mozart to Tony's Club. If he wants the real killer of Lippy Lambert. Hello, Tony. Uh, Wilson. Yeah, Tony. Surprised? I'm never surprised when a newspaper guy barges into my office without knocking. Oh, sorry. Shall I go out and come in again with the usual formalities? Never mind. What do you want, Wilson? I'm a busy guy. And it must be quite a job running half the clip joints in Big Town. You say that in your lousy illustrated press and I'll sue you for enough to retire. Well, you wouldn't need much if you retired the way Lippy Lambert went out last night. Never heard of no such guy. Go peddle your papers, sir. I got things to do. I can wait. Wait for what? For the story on why you're going to headline a girl from the crazy coop, Madge Mason. Why not? She's been picked Miss Big Town, ain't she? You've never signed an unknown since you opened up town. It's the first time for everything. Besides... Then said she's going to warble tonight. I uh, wonder how that double cross is going to work with uh, Mozart. I didn't make no. Who's Mozart? <laughs> what I hear, the guy's been dead a long time. <laughs> oh, that's an old joke, Tony. And it's on you. I don't know what you think you got, Wilson. But whatever it is, it won't stick. Well, let's wait and see. Wait for what? 
Callahan of Homicide is bringing Mozart up here from headquarters. What's he doing that for? So Mozart can see for himself what kind of a deal with the devil he made for his protege. Yeah? But if you think I'm sticking around while you rig a frame, you're crazy. Is that the gun you used on Libby Lambert? Nobody pins no rap on Tony. I got connections, influence, plenty of stuff. Stop pushing that button on your desk. You'll wear it out, Shut Tony. up, Wilson. I'm going to learn you to keep your nose out of my business. You better go slow, Tony. You're getting in deeper and deeper. Yeah, Tony, what did you buzz for? Hey, who's this guy? Never mind. Forget what I told you to do a while ago. How come? I don't get it. I thought... Tony will do your thinking for you, punk. Who is this guy, Tony? Give me the beast. Steve Wilson of the press. The guy that's been putting the heat on our nightclub combat. Yes, and I have a good memory. You're Slap Sladen. He used to be an ace drummer boy for the hottest band in Big Town. I still am. But you've graduated from peddling narcotics to murder. You're a liar. Tony, what's this guy got? What does he know? Shut up, Slap. It don't make no difference. Yeah, but it does. I ain't taking no rap. rubbing out Lippy Lambert on orders from Tony? How's he know, Tony? You said you could keep Mozart quiet about Shut what up. he saw. Shut up! He don't know. He's guessing, but you're wising him up every time you open your mouth. So what are we going to do? What about that Mason dame? I didn't get a chance to fix her. There's another dame with her in the dressing One room. One of my reporters. Tony, they got something. Mozart spilled. We got to get out of here. We got to do something. No, Slap. I got to do something. Tony, what's your pointing that heater at me for? The cops are coming. When they get there, they're going to find you and Wilson or rubbed each other out in a fight for this gun. No. No, Tony. I've I done you a favor. Now you're going to get the usual gang reward, Slap. No, I ain't. Yeah, but you are, Slap. I ain't. This heater of yours can work two ways. Let go of that gun. Oh, no, Tony. You're coming with me. On the same ticket. Okay, now, Wilson. Now you, you slug. Not with an empty gun slap. Oh, yeah? (laughs) I should have saved one of them. Five shots for you, Wilson. You uh, should have stuck to your drum slap. Steve. Hell, all right. Steve, I, I heard the shots. What happened? Get on the phone, Lorelei. Call Callahan of Homicide, Fletch on City Desk. Okay. Tell them two gentlemen of the underworld have been helping us clean up Big Town and solve the riddle of Lippy Lambert's death in a blue spot. So ended another five star story of Big Town. And for a follow up, Madge Mason is wowing customers in a top notch club. And gossip has it that she is that way about an ivory ike named Mozart who sometimes smiles as he gives her the beat. And so, Mozart and Madge lived happily ever after. But not Lippy and not Tony. And that's the way it should be. Because they were both stinkers, weren't they? Thanks, Steve Wilson, for your big town story, Death Takes the Spot. Tonight's presentation in the Mystery Playhouse. Before we make our usual visit to the green room for a preview of our next mystery, I'd like to say a word or two about a real mystery, one that's got me baffled completely. Why is it that more servicemen and women don't take advantage of G.I. bonds and soldiers' deposits? Well, that's one I can't answer because you'd think people would at least be looking out for their own interests. And there's certainly no better way of doing that than by putting out seven fifty every month for a $10 bond. Because that bond, aside from helping bring V-Day closer, is going to be there waiting for the purchaser when it's all over and worth more than the original seven and a half. And the same goes for soldiers' deposits. Why all the guys and gals don't sock some green stuff away for after the war beats me. You know, civilian clothes aren't enough. You've got to have money in them. Yes, it sure is a mystery to me why everybody isn't looking out for himself with G.I. bonds and soldiers' deposits. It sure is. Well, while we're pondering that mystery, let's look into our next one in the Mystery Playhouse. Follow me to the green room, please. Come. Pinky, you know, I've heard things go on behind the scenes here in Brighton. People's own relations wouldn't know about such as? I've heard of gangs and cutting people up with razors and even murder. 
If I was you, I'd forget it. Forget all about that fellow who left the card. All right, Pinky. Anything you say. It don't do to get mixed up in things. Take Peggy Barron, for instance. She got mixed up with a mob, see, and people came asking her questions. She lost one eye. <laughs> they splashed vitriol in her face. Oh. Vitriol? What's vitriol? What? Well, tell me. What is it? Here. I've got a bottle right here in my pocket. Oh, no. Take no. it easy. Pinky. Why does it make that sound? It's potent stuff, vitriol is. It burns. Burns the flesh right off your bones, it would. A mere drop of this. Go on, smell it. Please, please, I, I wish you'd put the cork back on the bottle, Pinky. <laughs> Scared you, did I? I just wanted to warn you, that's all. Just in case anyone asks you any questions about that ticket and the man that left it at your table in the restaurant, see? Yes, Pinky. I see. <laughs> Uh, miss. Uh, yes, ma'am. May I take your order? I've got a friend coming, dearie. I'll have to wait for him, but I'll try to pick. Is the shepherd's pie good? Looks lovely. Nice and brown on top? Oh, it's a picture. What's your name, dear? Rose. Why, I do believe you're the lucky girl who found a ten shilling card yesterday. Oh. Did one of the other girls tell you that? How else would I know? Oh, yes, of course. They've been ragging me for not spotting the man and getting the ten-pound prize. What did he look like, the chap that left the ticket? Why, I... I don't remember. Here's two shillings, dear. Get me a glass of port, will you? Well, port don't cost all that much. One of those shillings is for you. Tell me how he looked. I... I don't know. I, I can't remember. I haven't got much of a memory for faces. You're lying. No, I'm not. I just fetched him a sausage roll, and I never saw him again. Oh, there's my friend now. I'm over here, Phil. Oh. <laughs> Change tables, eh? Yes. Uh, this is Rose, Mr. Corcoran. The lucky girl who found the card. Oh, pleased to make your acquaintance, young lady. I'll go and get your shepherd's pie now, if you like. Yes, do please, dear. I'll not be a moment with it. Well, Sophie, did she talk? No. Did she give a description of the chap? No. But then she said, I just fetched him a sausage roll. <laughs> What's so peculiar about that, if I may ask? I was with Fred Agle the whole morning, Phil. He could no more have sat down here in his condition eating a sausage roll than Matt McGandy. Then who did leave the ticket? And why? The man who killed him. Or oh, one of the men who killed him. And the why of it is for an alibi. Well, supposing your aunt is right. What can we do about it? I have my suspicions you did it, and so does that girl. I'm going to keep after her till she tells me what she knows. But I've got to move carefully, Phil. Hmm. If the murderer is who I think it is, that little waitress is the next victim on his list. And he won't waste much time before he shuts her up for good. You've heard a preview performance of Brighton Rock, starring Ida Lupino and Louis Hayward our next attraction in the Mystery Playhouse. This is a strange tale of mystery, intrigue, and a haunting love. And Miss Lupino and Mr. Hayward give two of their finest performances in it. So, be in your seats at curtain time when the Mystery Playhouse presents Ida Lupino and Louis Hayward in Brighton Rock. This is Sergeant X, putting his money in G.I. bonds and soldier deposits and closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.
Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. Extra, extra hero about the case of the lost and found. Tonight's Big Town story brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, used in the homes of 14 million Americans. Extra, extra. <laughs> Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town, the headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor, whose creed, as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the illustrated press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. <laughs> Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's headline story of The Lost and the Found. The Lost and Found columns of any newspaper are filled with heartache and tragedy, both great and small. But when a newspaper reporter vanishes, the reason and the consequences may be fatal. And such is the background of tonight's Big Town story that began as Lorelei Kilborn, ace crime reporter, entered the office of Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. Hello, Steve. May I have your ear for a moment? Sure thing, Laura, my lovely. Come in. Perch on my desk and take my mind off these news dispatches. Thanks. I'll try if I can find a corner. I'll throw those dispatches in the wastebasket and make yourself at home. Home is right. I don't believe you have any other home. Home is where I hang my hat, and this is it. What's on your mind, beautiful? Thanks for the compliment and lend me that right ear of yours. You've got both of them. Shoot. It's about that demon crime reporter and our so-called rival, the Big Town Gruesome Graphic. Dick Rudder? Mm-hmm. What's happened to that headline hound? Nothing trivial, I hope. Dick's missing, Steve. Missing? Mm-hmm. His managing editor's been trying to locate him all day. He's had him paged at every haunt and hangout, but no one's seen him or his hide. Oh, maybe he's off lone wolfing a scoop. Oh, no. Dick wouldn't leave his editor in the dark that long any more than I'd pull a stunt like that on you. Yeah, he's a crazy cub. Might forget he's a reporter, but Dick's an old hand. Phone Slayton on the graphic. Let me talk to him, Laura. Right, Steve. Um, while you're waiting, take a look at this graphic yesterday's. Dick's last byline yarn before he vanished somewhere between Tony's bar and grill in the graphic offices. Oh, hello, Mamie. Get me Slade and Emmy of the graphic, please. Yeah, I'll hold on. Oh, it's just a rehash of the Lucky Louie rub-out. We ran this in the press final night before last. Note that last paragraph, Steve. That's where Dick indulged in a little private game of dangerous guessing. Read it. Inspector Callahan of Homicide and Puzzle Police may be overlooking a bet and not questioning the banker who backed Lucky Lou. Why that crazy galoot? Uh, hold it, Steve. Maybe he has his boss on the wire. Here you are. Thanks. Hello, that you, Slayton? Yeah. What's the matter, Wilson? Need a lead for that ossified article you call the Illustrated Press? All the news that the graphic won't use? Listen, you moss-back fugitive from the journalistic junkyard. At least we can keep track of our reporters, except on Saturday nights. Where's Dick Rudder? Well, if you can find him, you can have him. Where'd you last hear from him? Night before last. He phoned in from Tony's bar and grill near your place. Then he got hold of something too hot for the wires, and he'd bring it in. But he never showed. You got anything? No, Laurel, I just told me you'd been phoning all over Big Town. Yep. Imagine me doing that to find a reporter. Well, that's easy. All I'd have to do is put myself in your place, and I'd be doing the same thing. Thanks, Steve. But it wouldn't do our hard-boiled reputations any good if we got around. Got any ideas about Rudder? No, I just wondered if it might be tied up with the Lucky Louie killing well, I might go out and listen to the wee small voices of the underworld. Well, thanks. You got me there, Steve. I don't know enough of the wrong people at the right time. Well, the wrong people don't talk. But I happen to know a few right ones who know the wrong ones and sometimes the right answers. Good. And if you get any right answers, tell me which edition of the Illustrated Press to buy. I'll send you a complimentary copy by messenger with Dick Rudder wrapped up inside. So long. So long, Steve. Now who's playing guessing games, Steve Wilson? We are, Laura Lai. Well, let's go scout our underworld listening post before someone wraps Rutter up in a sheet in the morgue. Oh, my head. Shut up, Rutter. I'll stuff some cotton down your throat. Not that gorgeous. My mouth already feels like an army's been marching through it barefooted. Oh, that doorbell gorgeous. Answer it before the top of my head jumps off and flies out your window. Okay, okay. Probably Marty the Hoop. So don't get your hopes up trying to get loose. Hmm, small chance. And look, if it should be my editor, don't let him in. 
As if that ain't what you've been hoping for. <laughs> she should walk in here and find me tied to a lady's love seat, trussed up hand and foot with nylons. The ancient name of rudder would be viscous. Would be what? Just another word for mud, baby. Well, your boss ain't going to find you here in my apartment or anywhere else if you don't cut the comedy and tell us what you know about Lucky Louie's 50 grand. Sorry, gorgeous. That's off the record. Look, you better answer the doorbell. Marty the Hooper's liable to think you're putting something over on him. You let me do the worrying about Marty. Hey, what's the big idea, Myra? Why don't you open up? Ah, <laughs> this nosy, newsy character's been keeping me busy. Mm, he done any singing yet? Not a peep. He's stalling for time like he was expecting somebody to show up and get him. Are you sure nobody saw you picking him up? Nobody seen me trunk him, and nobody seen me bringing him. You'll forgive me if I venture to suggest you're both nuts, and if you don't untie me and let me out of this charming den of iniquity, a certain character is liable to come knocking through your door like a big bad wolf. And who do you think that'd be, you lippy news hound? Another news hound, maybe. Name of Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. You're nuts, Rudder. I know all about that rack and Boston Wilson guy, and I know you don't work for him. Right, Marty, but Wilson is a very suspicious character. He's bound to have a hunch I'm on the trail of a hot story, and that's enough to start him on my trail. So what? How's he going to find you, with a Ouija board? Or a swami, maybe, but I'll bet you anything you've got, he will. Yeah, and I bet your life he don't. And the same goes if he does. Now, come on and spill it. Talk, you... Marty, cut it out. Put away that blackjack. Nothing doing. You had plenty of time to make him talk your way. Now, I'm going to try mine. Cut it out, Marty. Are you going to have you messing up my apartment? The heck with your apartment. <coughs> oh, now, look what you've done. You got yourself all excited and you're hooping again. Play off. I'll handle this rudder guy. Got another job for you. Uh, what kind of job? I've been thinking about what rudder said. Said about what? About that Wilson guy coming to look for him. So what? I keep telling you, Myra, ain't nobody knows we got him here. Yeah, I hear you saying it, Marty. But we're going to make sure. How are we going to do that? You're going to go find Wilson. Huh? Yeah. And if you find he's snooping around the dives asking questions, we'll get Rudder out of town. Okay, okay. We'll go tie a tail on Wilson. But if you ain't got the dope out of this lug when I get back, I'm going to beat it out of him. You hear that, Rudder? You'd better watch your step trailing Wilson, or you'll come back with him trailing you. Never mind me. You keep thinking about what I said. Well, beautiful, here we are. All cozy and alone again. Yeah. Rudder, why don't you get wise? Smarten up. <laughs> what would happen if I did get smart, honey child? Well, I just might see. Split that 50 grand with you, darling. Or tie one of those nylon gam glossies around my throat and watch me try to breathe through my popping eyes. Do I look the type? You look like a million gorgeous, but so does a tiger. So you don't want to play in my yard, eh? Sorry, sweetheart. I'm not sliding down your cellar door with my hands and feet tied with your nylons. Come on, Rudder. How about making it easy for mm -hmm. yourself? Mm -hmm. No, thanks, gorgeous. And I never did like raspberry-flavored lipstick. Why, you... All right, you stubborn lug. Davy Beaton's the only way to get him out of Thus, as Steve and Lorelei set out to find Dick Rutter, his captors anticipate the move, and for the exciting developments, we'll rejoin Steve and Lorelei in a moment. Yes, doctors have proved it in 820 scientific tests. Life Boy Health Soap in your daily bath gets skin cleaner. Yes, cleaner than any other leading soap can. That's right. After comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you are cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Here's the reason. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap in removing the invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. Cleaner than the eye can see. Yes, after 820 scientific tests, these doctors say Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a Life Boy bath every day. You love the creamy, rich lather, the wonderful mildness. Get Life Boy tomorrow. Now back to. 
to Pigtown and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei as they cruise the dark byways and check with their listening posts on the fringe of the underworld in search of Dick Rutter, missing crime reporter of the graphic arrival paper of the Illustrated Press. Say, boss, what do we got cooking for tonight? A game of hide-and-seek, Harry. Uh, who, who's hiding from whom and whom are we seeking? Well, somebody's playing button, button, who's got the button, and Dick Rudder of the graphic is the button. In which circumstances? Is it any skin off our necks? Yes, Harry. In spite of our rivalries, news hounds are one big family, and we all hang together so we don't hang separately. Oh, there's Mozart's Harbor Cafe. Slow down and stop, Harry. Hey, Miss Gilpin, you don't think our old pal Mozart would be hiding Rudder, do you? No, Harry, but we're hoping he'd be able to give us a lead on Rudder and save us a lot of blind man's buff. Come on, Laura. Eh, uh, boss, ain't this game getting kind of mixed up? Hide and seek at buttons and hanging together and separate and in a blind man's buff? Don't let it throw you, Harry. Looking for Rudder's liable to include a lot of things, like don't skip the gutter. Well, if it comes to tagging anybody, leave me in with my trusty monkey wrench. Right, Harry, it may come to that. Right now, you may ask a few of your hacky pals if they've heard any rumors about Rudder. God, I will, Mr. Wilson. Uh, do you want us to get the ladies' addresses or just the telephone numbers? Both. Come on, Arline. Let's go see Mozart. Gee, I hope Harry's right, Steve, but I'm afraid Rudder's off on something much less pleasant than a wolfing safari. Right, Laura and I, but I'll bet you're doing us the dollars. There's a woman mixed up in it. One way or another. Uh... Mozart still beating out his blues. Yes, you talk to him, my lovely. Why me? You do things for tongue. His music does things to me. I wish he'd let somebody back him for the big time instead of wasting his life in this joint. Well, it's his own joint, Laura. And besides, Mozart likes joints. And the lost souls who haunt joints because they're lonesome. Come on, let's go talk to him. Finished and the crowd cheers not. Hello, Mozart. Oh, hello, Lorelei. Welcome. Well, thanks, but why? Well, with you around, life laughs, and the leprechauns come out of the trees and dance. Like this. Mozart, that's the nicest thing said to me for a long, long time. Hello, Mozart. Hi, Steve. Uh, what happens when I show up? Well, when you show up. The lights go out. There's a shot. The sound of running feet. And the air is heavy with questions whose answers hide under wet stones. And, uh, if you're looking for Dick Rudder, you might try talking to a shape called Myra Winslow. Thanks very much. I guess you've heard I've been asking around. Who is she, Mozart, and where do I carry on the conversation? Well, she's an ex-chorus dame with Doe who staked Lucky Louie to a fling on a long shot at the pony tracks. And you figure she might think Rudder knows who killed him and got away with her share of the 50 grand Louie picked up at the track. We get the same total, Steve. And where does the moneyed Myra park her mules when she isn't playing with the horses, Mozart? Uh, the big town apartment, Suite 7B, with a terrace. Thanks, Mozart. We'll call on the lady. And see if she's entertaining. Good. Give her my regard. Hey, Mr. Wilson, boss. Hi, I'm outside. Hi, Harry. What's the matter, Harry? I ain't exactly sure, boss, but I thought we was going to go hunt this here rudder car. That's the plan, Harry, and Mozart's just giving us a lead. Well, that's fine, Mr. Wilson, but then how come somebody is tailing us? Who's tailing us, Harry? A runty character with a bark like a kid with a whooping cough followed us down here in a roadster and sidled up and listened to you and Mr. Wilson talking on a sidewalk, and then he hightailed it. Well, we must be getting warm. Let's go, Lorelei. Uh, now what kind of game are we going to play, boss? I think we'd better go call on a certain lady, or we're liable to be playing Body Body, Who's Got Rutter's Body. Boss, Big Town Terrace Apartments. And if you should ask me, it is one classy joint for a hideout. A locality has very little to do with the class of tenants residing therein, Harry. Oh, you're right, Steve. But wouldn't you know Dick Rudder would pick a layout like this for his jam? He would. And I just hope this is it. Let's go in and call on the lady in question. Hey, uh, you want I should stick around, boss? Yes, Harry, wait here. We'll be out in 
Half an hour. Oh, not at all. And in that case of emergency, I'll come right in after you, waving my little wand. That monkey wrench is going to get you in trouble one of these days, Harry. Uh, speaking of trouble, I hope you have not forgotten to remember that character which was eavesdropping on your conversation outside Mozart's joint. No, we haven't forgotten him, Harry. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, I think we'll meet him upstairs. Are we going right up or be announced, Steve? We're going to arrive unannounced, Lorelei. But if this place has a receptionist, I think we'll stop and buy a little information about our hostess and her guests. <laughs> Town Terrace Apartments. Sorry, madam. Mr. Ardsley no longer resides here. I'm sorry, madam. He likewise promised me a mink coat, but all I ever seen was a skunk going out the door. Goodbye. <laughs> Good evening, miss. Good evening, sir. May I be of any service to you? I'd like a little confidential information, if you can spare it. Oh, are you a process server? Oh, no. Sorry. A detective? Sorry, wrong again. Well, don't be sorry. You don't look like one. Thanks. What do I look like? Like you were going to try talking me into something. <laughs> Would you mind? You could always try. All right. What about the young lady in 7B, Miss Myra Winslow? Well, she isn't as young as she looks, and that hair comes out of a bottle. Oh, I never met the lady. There's some question about that, too. I hear she likes horses. Yeah, but she likes men better. <laughs> Have you seen her going out with any lately? No. That's funny. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her going out at all in a couple of days. Has she had any visitors? Not that I know of. Except Marty, and he ain't a visitor. Oh, who's Marty? He's a chauffeur. That's what she says. But if you ask me, I think he's really a gangster. Oh, thanks very much. Is Miss Winslow alone at the moment? Well, as far as I know. But there's a service elevator from the garage in the basement. And some very peculiar person had just come in that way. Thanks again. I'll remember that. You're welcome. And are you sure you're not a detective or something? Oh, no. I'm Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. And here's something for your trouble. Oh, well, thank you. But that isn't really necessary, Mr. Wilson. I'll keep it just the same. Are you married? So I've been told to a newspaper. Well, I'm married to the switchboard. So in case you should need anything, I'm here from six to one. I'll put that down in my little book of the numbers. The name's Cora. <laughs> Okay, Cora, I'll phone you if I need any more information. You're thinking about going up to see that Myra Winslow now? Yes, yeah, but first I'm going out to get my guardian. Guardian? You mean bodyguard? Well, in a manner of speaking, and on certain occasions, you might call Miss Laura like Kilburn exactly that. <laughs> Again, gorgeous. On you, that velvet job looks terrific. Thanks. Uh, do I get slapped around some more now, or do we wait for Marty the Hooper to come back with his silent slugger? I'm sorry, Rudder. You're a new type, and I lost my temper. Want a drink? Mm, no, thanks, sweetheart. I'll toast thee with mine eyes. The last time I tried one of your cheering cups, I went round and round the clock. I'm sorry about that Mickey I gave you. Besides, I don't want you out cold. I want you to tell me who got Louis 50 grand. The same person who got Louis. Who did? And if I were to say I don't know... I'd say you were a liar. Hmm. I was afraid that might be your attitude. Rudder, I staked Louis to five Gs, and he rolled it up into 50. Then somebody rolled the roll off him and rolled him in the ditch. So? Look, I'll still be making money splitting 50-50 with you if you help me get that roll. Untie me, and I'll roll it around my mind, beautiful. Listen, wise guy, you've had plenty of time to think it over. Well, i got to walk around and think, baby. In fact, right now, I could do my best thinking in a barber's chair. I need a shave. Mm. You'll need more than a barber to fix your face when Marty gets back and gives you a workout. Yeah, i got a notion he likes to work on guys. That's right. He says it kind of soothes his nerves. Incidentally, hasn't it occurred to you Marty might have uh, worked on Lucky Louie? Just for his nerves, of course. Marty, you're crazy. Am I? Marty works for you. He knew you were staking Louie. He must have known Louie made a killing at the track, so one and one make... Ah, speak of the devil. Shut up. You give me ideas. 
Hey, ideas like that, plus a gun like that, can get you the hot seat, sweetheart. You better on time, ain't Nothing doing, and shut up about your idea about Marty till I see what he's got to say. Okay, gorgeous, but don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah? That you, Marty? Yeah. <coughs> oh, what did you get around town? To- hey, who are you? Oh, I'm an exterminator, lady. I hear you've been complaining about... The get test. out of here. I didn't call for nobody. Who's that with you? Uh, Miss Kilburn, my assistant. Who specializes in ladybugs. What a comedy. The idea you're pushing your way into my apartment. We're looking for a pest known in the bug world as the rutter moth. Yes, quite the pest. Gets into things. You've no idea what he can do to a lady's wardrobe. Oh, I get it now. You're Steve Wilson. Oh, Steve, your reputation really is growing. Somebody must have warned her we'd show up. Where are you keeping Dick Rutter, Miss Winslow? Right in my room. However, in case you haven't noticed, I also have a gun. How could we miss? So try thinking twice before getting ideas about taking him out of here till Marty the Hoop gets back. Marty. So that's his name. I thought a little coughing was just the touch needed to get you to open that door. What do you know about Marty? Very little, but we expect to find out a lot more when he arrives. So do I, Wilson. So open that door and we'll wait for him in the other room with your pal Rudder. Aren't you going to a lot of dangerous trouble to get your share of Louis' 50000 Miss Winslow? That's my business. Get going. Open that door. That kind of business can lead to murder. Have you thought about that? Let me worry about that. Inside. Well, hello, Steve. And the Lorelei, beautiful as ever. Hello, Dick. You certainly look natural, posed on that love seat. Oh, Steve, is this a spot for Dusty Miller's camera? We'd all be happier if you had a gun. I don't think this calls for gunplay, Rudder. That's what you think. Don't look now, but we've got another guest. That goes for you, too, gorgeous. What are you talking about? By the door behind you, if you look carefully. Yeah. <coughs> Marty, how'd you get in here? You come in the back entrance before you let these nosy dopes in the front. Give me that gun, Myra, before you get hurt with it. I will not. Give me that. <laughs> Let it go. Now get over there with the rest of them dopes. Marty, what's the idea? Look, baby. I've been here long enough to hear this rudder guy trying to put a bee in your ear about me being a guy that's got Louie's role. Wait a minute, Marty. You don't think I swallowed that? If you don't get over there, you'll swallow something else. <coughs> Come on, Miss Winslow. You forgot to learn the rules before you started playing the game. You oughtn't to have kept your nose out of this, too, Wilson. (coughs) Yes, you may be right, Marty. But since I'm in, let's play it out. Stay put, wise guy. I got all the chips in this gun. And I'm playing them to win. Thus, Steve faces a showdown with the desperate Marty. And in a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. Remarkable, amazing. Yes, it's all of that. The doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. And remember, this purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So, bathe daily with Life Boy. <laughs> Back to Big Town for the payoff in tonight's story of Lost and Found. As Steve Wilson and his companions face a murderous little gunsel known as Marty the Hoop. Stay put, Wilson. I got nothing to lose by plugging a lot of you. <laughs> so you did kill Lucky Louie to get the 50000 he won on Miss Winslow's bet. Yeah. You named it, Wilson. And that 50 G's is going to take me a long ways from Big Town. <coughs> If you could just get out of this building, Marty. You and who else is going to stop me? Half a dozen homicide men armed with Tommy guns might persuade you. 
next you'll be telling me you phoned from on your way over here. Look, Wilson, I've been trailing you ever since you left the Illustrated Press office, and you ain't been near no phone, you... <coughs> Forget Marty. We came in a cab, and we had a driver. Oh, yeah? Give a look. Steve, he's, he's got Harry's monkey wrench. What did you do to Harry? Relax. This guy's lucky. He's down in the garage in the back of his hack, taped up like a Christmas turkey. Well, you seem to have it all arranged, Marty. We underestimated your ability. You sure did, Wilson. Now back up and turn around. Better listen to him, Steve. He's a jittery guy when he gets nervous. Yes, I know. Definitely the nervous type. Cut the guff. I got Wilson. Turn around, I said. You better see a doctor about that cough, Marty. Yeah, quit stalling, I tell you. I ain't got all night. Now turn around, you. Right, Marty. You don't have to get excited about it. I'll turn around, but first... Listen to me. Go on. Get back up there, you that silly. Get back. Sorry, Marty. I've just been waiting for this coffee. No. Get that gun, Norma. I got it, Steve. Carefully, he still got Myra's in his pocket. Thanks, Norma. I, I almost forgot this one. All right, Marty. Stop struggling. You'll cough yourself into a shroud. Very neat, Steve. Very neat. But how'd you know the guy had coughing fits? Well, a couple of people tipped me off by calling him Marty the Whoop. I didn't have anything to do with Louis killing Mr. Wilson. You know that. You know I was trying to help find the killer. You'll tell the police that, won't you? I'm sorry, Miss Winslow. You'll have to tell that to the judge when you answer to a kidnapping charge. But I haven't kidnapped anyone. I was only trying to get Mr. Rudder to help me get my money. The name's Dick, sweetheart. Uh, Bend down. Take your nylons off my hands and feet. Maybe I'll put in a good word for you. Uh, Just a minute, Miss Winslow. Uh, We mustn't disturb the evidence in the person of Mr. Rutter or the graphic. Hey, look, Steve. You can't do this. i got to call my office. I rather thought you might want to do just that, Rutter. Laura? Yes, Steve. Phone Fletch on City Desk. Give him the story and have him send Dusty Miller and his camera over for an exclusive close-up of Dick in that love seat. With pleasure, Steve. Hey, have a heart, Steve. You want to cost me my job, Slade, and I'll have my hide. <laughs> Don't worry, Runner. We won't publish the picture in the Illustrated Press. I just wanted it for my scrapbook. Maybe I can get a laugh out of it. All right, I guess you've earned it. But don't laugh yourself sick. Yeah, we'll try to avoid that. Well, I'm... Yes, Steve? While you're on the phone, call Callahan of Homicide and tell him to drop by and pick up Marty the Hooper for the killing of Unlucky Louie. So ended with the recovery of the stolen money and the subsequent arrest and conviction of the murderous Marty. Still another exciting adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson, Lorelei, and the staff of the Big Town Illustrated Press. And now, before hearing about next week's story, friends, have you tried Life Boy Health Soap in the big new bath size? Bath size Life Boy is generous, luxurious. Gives you mountains of mild, refreshing lather, oceans of bath time enjoyment. Remember, Life Boy in your daily bath gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Get new bath size Life Boy tomorrow. <laughs> Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story entitled Deadline at Dawn. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. And any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Now, speaking for Lever Brothers Company, this is Hugh James bidding you good night until next Tuesday night. Same time, same station, when you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero, all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and Deadline at Dawn, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, another fine Lever product. Extra, extra. New Rinso with sodium puts sunshine on your wash. Yes, rain or shine, New Rinso with sodium gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but actually whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but even brighter than brand new. It's because New Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, sodium. 
New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Find out for yourself how New Rinso with sodium puts sunshine in your wash. Only New Rinso contains sodium. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. Hero about deadline at dawn. Tonight's big town story brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, used in the homes of 14 million Americans. Big strong. Big strong. Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. The headline stories of a great city, dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor, whose creed, as with all great newsmen is emblazoned on the masthead of the Illustrated Press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and another Steve Wilson newspaper story of a vicious shakedown racket captioned Deadline at Dawn. And began at dawn as two young brothers returned from the Big Town Produce Center in a delivery truck of the family's food market, located on the south side of town. Come on, Tony, wake up. Help unload these fine Christmas trees. Okay, Caruso, don't be so cheerful. It's too early. It's still dark. Hey, what's the idea of driving around here in the alley? These Christmas trees go out front on the sidewalk. Hey, that's right. I'm thinking so hard about a fine Christmas present for Mama, I forget. Oh, sola mio, oh, Christmas time. Oh, I'm so happy for me and mine. Right down, Caruso. Save that for the mat. You wake the whole neighborhood. Ah, uh, Tony, my brother, where's your Christmas spirit? Yeah, there are more if that racket rat salesman hadn't showed up yesterday and told Mama we got to buy our stuff from some new outfit. Ah, uh, Tony, you and Mama, you worry too much. Me, I just tell that fellow the price is too much, and I forget about it. Yeah, wise guy. <laughs> We ain't forgot about you. Hey, what's that? Watch it, Caruso. There's another guy behind you with a gun in his mitt. Yeah, and the same goes for you, Tony. Hey, what do you want? If this is a stick-up, all you get is some bundles of Christmas trees. This ain't no stick-up. What's the big idea? The big boss sent us to learn you a lesson on doing like you're told when it comes to buying supplies. No, this is America. A free country. Take it and... easy, Caruso. Yeah, take a beat or you'll get one. All right, hand me a rod, creepy. I'll cover these comics while you decorate them Christmas trees with that kind of kerosene. Kerosene on the trees? It will kill the trees. That's the big idea. Oh, no, you don't. For the children, these trees are. Get away, Caruso. We can get more trees. No, my brother, it's the idea. Move or I'll douse you with some of this kerosene and send you up with them lousy Christmas trees. Get away, Caruso. No, Tony, my brother, it's the idea. Caruso, lay off. Yo, yo. He's got me by the throat. Let him have it. Break away from him. Swing him around. You don't shoot my brother. Oh, no. Jojo, oh. oh. get this lug off of my throat. Yeah. And how? You dogs. <laughs> name of a nameless dog. <laughs> Thanks, Jojo. That'll learn the slug. Yeah. And the rest of the holdouts in this part of town. Now, doll some Christmas trees. Light them up like a torch. Let's get out of here. Oh, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Good morning, Steve. Hey, I put you on a plane to Washington to cover preparations for the newborn administration. I'm still at the airport. I'm grounded, waiting for a signal to go. Well, get back on that plane, my lovely, and keep out of trouble. Mm. Good luck. Hi, Steve. When did you get in? Hello, Dusty. Just a few minutes ago. Come in. 
I've been out at the airport briefing the Laurel Eye on a trip to Washington for some pre-inauguration articles. She's still grounded out there. Say, hey, isn't that kind of risky, sending that luscious lovely down there among all those handsome young senators and reps with reps? That's why I'm sending her. Oh, uh, you can, sir? No, I'm just a managing editor. Well, I've heard there's very little difference when it comes to getting a story. Uh-oh. Who's been filling your cup with hemlock-flavored printer's ink, Dusty? <laughs> Nobody. Uh, seriously, Steve... I just pulled this little masterpiece of press photography out of the hypo and thought you might be interested. Oh, let's see. Uh, take it easy. That print's still wet. Well, it's a little early for people to be burning Christmas trees. Yeah, that's what I thought, Steve. I shot this shot in an alley back of the Salerno food market on South Street. Trees have been doused with kerosene before somebody put a match to them. Why? That's what the police would like to know. Also, why one of the Salerno brothers is in a coma in the hospital. And there's another Salerno brother going around with a lump on the head and plenty on his mind. But you might want to look into it. Yes, I've had tips. There's a new mob moving into the produce racket on the south side, Dusty. This could be their first act of violence in a selling campaign of intimidation. Yeah. Who runs the store? Mama Salerno. Her husband got it in the First World War, and then her boys went the full course with plenty of battle stars in the second. And come home and have to fight racket rats to make an honest living. Yeah, only you don't get any purple hearts when you get shot for that. Shall I get my camera in case you should decide to join the campaign? If the Salernos will let us in? Yes, Rusty, get your camera and plenty of flash bulbs. I have a pretty good idea who's back of this. Whether the Salernos will let us help them or not. <laughs> Yes, Tony? I'm gone out for a while. Oh, no, Tony, wait. Maybe we hear from the doctor at the hospital about Caruso again tonight. No, Mama, the doc said he wouldn't be out of the coma till morning. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Oh, no, please, Tony. You need a rest, a little sleep. All last night, the market's all day at the police station, not answering the questions about what happened to Caruso. Tomorrow morning, I'm going back to a regular wholesaler for the turkeys we got orders for. Then I'm going to go with you, Tony. You don't go alone. No, 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 Mama. You've got to be here at the shop early and decorate the windows. Later I can do that. I won't let you go alone to the market. I won't be alone, Mama. Tony, your papa's gone for the store. Yeah. No, Tony. No guns. No killing, even for what is right. I know what I'm doing, Mama. I got a phone call this evening about where I'm to buy all our produce from now on. Oh. I'm going to go see how much they want for turkeys. Oh, no. No, please, Tony, don't go. Maybe, maybe they're going to kill you, too. And if Caruso dies, I got nobody left. Nobody. No, 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 no. Don't worry, Mama. Caruso will be all right. You stay here. No. I'm going to make sure nothing happens to him again. No, please, Tony. Oh, come back. Come back, my son. Come back. <laughs> Thus, events move swiftly toward a climax, even if Steve Wilson prepares to take a hand in the fight against a vicious racket. Life Boy gets skin cleaner than the eye can see. Yes, Life Boy gets skin cleaner than the eye can see. Doctors have proved it in 820 scientific tests. Life Boy health soap in your daily bath gets skin cleaner than any other leading soap can. That's right. After comparing the effects of daily bath with different soaps... These doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you are cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Now, uh, here's the reason. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap in removing the invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Yes, Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. After 820 scientific tests, these doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. You love the creamy rich lather, the wonderful mildness. Get Life Boy tomorrow. <laughs> Back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's timely story, captioned, Deadline at Dawn. 
Learning that storekeepers of Big Town are being victimized by a new gang of produce racketeers, Steve and Dusty Miller, a news photographer, are on their way to the south side in the cab of Harry the Hack. Say, boss, Dusty. Say it, it, Harry. Uh, How come we're hightailing down to the south side? Well, Dusty picked up a lead on a new gang of chiselers moving into the produce rackets, Harry. Uh, Stop at the Salerno Market in the middle of the next block. Jack, boss. And if you and Dusty should have any need of me and my trusty monkey wrench whatsoever, I'll be happy to oblige. Thanks, Harry. Just wait in your hack. I may want you to drive us to a rat's nest down near the river. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Hey, you want me to bring my mug mugger, Steve? No, leave your camera in the hack, Dusty. Yeah, these folks are kind of camera shy when there's trouble in the wind. I can't say I blame them. Say, there's Mama Solana decorating one of the store windows. Oh, boy, what a shot. Oh, look, let me get my box and flash. Just just one through the glass, No, wait, Steve. Dusty. It might upset her and make her afraid to talk. Okay, but oh, what a shot. Madonna the market. Be, ye, be of good spirit. Have joy. Have pity. Have faith. Say, hey, Steve, isn't that your old pal, the prophet? Yes, yeah, just a minute. He may know something about what's been happening around here this morning. Hello, prophet. Hear ye. Oh, who calls my name in the voice of a friend? Uh, Steve Wilson of the press, Prophet. Oh, Mr. Wilson, what brings you from your ivory tower of words? I'm hoping you might be able to tell us something about the Solano trouble. Oh, a little while ago now, the elder son, Tony, goes from the store toward the river. Toward the river? Aye, and the sound of his footsteps as he passed me in the dark were as those of an avenger seeking out these creatures of evil who smote his brother down. Did you talk to him, Prophet? Do you know where he was going? Nay, but perhaps his mother would know. Well, let's hope she does. Thanks, Prophet. Come on, Dusty. Let's get in there and talk to him. Okay, Steve. Uh, Let's hope she'll open the door. Tarry not, my friends, for there is evil abroad this night, and softly o'er the city beats the wind. I sure hope that poor old guy isn't a real prophet, Steve. That remains to be seen, Mm. Dusty. Well, the door's locked. You'll have to knock and hope she'll open up and talk. Ah, She's getting out of the window and coming to the door, but she looks kind of scared. Yes, but she's unlocking the door. Yes, mister. What do you want? Good evening. Are you Mama Solano? Yes, I am Mama Solano. Who are you? I'm Steve Wilson, a newspaper man, Mrs. Solano. A newspaper man? I, I, I can't tell you nothing. My sons, they speak for me, but Caruso's horse in the hospital and Tony's are not here. Mrs. Solano, we know your eldest son has been shot. Defending your right to conduct your business without interference from hoodlums. See, si. see, si, that, that is right. And I'm sure you've been threatened with more violence if you refuse to cooperate with the racketeers. See, si, Mr. Wilson... So please go away and leave us alone. Already my one son may die. Mrs. Solano, this thing is not finished. These racket rats won't leave you alone, and you can't fight them without help. Why cannot they leave us in peace? For a most, they could not make much money, even if we bought everything where they say we must buy. Because you and your sons have set an example of courage and defiance, Mrs. Solano. If they can't force you into line... Other storekeepers will be encouraged to fight them. Oh, but at what price, Mr. Wilson? Already I have perhaps lost one son. And now for Tony, too, I am afraid. But how will it help to talk to you? Because I think we may be able to help you if you'll tell us where Tony has gone tonight. That I cannot tell you, Mr. Wilson. That I do not know. Haven't you any idea, Mrs. Solano? We know he went toward the river. To the river? Yes, and we have reason to believe he's meeting someone connected with the produce racket. See, si. that I think too. A phone call, Tony God, but he would tell me nothing. But not to worry, for with him he he took his papa's gun from the store. A gun? Good grief! If he walks into that racket's rat's nest with a gun. I know. I beg him, but Tony will not listen. I cannot stop him. I I can only stay here and keep busy with my hands and. And pray with my heart. He didn't mention any names, any places, Mrs. Solano? No, Mr. Willis. No names, no places. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Well, I'd be proud to have your kind of fear, Mama Solano. Oh, Mr. Wilson, can you help? 
Is there something maybe you can do? There's one slim chance. I have a strong hunch about the men he may be dealing with. Dusty. Yes, Steve. Get Harry to stay here with Mrs. Salerno. Have him lock the store and phone the police at the first sign of trouble. Right, Steve. What's your hunch? I'm going to pay a call on a produce racket rat by the name of Lod Malone. Yeah, Lord Malone. Hey, Lord. It's me, Jojo. So what? Better come down here to the warehouse. What's up? That Tony Salerno dope showed with a rod. What happened? We got him. What do we do with the dope? Dead or alive. Kick him? Put him in the freezer. With the turkey? Yeah. Before. Maybe he'll buy him. <laughs> at our price. Whatever he want. Deep freeze him hard at 20 below. Stubborn dope. <laughs> Hello, Malone. Wilson. So you remember. Good. It'll save time. I got time. What do you got? A hunch you're asking for another prison stretch. (laughs) That's Alano shooting at dawn this morning. Had your trademark all over it, Malone. (laughs) He who laughs last is the dumbest. (laughs) Where is Tony Salerno? What's happened to him? Do I get a prize for the right answer? A chair for the wrong one? You got me wrong, Wilson. I'm a reformed carrier. Not according to my confidential reports. You've got too many ears around Big Town, Wilson. Somebody ought to do something about that. Your victims have too many tongues, and you can't silence all of them with guns, My Mom. new business is on the up and up. You haven't even crawled out of the sewer, Malone. Five years in prison didn't teach you a thing. I ate them silly. <laughs> 300 pounds. <laughs> well, that's a lot of fat to fry in the chair. All right, you want to look over my plan? Thanks very much. I'll take you up on that. Okay. Maybe you'll find the Salerno dope with my stock of turkeys. You better be alive, Malone. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Why pull in the alley, Malone? Why not stop out front? The side door's open at night, and besides, <laughs> I wouldn't want to get a parking ticket on this nice new jalop. Yes, the police might find it had been stolen. You print that in your paper, and I'll sue you. It wouldn't put you away for long enough, Malone. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's go in the plant and see if you can find it. Nice, long wrap to pin on me, you nosy noosey. Thanks very much. Your cooperation is overwhelming. Suppose I don't care to play the fly to your spider's act. Come again? I don't get it. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Come on. I said, suppose I don't care to walk into a pretty obvious trap. You should have thought of that sooner. This jogger says, come on. Oh. I didn't think you'd risk a return rap for carrying a gun. Well, this is a special occasion on account of you, Wilson. I'm highly flattered. Hold it, Wilson. Clam up. We got company. Just a blind guy from the sound of his cane. Clam up. Ye ye who walk in darkness, come to the light. Beat it, you loony. You're off your beat. Who speaks? Who speak? Never mind. Beat it, bum. Yes, beat it, old man. Go back to the street where people will listen to what you have to say. Aye, back to the light where I shall proclaim that the hosts of evil do gather. But wait a minute, Pop. Uh, here's five bucks. Go souse yourself. Money? Nay. Well, take it, old man. Render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. At the moment? Aye, for the poor, the blessed, and the unpossessed. I will take Pontius Pilate's gold. Why didn't you shoot the poor old devil, Malone? I'm superstitious about guys like that. Especially blind and cracked characters, and he's both. Yes. Most savages are afraid of the afflicted. Well, that ain't going to help you. Come on, Wilson. Inside. Let's go. You don't give me much choice. Well, it's a filthy-looking place to store food. People have to buy and eat just a temporary dump till we get going. Where do you keep the turkeys Tony Salerno came to price? Or was that just a gag? No, no gag. 
We've rigged up a freezer room. We can keep it down at 20 below for the perishable stuff. Hello? Where is Tony Solano? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> hey, lad. That you? Yeah, Jojo. Where's the creep? Frost from that Salerno slug. Uh, hey. Who's the big guy you're covering with that rod? A nosy newspaper slug named Wilson. What's he got, Larry? It don't matter. Where have he tipped the cops? He was playing a hunch, and cops are too busy to listen to newsies' hunches. Suppose he was trailing a tail. You'd be as easy to follow as a hippo in a circus parade. No tail. I made sure of that. Death is the only thing you can be sure of in your racket, Malone. Yeah. <laughs> it's right, Wilson. Cover him, Jojo. This heavy heater is making my hand tired. Sure, lad. What'll I do with him? He wants to see Salerno. Let him. In the deep freeze? Where else? They want to talk private. There won't be anybody in there to disturb him except some cases of frozen birds. Mm. They can talk turkey. <laughs> I'll make the jokes. <laughs> Get going. Oh, uh, wait on it, Malone. The police know you own and operate this place. They'll come looking for Tony Solano and for me. Don't worry about them finding you, Wilson. The river's just out back when you're iced like a mackerel. You're signing your own death warrant, Malone. You're mixed up, Wilson. I'm signing yours. Take him in the deep freeze and put the chill on him, Jojo. Okay, Lord. Come on, slug. And tell the creep to get down to the hash wagon and get me a ham and rye and a piece of pie. <laughs> Thus, Steve has deliberately walked into a deadly situation in order to help Tony Salerno, victim of a vicious racket. In a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. It really is amazing, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. And remember, this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So bathe daily with Life Boy. And ask for Life Boy in the new big bath size. It's generous, luxurious. Get new bath size Life Boy tomorrow. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he finds himself locked in an improvised freezing chamber with a produce racket victim in tonight's headline story captioned Deadline at Dawn. Listen, Tony, get on your feet. We've got to keep moving, Tony, or we'll freeze to death. All right, but who are you? What have they got you locked in here with me for? I'm a newspaper man, Steve Wilson. I heard you'd gone after the racket rats who shot your brother. They killed my brother. No, no, Tony, your brother isn't dead. I checked the hospital. He's got a chance to pull through, and so have we if we keep moving. Now, come on, Tony. Come on. Walk. I'm so cold. I was frozen. I can hardly move Hands and feet are numb. I know, I know. You've been in here longer than I have. It's below zero. But to stop, Tony, to lie down is to die. Now, come on, keep moving. Well, what's the good who think to look for us in here? Well, the prophet knows I'm in this warehouse, the, Tony. The prophet? I, I saw him tonight on the, on the way down here. Yes, he told me. How will he help? Dusty Miller, one of my press photographers, trailed us from Malone's office. Now, even if he lost us, the prophet will find him. Tell him where I am, and Dusty will notify the police. Yeah, they, they, they better hurry. Hey, Mr. Wilson, I, I, can't, I can't keep on. My, my legs are numb. Couldn't we build a fire out, out of crates? Get warm. Well, the smoke would smother us in this windowless room. I'd, I'd rather smother maybe... Maybe even... Be quick. No, 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 no. The fire would use up the oxygen, Tony, and... Uh-oh, fire. Tony, you've given me an idea, maybe an out. How? Wait a minute, Tony, I get something to burn. 
Fire. Fire. You know, keep us warm. I, I'd rather die warm. I'm not going to die in here, Tony, if my hunch about this place is correct. Well, what hunch? Wait till I light this torch. I'm made out of the wrapping of these frozen turkeys. Tony, uh, look up there at the ceiling. Uh, I, I can't. I, I can hardly move. I'm, I'm sleepy. I want to lie down. Sleep. No, no. No, Tony. Uh, Tony, go to sleep and you'll never wake up. Now fight it a minute. Fight it till I try something. You were... Are you going to try? There's a sprinkler system in this old warehouse, Tony. Protection against a fire. If I can start it with this torch, an alarm bell will ring and the fire department will come bring the police. Oh, I'm sleepy. Let me, let me lie down. No, 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 no. Fight it, Tony. Give me a chance to climb up on these crates. I've got to get up there before this torch burns out. Can you reach it? Yes, now keep talking, Tony. Keep awake. Um, I, I Maybe they're... Ain't any water in the pipes. There's got to be. There is. Come on, Tony. Let me help you over to the door. Uh, how, will, how will that help? Listen, Tony, listen. Yeah? The sudden release of the water pressure automatically set off a fire bell inside and outside the warehouse. Uh, uh, they'll drown before they find no, us. No, Malone and his mugs have got to get us out of here before the fire department and the police arrive. We've got to be ready for them. Well, I... Oh... I, I, I can hardly move. Just leave that to me, Tony. Now lean against these crates. Stay here. I'll yeah. get behind the next pile of crates by the door. Yeah. I'll shoot us down. Not if I can help him. I'll hold him, Tony. Somebody's unlocking the door. All right, you smart slugs. Starting that sprinkler, bringing the fire boys and the cops. Come on out of here. Let's take a walk. No, thanks. Oh. Oh. Stay down, you rat. And lend me that gun. Thanks. Let go, Jojo. Get those slugs out of there. No, Malone. You step in here and help get Tony Solano out of his death trap. Wilson, how did you get Jojo's rock? I smothered him with a crate of Christmas turkeys. Come on. Get Tony Salerno out of here before he dies, and you burn. Okay, take that gun out of my stomach, and I will. Okay, but it'll be in your back, and watch your step. My fingers are numb, and I can't be sure how hard I'm pulling on the trigger. Come on, Tony. There's one more rat on the loose around here. Oh, no, there isn't, Steve. Oh, welcome, Dusty. Where is the creep? He's sleeping off a slug I gave him with 280 bucks worth of camera. Well, cheap at twice the price. Get Tony Salerno out of this freezer. Okay, Steve. Come on, Tony. I got some good news for you. Oh, about my brother, Caruso? Yeah, he's okay. Last reported holding hands with a pretty nurse and warbling, drink to me only with thine eyes. Oh, good. And, and, and Mama? Mama Salerno's got Harry the Hack in your grocery store window, polishing apples and tying them on your Christmas tree. Hey, what about this overstuffed porker, Steve? I think we'll just keep him on ice till the police get here, Dusty. And let them hang him on their Christmas tree. And so ended happily for the Salernos and other potential victims of the vicious produce racket with the arrest and conviction of Malone and his gang, another exciting newspaper adventure of Steve Wilson and his staff of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Now, before telling you of next week's Big Town story, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Get Life Boy health soap tomorrow. Friends, if you're sending relief packages of food or clothing overseas, investigate CARE. CARE's a non-profit agency that sends more for less, sends it swiftly, guarantees delivery. Ask about CARE packages at your local CARE office now. Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story entitled... Prelude to Christmas, another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. 
In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. And any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Now, speaking for Lever Brothers Company, this is Hugh James bidding you good night until next Tuesday night, same time, same station, when you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero, all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and Prelude to Christmas, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, another fine Lever product. Extra, extra. <laughs> New Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Yes, rain or shine, New Rinso with Solium gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but actually whiter than new. And washable colors, not just brighter, but even brighter than brand new. It's because New Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Find out for yourself how new Rinso with Solium puts sunshine on your wash. Only new Rinso contains Solium. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. about prelude to Christmas. Tonight's Big Town story brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap, used in the homes of 14 million Americans. Extra, extra. Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town, the headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor whose creed is with all great newsmen is emblazoned on the masthead of the illustrated press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town, and Steve Wilson's timely and touching story of a child's simple faith, and captioned, Prelude to Christmas. This is the story of the eternal struggle of faith against fear in the mind of a child. And began as ten-year-old Greta Vilna and her father, two of a thousand displaced persons from the shambles of Central Europe, stood at the rail of a mercy ship as it steamed into Big Town Harbor. Papa! Papa! I am frightened. Why are all the little boats blowing their whistles at us? Are they going to send us away from America? Make us go back? No, Greta, my darling one. That is the great heart of America welcoming us. But, Papa, what of the boat with officials in uniforms? What of them, my child? Except for the American GI soldiers at RDP camp. I am afraid of officials in uniforms, Papa. You must not be afraid anymore, my darling. But, Papa, it was officials of the government who came and took you from your newspaper and Mama from our home and... Mama died. There, there, my darling. That is over, finished, done. We must remember and yet we must forget. But the officials, they come to question us. Yes, but also to welcome us. Like the little boats out there. And you must not be afraid, for here in America, the officials of the government are the servants of the people, not the people, slaves of the officials. But we are not Americans. No, but we are guests of the people of America. Through their Congress... They have invited us here to live and work and pursue happiness. And if we are worthy of their faith in us, we can one day become citizens of this great land. Like Uncle Peter in 
Orica? Yes, Greta. And like your Aunt Reba, who lives in Big Town, who will be waiting for us at the dock. But, Papa, what if something is wrong? If there is another mistake and we are sent back? It will not happen. You must not be afraid, Greta. I want to have faith. I do not want to be afraid anymore, but so much has happened. I know, my darling. Your little lifetime has been filled with tragedy and sorrow, but we must forget what has been. Look to the future. I'll try, Papa. <laughs> Come, my darling. Dry your eyes. Some gentlemen are coming this way. One with a camera to take pictures, perhaps for the American newspapers. But why would they want to take a picture of us, Papa? Because you are a very pretty little girl, young lady. Get a good picture, Dusty. Oh, how could I miss? Hello, young lady. Can I shoot you? Shoot me? Oh, Papa. It's all right, Greta. The gentleman means may it be a picture of you. Oh, yes. I remember now. In our camp, the G.I. soldier said, shoot for almost everything. It is American slang. That's right, young lady. And I beg your pardon, sir, but the ship's captain tells me you're Gregory Vilna, a newspaper editor imprisoned by the Nazis. Uh, yes. Oh, I... Papa. Be careful what you say. Oh, Greta, Greta, do not be afraid. No harm will come of speaking here. Is that not so, sir? Yes, thank heaven. And now, uh, young lady, if you let my photographer take some pictures of you while I talk to your father. Yes, sweetheart. Come on over here to the rail and I'll shoot you. Oh, I mean, take a picture looking at the big town skyline. And try to look impressed, even if it is only a pile of stone. But I am very Im impressed, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> your photographer, <laughs> He understands children. Yes, in spite of the fact that his specialty is criminals. The criminals? Uh, and you, sir? Well, I'm Steve Wilson, managing editor of the Big Town Illustrated Press, Mr. Vilna. And I'm hoping he'll come to my office. Uh, your, your office? We'd uh, like to do a story on your experiences in the Polish underground. Oh, I would be most happy, Mr. Wilson, but in only two days, Greta and I must take the train for Oregon. Well, could you come to the Illustrated Press about six... Tomorrow evening? Yes, Mr. Wilson. At six, I will be there without fail. Oh, Papa, Mr. Dusty, the photographer, has told me I will soon see Christmas trees and many helpers of St. Nicholas, which my G.I. friends called Sandy Claus. Santa Claus, sweetheart. And Big Town is just crawling with them this time of year. Yes, Greta. And if you'll come along with your father to my office tomorrow evening, I'll have Dusty take you out to meet some of Santa Claus' helpers. To your office? Papa must go to your office? Yes, Greta, but just for a little talk. Oh, no, Papa. It was just for a little talk. You went at home and they put you in prison. Not here, my dear. And Mama, for food rations, she went and never came back. <laughs> never came back. Not here, my darling. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Not here. It, it will not happen here. Excuse me a moment, Mr. Villain, my private wire. Uh, but, but of course, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Oh, Lorelei, where are you? I thought you'd be on the Washington Plain. Senate reorganizations? Yes, stay there. I have a special feature I wanted you to do, but I'll cover it. Look out for those Washington wolves, my lovely. Just call me later tonight. Uh, you're a feature writer? Yes, and a very good one, Mr. Villain. But I have most of the facts, and I'll do the article on you myself. Oh, well, I'm honored, Mr. Wilson. I am the one who is honored, Mr. Vilna, in being able to publish the story of a newspaper editor who sacrificed everything in defending the freedom of the press. Well, there were many of us, Mr. Wilson. We did what we could to stem the tide of tyranny, but tragically, it, it marches on. Tyranny does not die in battle so long as it lives in the hearts of man. And so long as fear and the memory of fear haunts the spirit of the living is... With my little Greta. Yes, what to match your daughter, Greta? I hoped you'd bring her with you. No, poor little Greta. For so long as she can remember, she has lived in the shadow of fear. She has suffered hunger, witnessed horror. She walked with death. Only joy she does not know. I have never heard her laugh. Well, in time she will, Mr. Vilna. In that, time. That I pray. And she yet has faith in God. That they could not destroy, and it, it fights her fear even of my coming here to visit you. Oh, of course, you'd be worried until you return, and I mustn't keep you. Yes, I, I must go, for, for my sister has prepared a surprise for Greta. A complete Christmas, although it is not yet time. A complete 
Christmas? Yes. You see, we will be on the long train ride to my brother's home in Oregon, and greater fear Shanty Nikolai, uh, <laughs> St. Nicholas, will not be able to find us on the train. So tonight we, we pretend and, and celebrate, uh, as is our custom in the old country, Christmas Eve with a fine dinner, a, a beautiful decorated tree, uh, and presents for Greta. Um, That's a wonderful idea, Mr. Wilmer. Would... Uh, would you come, Mr. Wilson? Or would you honor us? Could I come later? If you would. Well, as soon as I check a few things with my city editor, Mr. Wilmer. Uh, just a minute. Yes? Yes, yes Mr. Wilson's here. Who's calling? Reba Wuchik? My sister? Why should she call me here? Well, here, you'd better talk to her, Mr. Wuchik. She sounds upset. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello? Uh, what is it, Reba? Greta? No, she's not here. You have looked in the neighborhood? Oh, my poor darling, if she is lost, she will become more frightened in this great city. Yes, yes, I will come at once. Mr. Wilson, uh, Greta became frightened I might not come back. She tried to follow me, wished to share my fate, and now, now she is lost in the snow and, and darkness of this vast city. She is lost. <laughs> Thus, haunted by fear for her father, Greta Vilna, a stranger in a strange land, wanders the streets of Big Town. And for the heartwarming adventures that await her, we'll return in a moment. You know, some people think all soaps are the same. Not me. I always felt that Life Boy Health Soap got me cleaner somehow. And now I know I'm right. Because doctors have actually proved it in 820 scientific tests. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps... These doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Startling, isn't it? Well, here's the explanation. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap in removing the invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. After 820 scientific tests, these doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. You like Life Boy's creamy rich lather, its wonderful mildness. Get some Life Boy tomorrow. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's story captioned, Prelude to Christmas. While talking to Gregory Vilner, editor and hero of the underground, who has just arrived in America with a group of displaced persons, Steve learns that Vilner's daughter is lost. Meanwhile, on a cold street corner on the south side of Big Town, a character by the name of Willie the Weep, dressed in a moth-eaten Santa Claus costume, is trying to collect money for the Illustrated Press Christmas Fund. Give, give, folks, give a little to poor old Santa Claus. Give what you can so them ain't got hardly anything at all. You can have a little Christmas cheer. Give, give, give. Sandy Claus, oh, Sandy Claus, please help me. Great day. What are you doing out alone in all this dark and snow and cold, little girl? I... I am looking for my father. Please help me. Sure, I will. But you oughtn't to be out alone in the cold and the snow. I'm not afraid of the cold or the dark. All my life I've lived in the cold and the dark. Well, who are you, little girl? I am Greta Vilna. Please help me, Sandy Claus. Sure, sure, I will. But where do you live? I... I don't live anywhere now. Not... not anywhere? Once I lived in Europe. And I am on my way to Oregon... On a train tomorrow. But but where are you staying in Big Town? With my Aunt Reba. Aunt Reba who? I I can't remember her married name. Where does she live? I don't know. Don't you know the house or the street? There are so many houses all alike. So many streets all alike. Oh, you poor little girl. This is terrible. <laughs> Please don't cry for me, Sandy Claus. I'm not afraid for myself. Only for my papa. Where's your papa gone? To a newspaper office. A newspaper office? 
What newspaper? I, I can't remember, but he had to go. And I'm afraid they'll send him away to prison like they did at home. No, they won't, miss. Newspapers don't ever send nobody to prison in America. They only try to help the police. The police. That's where I better take you, miss. To the police station. Oh, no. Please, no, Sandy Cross. I'm afraid of police stations. Why? Because people who go to police stations hardly ever come home again. Not here, miss. Why, if that was so in America, there wouldn't be enough jails to hold them. Now, you come on. I, I got to get you out of this cold and snow. No. Please, Sandy Claus. Don't take me to the police station. Please help me find my papa. All right, miss. I know a newspaper fellow what can find almost anybody. You come along, and I'll bet he'll help you to find your papa. Oh, Gregory, you're here. Gregory, I'm sorry. I could not stop it. No no news then, Riba? I need love. Nothing. Nothing. It, it is not your fault, Riba, and, and Greta will be found. Found? But how? My good friend here, Mr. Wilson, has the police searching, also his reporters and, and photographers. Yes, and I'm sure we'll have some word soon, Mrs. Wuchak. But in this great city, so many things can happen. Terrible things. And also wonderful things as well. Oh, if only there was something we could do. I keep praying, praying. Oh, poor Jetrogi. There. Mr. Wilson, I have a thought of where to look for Greta. Well, what is it, Mr. Wilner? We'll try anything. A church in our home city. Even after it was bombed, Greta, when she was troubled and afraid, went to the rubble and ruin of our cathedral... And pray. Yes. Lost, fearful of your safety, she might go into one of the churches in this neighborhood. Yes, any church, any house of God. It would make no difference to a child seeking service. Oh, to any of us, Mr. Vilner. And they're all open, preparing for holiday services. Come on, Mr. Vilner. I told Harry the Hack to wait downstairs with his cab. We'll make the rounds. Yes, go. Gregory, friends, go. Hurry. I will wait here and pray that you find her. I am sure we shall find her, Reba. We will call you when we do. And you can take the turkey out of the oven, the presents out of the closets, and light the tree for Greta's very special Christmas. Come on, come on, little girl. Is it much farther to your newspaper friend who can help find my papa, Sandy Claus? Yeah, but we're going to stop at my friend's Mozart's Harbor Cafe and get you warm while I mooch, I mean, borrow a taxi fare to take you to my friend, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson? I have heard that name. He's kind of important on account... Oh, but... wait, Sandy Claus. Listen. Listen to what? To the music. The church music. Holy music. It's coming from that cellar right there. Oh, 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 that's just a little old waterfront mission run by a poor old blind preacher folks calls a prophet. Please take me in there a minute, Sandy Claus. But I thought you wanted to find your papa in a hurry. I do, I do. And I want to ask God to help us. Pray to God to help us. Please, Sandy Claus, please. All right, Miss Dredd. Please come in with me and... Help me pray to find Papa. All right, but you'll have to help me. Because I guess I've just about forgot how to pray. Almost. Come ye, come ye faithful to the fold. If thy spirit be troubled with doubt, let him whom those among us call God, Jehovah, Allah, or some other name of faith, let him lift up thy weary spirits on the wings of prayer. In whatever tongue thou hast been taught to speak his words of faith. Amen. Please, Mr. Willie, kneel with me and help me pray. You, you start praying, Miss Greta. That's my friend Mozart playing the harmonium for the prophet. I want to ask him something. All right, but please come back. I'll be right back. Oh, Holy Father, please help me find my own dear earth. Willie, 
Willie the Leap, what are you doing here? I found a little girl what's lost, Mozart. I was on my way to your cafe to borrow a cab for her to take her to Mr. Wilson when she heard you playing holy music and wanted to come in here to pray. Well, the prophet's out Mr. Six, so I came down to help him out. Who's the kid? One of them, one of them poor, misplaced people that come in on that boat yesterday. A displaced a DP. How'd she get lost? Looking for her father, what used to be a newspaper man. And she's afraid he's been arrested or shot or something. She's had an awful time, and she's just afraid of about everything, Mozart. Uh, I shouldn't wonder, poor kid. So I figured Mr. Wilson could help find her father quicker than anybody else in Big Town. Yeah, that's a good idea. Going back and phone him, Willie. All right, but could you lend me a nickel, Mozart? I'm kind of broke. Except for this money I've collected for the Illustrated Press Christmas Fund... And that's for presents for the poor kids. And I can't use any of it. Somebody ought to make you a bank president, Willie. Here's a nickel. Now you go make that call. Say, boss. Yeah, say it, Harry, but keep your eye peeled for the next church. Well, there's a little one in the next block, and I sure hope we have better luck than we did with the other three. It would not matter to Greta what kind of church. In Europe, those who have been able to cling to their faith are fortunate to find a ruin in which to worship. Here you are. It sounds like they're practicing Christmas hymns. Yes. Will you go in and look for Greta, Mr. Vilner? Yes. Uh, if she's here, she will be sitting quietly, uh, praying... Uh, that I know for, for sure. Poor guy, Mr. Wilson. He's scared and he's trying not to show it. I'm worried too, Harry. But everything's being done that can be done. A lot can happen to a kid in this hard-boiled town. Well, we deal too much with the seamy side, Harry. Actually, the people of a big town are no worse than other people the world over. Yeah, more good than bad, even in the seamy ones. I guess we kind of forget that. Yeah. You forget a lot of things, Harry. That we only remember this time of year. Yeah. Still snowing. Makes the old town kind of pretty, almost. Yes. It hides and softens the man-made ugliness. He's coming out, boss, without the kid. Poor guy. Now start your motor, Harry. We'll try the next church. Well, she is, she's not there, Mr. Wilson. Greta is not there. Not there. Boss, there's a synagogue in the next block and a Catholic church on the corner. Well, drive on, Harry. Stop at both of them. Okay, boss. Not here. Not here. My, my Greta is not here. in its neighborhood. No, Harry. Wait a minute. There's one we've forgotten. Which one? The Blind Prophet's mission. Golly, yeah. It's around the next corner, just an old basement, but the kid might have passed that way. Make the turn. We'll try it, Harry. A, a basement? Our church at home was nothing but the basement when the bombs were finished. Greta went there many times. It, it was the only church she ever knew. Mm -hmm. well, there it is. Let's go in. Oh, Oh, the music, the voices. They would draw my Greta to them out of the night. Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! I've been trying to phone you. Willie, the weep. 
Look, Willie, have you seen anything of a little lost girl? I sure have, Mr. Wilson. I found her. You found her? You you, you found my Greta? Yeah. Oh. She's, she's with the prophet, and he's been helping her pray we'd find you. And she's right in here. Oh, thank heavens, and thank you, and, and bless you all. Well, there she is, Mr. Wilner. Kneeling in the last row. Still praying for your safety. We'll wait here and take you home. Yes. Yes, please wait, Mr. Wilson. You and your friend Willie the Santa Claus must come to help us to make Greta's first joys and and very special Christmas uh, complete. Thus, the lost is found and reunited. And in a moment, we'll return to the dramatic and heartwarming climax of Prelude to Christmas. Brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. I'm going to say something you may find startling, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. Remember, this purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So bathe with Life Boy every day. And ask for Life Boy in the big new bath size. It's generous, luxurious. Get the new bath size Life Boy tomorrow. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and his companions as they gather in an apartment in Big Town to help a little refugee celebrate, a little ahead of time, the first joyous Christmas she's ever known. Oh, Papa, when, when may I take the blindfold from my eyes and see the beautiful tree with all its colored lights? In a moment, Greta, my darling. But before you do and become so excited you can't speak, you must thank Mr. Wilson and all his friends who helped bring us together again. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, and I am sorry I ran away and got lost because I thought you were going to send my father to prison. You're very, very welcome, Greta. And try to forget the past. Your future is here with us in America. And no matter where you go in this vast land of ours, you need never again live in fear of the things you fled. If you fight with us... All those men of evil who who would enslave all mankind. I won't be afraid anymore, Mr. Wilson. See, I am not even afraid of the blindfold on my eyes, which I remember only on people who are about to die. Greta, you must forget. Forget all that, my dear. Yes, Greta. Remember only that it must not happen here, and what you see when your father removes the blindfold will help you. Please, Papa, take away the blindfold, and and thank you all for this Christmas I would have missed on the long train ride to Oregon. Yes, Greta. Now, but I think it is fitting that your good friend Willie the Santa Claus should let you see the tree. Untie the blindfold, Willie. <laughs> all right, Mr. Wilson. I know the Christmas tree is lighted already, Mr. Willie the Weep. Yeah, Miss Greta, like a million stars. I know, I know. Hold still, hold still. I can't get the doggone knot untied. It doesn't matter. I've been peeping for a long, long time. There. Oh, it's the most beautiful Christmas tree in all the world. Merry Christmas, Greta. Merry Christmas, Greta. And so ended Steve Wilson's story of a little girl's prelude to Christmas. And now, before telling you of next week's exciting Big Town story, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Ask for Life Boy Health Soap tomorrow. <laughs> Now,
Next week, don't fail to hear another exciting big town story headline, Deadly Resolution. The story of a premature New Year resolution. In tonight's dramatization, the part of Steve Wilson was played by Edward Pauley. Lorelai Kilborn by Fran Carlin. Dusty by Casey Allen. Willie the Weep by Donald McDonald. Mozart by Larry Haynes. The Prophet by Bill Adams. Stefan Schnabel was Gregory Vilna. Newsboy Michael O'Day. Jimsy Summers played Greta. And Gloria Stenye was Raver. Jack Payne is our engineer. John Powers and Weston Conant are sound technicians. James Hayes, production for NBC. Music and arrangements are by John Garth. And Big Town is written and directed by Jerry McGill. Now, this is your narrator, Hugh James, bidding you, on behalf of our sponsors, the Lever Brothers Company, and our entire cast, a very Merry Christmas. And good night until next Tuesday, same time, same station, when you'll hear the Illustrated Press Newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero, all about it. The story of deadly resolution. Brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap, another fine lever product. Extra, extra. <laughs>New Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Yes, rain or shine, new Rinso with Solium gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but actually whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but even brighter than brand new. It's because new Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Find out for yourself how new Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Only new Rinso contains Solium. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Life Boy Health Soap presents... Big Town. Extra, extra hero about the case of the dangerous resolution. Tonight's Big Town story brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap, used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Extra, extra. <laughs> Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. The headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor whose creed, as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the illustrated press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, but it may be a faithful servant of all the people. Use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's exciting story captioned Dangerous Resolution. When a man plans a New Year's resolution to quit the rackets, deadly complications can develop. And such is the background of this fast-moving story of hijackers that began in a diner in the warehouse district of Big Town as a young truck driver sat talking to Vicki Mason, a waitress in the place. How about another cup of coffee, Van? No, thanks, Vicki. Look, you ain't busy now. Listen a minute, honey. I'm tired of listening to your promises, Van. You still sore about seeing me with that Bubbles dame the other night? No, I'm not jealous of that hen-and-headed burlesque stripper. I know she's Silky Martin's girl. And I know why you were out with her. All right, why? Because Silky is using her to soft soap you into hustling trucks for him. Why shouldn't I drive a truck for Silky once in a while? He pays big dough. More for one night's work than I could get in a week pushing a ten-tonner for a company outfit. Because there's something crooked about it or Silky wouldn't pay you that kind of money. Maybe so, but what's it matter as long as I don't do anything but drive the trucks? Because one of these nights, Silky Martin's going to pull a fast one and you're going to be in the middle of a mess. Oh, now, Vicky. Please, Van, you're one of the best drivers in big town. You could get a job any place with good, steady money every week and... And not get into trouble. Sure, I know, but Please, you don't... Van, for your mother's sake and mine. She's worried, frightened. Now, listen, Vicky. I'm doing this for Ma's sake. So she won't have to scrub floors and office buildings for the rest of her life. Oh, she doesn't want that kind of money, Van. What about you? We can get married quicker. Please, Van, I don't want that kind of money or that kind of a marriage. Please. 
Okay, honey. That settles it. I'm doing a job for Silky tonight, but this will be the last. Oh, no, then, no. Quit now. Oh, I can't, Vicky. I promise, Silky, but I'll make you a promise, too. I'll make a New Year's resolution to quit hustling trucks for Silky and then get a regular job. Oh, no, Van, please. I, I have a scared feeling something's going to happen. Quit now, tonight. I can't. It... Oh, here's Silky. Now, now, don't say anything. And I promise this is my last haul. My New Year's resolution, honey. Hi, Van. Hello, Silky. Hi, beautiful. Hello. Now, what kind of New Year's resolutions are you lovebirds making, huh? We were just talking about... Uh, get married right after the New Year, Silky. Oh, fine. Congrats. Thanks. Draw me a cup of java. Bridey. <laughs> Cream and sugar. With everything, beautiful. I always take everything. Yes, I know. Everything you can lay your hands on for nothing. <laughs> your babe don't like me, Van. Well, don't let it cut your sleep. Oh, I won't. And don't let it cut yours. Uh... What's the job for tonight? You're subbing for a driver on a load of silk. Now, look, Silky, is uh, this a hijack? Uh, what you don't know won't hurt you. And a piece of pie, sweetheart. What kind? Lemon. And keep your finger out of it. I don't like it that sour. Hmm. Very funny. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, look, uh, Silky. Huh? Uh, this is my last job for you. Oh, yeah? How come? I'm getting a regular job after tonight. Oh? Yeah. Okay. How about getting started on this one? All right. But let's go get it done. You go out to my car. Monk's there. He'll prime you on where you're to take the load. Uh Uh-huh. I'll be out as soon as I've had my pie and coffee. If I ever get served in this dump... Here. You've got it. I gotta go, Vicky. I'll come by and take you home. When you're through, honey... Oh, then, wait! Let him go, baby. Let the guy make a buck for you. Trousseau. For the torso. <laughs> You're not funny, Silky. You're a punk waitress. Spilled my coffee. Come here and mop it up. Mop it up yourself. With a napkin. Here. Listen, the... you. Let go of my hand. When I'm through telling you that I need Van in my business. Yeah, a dirty business. Crooked business. It's my business and you're gumming the works. How? You're a good influence on that truck hustler, and that's bad for my business. Yeah, I'm glad, because he's through with you after tonight. Well, nobody gets through with me until I'm through with them, baby. So you'll listen. I'm listening. I got a notion you've been listening to Van flapping his lip about my operations. Rackets. And let go of my hand. Call it what you like, baby, but keep your teeth shut or you won't have any left to go with that kissable mouth of yours. (laughs) You dirty... Dog! Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Flora. Come in. Sorry, Mr. Wilson. I thought you'd gone for the night and I'd clean up your office. I have a lot of foreign dispatches to check, but come in anyway, Flora. Close the door on those infernal and eternal telepaths. Sure, but won't I be disturbing you? No, just empty the wastebasket and leave the rest of the mess. I don't mind it. You look tired, Mr. Wilson. You oughtn't to work so long and so hard and so late. Well, that's fine advice coming from you, Flora. When's that boy of yours going to settle down and let you make a home for him? Van's a good boy, Mr. Wilson. He gives me money every week and wants me to quit scrubbing floors, but I'm saving his money so that nice girl Vicki Mason and Van can get married soon. Well, I hope they appreciate what you're doing for them, Flora. Vicky does. But she's worried about Van not taking a steady job. Well, you're worried, too, Flora. What's he doing? Well, special night driving for some fella called Silky Martin. Silky Martin? Yes. I've heard that name somewhere. Vicky knows him and... Well, she thinks he's mixing Van up in some kind of racket. Wait a minute. Uh, doesn't your boy drive heavy-duty trucks? Oh, yes. He learned in the army, and he's the best. By last summer, he won a contest. Driving and backing and turning them big monsters as easy as he did his express wagon when he was a little boy. Well, that takes real skill, Flora. He should be able to get a steady job with any of the big town trucking companies. Yes, I know, but war made him kind of restless. He just don't seem able to settle down to anything steady. Yes. A lot of the vets feel that way. 
It's hard to relearn to plan for long time living when you become conditioned to the idea that tonight or tomorrow may be your last. Excuse me, Flora. Yeah, Steve Wilson, Illustrated yes, Press. Mr. Wilson, did I not see Flora Andrews go in your office to clean up? You did, Mamie. Why? Well, there's a girl phoning in, and she says it's terribly awful important. She talks with Flora right away. Well, put her on, Mamie. Flora can take the call here. Yes, sir, but I did not know if I should disturb you. Well, I've been disturbed by experts. Put the girl on, Mamie. Yes, sir. Here, Flora, some girl is calling you. Says it's very important to take the phone. Oh, I'm sorry to be disturbing you like this, Mr. Wilson. Uh, hello? Hello? Mrs. Andrews, it's me, Vicky. What is it, Vicky? I'm, I'm afraid something has happened to Van. To Van? Oh, no. Yes. He met Silky Martin here at the diner and left with him, and I've just heard there was trouble down at one of the warehouses. Trouble? Yes, a man was killed. Oh, no, not Van. No. Silky's bodyguard was killed, and, and a truckload of stuff and the driver have disappeared. Oh. The police have an alarm out. They're blocking all exits from Big Town, and, and I'm just afraid Van is driving that truck. Vicky... Vicky, I've been afraid something like this had happened. So afraid. Well, just a minute, Flora. I got most of that. Let me talk to the girl. Maybe I can help. Oh, if you only would, Mr. Wilson. Oh, we'll try. Hello, Miss Mason. I'm Steve Wilson of the press. Oh, Mr. Wilson, Van's mother has spoken of you many times. You work with the police in breaking rackets, don't you? I try, and this sounds like an ugly one. Oh, I'm sure Van had nothing to do with that killing, Mr. Wilson. He, he'd never carried a gun. Good. But if he's driving that truck, he's liable to be involved if anything has happened to the regular driver. Is there anything you can do to help him, Mr. Wilson, for his mother's sake and mine? With your help, Miss Mason. But well, how can I help? Well, Flora says you know Silky Martin. Yes, I, I know a little about him. It may be enough. Where are you? I'm a waitress here at the Sunshine Diner on the corner of Front and Main Street. Don't leave there. Stay on the job. Now act as if you haven't heard a thing if anyone comes in and asks you questions. I'll be down there in nothing flat. Thus, Steve Wilson moves swiftly into a situation promising deadly and dangerous complications. And for the exciting developments, we'll return to Big Town in just a moment. You know, I always did think that Life Boy Health Soap got me extra clean. But I never knew how right I was till the doctors came along and actually proved it. Yes, it's true. After comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Something to think about, isn't it? Well, the answer's simple. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. After 820 scientific tests, these doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. You'll like Life Boy's creamy rich lather, its wonderful mildness. Get Life Boy tomorrow. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town, to Steve Wilson of the Press, and to tonight's headline story of A Dangerous Resolution. Following a lead on a truck hijacking resulting in murder, Steve is on his way to the south side of Big Town in the cab of Harry the Hack and pulls up in front of an all-night diner in the warehouse district. Stay under the wheel of your hack, Harry. I won't be long. Keep your eyes open. Check, boss. I'll be right here. Evening, miss. Oh. What'll it be, mister? Are you, uh, Vicki Mason? Yes, sir. Are you Mr. Wilson? Yes. Has anyone, uh, questioned you since you phoned Van's mother at my office? No, sir. Why did you ask me to pretend I hadn't heard about the shooting down near the docks? Well, now, listen carefully. If your friend Van is involved and you know Silky Martin, the man who hired him to drive the truck, you're dangerous to him. How do you mean? I don't know much about Silky, where he lives, or, or even where he operates. But enough to make you dangerous if you talk 
to anyone. I don't care if I can help Van out of this jam. You care enough for Van Anders to take a chance leading me to Silky Martin? I'd do anything, but I can't. Well, I have a hunch you may have a chance, but be careful. Mr. Wilson, a car just pulled up out front behind that cab. I heard it. Don't look out. The cab is mine with a special driver. Someone's coming in from the car. A girl. Oh, Silky's girlfriend, Bubbles. All right, you don't know me. Swallow whatever line she hands you. Go with her if necessary. We'll be right behind you. Yes, sir. She's coming in. Now, give me a cup of java and a piece of pie, sweetheart. Sure, sure, mister. And how about a date when you're finished? Nick's the eager beaver, Vicky. We got a date. You're through right now. Oh, hello, Bubbles. Say, what's the big idea? I'm not through till four. Let these amorous night owls hoot for the cook in the back. Well, what's the matter? Your boyfriend, Van, he's hurt. Hurt? Yeah, he wants to see you. Get your coat, I'll drive you. Yeah, it's, it's by the door. Well, get it on. Quit giving this cheap wolf the see you later. Come on. Yeah, all, all right. Well, where is Van? Is he badly hurt? He'll live. He wants to see you. Come on. Hey, miss, what about my pie and coffee? Oh, go chase yourself, you tin horn. Thanks, but I think I'd rather chase you. Huh. You should live so long. <laughs> Say it, Harry, but uh, don't lose that black touring car in traffic. Uh, that they may be a shaker in a boiler cube, but she ain't shaking me in old best. Watch it, Harry. They're turning into an alley in the middle of the next block. Slow down. Yeah. Uh, do we play follow the leader? No, this may be the end of the line. Go slow. Now, see if she's stopping in the alley. Or if it's another dodge to shake us. Uh, there's the alley alongside that old warehouse. I see a brake light. They've stopped. A pull out and cut your motor and lights, Harry. Good as done. Now, what, boss? Haven't we long wolfed this long enough? Yes, Harry. Get to the nearest phone and call Callahan of Homicide. And plenty of helpers? Yes, with tear gas and Tommy guns. This looks like a rat's nest, and there's no telling how many are in it. Yeah, and how about you remembering that and don't go crashing in solo? I remember, but I can't wait, Harry. That girl's in danger, and if anything happens to her, it'll be my fault. And clue me and my trusty monkey wrench in, boss. You're not paid to take chances, Harry. Neither are you, boss. And two guys taking chances this is only twice as crazy as one guy taking chances. All right, Harry, thanks. As soon as you've made that phone call, come on in. Come on, Van. Unload the rest of the stuff. It's the last crate of silk in the truck. Okay. You got chips, Sookie. Huh? Only a quarter of a load. And for that, you got your pal Monk killed. Lamb up. Monk wasn't any pal of mine, the dope. Nobody's a pal of yours, Sookie. This gun in my hand is the only pal I can trust. And don't forget it. Okay, I'm no hero. But what about that regular driver you got tied up in the back of the truck? Leave him there. But what about this truck, too? Every cop in Big Town is looking for it by now. Maybe you can hide that hijacked silk, but you can't hide this truck for long, even in this old warehouse. You're going to hide the truck for me, big boy. Hide this baby? Where? In the river. In the river? Well, you're crazy. It'll be spotted on the way. No, it won't. It's only two blocks through back alleys to an old coal dock where we'll dunk her deep. Not with that driver in it, you murderous slug. Steady, pal. I'd hate to have to nail you here. I need you to hustle this truck to the river. I won't drive it. You'll drive it. Who's that? That's the reason you're going to do anything I say do. Bring her in, Bubbles. Inside me. What? Vicky! Van! She said you were hurt. It's just a dirty trick to get you here, Vicky. Why did you come with her? I wanted to be with you no matter what trouble you're in. Oh, we're in plenty of trouble, honey. And all because I wouldn't listen to you. Nice going, Bubbles. Do you have any trouble coaxing her? Nah. Just had to pry her loose from a counter cowboy who's trying to date her. Now, what's the pitch? You better beat it, baby. Get yourself an alibi. Alibi for what? You uh, wouldn't want to know. Wait a minute, Silky. What are you going to do to this dopey truck hustler and that dizzy dame? Well, if you must know, I'm going to do what comes naturally in this racket when somebody knows enough to finger me into the chair. Van, is he going to kill... 
shoot you. I... Now, steady, honey. That's the kind of trouble I meant. Suki, wait a minute. I was seen picking up that dame. If anything happens to her, I'll be hauled in the headquarters for questioning. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what I've been thinking. You must have read my mind. You can't do it without mixing me up in it. Yeah. Yeah, Bubbles. So you might as well be in it all the way. Right up to your ears. Silky, I'm your girl. Big town's full of girls with everything you got. And who don't know so much. No, Silky, you wouldn't. Don't tell me things, Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles. Hey, you can do your act in the truck with these dopes and the regular driver for an audience at the bottom of the river. No. Blowing bubbles. <laughs> Pretty bubbles in the water. No, Silky, no. No, no. Yeah. Steady, Vicky, it ain't happened yet. No, so let's get going, Anders. Pick up Bubbles and dump her in the truck with that regular driver. No, I won't do it. Pick her up or I'll cut you down. Go ahead. Here in the river. What's the difference? Pick her up, then, please. There's a reason. Reason? What's the reason, beautiful? You'll never get out of this warehouse alive if you shoot any of us. Oh, yeah? Tell me how come not, baby. That man at the diner wasn't just a masher. He was asking about you. A plain clothes flat? It doesn't matter because I'm sure he followed us here. Quit lying, baby. Quit stall and make your boyfriend put bubbles in the truck. All right. Oh, please, Van, do as he says or he'll shoot you here. Okay, I don't get it, but what have we got to lose? Dump her in there. Okay. Now what? Now lift your girlfriend Vicky up in there with her and that regular driver. And lock the door. Lock Vicky in there? Like nothing. Like everything. Or else... Oh, please, Van. I'll get in myself. See if that other truck driver is hurt and don't do anything foolish. Smart, babe. Give the gal a hand, Van. Where's your manners? <laughs> All right. Get in, Vicky. I'll show you manners, Silky, before we get to the river. Oh, I can hardly wait. Close that truck door and latch it. Okay, now don't worry, honey. This truck ain't going to the river. I'll bet you six slugs out of this gun it does. Now get in the truck cab and start up the motor. Yeah, who's going to roll open the main doors to the alley? Let me worry about that. Get in the cab of the truck. Wait a minute, boys. What? what? Who are you, dope? I'm the counter cowboy who followed your girlfriend from the Sunshine Diner. Oh, a plain clothes loft squad louse, Thanks huh? for the compliment, but no. Just a newspaper man who got a tip on your racket, Silky. A newspaper guy? You're not that racket-busting rat of the Illustrated Press, Steve Wilson. I'm flattered. I'll flat you with a slug if you come any closer. It'll be the shot that will send you to the chair if you pull the trigger. You'll never know about it if I do. Turn around and spread your wings, you buzzard. Don't worry. Don't waste valuable time. Like Van Anders, I don't carry a gun. Don't kid me, Wilson. Nobody walks into a setup like this without heat. Turn around for a frisk. All right, satisfy yourself. But you're wasting valuable time, and you haven't much to spare. Yeah, you are clean. What's the big idea? What's the pitch walking in here without a rod? Well, two guns usually calls for a shooting showdown, Silky. I have a better solution. Oh, yeah? Yes. I'm going to talk that gun right out of your hand. Talk the... That I gotta see. Mind if I turn around and explain how? Yeah, turn around so I can see better where to plug you. If you don't get in the cab of the truck with Anders. All right. Thanks. Don't try to rush him, Mr. Wilson. He means business. So do I. And take it easy, Van. I got the whole story from your mother and Miss Mason, and we're going to show Silky that the mine can be quicker than the trigger finger. That I really got to see. Get in the truck. I ain't moving that truck out of here. Get under the wheel, Van. You won't have to move it far, and it's all part of the triumph of mind over murder madness. Okay, okay, Mr. Wilson, but I sure hope you know what you're doing. I think I do. You've already given me the idea. Now's the stall and the double talk, Wilson. Get in the cab of the truck with Anders. All right, Silky. I think we're all set to talk that murder gun right out of your hand. Thus, Steve Wilson is set to try one of the most dangerous operations known to manhunters. And in a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story, brought to you by Lifebuoy Health Soap. 
Friends, if you say this is amazing, I'll be the first to agree. But doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. And remember, this purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So bathe with Life Boy every day and ask for Life Boy in the big new bath size. It's generous, luxurious. Get the new bath size Life Boy tomorrow. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson, Van Anders, and the payoff in tonight's headline story of a premature New Year's resolution. Come on, come on, Wilson. Save the big talk for the crabs in the river. Get in the cab of the truck alongside of Anders. All right, Silky. But haven't you forgotten something important? No, and don't you forget I got this gun and there's six slugs in it for you and Anders if you try anything between here and the coal dock where this truck goes in the drink. Yeah, drowning the regular driver and those two girls locked in the back. You really are a cold-blooded killer, Silky. Yeah. And I got nothing to lose by this cover-up. So get in the cab or I'll let you have it right here and now. He will, Mr. Wilson. Don't needle him too much. I'm all through needling him, Van. I was just trying to remind him of something he seems to have forgotten. Okay, remind me, Wilson. How is Anders going to drive this truck out of this warehouse huh? unless somebody opens those big sliding doors? Oh. Maybe you'd like to open them before you get in the truck. Okay, I suppose I might as well. Wait a minute. You're thinking your way out of this, are you, Wilson? Well, I'm way ahead of you. How so? You're thinking you'll get to open them sliding doors, duck and run for it down that dark alley outside, huh? Well, you're smarter than I thought, Silky. Yeah. Get in the cab with Anders. Okay. And you, Van, be ready to roll to the river the minute I get those doors open. Well, Van, I guess he's outsmarted us. You better start your motor. Yeah. As soon as I roll that door open, I'll be back on the running board with this gun in your neck, Anders. And you'll drive to the river or else. You'll step in front of the truck to unlatch the door, start your motor in gear and duck pan. Check, Mr. Wilson. I got the plan now. Shh. You slugs! And a boy, Van. Set your emergency. You got him pinned against the door. He's emptied his gun. Okay. The bump was holding him tight. I'd like to smash him for what he's going to do to Vicky. I'll uh, let the law take care of that, Van. Just told him there and... Cut your motor. Okay. No, don't! Back up! You're crushing me! Just hold him against the door, Van. Okay, Mr. Wilson. But another six inches would save the state a lot of trouble. Well, the state doesn't mind this kind of trouble, Van. I'll hold him until I see if he has another gun. Wash! Wash! I was waiting for the psychological moment to intervene, but that was positively beautiful. Well, thanks very much, Harry. Yeah, uh, you want me to call him with my knocker knocker? Oh, Harry, he'll keep. Until Inspector Callahan gets here. Well, that ought to be any minute. Now, Miss Kelpine is out front to steer him in. Good. Tell her to come in and get the whole story for tomorrow's early edition. Holy moly, boss. Ain't you getting out an extra? Oh, no, Harry. The capture of one vicious killer doesn't roll the presses any more than it stops crime. The real story here is Van's resolve to get out of the rackets. Yes, and I hope the police will let me make it for New Year's and, and keep it, Mr. Wilson. Well, I think they will, Van. And the facts are known. Meanwhile, get your girlfriend, Vicky, Bubbles, and that driver out of the truck. And so ended with the arrest and subsequent conviction of Silky and his treacherous accomplice, Bubbles, another exciting adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Now, before telling you of next week's headline story of Big Town, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, you're, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Ask for Life Boy health soap tomorrow. <laughs>
Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story entitled The Mask of Evil, a strange and unusual story of death and terror in an abandoned lighthouse. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional, and any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Now, this is Hugh James speaking for Lever Brothers Company, wishing you all a happy new year, and bidding you good night until next Tuesday night, same time, same station, when you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and the Mask of Evil, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, another fine Lever product. Extra, extra. <laughs> New Rinso with Solium puts sunshine on your wash. Yes, rain or shine, New Rinso with Solium gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but actually whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but even brighter than brand new. It's because New Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Find out for yourself how new Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Only new Rinso contains Solium. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, presents Big Town. Extra, extra hero all about the mask of evil. Tonight's Big Town story brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap, used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Extra, extra. <laughs> Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town. The headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor whose creed, as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the illustrated press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now... Big Town and Steve Wilson's strange and exciting story captioned The Mask of Evil. Evil has many shapes and many forms, and if you seek it, you may find it to your sorrow. And such is the case in tonight's story, which had its beginning and strange and terrifying ending in a supposedly haunted lighthouse, rented for atmosphere by a mystery writer and old friend of Steve Wilson by the name of Hannah Harper. Miss Hannah... Miss Hannah, close the door quick. Oh, for heaven's sake, no. What's the matter, Aggie? It's that terrible caretaker, Mr. Red Heron, and his son, Elmer. That's what's the matter, Miss Hannah. Please close the door and lock it. Oh, stuff and fiddlesticks, Addie. They're, they're just a couple of harmless local characters, and we're lucky to have them here to keep this musty old lighthouse warm while I finish my latest chilla dilla. We'll never live till you finish it, Miss Hannah. Why not? Why not? Yes, and quit echoing me like a cracked phonograph record. Why not? Because. Because why? Oh, for heaven's sake, you got me doing it again. Why? Because of things. What kind of things? Doings. What kind of doings? What kind of doings? Now, don't start that again, Aggie. What's frightening you? That Mr. Red Heron. What's he done? He's been giving me the fishy eye. Oh, stuff. He has only one eye, and he's probably giving you his version of a widower's wink. What else? What else? The noises. What kind of noises? What kind of noises? Oh, for heaven's sakes, yes. Strange noises. Under the house, rumbles, explosions l like thunder. Oh, stuff. Herring explained all that. It's the rumble of the waves pounding into the sea caves under this old lighthouse. No, it isn't, Miss Hannah. Yes, it is, and I wish it wasn't. This is the most disappointing haunted house I've ever rented to get an atmosphere for my horror stories. 
You'll get more than atmosphere if we don't get out of here tonight. Oh, stuff and nonsense. There isn't a spook in the place. Even poor old Captain Diamond rests quietly in his grave. Not a clank or a groan out of him. Hasn't creaked the stairs since we moved in. Or even slammed the door. <gasps> oh, my stars. Oh, there. stuff. It's the wind banging a shutter. Oh, no, it isn't. It's somebody trying to scare us away. Well, why should anyone want to scare us away? I, I don't know, Miss Hannah. But I wish your friend Mr. Steve Wilson was here to tell us to get out. Yes, I wish Steve was here. Something always happens when Steve Wilson is around. Please don't wish things like that, Miss Hannah. If we don't get out of this old lighthouse, we're all going to be murdered in our beds. No such thing. If I'm going to be murdered, I insist on a much more unusual setting. <laughs> murdered in bed. What would my mystery fans and my publisher think? I don't care what they think. And if you won't leave this awful place, I'm going to the village and telephone Mr. Wilson. Why? Why? To get us out of here. <gasps> oh, my stars. Oh, there. There. Listen. That's why we've got to get out of this place. Oh, good heavens. I'll bicycle to the village and phone Steve Wilson myself. And if he'll come out... Maybe something will really happen in this forsaken place. Hi, Steve. Anything special on the hook for your wondrous girl reporter? Not a thing, Lorelei, but close the door on those teletypes and come perch on the corner of my desk. Thanks. Well, what goes with you? Have you been giving your ulcers a vacation whilst I've been in Washington? Yes. It's part of my New Year's resolution to take things easier and last longer. Mm. The year is exactly four days old. You want to bet you don't stay out of high gear a week? Not a nickel, as long as I'm running a newspaper. And the paper runs us. What a life. Anything new on that South Side sewer scandal? Not yet, Laura. The grand jury is too full of post-Christmas spirit to indict, but they'll get around to it. Uh-oh, your private wire to your so-called underworld listening post. Yes, the holiday truce is over. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Steve, quit billing yourself like a vaudeville act on television. Hannah! So help you. This I gotta hear. Well, hard hearted Hannah Harper, the horrific harpy of horrible happenings. How are you? Terrible, thank you. What's wrong? I've rented another haunted house for atmosphere, but practically nothing happens. Well, what is it this time, Hannah? A murder man's? Deserted railroad station or Bluebeard's Castle? An abandoned lighthouse near Corpse Cove. Corpse Cove? Wouldn't you know it, Steve? Hiya, Hannah. Happy New Year. Oh, hello, Laura. I same to you. Are you uh, sitting on Wolf Wilson's knee this year? No, on the corner of his desk. I'm not playing Charlie McCarthy to his Bergen act until next year. <laughs> Good. Get Steve off his managerial post and bring him out here on the double. Are you in trouble again, Hannah? Trouble? My publisher ha are having cat fits and kitten bridges. Why? I have a deadline on a bedtime story called The Seven Corpses, and I haven't found the first one. Hannah, I refuse to be a stand-in for one of your bodies. Oh, please, Steve. Aggie, my housekeeper, is hiding under beds and threatening to leave if you don't come and rescue us from a fate worse than death. Well, what's going on, Hannah? Oh, blessed if I know, Steve. It's just noises and explosions down under the lighthouse. Explosions? Yes, I've told Aggie it's waves in a sea cave, but I'm beginning not to believe it. Are you two alone in that lighthouse? Might as well be. I rented the light from a bank that handles the estate of a character called Captain Diamond. Captain Diamond? Yes, who retired here until he buried him under a huge slab of concrete right outside the front door. Well, anyone else there besides the captain's ghost? Yes, a local gnome called Red Herring. Red Herring? No. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Hannah. Harvey was only a six-foot rabbit. Well, Elmer never heard of Harvey. Well, have you seen this seven-foot apparition? No, and I don't want to, for heaven's sake, drive out, Steve. Bring the Lorelei and Harry the Hack and his trusty monkey wren. Are you serious, Hannah? I'm never serious, but I'm worried, Steve, and a little bit scared, so please come out here. Okay, Hannah. How do we get to the lighthouse? Drive to Corpse Cove. Corpse Cove. Yes. Oh, why be careful, Hannah? Because part of the road has fallen into the sea. The 
Thus, Steve Wilson and Lorelei have been drawn into a strange situation, and for the exciting developments, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. You know, I always thought the great thing about Life Boy was this. It made me feel wonderfully clean. Extra clean. But I never knew how right I was till the doctors actually proved it. Yes, it's true. After comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Here's the reason. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. After 820 scientific tests, these doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. You like Life Boy's creamy rich lather, its wonderful mildness. Get Life Boy right away. Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei as they drive to an abandoned lighthouse to help a lady novelist who gets into jams by renting haunted houses for atmosphere. Say, boss, Miss Kilpine, uh, speaking of atmosphere... Uh, speak of it, Harry. If you will observe out at the left window of the hack, you will see very little else besides atmosphere except in seawater about 100 feet straight down. Yes, Harry. So watch for any more spots where the road has fallen into the sea. I'm watching. That last one came on me kind of sudden. Yeah, so does death. To take it easy or we won't live to get Hannah Harper and Aggie out of this jam. Uh, What kind of jam they got themselves into this time, boss? We're not sure. Neither is Hannah. Oh, there's the lighthouse, Harry. Stop here. Yikes! And how? The road ends. That's all there is. There ain't no more. Uh, Should I cut my lights? No, wait, Harry. There's... Something coming out of the ground over there. Holy moly. It walks like a man, but it looks like a bear. Oh, that must be Elmer, the caretaker's son. Ooh, quote and misquote. Who takes care of the caretaker's son while the caretaker's son is taking care of us? Wait a minute. He's coming over to the car. I'll get out and talk to him. You want to borrow my knock and knock a boss? Hold it, Harry. Good evening. What do you want, mister? Does uh, Miss Hannah Harper live here? She did. Where is she? I don't know. Are you Elmer Herring? Yeah, I'm Elmer Herring. Who are you? Oh, we're friends of Miss Harper and Miss Aggie. Then get them out of here. Why? Because I don't like them women. Why not? Because they don't believe I got a rabbit seven feet tall. Oh? Have you? Yeah. That's fine. Now, if you uh, don't mind, I'll go into the lighthouse. Wait a minute, mister. No. I'll let uh, go of my throat, Elmer. Boy. Keep out of this, Harry. Yeah, I'll throw you both in the ocean and your automobile, and I, I can do it, too. I'm sure you could, Elmer, but uh, then we wouldn't be able to take Miss Hannah away from here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, you couldn't. So, uh... How about uh, letting go of my throat, and I'll go into the lighthouse and talk her into leaving. Okay, but you get them out of here. Elmer, Uh, get back in the cellar. Yes. Okay, Pa. Okay, but don't you let them laugh about my seven-foot rabbit. No, I won't, and get him to work. All right, mister. I heard you. Get them women and get. Why? It ain't safe for him to be here at the lighthouse alone. Why not? You ask too many questions, mister. Get them women and get. That will be up to Miss Harper. Get them and get. Well, you seem to have another visitor. This is your busy night. I said get them and get. You're in a rut, Mr. Herring. Get them and get. Uh, good evening, Mr. Herring. Yeah. Evening, Doc. I uh, came as quickly as possible. Uh, who are your visitors? Strangers. Come to get the right woman and the other female what talks like a parrot. Very good. Uh, from that which I hear, your friends will be happier elsewhere, sir. That remains to be seen, and I didn't catch the name. Uh, Dr. Fu. 
doctor of dentistry, sir. And you? I'm Steve Wilson of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Oh, a newspaper man. Yes, but we're here as friends of Miss Harper. Good, very good. And a good friend is he who gives wise counsel. In this case, to depart. Well, thanks for the suggestion, Dr. Fu. And what is your reason for coming here as quickly as possible? A professional visit, sir. I have come to pull teeth. Well, now, Mr. Herrings, he doesn't sound as if he had any teeth. You're darn right. Had him knocked out in a fight in Singapore 20 years ago. Uh, quite so. And I am preparing a set of false teeth for Mr. Herrings. When do I get him, Doc? Oh, very soon. Uh, but now, where is your son, Elmer? Uh, that the molar must be causing him great pain. Uh, he's in the cellar. Oh, so that's what made Elmer feel so mean. A toothache. Yes, but the matter will soon be remedied. Who's going to hold Elmer while you pull a molar, Dr. Fool? Uh, no one, Mr. Wilson, for I shall put him to sleep. <laughs> uh, now, if you will excuse me, gentlemen. All right, mister. Go get them women and get them out of here. Steve, what's going on here? First a dim-witted giant with a toothache and a seven-foot rabbit, and then a, a monosyllabic rustic, and finally an oriental doctor of dentistry. I don't get it. It can't happen here. Well, it is happening, Lola Lai. And if it's one of Hannah's publicity stunts to publicize her next mystery novel, I'm going to dunk her in the ocean. Now, wait a hack, Harry. Jack Wash. Come on, Lola. I'm right with you, Steve. Lead the way. Oh, Steve. Steve Wilson, oh, thank heavens you got here. Ah, uh, yes, I think so, Hannah. Well, for heaven's sakes, come on in, but don't wipe your feet on this concrete slab. Hello, Lorelei. Hello, Hannah. Why not? Oh, poor old Captain Diamond is buried under this slab. It wouldn't be respectful to wipe your feet on his grave, so come on in. I have a welcome mat inside. Well, it'll be the first welcome we've had. What do you mean, Steve? Now, all right, Hannah. Where did you hire these freak characters to put on that vaudeville act? Act? What act are you talking about? Elmer, red herring, foo. Who's foo? An oriental dentist here to pull Elmer's teeth. And our leg, if you ask me. Steve, Laurel, I, I swear I haven't arranged anything. Oh, Oh, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. What is it, Aggie? Get us out of this awful place before we're all murdered in our beds. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Midnight. And I'm still telling you we'll all be murdered in our beds, we will. Stuff and fiddle faddle sticks, Aggie. Now that Steve is here, nothing will happen. Well, I thought you wanted me here at the lighthouse, so something would happen, Hannah. I've changed my mind. What do you suppose they're doing down in the cellar besides pulling Elmer's teeth, Steve? Well, I don't think Dr. Fu came here to pull Elmer's teeth, are For I? heaven's sakes, what else, Steve? I don't know, Hannah, but you've convinced me this isn't a publicity stunt on your part, and they're all anxious to get you and Aggie out of here. Yes, and I wonder why. That's what I mean to find out. How, Steve? I want all of you to go to bed and turn out the lights. We'll be murdered in our beds. We will. Stuff, Aggie. They'll have to find you under the bed to murder you. What are you going to do, Steve? Wait a while and then scout the basement to see what's causing those muffled explosions. There, Miss Hannah. I told you it wasn't waves in the caves making that awful noise. I just said that to keep you from having the screaming memes, Aggie. I got him anyway. Oh, why did you send Harry away with a hack, Steve? The phone Fletch on City Desk to check our morgue files on this fabulous Captain Diamond buried under Hannah's doorway. Why check on Captain Captain Diamond, Steve. I think Dr. Fu is here because of Captain Diamond. Huh? What makes you think so, Steve? You say you found papers indicating Diamond made a fortune trading in the Orient before he retired? Yes, but the bank I rented the place from said he'd lost all his money. I wonder. That old picture of him over the fireplace doesn't look like a man who would part with money once he got his hands on it. Well, I suppose he had money when he died. Where does Fu fit? Oh, I think by his accent, Dr. Fu, if he is a dentist. Practiced in the Straits, Laura, like Singapore, Calcutta, or even the east coast of Africa. May have worked on Captain Diamond, learned his secret. Well, how'd you arrive at that long arm of deduction, Steve? Well, look at the mouth of that old sea dog up there in the picture. Hmm? A full set of false teeth, if I ever saw one. Oh, heavens, Steve, you're right. Maybe Dr. Fu heard of Captain Diamond's death. Yes, through Red Herring, who sailed with the captain as a mate. And they're looking for the captain's money. Oh, a buried treasure. That's what they're after. 
And they'll murder us all in our beds to get it. Oh, go to bed, Aggie. Get under the bed. You'll be safe. Wait a minute. Listen, that's Dr. Fu's car. Uh, he's driving away. I guess they've quit the treasure hunt for tonight. Good. Uh, where do Herring and his son live, Anna? Downstairs, under the old light. Uh-oh, not so good. Is there any way to get down there from here? No, only through a passageway under the light. This keeper's house was built later. And I'll have to get in that way. Oh, now, Steve, you're not going down there right away. Elmer likes to choke people. He might think you're trying to steal his seven-foot rabbit. No. I'm going to wait a while. Give Elmer and his father time to settle down and sleep. You hope? Don't worry. Now, you girls get to bed and turn out your lights. Mm, and sleep, I suppose. At least keep quiet. Yeah, all right. Come along, Aggie. Get your nighty. Nighty? That I'll not, Miss Kilburn. The least I can do is be decent. If I'm going to be murdered in me sleep. Oh, doggone Steve Wilson. La, la, la. <gasps> Steve, do you have to scare a gal green? Why didn't you stay up in the house? Oh, no. If there's something to this treasure idea, there's a story in it. And I'm a reporter, and whether you go, ergo, I go. All right. But keep quiet and keep back. Are you going in the cellar now? No, Dr. Fu left his car down the road and walked back. He's in there. In there? Doing what? Well, they've been digging and loading something on a cart, Laura. The one Elmer's seven-foot rabbit pulled? Well, at this stage of the game, I'll even buy that. <laughs> Steve, what was that? I think those modern Pandoras are opening a box. Commonly called a coffin. Coffin? Grave dig... Yes, Grave robbers. Those muffled explosions must have been blasts to open a hole from this cellar in a Captain Diamond's burial vault. But the... Steve, if the money's in the coffin, they'll get it and get away before we can notify the police. Give me my share, concern you fool. Give me my share. Give me it. Let me get it. Wait, Laura, lie. They're <sighs> quarreling over the loot. Maybe we won't need the police. Give me my share, you wretch. You. Will you give me my share? But certainly, my friend. You and your son shall have your share now. Steve, did you see what I saw run past it? Yes, but that will keep, Laurel. I be careful, be quiet. We're dealing with a killer. You quite so. <gasps> Dr. Fu. Uh, yes, miss. And this gun and flashlight give me considerable advantage over your male companion. So please to advise him to do nothing foolishly heroic on your behalf. Consider yourself advised, Steve. He means business. Yes, Dr. Fu. If you handle dentist tools as well as that gun in your hand, you must be quite a craftsman. I am most proficient, Mr. Wilson. I'm pleased to walk with the young lady into the late Captain Diamond's grave vault. And I will show you examples of both types of my handiwork. Thus, Steve and Lorelei are caught in a really deadly situation. In a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story, brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. Friends, if you say this is startling, well, I say it's startling, too. But doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. Remember, this purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So ask for Life Boy and enjoy that Life Boy bath every day. Now back to Big Town and to the abandoned lighthouse, the weird situation in which Steve Wilson faces a murderous Oriental dentist. In tonight's story of... The Mask of Evil. 
at least to begin work, Mr. Wilson. Hadn't you better wait for our driver, Harry the Hack, to return before you force me to seal ourselves up in Captain Diamond's grave vault? No, Mr. Wilson. You are hack driver. I will dispose of with this gun when he returns and deliver his hack and his body over the cliff into the sea. Oh, mm. I knew it, Miss Hannah. I told you we'd be murdered if we stayed in this haunted old lighthouse. Quiet, Aggie. You were wrong about being murdered in bed. Maybe you'll be wrong about being murdered at all. We hope, we hope, we hope. Well, you should have stayed in bed, Anna, Aggie. The ladies will please to be quiet while Mr. Wilson begins with this special cement I have prepared. What is so special about this cement, Dr. Fu? To ordinary cement, I have added a special fast-hardening ingredient used in the dental profession, which in a few minutes will make the opening you are about to close like solid rock. I see. So you won't have to wait so long to be sure the passageway is sealed up so tight we can't dig our way out with this trowel. Quite. So please to start before mortar begins to harden. Very well. You better back up or you'll be sealed in with us. I shall make certain that does not happen, Mr. Wilson. Seal up the space between us quickly. All right. Incidentally, what were you after in the coffin of the late Captain Diamond? Hmm, hmm. Diamond. Diamond? Mm-hmm. Yes, a fortune in diamonds. Where were they hidden? In the good captain's false teeth, Mr. Wilson. In his false teeth? Very ingenious, Doctor. Who, your idea or the captain's? The captain's. He had me seal them in a set of molars in Zanzibar many years ago. And you had to wait until he died to get them back. Yes, Mr. Wilson. And murder, Mr. Herring, and his son? Yes, Mr. Wilson. I'm pleased to continue and finish before cement hardens, or I shall be compelled to shoot. Well, then you'd have to finish sealing up this hole yourself. It would be no task. But continue quickly, please. Oh, Steve, if you do seal up that hole, we're finished. No one will ever find us in this vault. Take it easy, Laura and I, my lovely. <laughs> cement is tricky stuff. It can be used for all sorts of things. Oh, Miss Hannah, what an awful, awful way to die. Buried before you're dead, with bodies laying all around. Hush, Aggie, you're getting morbid. Oh, Steve, you've simply got to think us out of here. I'm going to try and get back, Hannah. My gun grows impatient, Mr. Wilson. Please to finish the job of sealing the opening. All right, Dr. Poole. Here's a nice big trowel full of your fast hardening cement for your face. Uh, All right. Come, on, come in you? here through the cavity. Oh, wonderful, Steve. Hold him. I'll get the gun. Anna, girl. I've got oh, him. My face. My face. The cement it is hardening. I will smash it to death. No, Dr. Fu. Stop uh, struggling. Stop talking and breathe through your mouth. Steve, the cement is hardening on his face. Yes. And it'll make a perfect mask of evil for the rogues gallery at police headquarters. Hey, boss, Miss Gilpine, boss. Oh, in here, Harry. Holy mackerel, what's going on in here? Now, we just missed being buried alive because of a mouthful of diamonds, Harry. Harry, did you see an animal outside hitched to a cart with a coffin in it? Yikes, was that what almost run me off the cliff as I was driving back in here? Yes, Harry. Elmer's seven-foot rabbit, alias a long-eared mule. What happened to it? Uh, run off the cliff and fell in the ocean. Oh, Steve, with the captain's body and his false teeth full of a fortune in diamonds. Yes, it looks like the captain and his fortune in namesakes have gone back to the sea. Oh, Steve, I knew something would happen as soon as you showed up. Now I have enough material for my horror book. No, you haven't, Hannah. Your publisher wouldn't swallow this story. Why not? Well, because in these queer days and times... Fiction can't be as strange as fact. <laughs> and so ended with the arrest, conviction, and execution of the deadly Dr. Fu for the murder of Elmer and his father, another exciting adventure of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. And now, before telling you of next week's Big Town story... Friends, have you tried Life Boy Health Soap in the big new bath size? Bath size Life Boy is generous, luxurious. Gives you mountains of mild, refreshing lather, oceans of bath time enjoyment. Remember, Life Boy in your daily bath gets skin cleaner. 
stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Get new bath size Life Boy. Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard hitting story of the building racket entitled Nightmare House. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. And any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra, he roll about it. The story of Steve Wilson and Nightmare House. Brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap. Another fine lever product. Extra, extra. <laughs> New Rinso with sodium puts sunshine on your wash. Yes, rain or shine, new Rinso gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but whiter than new, and washable colors even brighter than brand new. It's because new Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, sodium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Only new Rinso contains sodium. Be sure to be with us next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Hugh James, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. LifeWire Health Soap presents Big Town. Extra, extra, he roll about Nightmare House. Tonight's Big Town Racket Expose brought to you by LifeWire Health Soap. Used in the homes of 14 million Americans. Extra, extra. Life Boy Health Soap presents Big Town, the headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting editor whose creed is emblazoned on the masthead of the Illustrated Press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Steve Wilson's headline story of Nightmare House. This is not the story of an ancient mansion peopled by ghosts of the past. This is the story of Bill Barton, his wife Helen, and their new house in the suburbs of Big Town. Oop! Doggone it. Oh, Bill. Huh? Oh, never mind, darling. You needn't have washed the dishes. I'm not that helpless. No, maybe not, honey, but you've got a lot of things to do. Yes, but I have all evening, and you'll be late for work if you don't hurry. Oh, I'm almost done with what's left of these dishes. I would be, except the darn water's almost cold. Oh, it's the heater, Bill. It's no good. Yeah, like the whole plumbing system, the foundation, roof, and floors. We've been had, Helen. Yes, and so has everyone else on Honeymoon Hill. Honeymoon Hill. What a name. Nightmare Hill would be better. Oh, but it could be a lovely house, Bill. We could only make Cain live up to his contract. <laughs> that chance of that. Have you talked to him? Yes, till I'm blue in the face. And so have the other owners. All we get is excuses, promises. And we're all through talking. What are you going to do? We're getting together. We're going to refuse to make any more payments until Cain finishes these houses according to contract. Copper pipe, waterproof cellars, put in standard appliances. And supply doors. Helen, do you realize that except for the storage room in the cellar, there isn't one inside door to any room in this or any other house on Honeymoon oh, Hill? Oh, please, Bill, don't work yourself up oh. so. I know it's bad. But at least we have a roof over our heads. Yeah, that leaks. Honeymoon Hill. Well, Kane is going to find out the honeymoon is over. Someone at the back door, Bill. You stay put on that stool. I'll see who it is. All right. But you worry too much. The baby isn't due for a month, and I feel fine. (laughs) You stay there and keep on feeling fine. Hello, Button. 
Oh, good evening. I'm Parker, Kane's new agent. Parker? Yeah. Uh, mind if I come in? Want to talk to you. Evening, Mrs. Barton. Good evening. New agent for Kane, huh? Well, I hope you'll do more about our complaints than the last one. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. We're all through talking to Kane. So I hear. I understand you've got the folks up here on the hill together. That's right. And you're talking about not meeting your next payments on these houses. If you want to call them houses. And it's more than just talk. Now, look, Barton, this is serious business. You're telling me. You can lose this place and every cent you've sunk into it. Not if we stick together and fight for our rights. That's the point. Most of the folks up here won't stick with you. Just a few sawheads. That's what you think. Look, Barton, you're the leader of this movement. You started this, you can stop it. I'll stop it when Kane lives up to his contract with us. Now, uh, look, suppose we take care of you. Me? How? Fix up your place. Look, Parker, are you trying to buy me off? No. We'll just take care of your place first. Oh, and the rest of the folks around here can wait until the cows come home, is that it? What do you care as long as you get what you want? Get out of here. You're a dirtier rat than the last one Kane sent up here. Now get out before I throw Bill, you out. Bill, don't, don't lose your head. Keep out of this, Helen. I'll settle with this rat. Get smart, Barton. Listen to your wife or you'll lose your house. I'll risk that before I'll sell out my neighbors. Now get out of here. They'll sell you out. I said get out of here. You'll be foreclosed in a month, you dope. You dope, am I? Get out. Hey. Now tell Kane before we're through. We'll put him in jail. Get. Oh, Bill, you shouldn't have done that. They can make trouble. Trouble? We've had nothing but trouble since we moved in. Now I'm going to make some trouble for Kane. We can't fight this thing alone. But what can you do, Bill? I'm telling the whole rotten story to a newspaper that fights our kind of fight. The Big Town Illustrated Press. Steve, could you spare a minute? Sure thing, Lorla. Come in. Come on in, Mr. Barton. Thanks, Miss Kilman. Steve, this is Bill Barton, and he has something on a rotten racket that I think you should hear about. Hello, Bill. Sit down. Let's have it. Well, I, I uh, haven't much time, Mr. Wilson. I work nights and I'm late for my job, but a bunch of my neighbors need your kind of help. It's one of the infinite variations of the housing racket, Steve. Oh, the housing racket. That, again. Oh, I know it's an old story, Mr. Wilson. I know it isn't news, headline stuff. It may not be headline stuff, Bill, but it is news and important news as long as the housing shortage exists. I'm not the only one involved in this. There are about 20 families on Honeymoon Hill, and we've all been taken. Honeymoon Hill? It's a development owned by a man named Kane, Steve. What's the main trouble, Bill? Well, Kane let us move in before the houses were finished and hasn't lived up to his contract. Now, that's an old dodge. Are you a veteran? No, sir, but ambulance corps driver overseas. Kane financed the whole deal and made sure he didn't sell to vets. Another dodge to avoid the protection given ex-service men by the Veterans Administration. What's the immediate trouble, Bill? Well, we've got together, threatened to withhold our next payments until Kane lives up to his contract. Now, wait a minute. Are you acting on advice of a lawyer? No, but we're going to hire one. Good. You've got to fight this thing by legal means, Bill. Well, we intend to, but Kane isn't playing it that way. Are you the head of the group? Sort of. Has Kane threatened you? Yes, with eviction. But first, Parker, his new agent, tried to bribe me. Bribe you? Yeah. Offered to fix up my place if I'd keep my mouth shut. And sell out your neighbors. Yeah. I kicked him out of the house. My wife is... Well, we're expecting a baby, and it upset her. I had to leave her alone. I'm worried. Naturally, Bill. Will you print the story? Will you give us a little publicity? Maybe it'll scare Kane into living up to his contract. Of course we will, Bill, but Kane's type of operator doesn't care what's said about them once they have their hooks in a victim. Yes, there's going to be trouble. That agent of Kane's is a rat. I wish Helen wasn't out there alone. Don't worry. She isn't going to be alone, Bill. But I work nights. I can't lay off and stay with her. We need the money to make our payments if we lose this fight with Kane. You're not going to lose this fight or your home, Bill. Where do you work? At the Big Town Electric Plant on the west side, and I'm late now. All right, come along. You can give us the rest of the facts we need on the way to your job. Let's go, Laura. I'm ready, Steve. What are you going to do, Mr. Wilson? We're going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your predatory Mr. Kane. Hey, look, Kane. What's the matter, Parker? You got trouble. Plenty of trouble. Sure. That's why I hired you, Parker. You said you was good at handling trouble, so handle it. I'll handle it. 
but I got to know a few things first. Such as what? Are you covered if anything should just happen to happen to one of those cracker boxes up on the hill? You mean insured? Yeah. Yeah, but wait a minute, Parker. Never mind. You hired me to handle those suckers? Keep them in line, collect the installments? Yeah, but listen... Don't uh, butt uh, me around, Kane. I don't like being crossed. Now, there's only one guy going to give us any real trouble. Who do you mean? Bill Barton? That's right. He's lining up the others. The rest are sheep, but they'll follow him if we don't get rid of him. Okay, foreclose on Barton if he don't pay up tomorrow. Ah, that'll take time. We got to get him out of there before he organizes that bunch and they get a lawyer. Oh, yeah. That'll cost me 2000 a unit to live up to those contracts. Yeah, 40000 bucks. That'd break me. That's why you hired me. But this is going to cost you a bonus. A big bonus. Uh, how much? 5000 5000 Yeah, 5000 if I get rid of Barton and bust up the organized squawk. Now, wait a minute. I ain't risking any rough stuff. There ain't going to be any rough stuff. Nobody's going to get hurt. Except one of them so-called houses. And the way I'm going to handle it will cover up a lot of your crooked building shenanigans. Uh, what are you... What are you going to do? <laughs> I ain't sure you ought to know. You're my agent. I'm responsible for your acts. Yeah. I wanted to be sure you knew that. And I'll keep your mouth shut when it happens. Uh, what's going to happen? There's going to be a fire up on the hill. A fire? Yeah. Starting in Bill Barton's basement. Oh. Accident. Wait a minute. Barton's wife ain't well. She might get trapped in that house. Relax. I'll make sure she gets out of that cracker box. Maybe I'll even rescue her myself and earn Barton's gratitude. You better make sure of that, Parker. Don't worry, Kane. I don't mind a little arson. But I ain't mixing myself in a murder for 5,000 bucks if I can help it. All right. Uh, when are you... When are you going to pull it? There's no time like the present, Kane. I'm going to pull it tonight. Less unaware that dangerous complications are in the making, Steve and Lorelei head for the suburbs to help Bill Barton. You know, some people think all soaps are the same. Not me. I always felt that Life Boy Health Soap got me cleaner somehow. And now I know I'm right. Because doctors have actually proved it in 820 scientific tests. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Startling, isn't it? Well, here's the explanation. Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that can form a foothold for B.O. Life Boy gets you even cleaner than the eye can see. After 820 scientific tests, these doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And this same purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. You like Life Boy's creamy rich lather, its wonderful mildness. Get Life Boy right away. Now, back to Big Town in tonight's story of Nightmare House. Learning that a group of new homeowners are having trouble with the owner, Steve and Lorelei are driving to the suburbs in the cab of Harry the Loquacious Hacky. Say, boss, Miss Kelpine. Say it, Harry, but we hope we won't need the assistance of your trusty monkey wrench on this assignment. Yeah, that is what you always hope, but you cannot always sometimes tell. So the offer stands as per usual. Thanks, Harry. But hold the double negatives of doubt until we see if we can't get some positive results with a few well-chosen words of warning. Uh, you better have those words ready, Steve. We just passed a sign saying Honeymoon Hill Development, one mile. Uh, you want me to drive right up to this here now, Honeymoon Hill, boss? Oh, Harry. Bill Barton said Kane's office is at the entrance on the highway. Stop there if you see a light. Oh, so you're going to beard the lion in his den, huh, Steve? Let's call it meeting the jackal in his lair, Lorelei. Hey, come and to it, boss. That sign you said your dream house is waiting on Honeymoon Hill, 
Tine right, 500 feet. And this is it. Now there's the office, Steve. Uh, no, there is a light on. I'll get out here, Harry. That uh, shack, boy. Uh, you want me to go stay with Helen Barton until you come up, Steve? Yes, all right. But first see if you can get a few of their neighbors to meet at Barton's house in half an hour. Okay, I'll do my best. What's your plan, Steve? To get Kane up there for a showdown. And there'll be strength in numbers. Uh, okay, get going, Harry. Shack, boy. Uh, we'll meet you at Bill Barton's house, Steve. Well, let's see what Mr. Kane has to say for himself. Someone is burning the midnight oil. I wonder why. Yes, yes, who is it? Come in. Thank you. Are you Mr. Kane? Yeah, yeah, I am. What can I do for you? Nothing for me, Mr. Kane. But perhaps a great deal for yourself and the people who bought your houses up on Honeymoon Hill. What do you mean? Uh, who are you? What are you selling? Selling? Just ideas, Mr. Kane. Oh, an architect, huh? Well, I'm sorry, I make my own plans. Have ideas of my own. Yes, yeah, so I hear. What have you heard? Who are you? I'm Steve Wilson of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Oh, from the press. I'm sorry, I'm not buying any ads right now. All my houses are sold, and, of course, when I start another development... Quit ducking the obvious, Kane. We don't come miles out of Big Town to solicit ads in the middle of the night. Well, uh, well, who are you, and what do you want out here, then? I'm Steve Wilson, managing editor of the press. Editor? Yes. And I want your side of the story that you failed to live up to your contracts with the purchases of your houses on Honeymoon Hill. Who told you that? That isn't important. I want to know if it's true before I publish the story. And I'm arranging a meeting at the home of the owners. A meeting? Yes, where you'll have a chance to answer the charges. If you can. Well, where is this meeting going to be? At the home of Bill Barton in about Uh, 20 minutes. At Barton's? 20 minutes, sir? Yes. Uh, uh... Say, what's the matter with you? Why should that be important? Well, nothing, nothing. I, I just remembered. I, I've got an appointment. I, I can't go with you. Wait a minute, Kane. The appointment you just remembered can't be as important as this one. Let, let go of me, Wilson. I, I've got to meet somebody. Not so fast, Kane. That somebody wouldn't be Parker, your new agent, would it? That's none of your business. I'm making it my business. Parker threatened Bill Barton this evening. Where is he? I don't know. Let go of me. Where is he, Kane? I want him at that meeting. He's your agent and you're responsible for his acts. I'm not. I don't know what he's going to do to the Barton house. Do to the Barton house? What are you talking about? What's going to happen? What do you know? Talk, I don't know. Drop that inkstand, Kane. Leave me alone. That'll hold you, Wilson. Now i got to find Parker. i got to stop him from setting that fire or he'll send us both to jail. It's too soon for that. Besides, there won't be any treetops. Mr. Kane didn't plant the maples and thought... Well, that noise was in the cellar. I guess the lid must have fallen off the ash can. Uh, maybe Mrs. Thompson's calf's gotten in the cellar again. i better go see. Let the poor thing out. I hope this light switch works. Nothing else does. Huh, it does. i better be careful of these deep stairs... Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty. Are you down here in the cellar, kitty? Oh, so you're in the coal bin. Come out of there, kitty. Come on out, or I'll... Come here. (gasps) Mr. Parker, what are you doing here? Shut up, you little fool. Oh, go. Shut up, you... Oh, try to bite me, will you? (gasps) What are you doing here? Why have you crumpled all those newspapers? Never mind. Fire. Fire. You're going to start a fire? Yes. Oh, help! Help! Oh, Mrs. Thompson! Oh, she's passed out. Fainted. Now i got to go through with it. I can't let her talk. Got to keep her here. Yeah, this storage room will do it. Good thing Kane put a door on it. I'll leave her in there. Nobody will know she wasn't caught upstairs when this dump goes up in smoke. <laughs> Kelpine, I make 
six homeowners we find awake, and they'll be down at a barton place in a few minutes. Uh, shall we try for some more? No, Harry, I think that'll be enough to suit Steve's plan, and we better go tell Mrs. Barton she's going to be host to a community protest meeting. Yeah, she'll be kind of surprised. Which place is it? The last house on this street. Uh, you better slow down, Harry. Yeah. Some street. Bet you'll go down to the axles in mud if it rains. Yeah, there's another of Kane's unhonored commitments. Oh, that must be the house. The white one. Pull in the drive, Harry. Yeah. Right by the kitchen door, Miss Kilbright. And she must be home and up. There's lights burning all over the house. I don't blame her. All alone up here in the hill, a hundred yards to the nearest neighbor... Uh, I'll knock on the kitchen door. The shades are up, but I don't see nobody. Well, I'll try again. Maybe she's in the bedroom on the other side of the house. Yeah, maybe. Huh? Hey, Miss Kilbine, huh? look at our little window down there next to the ground. Good heavens. There's a light in the cellar, too. Maybe she's down there fixing the finest. Oh, golly, Harry, she's not well. She may have gone down there and fainted. Look, I- I'm going to try to get in... This door is locked. Well, maybe there's an outside door to the cellar, Miss Kilbane. Uh, it should be on this side. Yeah, and folks hardly ever remember to keep them locked. Maybe we can get in that way. Uh, huh? There it is, Harry, down those steps. Well, leave me go first, Miss Kilbane. I'll try the door. Okay. Is it locked, Harry? No, it's just stuck, I think. Well, try it, Harry. Try it. Force it. I'm worried. Yeah, something screwy. <laughs> hey. The lights are out down here. Oh, they were on a minute ago when we came down the steps. Harry, look out! Harry! Come here, you nosy dame. Come on, come on. Now, get in there with that botten woman. Now, I really got to get all this thing done. I gotta get out of here. Parker! Parker, wait! Wait! Oh, Kane! No, don't! 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 Stop! Don't set a fire! Too late. Get out of here, Kane. That fool barking woman caught me down here. That doesn't matter. Stop it. Everything's gone wrong. I'll say it has. Another dame and a hack driver showed up. I had to hit the guy with his shovel. He's laying over there. I think I busted his skull. That doesn't matter. You can't set the fire now. Why not? A newspaper guy by the name of Wilson came to my office. He's called a meeting. The owners are all coming here in a few minutes. So what? I hit him with an inkstand. I knocked him out so I could get here and warn you. Too late. I got a prison record. We got to cover this thing and a fire will do it. No, no. We'll both get sent up for arson. Arson? I've been tagged for arson before, and I'm talking about murder. Murder? Yes, murder. That hacky over there on the floor. I'll burn for it if the Barton dame and the other woman talk. Where are they? What have you done to them? Nothing but locked them in that storage closet over there. But they ain't going to talk me into the chair. What have you got in that bucket, Parker? Gasoline. Gasoline? Yeah, I'll make a torch out of this dump and nothing flat. Get out of here unless you want to stay here from now on. No, no. You're not mixing me up in more murder to save your own hide. Put down that coal shovel, Kane. You put down that bucket of gasoline. All right. Now, you put down that shovel. Drop it. A gun. What are you doing carrying a gun? I got the habit from working for dirty crooks like you. Drop that shovel or I'll drop you. No, no, no. Listen, Parker, listen. You fool, you fool. We gotta pull it off. Now you're gonna stay here with those dames and take the rap for this fire. Paper and gas. This'll do it. Don't give me the time to get away from here. No, it won't. Parker. Who are you? I'm the newspaper guy, your partner in crime, knocked out with an ink stand, but fortunately he only stunned me. Well, keep away from me or I'll do more and stun you with the rest of the slugs in this gun. All right. I'll keep away from you if you'll keep away from that bucket of gasoline. Sure, sure, I'll keep away from it, you nosy newsy. That's easy. Because you're going to pick up that bucket of gas and throw it on that pile of newspapers. You murderous swine. Shut up. Pick up that bucket of gasoline. Pick it up. Thus, Steve Wilson is faced with a deadly dilemma. 
In a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. I'm going to say something you may find startling, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, after comparing the effects of daily baths with different soaps, these doctors made this amazing statement. Actually, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. It's Life Boy's purifying ingredient that makes the difference. And remember, this purifying ingredient actually makes Life Boy milder, safe even for a baby's tender skin. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Ask for Life Boy in the big new bath size. It's generous, luxurious. Get the new bath size Life Boy. And now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson as he faces a desperate killer in tonight's racket expose headlined Nightmare House. Pick up that bucket of gasoline, Wilson. I told you, pick it up. Wait a minute, Parker. Think it over before you go through with setting fire to this house. What have I got to think over? You haven't killed Harry, my hack driver. How do you know? I just saw him move and groan. So what? I had to nail Kane with this gun. I'm primed for the chair. No matter what I do from now on. You might get away with life. Even a self-defense plea because Kane tried to hit you with that coal shovel. I'm not going back to the pen for life. I'm getting clean away. Pick up that bucket of gas. All right, Parker. But won't it give you nightmares for the rest of your life to know that you burned two girls to death locked in that closet over there, helpless? And a third person is yet unborn. Shut up. They got themselves to blame. Shut up. Throw the gas on that pile of newspapers. All right, I guess there's no use arguing with a madman. Shut up and throw that gas. Very well. Here it comes on you. Why, you dirty... Stop firing that gun, you fool. You're drenched with gasoline. Don't fire that gun again. The powder flash will turn you into a torch. Drop the gun. Drop it. Or I'll have to break your arm. Drop it. Good. And now just to make you wait for the police. All right, you swine. Stay there on the floor. Just a minute, Lorelei. I'll get this door unbolted. Get you out of here. Gee, we could hear it all. Wow, I thought we were really done and So for. did I, until Parker made me pick up that bucket of gas. How's Mrs. Barton? She fainted when Parker shoved her in here, but I think she's all right. Help me to get her up to you. Poor girl. What a time to have something like this happen to oh, her. Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, she's coming out of it, Bill. Too. Yeah, she'll be all right in a few minutes. Oh, Bill. Our baby. Our home. Our baby? Right. All right, Mrs. Barton. Your home and your baby are safe. Yes, Mrs. Barton. There won't be any more trouble. We'll take you upstairs in a moment, and you can phone your husband. Everything is settled. Settled? Settled? Yes. Parker's gun has arranged that Honeymoon Hill will be under new management. And we'll see that you and your neighbors get to live in a place that is just that. In more than name only. Boys, boys. Well, Harry... Oh, thank heavens, you're all right, too. How's your head? Head? You mean this throb and noggin I got between my ears? Yes. How are you, Harry? Swell, elegant, boss, I think. Except it looks like I missed an awful lot of excitement. Yes, Harry. But it's the kind of excitement we can all afford to miss. And so ended happily for the homeowners of Honeymoon Hill with the death of Kane, the arrest and conviction of Parker, and a new era under new management, another exciting adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve Wilson. You'll hear about next week's Big Town story in just a moment. Now, here is Hugh James with a brief but important message for every one of you. Doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, you're cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy than when you bathe with any other leading soap. Ask for Life Boy Health Soap.
Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story of juvenile delinquency leading to gunplay and murder. And headline, A Date with Death. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. And any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pawley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra hero, all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and a date with death. Brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap. Another fine lever product. Extra, extra... New Rinso with Solium puts sunshine on your wash. Yes, rain or shine, new Rinso gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but whiter than new, and washable colors even brighter than brand new. It's because new Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Only new Rinso contains solium. Be sure to be with us next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Hugh James, bidding you good night. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, present Big Town. All right, get going, Wilson. Start walking across the lake. Step down on the ice. Listen, Chick, this ice won't hold the three of us. This gun says get going, Wilson. Come on, by. Break away from him, Miss Ruff. You slug. No, Chick, no. Yes, listen to A Date with Death. The headline newspaper story of Steve Wilson, fighting editor of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Listen to this timely story of juvenile delinquency that had its beginning on a drab street on the south side of Big Town as a young girl unknowingly kept a date with death. Chick. Chick, is that you? Yeah, it's me, Vi. All right, hop in a heap, honey. We're going to make a killer tonight. No, wait a minute, Chick. What for? Are you scared, baby? Yes. But I need money bad. <laughs> Who don't? I mean, a lot of money to send Johnny away before he dies of that terrible cough. Well, let's go and get it. I got three places cased for a sticker. Where? Well, the first is down on the waterfront. It'll be a cinch as a warmer upper. All right. But, Chick, are you sure you can go through with it? Not lose your head? <laughs> now, don't you worry, my baby. I learned all the tricks of the trade and reform. And this gun will scare the dough out of the customers. That's what I mean, Chick, that gun. What about it? I need money bad, but I don't want to be the cause of anyone getting hurt, killed. You promised you wouldn't load the gun. Sure, I promised. And the rod's empty. All right, get in the car and get under the wheel. You're going to drive and leave the rest to me. All right, but, but wait. Whose car is this? <laughs> I borrowed it. You mean stole it? Nah, some dope left his keys in it. We'll ditch it when we're done. The cops will find it and give it back to him in the morning. But won't the police be looking for it? Sure. In a couple of hours. But I switched the license plates. Will you quit worrying? I told you I know all the tricks of the trade. Now get in, honey. Bye. Violet. Johnny. Oh, wait a minute. Johnny, get back in the house. You'll catch your death out here without a cold. Well, that don't matter. <laughs> it does. You know what happens when you get a cold. Now please go in. No, I heard you talking. I know why you're gone out with this rat. I don't want that gun to help. <coughs> I'd rather hack myself to death. Now, don't be a dope, Johnny. You got a rotten break with them bum pair of lungs. We're going to get some dough so you can go where you can even the odds. You shut up, Malone. Get out of here with that hot heat and leave my sister out of your crazy stick-up plans. Go on, beat it, you rat. Right, cut it out, you dope. Get back in your basement or I'll slug you. Away. Please, Johnny. I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. Chicks promise nobody will get hurt. That's what they all say. Every rat with a gun... You're not gone with him. <coughs> please, Johnny, please go back in the house. All right, get in the car, Vi. I'll take him back in the flat. 
Make him see it all. Wait, come on, Johnny boy. Let, let go of me. Let go of my arm. Please, Johnny, stay home. Wait for me. No, come boy, on, don't get Johnny. in that car. Oh. All right, Johnny boy. Now down the stairs into your clammy basement joint. I'll show you how it's going to be. Let go. You ain't dragging my sister into no jam. Reform school prison. <coughs> I'd rather die. I'd rather be dead. Sure, now you just hold still now. Hold still, Johnny. Let me get this door open. I won't. I ain't going with you. Hold still, you hear me? Now listen, you dope. I got us all planned. I need a dame to drive and front and cover for me. Not my sister. Not by. Yes, by. <laughs> and just to make sure you don't gum up the works, you got to stay right here till we get back. Oh. Okay, boy, you stand at the wheel. Keep the motor going for a quick getaway. But, Chick... Why pick a waterfront joint like this Harbor Cafe? Because it's usually deserted this early in the evening. And because the piano thumping dope called Mozart runs it. He's alone after the dock workers go home, leaving a couple of hundred bucks in the cash register. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I told you, I case this dump. This is just sort of practice for a couple of big jobs that got lined up in the suburbs for later tonight. All right, but be careful, Chick. If he puts up a fight, let it go. Run for it. I'll get us away from here. All right, Fry. You just stay out of the wheel, huh? Keep the motor going. Keep the jalapen gear for a getaway. All right, Chick. I'll be waiting. All right, just keep on playing, sucker. Make like I'm a music-loving customer. What do you have, fella? Dough, all a dough in a till, and uh, don't turn around. There isn't enough dough in the world, much less in my cash register, to make me want to argue with a gun in my back. Good. Go on, keep on beating out the blues. Yeah, sure. How about the uh, jailhouse blues? All right, cut the musical wisecracks or I'll blast you for laughs. Okay. But you'll, uh, you'll need a sense of humor when you open that cash register behind the bar. Yeah? How come? You take in plenty when the dock has been a few on the way home? Yeah, but, uh, I cash some of their paychecks, and you can't. Checks. That's all there is in the till. You're a liar. Liar? You're a dope. Go on, keep playing. I'll sleep myself. Sure, sure, but, uh, you scare me, uh, makes a guy's throat dry to have a gun jabbed in his back. Mind if I, uh, have a swing of suds out of that stein at the end of the keyboard? <laughs> yeah, sure, go ahead. And then play me I Got Plenty of Plenty while I tip the till. Sure. You're, uh, welcome to any cash you can find. But I don't like being called a liar. You tricky slug. Uh, you slug. You, you blinded me with that beer mug. I can't see. I, I can't see. Anything on the hook for your wondrous girl reporter? Not a thing, Lorelei, at the moment. But come in, my lovely. Yes. Perch on the corner of the desk of management and take my mind off this doggone paperwork. <laughs> okay. But you could have stayed a reporter or feature writer, you know. Well, somebody's got to be the goat. Alias, managing editor. Yeah, but you still jump every time a five alarm goes in the city room. And then there's your anti-crime campaigns just to keep you from getting bored. Yes, and uh, not so incidentally... We're starting a new one against a different kind of criminal. Oh? A reckless driver. The killer at the wheel. Good. Let me in on that one. Okay, we're going to try a different approach. We're going after the driver who's had minor collisions, but has never had a serious accident. Well, there's sure plenty of those on the road. Yes, and all the more dangerous, Lorelei, because he doesn't believe he's a reckless driver. Uh-oh. The private wired your underworld listening post your own five alarm. Yes, I'm expecting a tip on that south side police killing. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Hi, Steve. Mozart. Got a minute for... for a laugh? Sure thing, Mozart. What was the matter? 
You sound, sound kind of feeble. Kind of feeble-minded, Steve. Well, how so? A punk kid tried to practice his stick-up technique on me and my cash register. Now, hold up. What's happened? Well, I, I told the kid there was no cash in the register, and he called me a liar. I cocked him with a beer stein, and he opened me up with lead. Where'd he hit you, Mozart? Have you called a doctor and notified the police? Through the shoulder, Steve, clean and hot as a poker. I lost some plasma the blood bank ought to have, but an ambulance intern just finished patching me up while I gave the law the lowdown on the kid. You recognize him? No, but I marked him up. Heard him say I blinded him. Blinded him? Yeah. Cops are on the prowl, but I think he got clean away in a car waiting outside. Got any ideas we might follow up, Mozart? Yes, Steve, more than an idea. Well, let's have it. Well, another kid came in a few minutes ago. Another kid? Yeah, just after the cop and the ambulance left. Well, he says his sister may have been driving the getaway car. A girl driver, good grief. Well, the kid's lung sick and scared. He says his sister got mixed up with a rat to get money to send him away. He won't talk to the cops, Steve, but he might talk to you. Keep him there, Mozart. I'll be right down on the double. You get that, Laura and I? Yes, enough of it, Steve. Gee, it sounds awful. Yes, the tragedy of good motives and bad methods. Well, Steve, that girl may be in really serious trouble before this is finished. Yes, let's go see what we can do. Thus, Steve Wilson and Lorelei take steps to help a sick boy and his misguided sister. And for the exciting developments, we'll return in a moment. Life Boy, get skin cleaner. Life Boy, get skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, get skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared the results. They found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt you never see. The cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. Doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And it makes Life Boy milder, too. Yes, safe even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy today is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. They like its mildness, its rich leather, its greater protection. Life Boy... Get skin cleaner. Life Boy, get skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, get skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's headline story of juvenile crime captioned, A Date with Death. Learning that his friend Mozart has been wounded in an attempted robbery at the Harbor Cafe, Steve and Lorelei Kilborn are on the way from the Illustrated Press office. Meanwhile, Mozart is at his inevitable piano, talking to a boy who may have vital information about the crime. What's, uh, what's your last name, Johnny? I won't tell you. You'll just tell the cops and they'll grab my sister for being with the rat who shot you. (coughs) Well, uh... You'll have to know sooner or later, kid. And if she teamed up with that louse to get money to send you away to get rid of that cough, the judge will go easy. Maybe. Who's this newspaper guy you say will help us? Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. But, kid, nobody can help your sister if you don't come clean and tell us where we can find the gun toting slug she was driving tonight. Well, I don't know for sure. It... Well, make a good guess, kid. Here's Steve and Miss Kilborn, one of his crime reporters. Hi, Steve. Hello, Mozart. Hello, Mozart. Hi, Lorelei. How's your shoulder wound? Oh, not bad. I can play with one hand, but I can't manage beer at the same time. Oh, uh, meet uh, Johnny No Name. Hello, Johnny. I'm so sorry your sister is mixed up in this mess. The rat promised Vi he wouldn't carry a loaded gun. I begged her not to go with him. <coughs> I tried to stop her, but he slugged me. Uh, <coughs> take it easy, Johnny. Let's have the facts, and perhaps we can help you and your sister. How do I know you won't go straight to the cops or print everything in your newspaper? You don't, Johnny. And the police will have to know. But this isn't just a matter of keeping your sister out of trouble over an unsuccessful stick-up, Johnny. Huh? What do you mean? Look, Johnny, her companion may think he killed Mozart. Your sister would be a material witness. It's obvious she isn't a hardened criminal, and he may feel he has to shut her up to keep her quiet. You mean kill her? Kill Vi? Yes, why not? 
If he thinks he has killed one person, he would have nothing to lose in killing the one other person who could place him at the scene of the crime, Johnny. Yeah, I, I never thought of that. So who is this trigger-happy fool? Where can we find him, Johnny? What's his name? His name is Jick Malone. Malone. He got out of reform school last month. <coughs> I met him at a party. I, I don't know where he lives. Well, where does he usually hang out, Johnny? Where would he go to keep undercover? He, he said he was coming back to our flat, but they didn't come. I was waiting when I heard about the shooting down here <coughs> over the radio. I must have cut him up pretty bad with that beer stein, Steve. I heard him yell I'd blinded him after he hit me with that one shot and staggered out. Well, that could mean he'd have to make your sister drive him to a safe place where he could lay low until his face healed up. Now, think hard, Johnny. It may mean your sister's life. I... I, I don't know. I, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Wilson. I did hear him telling Vi about a cabin out of town. A cabin out of town? Yeah, on a lake. What lake, Johnny? Think. Try to remember. That would be the kind of hideout he'd need now. It, it was lost? No, no, long... Uh, lone Lake. Steve, I know that place. It's about 20 miles out. Half a dozen summer cottages. Two sisters were murdered there. I covered it. Yes, it's a long shot, but our best bet. Let me let me go with you, Mr. Wilson. No, <laughs> not in this weather. Not without a hat and coat. Here, take my case. Oh, please, Mr. Wilson. All right, Johnny. We may need you. Let's go. Is this place, Chick? It better be my pal Monk's hideout in Lone Lake if you drove where I told you. I did just what you told me. Made every term and please let go of my arm and take that gun out of my side. Not a chance, baby. As long as I can't see, I'm holding on to you. If you try to get away, I'll let you have it, same as I did that Mozart punk. Why did you lie to me, Chick? You said that gun wasn't loaded. Sure. Because I was sure you wouldn't come along if you knew I was carrying a loaded gun. I needed you to drive and make it look like we're a couple of moon spooners. Now I need you till I'm able to see again. What's the good of coming to this cabin? You want to see a doctor. You're liable to be blind for the rest of your life. I'll get a doctor when the heat's off, one I can trust. Meanwhile, you're going to be my eyes, baby. All right, now get out of the car. Let's get in the cabin and start a fire. Come on. It's crazy, Chick. It's cold and dark, and we didn't bring any food. There's cans of stuff in the cabin. Come on, lead the way. If you park where I told you, there's a path to the shack. It's right on the edge of the lake. It's right over there. The lake looks frozen. Yeah, this lake's right on the state line. If anybody trails us here, we can cross over the... Hey. We gotta be at the cabin by now. It's right here. There's a padlock on the door. All right, we'll get the key. Don't try to run for it, baby. Don't worry. I wouldn't leave a dog out here alone, blind and helpless as you are. It ain't help as long as I got this gun. All right. Here's the key. Now get that lock open. Let's get inside and get a fire going. All right. But, Chick, how do you know you killed that piano player at the Harbor Cafe? You said you couldn't see a thing after he hit you on the temple with that beer stein. It was so close I couldn't have missed. I heard it go down on the keyboard. And there wasn't a yap out of him. But maybe you only wounded him. No, not with this thirty-eight. Come on, now, inside. Should be matches and candles on a table in the middle of the room. Light them. Let go of my arm, Chick. I told you I won't run away and leave you like this. I ain't trusting nobody with this gun. Keep close to me, baby. All right, light a candle. All right, Chick. But a light can't matter much to you. That's what you think. Maybe I'm beginning to be able to see a little already. I can't see you yet, but I... I could see the light of that candle. Then, then it was only the shock of getting hit on the temple that blinded you. Yeah, so get a fire going on the stove. All right, Chick. But when you get your sight back, please let me go. I've got to get back to Johnny. He's really desperately ill. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, baby. When I get my peepers back, I'll send you on your way. Promise, Chick. Not the way you promised you wouldn't carry a loaded gun. Promise. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, Vi, I promise. You won't have a thing to worry about. Say, boss, Miss Kelpine. Say it, Harry, but watch for that sign pointing.
pointing to the Lone Lake cottages. Oh, it ought to be right along here. I remember from the time I hacked you up here to cover that story of the two ladies who hacked each other up with hatchets. Oh, I'd rather forget that assignment, wouldn't you, Steve? Yes, it's one of those things that make you wish you'd never heard of the newspaper business. How we find the right cabin, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> Chick Malone, they'd buy, drive him here. <laughs> well, there are only half a dozen cabins, Johnny, on a road skirting the lake. If they're here, we'll spot the car near one of them. Uh, here it is, boss. Do we drive all the way in or park and walk? Uh, can you drive without lights, Harry? Yeah, I think so. The fresh snow makes everything pretty light. Hey, tire tracks. A car has been in here since it stopped snowing. That means tonight. Cut your lights and drive slowly, Harry. The cabins are only a short way off the main road, Steve. Yes, this is far enough. Stop here, Harry. Jack, boss. Well, there's a cabin, Mr. Wilson. Over there in the woods on the left. Yes. But no sign of a light. I can see the lake through the trees on the right. Looks frozen over, boss. Well, the ice can't be very solid, Harry. We haven't had enough cold weather. Steve, over there, look. Where, Lila? The third cabin. I just saw sparks coming out of the chimney. There they are again. You're right. That cabin is occupied, and the regular summer people don't come up here this time of year. Your guess may have been right, Johnny. What are we going to do, Steve? Harry? Yep, what? There's a gas station on the main road about 100 yards from where we turned in. Yeah, and it was open. Run back there and phone the state troopers. Give them the whole story and ask them to send a patrol car here as quickly as possible. Jack, boss, and I'll ring the law in on this on the double-double. Oh, what are we going to do, Steve? Just wait? No. Stay here in the hack with Johnny, Lorna. I'm going to go over to that cabin and scout around. Let me go with you, Mr. Wilson. My sister... <laughs> no, 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 Johnny. Stay in the hack. You can keep as warm as you can. I'll come back and get you if I need your help. Oh, now, please be careful, Steve. That young hoodlum is armed, and he must be pretty desperate. Yes, Laura Lyon, that's why we've got to get Johnny's sister out of that cabin before the troopers have to blast him out with tummy guns. Now, stay here, Laura Lyon, and keep Johnny here. In the hack. <laughs> that by? Put down that gun, Chick. It's only the wind banging his shell. Shut up. Maybe, maybe not. Thought I had a car out in the lane a while ago. You've been hearing things ever since we got here. Yeah. That's when a guy can't see, ain't got anything else to do but listen. Listen and feel things. I got a notion of somebody prowling around outside, a case in the stump. What does it matter, Chick? The police followed us, they'll surround the cabin and get you. You're helpless. You can't see. I can see enough to empty this rod and anybody that crashes in here. Why? What good will that do? Sit up there after me. It means that Mozart guy is dead. He ain't taking me to burn in the chair. He'll be after you whether Mozart is dead or not. Listen, you got it wrong, baby. Not just me. They'll be after you and me. You're in this, baby. In it or the finish. You lied to me. You said you wouldn't carry a gun. I know even that was wrong, but you lied to me. Sure, baby. You were a dope. I needed you. And I still need you. So shut up and do as you're told. Jake, you're going to kill me. I know that now. No matter what happens, you're going to kill me to keep me from talking. Don't make up my mind for me ahead of time, baby. Behave yourself or you'll get it now. <laughs> shut up, shut up. There is somebody out there. Get your coat on, kid. Why? What are you going to do? We're going to get out of here. Where? Going to lamb across the lake, across the ice, out of the sea. No, Chick, I won't leave here. I won't go with you. Get your coat on, baby. Get it on or else. Chick! Shut up. Hello, Miss Callan. Can I come in? I lost my way. Chick, what are you going to do? Open the door. Let him in. Why get him in here? So he ain't gonna leave and tell anybody we're here. Open the door, let him in. Let go of my arm. Like nothing. You pull away from me and I'll blast you and him. Now open that door and step back. All right. Come on in, mister. Thanks. You can put away that gun. I'm not a stick-up artist. Close the door and bolt it, mister. Sure. Thanks for letting me come in. I was cold. All right, mister. Who's with you? I'm all alone. Why? Good. Move over to the light where I can see you. See you? There's plenty of light in this cabin. What's the matter with your eyes? He can hardly see at all. Shut up, baby. Oh. Then you are his eyes, miss. Yes. He's been hurt. Shut up! Just keep your coat on, mister. You and Vi are going to play like a couple of sea and I dogs. You're going to lead me over the ice. Across the lake. Thus, Steve is deliberately walked into a deadly situation. And for the five-star payoff, we'll return in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. 
stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared the results. They found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt you never see. The cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. Doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And it makes Life Boy milder, too. Yes, safe even for babies' tender skin. No wonder Life Boy today is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. They like its mildness, its rich leather, its greater protection. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's tense and timely drama of juvenile crime captioned A Date with Death. All right, Wilson, so you're the racket busting newspaper slug of the press. Yes. Plays palsy walsy with the cops, That's aren't you? right, Chick. You call the troopers, huh? We ain't gonna be here, friend. Come on. You'll never make it across the lake, Malone. No, why not? The ice is too thin to carry one person, let alone three walking close together, as we must, if we're to lead you. Give it up, Chick. Even if you got across the lake into another state, you're still so blind you can hardly see. You'll be helped. Not as long as I get this gun to make you dope school like I say. You're going to be my eyes till we get to some pals who'll hide me out. All right, come on. Get going. Out the front door and down to the lake. All right, open that door, Wilson. All right, Chick. I'll lead you by the arm. No, you don't, Wilson. Don't turn around. Just keep in front of me or I can keep this gun on your back. Okay. Come on, bye, baby. Try and break my hole in your arm and I'll plug Wilson. Walk down to the dock, Wilson. It's only a few feet from here. We'll never make it across the lake. Give it up, Chick. We'll break through the ice. Drown. Shut up. Come on. Come on. Try getting away from me and I'll let Wilson have it in the back. All right, Chick. Here's the end of the dock. It's one step down to the ice. But it looks thin and cracked. Try it. Put your weight on it. Chick, it's your last chance to turn back. To hand over that gun, give yourself up, and take your chances with the law. Nothing doing. Get going. Don't, Chick. Mr. Wilson says you only wounded Mozart. He's lying to save his own hide. Now get going, Wilson. Step down on the ice. Put your weight on it. All right. Break away from him, Miss West. You slug. All right. That'll be all out of that gun, Chick. Help me. I, I can't see. I'll drown. You won't Help drown me. in three feet of water. That's all there is. Stop struggling. Hold still. Mr. Wilson, can I help you? No, Miss West. I can get him up out of the shallow water onto the dock. You rat! You slug, I'll get you for this! It'll be a long time before you have a chance. Come on, Chick. Back to the cabin before we both freeze. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. I know I don't deserve your help after what I did, but thank you. Well, let's leave that to a judge and jury, Miss West. I think that there are a great many things that will be taken into account. Steve. Steve, is, is that you? Yes, Lorelei. Oh. Well, Where's Johnny? He's with me. We heard a shot. I couldn't keep him in the house. Why? Why are you okay? Johnny! Oh, Johnny, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's all right, boy. As long as you're safe, it's all right. Oh, Johnny, you shouldn't have come. You'll catch your death. Johnny's going to be all right, Miss West. We're going to see that he gets to a place that'll fix him up. Come on now, let's get back to that cabin and wait for the troopers. Uh, Steve, I think I hear them coming. Yes. You hear that, Chick? Yeah, I hear it. I'm sorry... You'll have to relearn in prison the old, old lesson. That crime is a date with a kind of death. And so ended with the rearrest and imprisonment of Chick Malone and a suspended sentence for Violet West. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Illustrated Press. Now, before hearing about next week's Big Town Adventure, here are Steve Wilson and Lorelei with exciting news for every woman listening. This is Steve Wilson welcoming a brand new number member of the famous Pepsid and Lever Laboratories. It's Rave, the new personalized home permanent. Rave is the new improved cream cold wave that eliminates guesswork. Right, Lorelei. With Rave, and only with Rave, you get the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart. 
your guide to the one right way for your kind of hair. Women will find a Rave Wave is gentler, easier, up to twice as fast as old type home permanence. A Rave Wave is long-lasting, yet softer, more natural-looking from the very first day. Ladies, make your next permanent a personalized Rave Home Permanent. It has been granted the Good Housekeeping Seal and accepted for advertising in the journals of the American Medical Association. Now on sale for the first time, a complete Rave Kit is only $2. Rave Refill Kit, $1 at all drug and cosmetic counters. Both kits contain the exclusive Dial-A-Wave chart. <laughs> Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story of a vicious ring of professional gamblers using bribery and murder in the world of sports and headlined, The Fatal Fix. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional, and any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the exciting big town story of The Fatal Fix, presented by Lever Brothers Company. This is your narrator, Hugh James, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, present Big Town. Extra, extra, extra. Here's Steve Wilson and Sports Pack and Expose. Big Town Gambler slain in the fatal fix. Extra, extra. <laughs> Yes, Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, are proud to present Big Town. The story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and Steve Wilson's headline racket expose captioned The Fatal Fix. Baseball, basketball, boxing, the racetrack have become big business, big money. And when professional gamblers move in, sportsmanship is out. And such is the case in The Fatal Fix that began insofar as Steve Wilson was concerned on an abandoned coal dock on the waterfront of Big Town. Fast up, Cleo. You've had your milk? Go catch yourself a rat. Pass up, Cleo. Somebody just drove out on the dock. I'm going to blow out the candle. They ain't coming to our shanty boat. You and me don't know nobody that owns a car except our friend Mr. Wilson of the press. Cleo! Somebody's getting murdered. You stay in the shanty. I'm going to sneak up on the dock and see what's happened. Because the cops blame us for anything that happens on this old dock. Golly, the car's going away. But something happened. Something awful happened. Help somebody. Help somebody help me. Lady, I ain't nobody much, but I'll help you. What happened? He hit me. He cut my face with a knife. Help me. Oh, sure. Lean on me, lady. I'll help you into my shanty boat. No. I got away from him out of the car, but he'll come back. Kill me. They gotta kill me. Who's gotta kill you? I know too much about the fix. What fix? The bribes, the game, the big game. They're gonna miss shots and fix the score. They'll come back. Oh, then I better get you out of here. I got no place to go. They'll find me. No, they won't, lady. I know a newspaper fella will know what to do. A newspaper man? Well, they'll kill me if I talk to the newspaper. No, they won't. My friend, Mr. Wilson, will get them before they get you. Now, come on, lady. I'll help you to a place where we can phone him right away. Yeah? Right? Yeah. It's me, Chef. So what? Lola got away. You dope. 
But she ain't got far. Get her or you'll get it. Okay. She's on a call dock with an old river rat named Willie the Weep. Get her and clam him. I marked her. She's plenty scared. Maybe she'll stay clammed. Bring her here and we'll find out. What if she won't come, Brad? If she won't play, finish marking her up and dunk her deep. Steve, you got a minute? Always for you, Lorelai. Come in. Thanks. Uh, will you take a look at this safe driving material? Sure thing. How's that lead article coming? Well, here it is. Uh-huh. Death at the wheel. Good. The safety council has given us the latest figures. Fine, but figures don't scare people enough, Laura. Well, they need to be scared out of their wits. No, into using their wits, realizing that any careless driver is asking for a fatal accident. I've hammered on that with a few well-chosen incidents. Yeah, so I see. Swell. Lead off for this and make it a series. Uh, uh-oh, your private line to your listening post on the fringe of the so-called underworld. Yes, I'm expecting a new tip on that numbers ragged murder last week. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Mr. Wilson, it's me, Willie the Wheat. Oh, hello, Willie. How's everything along the waterfront? Something awful just happened on the old coal dock alongside my shanty boat. What happened, Willie? Somebody almost killed a girl. Good grief. Let's have it, Willie. Fast. Well, he beat her and cut her up with a knife now, wait, wait a minute, Willie. Not quite so fast. Where is she, Willie? Hiding in an alley, outside the dog wagon I'm phoning from. She's afraid the fellow will come back and finish killing her. Is she badly wounded? No, she's cut on the face and kind of dizzy from being hit on the head. What's back of it, Willie? Some kind of a racket. Racket? She, she knows too much. She's afraid to go home. I said you'd help her, but she's scared of everybody. Well, hang up and get back to her, Willie. She may try to get away from you and hide. What will I do with her, Mr. Wilson? She won't let me take I'll take her to Mozart's Harbor Cafe. It's only a couple of blocks from where you are, Willie. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Uh, are you coming down? Yes, with Miss Kilburn. We'll be there in ten minutes. Get going, Willie. Don't let that girl get away. Thus, Steve Wilson moves into a situation promising dangerous complications. And for the exciting developments in this fatal fix, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. Life Boy, get skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt you never see. Doctors say that Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes the difference. And it makes Life Boy milder, too. Yes, safe even for babies' tender skin. No wonder Life Boy today is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. They like its mildness, its rich lather, its greater protection. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's story of the fatal fix. Acting on a gang violence tip, Steve is on his way to Mozart's Harbor Cafe. But meanwhile, Willie the Weep is trying to lead the victim, a young girl, along a dark street to Mozart's place. <laughs> Come on, Reddy. My friend, Mr. Wilson's going to meet us at Mozart's Harbor Cafe and help you. No. If I talk to the newspapers, they'll find me and kill me sure next time. Let me go, please, Mr. Wilson. No, lady, you're all cut up and bleeding. Mozart will fix you up, and Mr. Wilson will see nothing more happen to you. No, they'll find me and kill me. They was going to anyway. They will anyhow. Please, lady, come on. It's only about a block to Mozart. All right, but... That car. Let me go. It's no use. You're too sick to run away. It's him. Shiv. Yeah, Lola, baby. Come on, get in the car. The boss wants to see you. You keep away from this lady. You let her alone. Well, listen to who's talking. You put away that knife and leave this lady alone. And listen to who's giving away. Leave him alone, Shiv. He was just trying to help me. He don't know nothing. I'll go with you. I can't help myself. 
Sure, sure, Lola. You're going to see the boss and tell him you've learned your lesson. Now get in the car while I learn this stumble bum his lesson. Let me go, shit. Shut up. You let that radio alone. Oh, so you want to play rough, huh? Okay, brass knocks will do for you. <laughs> Say it, Harry, but watch your driving. I'm doing a feature series on reckless drivers, and it wouldn't look good if I were involved in even a minor accident. Oh, fear not, Miss Kilpine. I am well aware of the fact that auto manufacturers have been able to foolproof everything on a car but the nut at the wheel and drive accordingly. Uh, Mozart's joint coming up. Pull up and stop, Harry. But wait for us. That girl might be seriously cut up, and we may have to rush her to a hospital. Check. And uh, I will keep my trusty naga naga handy in case the mug that marked us should show up to do an encore. Do that, Harry. There's something ugly back of this. Come on, Lola. Uh, right with you, Steve. My nurse's aid training may come in handy if Mozart hasn't been able to patch up that gal's face. Yes, and that face slashing trademarks this as gang vengeance or a final warning. Let's go in the side door. They probably got the girl in the back room. If Willie was able to persuade her to come here. Well, Mozart is in the back. I hear him beating out the blues. Yeah, oh, that's odd. Let's go in. Yes. Good grief, he's alone. But Willie and the girl aren't here. They've had time enough. Mozart. Oh, Steve. Sorry. What brings you down to the waterfront? To meet Willie the Waif. Willie? Yes, oh. Mozart. He found a girl beaten up on the dock near his shanty. Phoned me, and I asked him to bring her here. Well, I haven't showed. I've been here practicing one-handed harmonies in case I never get this busted wing out of its sling. Oh, how is your wounded shoulder, Mozart? I'll live. But, uh, Willie's not showing. Don't look good. Well, it's 15 minutes since he phoned me from a dog wagon only three blocks from here. Well, he said the girl was afraid to talk to the newspapers. Maybe she wouldn't come, Steve, and got away from him. Well, I was taken away from him by the slug who cut her up. Stay here, Lorelai. I'll get Harry, and we'll scout the streets between here and the cold. Oh, Willie. Mr. Wilson. Oh, Steve, he, he's been beaten up. Willie, what's happened? Here, here, man, let me help you sit down. Sit down, you're out on your feet. He got her, Mr. Wilson. I couldn't stop him. I tried, but he had brass knuckles and he beat me. Now, take it easy, Willie. I'm sure you did your best. Mozart, get me a wet cloth, quick. Yeah, sure, Lorelai, and I'll get him a slug or something. She tried to keep him from beating me up, Mr. Wilson. Said she'd go with him to see a guy he called the boss. Steve, that means there's still time to do something. Willie, did she give you any clue as to who these men are? What racket they're in? Yeah, gambling. Gambling? What kind? Mm -hmm. Something to do with a fix. A fix? Games. Fixing the score. Missing shots. Steve, haven't there been rumors of a gambling fix in the basketball league? Yes, and this girl may have been a contact, Laura and I, on you too much. She, she called the fella Shiv. Shiv. The night. Probably a goon boy for the gang. Did she mention someone else? No, but he's taken her to the boss to see if she's learned her lesson. I wonder if she has and which lesson. Well, either way, she's marked for elimination sooner or later. Well, sooner or later could both be tonight. What can we do, Steve? Play a long shot, Laura and I. There's no time for anything else. How do we play it? Most of the gamblers operate out of the old Grand Hotel. Golly, yes, and what do you know, Joe? The night clerk knows every two- and four-legged rat in the place. Here's a wet cloth, oh. Lorelei, and a slug of grape juice, Willie. Grape juice? Now, don't worry, Willie, it's been distilled. You'll never taste the grapes. Now, drink it down. Uh, and hold still, Willie. I'll wipe the dirt out of those cuts. All right, Miss Kilburn. But could I have a little more of that grape juice, Mozart? Oh, sure thing, Willie. Um, now, hold still, Willie. Are you going to phone? What do you know, Joe, Steve? No, I'm going over there, Laura. Wait a minute, now. I'll go with you. No, Laura, I patch up Willie. I'll take Harry. And if my hunch is right, I'll ring in Inspector Callahan of Homicide. Room service, old Grand Hotel. Young man, get me the management. Lady, I'm all the management there is this time of night. What's the beef? Squawk, York, or what have you. Someone has a horse in the room next to mine. A horse? Now, lady. Two horses, sir, galloping round the room. Hey, you're in 7-9, ain't you? Well, what's that got to do with those horses? Plenty, lady. Them ain't horses. What are they? Two bookies reenacting a dead heat at Hialeah. Are you crazy? Yeah, or I wouldn't be working in this dump. Relax, lady. They'll sleep it off just as soon as they finish the race. 
Hello, Joe. Are you having trouble with the old grand inmates? Ah, oh, hiya, Mr. Wilson. Eh, nothing special. What brings you to this AC Ducey joint this time a.m.? Something very special, Joe. Could you stick your neck out long enough to give me a little information on a couple of your big-time gamblers? Well, I don't know, Mr. Wilson. I ain't carrying much insurance. But then I ain't got any dependents. Well, you won't have to show in this, Joe. I wouldn't be any more used to you for tips if I did. What'll it be? A girl in the middle of a sports fix. Uh-oh. Don't they ever learn? She's had one lesson, Joe, that left her beaten up and marked with a knife. Willie the Weep found her and called me. But they took her away from Willie, beat him up, and took her back to school for another lesson. Uh-huh. Who's the teacher? I don't know, but his knife boy goes by the appropriate name of Shiv. Shiv? Yes. Brad Keller's goon. Keller, the promoter. What do you know, Joe? What do you know? How much do you know? Too much for my own good. Keller has a room here, hasn't he? Yeah, the bridal suite. And the Shiv came in with a beat-up gal about ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago? Yeah. Said she got nicked by a truck. Where's that bridal suite, Joe? Top floor. But look, Mr. Wilson, there ain't honeymooners up there. Send me a pass key, Joe. You ain't going up there alone. No, Harry's outside. Look, that hacky's monkey wrench is no good against rods, and you never carry one. Well, let's leave the guns to the police, Joe. Oh, phone Inspector Callahan of homicide. Homicide? You figure there's going to be another murder in this joint? Well, if it isn't headed off, now get Callahan on the double. Okay, I only hope you know what you're doing, Mr. Wilson. Just trying to prevent a murder, Joe. How about that pass key? Okay, Mr. Wilson. Here you are. Thanks very much, Joe. Till you're better paid. Ah, don't mention it. Only don't forget that key will open just about any door, including your size meat box in the morgue. <laughs> Say, boss, how come we are hoofing it up these back stairs? Well, I'd rather not advertise our arrival on the floor outside Keller's suite, Harry. Yeah, and that rickety elevator would sure proclaim our proximity. That's right. And this is it. Now, listen carefully. I'm all ears, boss, and I got my trusty monkey wrench ready, willing, and able. And just keep it ready, but keep quiet, Harry. And let's hope we can wait until Inspector Callahan and his homicide boys get here. Okay, but are we going to just wait here at the head of the stairs? No, Harry, I want you to stay here, out of sight, and watch the hall. If anyone comes up, follow them. Just that and nothing more. Jack, boss, but whilst while you'll be doing what? Here's my plan, Harry. What do you know, Joe? Give me a pass key and a sketch of the layout of Keller's suite. There are two entrances... One to the bedroom down at the end of the hall. You going in there before Callahan gets here? Yes, Keller and his knife boy and the girl should be in the front room. I want to hear what they're talking about. Get the lowdown on this sports fix. Who's involved? And be as close as possible in case there's any more trouble in store for that girl. That is a pretty large order, boss, and a precarious preoccupation in which you'd better exercise extreme caution, as the saying goes. I will, Harry. And I'm going to keep out of it until Callahan arrives, unless they start to work on that girl again. Even so, you have not got any gun, and it is liable to end up with them working on you. So how about borrowing my trusty knock and knock in case of contingencies? No, Harry. If this turns into a slugfest, someone is liable to get killed. Okay, boss. I'll be here waiting for a call if you need me. Uh, just make sure that somebody getting killed ain't you. <laughs> Snap out of it, Lola, and listen to me. Don't, Brad, I won't talk. I swear I won't. She's lying, Brad. I got a notion she talked her head off to that mooch and stumble bum Willie to wait. I, I didn't. I swear I didn't. I spotted him coming out of a dog wagon near the dark. He must have phoned somebody. He was taking her someplace when I caught up with him. Shut up, Shiv. Stop running off at the mouth. You messed this play up, but good. Oh, what do you mean? You told me to... I told you to throw a scare at her. I tried just talking, but she wouldn't listen. She tried to jump out of the car. So you mark her up so the cops will grill her till she talks if they spot her and pick her up. I won't talk. I won't tell what I know. I promise. Don't buy that, boy. She's seen me beat up that dope willy to weep. If she squawks, I go back to the pen for keeps with my record. Shut up and quit thinking about yourself, Shiv. You muffed this play and you deserve anything you get. You'll get a piece of anything I get. Listen, you rat. <laughs> Listen, don't threaten me. If you're picked up for that work on Willie the Weep and you drag my name into it, you won't be safe in solitary. Now shut up while I tell Lola how it's going to be. Okay. Okay, tell her. Now listen, Lola, get it straight. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm, I'm listening, Brad. You got in this deal with your eyes open. You played the come on to them dribble pusses and hoop artists. Primed them for the payoff to throw some key games. 
So my syndicate could lay plenty of long, odd bets and make a killer. Well, I couldn't help it if they went to the prosecutor. No, but you could beat it out of town like you were told. I was hiding in a girlfriend's apartment. That's where Shiv found me. I'll say I did. And the cops would have found you if Shiv hadn't got you first. I wouldn't have talked. We're going to make sure of that, Lola. How? You're going to go on a little trip with Shiv? Oh, no, please, Brad, not with Shiv. Let me go alone. I'll get out of town. I'll stay out of big town. I'll hide. That chance with that cut-up kisser. Well, that's your fault. That was for scratching and biting me, you lippy twist. And for two cents, I'd give you... Lay off, Shiv. Get ready to ride. Where, where's he taking me, Brad? To a place out of town where the cops won't bother you and nobody will see that face of yours. Come on, get going. But, uh, wait, Brad, please. Let me go fix my face. We might be stopped on the way and I look a mess. Yeah, maybe you better go wash your face and put some adhesive on that cut on your cheek. Go with us, Shiv. No, please, I can do it. What? And maybe get an idea to slip out the hall door of the bedroom? Nothing doing. Go along with us, Shiv. Okay. Come on, baby. You're no funny business, or I'll mark you up so you'll need a couple of yards of tape. Put away that knife and just see she don't break for that hall door or get near no windows and jump. Okay, Brad. Come on, baby. <laughs> Hurry it up. Get her ready and out of here. I'll phone the boys to take plenty of bets of the big game tomorrow night. Hey, Joe, get me long distance. Come on, toots, and let's not have any more trouble. Let go of my arm. I hate you, you dirty little rat. Oh, yeah? Maybe I'll give you a real reason when we get where we're going. In the bedroom. Now, wait till I snap on the light. Hey, you, don't be dang, you close that door. No, I didn't. Now, shut up, or I'll press your windpipe through your spine, you filthy little rat. Come here, miss. Who, who are you? Never mind. Snap on the light, quick. Don't let him cry out. Keller's in the next room on the phone. I know. I've been listening. Snap on the light. Be careful. He has a knife. He had a knife. There. Pick it up off the floor. Get out of here. The hall door. What are you going to do? Bring this knife slinging slug along as exhibit A. Shiv, what's the idea of closing this door? You... Get away from that hall door, Lola. Let go of my boy, mister. All right, Keller. That gun makes him all yours for the moment. Wilson, the racket busting newsie. Yes, and it looks like I came to the right place. You're going to wish you hadn't. Come here, Lola. Give Shiv his knife. I I didn't fix this fix, Brad. I didn't know he was in here. I wasn't going to talk. I'll get to you, baby. Give Shiv his knife. Yeah, baby. Give me that carver. <laughs> looks like the stick has got work to do. <laughs> Thus, the tables have been turned on Steve Wilson. And for the exciting payoff, we'll return to Big Town in just a moment. Doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared the results. They found that no other leading soap cleansed and protected as well as Life Boy. For Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that forms a foothold for B.O. And Life Boy is milder, too. So enjoy a refreshing Life Boy bath every day. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Steve Wilson and the gambler's headquarters at the old Grand Hotel in tonight's racket expose headlined... The Fatal Fix. Come on, Wilson. How did you get wise to our big fix? Talk. Yeah, Wilson, talk. Tell your goon boy to take the tip of his knife away from my throat, and I'll tell you anything you want to know, Keller. Talk, or I'll split your apple for trying to bust mine. Back up, Shiv. I want to know how much this nosy newsy knows, and who else knows? The public prosecutor knows plenty, Maybe Keller. he does, but he ain't got no proof. No witnesses that we bribed any players to throw games. Wrong, Keller. Most of the players are honest, and they reported your girlfriend's attempt to bribe them. That don't prove she was acting for me. And she ain't talking, are you, baby? Brad, let Mr. Wilson go. I won't talk. I swear I won't talk if you'll let him go. Uh, listen to Pocahontas. Shut up, Shiv. What's your angle on this, Wilson? Helping the police smash your dirty racket, Keller. Yeah? Yes. But at the moment... I'll settle for persuading you to take a criminal conspiracy rap before you get involved in murder. Who's going to get murdered? You're going to have to kill this girl. And perhaps me to keep this sports fix under wraps. 
Oh, yeah, Wilson? How much do you want to keep your mouth shut? I couldn't keep it quiet if you offered me a million. Why not? Because I've already notified the police. Callahan of homicide is on his way here. He's lying, Brad. He's playing this alone for a scoop in his lousy illustrated press. That notion has burned smarter crooks than you, Shiv. Call switchboard if you don't believe Callahan is notified. And you're both caught in this rat trap. He's lying, stolen. Let me take him a little for a ride. Shut up, Shiv. You interest me, Wilson. What's the deal? You'll have to make your deal with the prosecutor, Keller. But I'll bet you he'd trade your state's evidence for a short term if you'll throw in this knife-slinging rat on the attempted murder of Willie the Weep. Why, you dirty, lousy, Play nosy... Your I... shit. Uh, Wilson's got something. You lost this play. Oh, yeah? Well, this knife says you're not going to sell me up the river. You knife-slinging rat. Wilson. Wilson. Shiv's knife. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. That's all, miss. That's all there is. I knew there was bad blood between them. Knew if I needled Keller into a deal, they'd revert to the criminal code of dog eat dog. What will happen now? To me? That'll depend on a judge and jury, miss. And how well you've learned the lesson that you can't play around the fringe of crime. It's all or nothing. Boys! Hey, boys! What goes? Me and Miss Kilbrain's out here. Uh, just a minute, Harry. I'll unlock this door. Steve. Laurel. I, I just got here and heard those shots. What happened? Well, two crooks fell out and saved the state and the public a lot of trouble. Get on the phone, Lorelei. Oh, sure. Call the press. Get Dusty Miller over here for a few photos captioned Exhibit A in the big book of crime that doesn't pay. And so ended another racket-smashing adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson, Laurel I, and his associates of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Now, before hearing about next week's Big Town Adventure, here are Steve Wilson and Lorelei to tell you about the contest of a lifetime. Friends, this is your chance to win the vacation of a lifetime. Would you like to explore Paris and London, see Cairo, visit Honolulu and other famous foreign cities? Then enter Lever's sensational $50,000 travel contest. Just imagine, friends, you can win a round-the-world trip for two with all travel expenses paid or choose $10,000 in cash. Yes, and there are second prizes, too, 15 of them, with an all-expense trip to Europe for each winner or $2,500 cash, plus 400 other prizes of $10 each. It's easy to enter. Here's all you do. Finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like Bath Size Life Boy because... Send each entry with a box front from Bath Size Life Boy to Lever Tour the World Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That's Box 1, New York 8, New York. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Free entry blanks with complete rules are now at your store. Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you another hard-hitting rack of expose captioned Murder in the Snow, another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting editor Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. And if you'd like to see what the cast of Big Town are really like, Read the February issue of Radio Mirror Magazine for an exciting story about Big Town, complete with pictures. And next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, he wrote about it. Steve Wilson in the headline story of Murder in the Snow, brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap, another fine lever product. Extra, extra. New Rinso with sodium puts sunshine in your wash. Yes, rain or shine, new Rinso gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. 
You can dry your wash anywhere, and white clothes will turn out not just whiter, but whiter than new, and washable colors even brighter than brand new. It's because new Rinso contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Only new Rinso contains Solium. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weiss, bidding you good night. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, present Big Town. Extra, extra, here Big Town, wreck at expose. Press agent convicted, screens are killed, extra, extra. Yes, Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, are proud to present Big Town. The story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, Hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's story headlined, Murder in the Snow. When the blizzard fury of nature clashes with the murderous violence of men, deadly complications can ensue. And such is the case as a movie star and her press agent engage in a bitter quarrel aboard a streamliner approaching Big Town. Get out of my compartment, Russ. Go nursemaid that so-called husband of mine. Never mind, Vic Vance. That lush needs a keeper, not a nurse. It's you I'm worried about. You never worry about anything but yourself, Russ Cooper. You and your press agent, 20%. Well, I'm trying to earn it. Keeping you out of a messy scandal that'll ruin your picture career. I know what I'm doing. I'm going before that federal grand jury, and I'm going to testify. You're crazy, Linda. It'll ruin you. Narcotics ruined several of, several of my friends, and I have a notion they wrecked Vic's chances in pictures. Oh, Vic's just a bottle, baby. You married to reform. You've got a carry nation complex. I have another notion you've got your finger in this, Russ. Get out of here. Mind your job, or you're fired. Huh, fire me? Why, no one else would handle you. And you're going to need a press agent, but good if you stick your nose in this narcotic mess. I need your kind of press agent like a hole in the head. Maybe you'll get that if you don't lay off. Don't you threaten me, you slimy ex-newspaper slug. Listen, I know enough about your past to ruin you, baby. And I know enough about your presence to send you to jail. Now get out of here. With you in big town in a couple of hours, and I've got a pack. Get out. So you won't listen? No. You're going to shoot off your mouth. Yes, and you better wire some of your old pals to scram. Close the door. Okay, Linda. So long. You stupid dame. Russ, Russ, what'd you say? What'd you say? Come away from Linda's compartment door. What's the idea of hanging around out here in the corridor? I told you to stay in the lounge bar. I had to know. I got to know. You know what this means for me if she squawks? Yeah, I know, and it's a good thing you know what it means if she does. Did you talk her out of testifying? If you've been listening, you know I didn't. She threw me out. What? What are we going to do? You know what the boys told you before we got on the train? I can't do it, Vic. I haven't got the nerve. Work up the nerve. You've got what it takes in your suitcase? No. Even then, I couldn't. Listen, if Linda steps off this train in Big Town, you won't last. Think it over. But how? In this compartment aboard this train? You've been told. Frame a stick up. Get rid of her jewels. Cut yourself up before you let her have it. There's a whole trainload of prospect suspects. The police will suspect me, hold me, question me. I, I, I couldn't stand it, Russ. I couldn't. I couldn't. Cut it out. Get hold of yourself, Vic. It's the cops or the snow boys. Now get in there with Linda and make up your mind. Say, boss, Miss Kilbine. Say it, Harry. Uh, how come we are hightailing it to the big town pirate case so early in the evening? Is it not too soon for the night owls to be hooting it up? Yes, Harry. 
but we just had a phone tip from our doorman pal, Boris Goodenough Nijinsky Pavlovich. Uh, what's Boris got a tip on this time? It seems some snowbirds have been warbling about a proposed murder and forgot all doormen have very sharp ears, Harry. Yeah. Is it not amazing that people who should know different think that doormen or cab drivers and such like are uh, just part of the general landscape? Well, fortunately for someone, in this case, we hope... Pirate cage coming up. Uh, do I hack you right to the entrance like you were suckers? I mean, customers? Yes, Harry, but wait. We're not getting out of the cab. And don't mind the double talk, Harry. I don't want Boris spotted as one of our tipsters. Shag, boss. Oh, there he is, coming to open the door. Ah, uh, good evening. Welcome to the Pirate's Cages. Good evening, Dorman. What kind of entertainment is your establishment providing this evening? Ah, uh, entertainment's just what you like. Dining, dancing... And later, funny fellas make with acts and pretty girls making with feathers like molting parrots. Sounds dull. What happens before the floor show? Or the floor show, Dorman. Any interesting personalities? Interesting personalities we got plenty of. Waiting inside. What are they uh, waiting for, Boris? A train called the Sunlight Limited to arrive at midnight with a lady on board who had better be dead. Oh, Steve. The Sunlight Limited from the West. Who is the lady who should be dead, Boris? Some movie lady who's coming to big towns to talk to some grand juries about snow. Only not like the kind that looks like we're going to get tonight. Narcotics. That could be Linda Lane, the screen star. She's scheduled to appear before the grand jury tomorrow. But two fellas I hear saying she won't go no place. Did you get the setup, Boris? Are they set to get her on the train or here in big town? On the train as it comes to big town, it is to happen, I think. Steve, it's 10 o'clock. The Limited has left New City. There's no way of getting in touch with Linda Lane to warn her. Yes, there is, Lorna Lai. The Limited stops at North Junction to change to an electric engine a little after 11 o'clock. Oh, golly, yes. Could you make it to the junction in an hour, Harry? If the snow don't get much worse, boss. We'll try it. Anything else, Boris? Nothing else, Mr. Wilson. Only them fellas are still inside the parrot's cages waiting for this something to happen. Good. Phone Inspector Callahan of Homicide, Boris. Tell him exactly what you've told me, and he'll put a tail on them. Good. Anything else, Mr. Yes. Wilson? Ask him to meet us at Central Depot when the Limited pulls in at midnight tonight. Thus, acting on a tip from the ugly echo chambers of the underworld, Steve and Lorelei race out of Big Town in an attempt to prevent a murder. And for the exciting developments, we'll return in just a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Because of its purifying ingredient, Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Yes, and it's mild. Safe even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy health soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson, Lorelei, and Harry the Hack as they drive out of Big Town in a blinding snowstorm to meet a streamliner carrying a woman passenger marked for death. Say, boss, it's still ten miles to North Junction and this snow is getting thicker and feathers in a kid's pillow fight. Well, take it easy, Harry. We have 20 minutes left to catch the Limited at the junction and ride it into Big Town. And the train may be late. This looks like a real blizzard and the wind is drifting the snow. Yeah, I may have to stop and put on chains and that'll take a couple minutes. We ain't got to spare. Well, do your best, Harry. That girl on the Limited may not realize she's marked for death and there's no way of warning her. Unless Callahan is able to contact the train through the railroad. Well, Steve, the killer must be on the train. Yes. Or we'll board the Limited at North Junction and try to shut her up before we pull into Big Town. If we make it. Yikes! Oops. No drift. We're stuck. Quick, Harry. Come on, let's get out and put on your chains. <laughs> Vic, 
For heaven's sake, stop pacing up and down the compartment like a cat on a hot stove. Linda, why won't you listen to me? Why must you go through with this? Why do you have to testify before that grand jury? Because the rats selling narcotics have been responsible for the death of two of my friends. Oh, so what? And I've a notion they've wrecked our marriage. Are oh, you crazy, Linda? It hasn't. You're a jittering idiot half the time. What's the matter with you if you're not a snowbird? Linda, I'm not, I swear. Then I what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you now? You're not drunk. I wish I was. I, I wish it would help. Help you do what? What's on your mind? Linda, please, listen. Listen to me. We're coming to North Junction in a few minutes. The last stop before Big Town. Now, let's get off and take the next train back. It's the last chance. Last chance for what? To save your life. Maybe mine. Rubbish. You've been listening to Russ, that slimy press agent. He's right, Linda. They'll never let you get to Big Town to test it. How do you know? Because we've been warned. They're bluffing. They're not. Besides, they can't get away with it. They will. The door to this compartment's going to stay locked until we get into Big Town Central Depot. And I'm being met by detectives from the prosecutor's office. That won't save you. They'll get to you anyway. Let them try. I have a gun. I have a permit for it, and I know how to use it. I didn't start pictures as Queen of the Westerns for nothing. Linda, put that gun back in your jewel case. Sure. But I'll have it ready for anyone that tries to open that door. Now, please get out of here, Vic. Go back to your own compartment and pack. All right. All right, Linda, but... Let's have one drink together before I go. I don't need a drink. Well, I do. Please, Linda. For old time's sake. Oh, all right, Vic. You sure need something. Mix us a couple, but hurry it up. Okay. Okay, Linda. For old time's sake. Oh, for heaven's sake, your hand's shaking like a leaf. Here, let me pour it. No. Up. No, Linda. Why not? This is something... I have to do myself. We made it, boss. That's nice driving, Harry. Oh, with a couple of minutes to spare. Oh, oh, Steve, look. There's another car here waiting for the limited. Maybe some local job. No. Wait a minute. Carrying Big Town serial numbers on the license plate. Can you see who's in the car, Steve? No, the snow's too heavy, but the exhaust shows the motor's running. Maybe to keep the heater going like I'm doing. Must be down to zero outside. Yes. And I think there are two men in the front seat. Better be careful, Steve. If they're Big Town mobsters sent out here to board the train and silence Linda Lane, they may recognize you. That can't be helpful, all right. Rain coming, boss. I just heard a whistle. What do I do? Well, you've done your part, Harry. Just watch that car until the limited pulls out. Get the license number and phone Callahan of Homicide. If any suspicious-looking characters get aboard that train. Check, boss. You and Miss Kilpine better get up on the platform. Well, you better hold up in a hotel till this blizzard blows out and the roads are cleared, Harry. Yes, don't risk getting frozen to death in a drift, Harry. Okay, Miss Kilpine, I would, the way it's piling up. All right, all right. Let's go. <laughs> Department is in this last car, Mr. Wilson. Thanks, Brickman. Will you keep an eye on that other passenger who got aboard at the junction? Sure thing. I hope there won't be any trouble. We may have trouble enough getting into Big Town through this snow. But surely they'll keep the main line clear, won't they? Well, they'll try, but there's a couple of deep cuts that drift up bad. Well, I'll go up ahead and watch the guy that got on with you, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Uh, what's Miss Lane's compartment number? Room six, next oh. to the lounge. Oh, thanks, Brickman. Come on, Marla. Steve. Look who's coming along the corridor. Russ Cooper. Linda Lane's so-called press agent. Ex-promoter of blackmail columns. Hello, Cooper. Huh? Steve Wilson. Well, uh, what are you doing on the limit? We thought we'd drive out and interview your client on the way into Big Town. Yes, Russ. Give her a good press and some well-deserved publicity for daring to name names in that narcotic investigation tomorrow. Linda ain't talking to the newspapers. I think she'll talk to us, Cooper. What about... She hasn't got anything to say because she isn't going to testify before that grand jury. Then why has she come to Big Town? Well, if you must know, it was my idea. Oh, your idea? Yeah, a publicity stunt to get her name in the paper. And your illustrated press fell for it like a ton of bricks. Well, coming from you, Cooper, that has all the earmarks of a super colossal lie. Oh, yeah? Yes. 
Your type of press agent wouldn't make an admission like that until you were over a barrel or had milked the situation of every line of publicity. Well, it's the truth this time. Oh, the truth has never been in you, Russ. You wouldn't have been kicked off the staff of every respectable newspaper that hired you. I could sue you for that crack, Kilborn. Oh, it'd be a pleasure. I'd love to get you on a witness stand under oath. Well, try it sometime, but right now, beat it. Lay off Linda. She's sick. She's gone to bed and sleeping. Sleeping less than an hour before we pull into Big Town? I said she's sick, sleeping. Now get out of here and leave her alone. Well, she's liable to be a lot sicker if we do leave her alone. Now get out of the way, Cooper. What are you talking about, Wilson? I'm talking about nothing to you. Now get out of the way. Stop blocking the corridor. Now wait a minute, Wilson. Linda has a right to some privacy. I'm paid to speak for her. Cooper, listen to me. This limited is a public conveyance. This corridor leads to a public lounge at the end of this car, and if you don't step aside... Lay well, off, Wilson. You ain't talking to Linda Let's Lane. Leave that to Linda Lane. I'll get out of the way. Like the devil, I will. Look out, these. Don't telegraph your punches. Come. Now stop talking. Let go. This isn't going to be settled with fists. What's the matter with you? Let go of my arm, Wilson. I'll sue you for assault. I'll risk it to find out why you're trying to keep me from seeing Miss Lane. Now, what's happened? Nothing. Lay off. She's upset. She, she had a fight with her husband. Hold him, Steve. I'll go down to her compartment and see. Keep out of this, Kilburn. Go on, Laura. I'll hold him. Get past us. Something has happened or is going to happen. Just hold him, Steve. I'll see. Lay off. Keep out of this. Now hold still, Cooper. Keep out of what? How much do you know about the... I warned her. Then you know about the plan to kill her. No, no, I just heard rumors, but they're bluffing. Now let go. You're not acting as if you think this is a bluff. Now hold still. Lay off or you'll get She's already killed. marked for murder. How'd you find out? Never mind, I heard, and now I'm convinced. Steve, Steve. Yes, what is it, Laura? It may be too late. Linda Lane's compartment is locked on the inside. I, I pounded and called, but there's no answer, not a sound. All right, Cooper. What's happened to Linda Lane? Where is she? I don't know, I swear. <laughs> Train. Something's happened. The train doesn't matter, Carl and I now. Talk, Cooper. Is Linda Lane in that compartment? Is she alone? I don't know. Out of the way, please. Let me through. Uh, what's wrong, Brakeman? We must be sold in a drift in Long Cut. Let me through. I've got to set out warning players to flag the second section. What? What's the matter here, Mr. Wilson? Never mind, Brakeman. I'll handle this. Go set your flares. Okay, but you better watch out. The guy that got on at the junction is coming back this way. Coming this way? Oh, Stevie, he may be a trigger man. What'll we do? Get back, get the lounge, Ron and I. Come on, Cooper. If this is the gang payoff, you're going to be in the middle of it. Let's go. <laughs> Laura, I. Oh. There is someone in this apartment moving around. I heard them. Watch the corridor for that other, other junction passenger. Yes, I, I'm watching it, Steve, but please, be get careful. Back. Get back. I'm going to try and force this door. Stop it, Wilson. Stop it, you fool. Vic Vance is in there with Linda. Linda's husband? Why didn't you say so in the first place? He's drunk. They've been having a fight. I didn't want it in the papers. Now leave them alone. This is not the time to worry about your client's domestic relations. This is a matter of her life. Miss Lane, open this door. Answer me if you can. Cut it out, Wilson. Leave them alone. Cooper, I warned you. I'm sure you're trying to cover something. Now, get away from that door. Stop interfering. I won't. I'm trying to help you. Yes, trying from... to keep me from getting in there. Now keep away from this door. Steve, the door is open. Yes, I'll get back in the lounge, Laura. It's fake. He's got Linda's gun. I warned you. I warned you, Wilson. Shut up, Cooper. Yeah. Shut up. All of you. Yeah. Big band. Mr. Linda Lane. The ex-Mr. Linda Lane. Ex. <laughs> because I killed her. Because they made me kill her. Frame me. Cross me up. Use me to kill her, then cross me up. Who crossed you up, Vic? Who made you kill her? That rat over there. That press agent rat Cooper. He's lying, Wilson. Lying, am I? Doesn't matter now. They'll hang me. How many more times can they hang me for killing Cooper? Wait a minute, Vance. Get out of my way, you. Get out of the way or I'll shoot him right through you. Don't move from in front of me, Steve. He's crazy. He will shoot. Yes, and if he's telling the truth, it's too bad. I can't let him do it. Get out of the way, Wilson. Get out of the way. Let me finish this thing. <laughs> Thus, Steve is caught between a tragic and remorseful killer and his treacherous accomplice. And for the dramatic payoff, we'll return in just a moment. 
Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Yes, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors say. We had people take daily baths with leading soaps. Then we measured the cleanliness and protection each soap gave. We found that Life Boy protects best. It does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Better than any other leading soap, Life Boy removes the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. The purifying ingredient does it. And it makes Life Boy milder, too. So remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Yes, Life Boy keeps you fresh and attractive as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Steve Wilson aboard a stalled streamliner as he faces an hysterical killer in the deadly showdown of murder in the snow. Get away from in front of that dirty press agent, Wilson. Get away, whoever you are. Oh, wait a minute, Vance. Before you use that gun on Russ Cooper and the rest of us, are you sure you killed Linda Lane? Yes. She's in the compartment, smothered with a blanket. Why, Vic? Why did you kill your own wife? She was going to talk to that grand jury. I had to stop her or they were going to kill me. Kill you? Who told you that, Vic? Cooper. That rat behind you. Get out of the way. No, Steve, don't. He'll shoot. Shut up, Cooper. Well, he will anyway, and the shots will go right through me into you. Yes. Move, Wilson, or I will. Now. No, wait, Vance. Just one more question for the record. Record? What record? Why, the record of your trial, Vic. Oh, there isn't going to be any trial. I'm getting away off this train. It stopped. It isn't moving. Well, that's because of the blizzard, Vic. It's zero out there. You'll you'll be lost in that blinding snow. You'll freeze to death in the drifts that that have even stopped this train. Well, why do I care about death? I'm a dead man now. If the blizzard doesn't get me, the police or the narcotic ring will. <laughs> snow. If one kind doesn't get me, the other will. Well, perhaps not, Vic. You see, you're not yourself. Not completely responsible. Well, what's the difference? That's the difference between imprisonment that may save you and death that is final and beyond recall. Now, give me that gun, Vic. No. Don't you try to take it. All right, all right. Will you at least let Miss Kilburn go in that compartment and make sure your wife is dead or alive? She is dead. Dead, I tell you. <laughs> I tried to bring her back after I realized what I'd done to save my own rotten neck, but it was too late. She isn't breathing. She doesn't move. It's too late. She's dead. Let me see. I've had nurses' aid training. No, no, it's no use. I've only one thing left to do. Kill Russ Cooper for all this. Steve, stop him. Stop him. Cooper, come back. No. Let uh, him go. Uh, no. Stop shooting, Vic. You've hit him. He's down. I'll leave him to the law. Keep away from me, Wilson. I'm leaving. Don't move any of you. Don't leave the train, Vance. You'll be lost out there, freeze to death, die in the snow... Good. That's where I belong. Dead in the snow. Dead in the snow. Oh, oh Steve. He will die out there. Well, maybe it's best. Quick, Laura, I get in the compartment. See if there's anything that can be done for Linda Lane. Well, what about that other passenger, Steve? I haven't forgotten about him. Get in the compartment and lock the door. Right, sir. Steve. Steve, help me. Stop, Stop crawling, Cooper. Lie still. We'll get a doctor if there is one on the train. Help me. Hide me. Vic's coming back. The brakeman coming back. Hey, Mr. Wilson, who just jumped out the emergency door? Victor Vance, Wait, He had a gun, ran down the embankment, disappeared in the snow. 
Well, what happened well, here? Grant shot Cooper and may have killed Linda Lane, his wife. What about the other guy that got aboard at the junction? I don't know. He hasn't shown up. Yeah, he acted kind of funny and he was coming back through the train. It's the mob. They've sent somebody to make sure. Don't let him get in this car. Stop him. Well, lie still, Cooper. Lie still or it won't take another shot to finish you. Steve, Vance was wrong. Linda Lane isn't dead. She's hardly breathing, but she's alive. Break and run up through the train. Find a doctor if you can. Yes, sir. Well, wait. Steve, look. Coming down the corridor. The guy that got on at the junction with you, folks. Don't move. Let him come. Track must be cleared. They're calling me in. We'll be starting in a minute. Is that no help? Hold it, Laura. Hey. Hey, what are you folks doing? Playing games? Yes. What do you want back here? I want to know if there's any place a guy can get a sandwich and a cup of coffee on this doggone train. Oh, oh, oh no. What's so funny, lady? Oh, sorry, we thought you might be here to kill someone. And uh, if you'll wait a few minutes, I'm, I'm sure Miss Kilburn will make you a sandwich at the buffet bar. Oh, yes, mister. With my own trembling little lily white hands. <laughs> So ended with the death of Victor Vance in the snow, the subsequent arrest and conviction of Russ Cooper and other members of the narcotic ring, and the complete recovery of Linda Lane, another exciting adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. And now, before telling you about next week's Big Town story, here is Lorelei Kilburn. Friends, you've heard tonight how Life Boy gets skin cleaner in your daily bath, keeps you fresh and attractive 24 hours a day. Well, now, I'd like to suggest that you try Life Boy health soap in the big new bath size. Bath size Life Boy is generous and luxurious, and that lather, it's so mild and refreshing. I love it, and I know you'll love it, too. Just ask for the new bath size Life Boy. Thank you, and good night. In this unstable world, America needs unity as never before. If divided at home, we appear weak abroad. So let's all work for a united America. Let's judge our neighbors as individuals, not on a basis of religion or origin. That's the way to a better America and a better world. Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story of reckless driving headlined, Death at the Wheel." Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of Fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Loyal I. Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, he's all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and death at the wheel. Brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap. Extra, extra... Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. Developed a year ahead of time, new 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. Be sure to be with us again next Tuesday at this same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weist, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, present Big Town. Extra, extra, here's Steve Wilson and 
story of reckless driving captioned Death at the Wheel, Extra, Extra. Yes, Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap, are proud to present Big Town. The story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just heard is the sound of the average man's atom bomb. It kills more people in America than died at Hiroshima. It is the thing most likely to maim or kill you or yours. Not you? Then listen to this big town story of Bill Smith, a reasonably good driver, but careless. Just careless. Absent-minded at times. Barely I roll along, roll along, roll up, oh, oh. Golly, that was a close shave. Hey, you. What's the idea of cutting me off? Sorry, mister, but no harm done. No thanks to you. Now, wait a minute, mister. I never touched you because I pulled off the road. Look where I am. A few more inches and I, I would have turned over in the ditch. I said I'm sorry. Sorry? You'd be a lot sorry if you turned my car over and killed my wife and daughter. Joe, please, don't make a scene. Control your temper. I'll keep out of this, Mary. Yeah, take it easy, mister. It was my fault, but I'm not a road hog, a reckless driver. I've never had a serious accident. Yeah, you're lucky, but from the looks of your fenders... Well, everybody gets scratches and dents. And it's always the other guy's fault to alibi Ike's like you. Joe, please, nothing happened. Well, I'd like to make something happen. Teach this guy a lesson. Now, look here. No need to get tough. I said I'm sorry. Sorry, huh? Of all the misused words. You know, I'd like to knock all your... All right. All right. What's the trouble? What happened here? Officer, this guy deliberately cut me off and forced me off the road. I've admitted it was my fault, officer. I said I'm sorry and there's no damage done. Uh-huh. From the looks of it, no thanks to you if it's true. Let's see your driver's license. I'll bet you find plenty of violations on it, officer. Here you are, officer. Now, I resent this man's calling me a reckless driver. And I resent being forced off the road, almost turning over in the ditch. My family almost killed by a careless fool. Who's a fool, wife? For two cents, hold I it, take your... Hold it, hold it, both of you. You want to make a complaint, mister? Yeah, if it'll teach this guy a lesson. All right. You can make it to the judge in traffic court tomorrow morning. Oh, now, wait a minute, officer. Can't we settle this here and now? Don't try bribing me, Smith. I'm giving you a ticket on a charge of reckless driving. Henry Martin, your charge was speeding in a restricted zone. $50 or 10 days. Next case. William Smith. William Smith. All right, here, sir. Oh, is this the case you're interested in, Mr. Wilson? Yes, Your Honor. Now, why have you singled him out? The charge is reckless driving. There's no collision, no one injured. Well, because he's a good example of the average careless driver who's never had a serious accident and doesn't believe he ever will have one. Yes, I get dozens of them every day. Excuse me, Your Honor, but I'd like to plead guilty and uh, pay my fine. Uh, just a minute, Smith. Before I deal with your case, I want you to meet a friend of the court, Steve Wilson of the press. Wilson of the press? Yes. The paper that's been running the reckless driving campaign? Yes, Mr. Smith, and I'd like to be a friend of yours as well as the courts. Well, why pick on me? I didn't do any damage, hurt anybody. Never had a serious accident. According to the arresting officer, you came within inches of one last night. So I suppose I'm going to be the goat of Wilson's newspaper campaign with pictures of me, my family, my car, my home. That depends on you, Smith. What do you mean, Your Honor? Your offense is not so much a momentary lapse of care, which is a human failure, but to quote the arresting officer, a stubborn refusal to consider yourself a careless driver in spite of the record on this license. Passing through red light, crossing double line on dangerous curves, collision due to faulty brakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Why single me out? What's Wilson doing here on the bench with you? Am I going to be tried in his newspaper, made the laughing stock of my community, held up to ridicule? No, Mr. Smith. As I told you, Steve Wilson is here as a friend of the court. What's that got to do with me? Why single me out? Mr. Wilson has one simple request of you, Mr. Smith. What's that? Uh, Explain it, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to have just two hours of your time, Mr. Smith. What for? To convince you that you are a reckless driver. I'm not a reckless potential killer at the wheel of a deadly weapon. I am not. 
I'm a good average driver. Exactly. And because you represent the average driver who's never had a serious accident and doesn't believe he ever will, I would like two hours of your time. To do what? I want you to come with me. Where? On a little trip that I hope will change your dangerous state of mind and make you realize the extra responsibility anyone takes when he touches the wheel of a car. Oh, now, look here, Your Honor. I'm a citizen. I have some rights. Do I have to do this? No, Mr. Smith. You have every right to refuse. But this court is in complete accord with what Mr. Wilson's paper is trying to do. And I now give you the choice of going with Steve Wilson for two hours or a fine of $50 or 10 days. All right. Where are we going? Well, let's call it the journey of a modern Scrooge. With photographers and reporters, I suppose. No, not one picture or one line will be printed in the press, Mr. Smith, without your permission. All right. But you'll never convince me I'm a reckless driver. When do we start? Meet me at the office of the Big Town Illustrated Press at 10 o'clock tonight. Thus, fighting editor Steve Wilson makes a deal with a man who might be any of us who drive a car. And for the result so important to all of us, whether we walk or ride, we'll continue in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Because of its purifying ingredient, Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Yes, and it's mild. Safe even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy health soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's headline story of a crusade against reckless driving, captioned, Death at the Wheel. With Bill Smith, an average careless driver sentenced to go on a modern Scrooge's journey in the hope of convincing him that he is a dangerous driver, Steve and Lorelei Kilburn, one of his ace reporters, are taking Smith to a public institution in the cab of a friend of Harry the Hack. Hey, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. Why are we going out Uh, to... Don't say it, Joe. We want Mr. Smith to be convinced of his own free will. You're wasting your time. Nothing you can show me will convince me I'm a reckless driver. Because I've had a couple of minor accidents. We're not going to try to convince you, Smith. Just let you see for yourself. Okay. The judge said I only had to stay with you for two hours. I think that'll be time enough. Then I'll be free of that reckless driving charge. I hope so. And remember, you don't print my picture or a line about my arrest without my permission. That's right. That's the deal. Thanks. And I'm getting off easy. Where are we going first? You'll find out in a few minutes. Oh, the uh, side entrance is in the next block, Joe. We won't be long. Pull up and wait. Right, boss. And as a guy who has to drive and keep out of accidents to make a living, I hope you can sell this gent a bill of goods. Well, arguments and facts are no good, Joe. To paraphrase a phrase, convince a careless driver against his will and he's a reckless driver still, end quote. Yeah, and this is it. Come along, Mr. Smith. This is the first stop. Uh, you want me with you, Steve? No, Laura and I come in and get on the phone. I've made arrangements with the city police and Parkway Patrol to give us the time and place of our second stop. Where will you be if I get the word? In the superintendent's office. Hey, what is this place? Looks like a public building. It is, Mr. Smith. What's the idea? I want you to meet an authority on reckless driving. Come on, Mr. Smith. Let's go. Good evening, Professor. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Evening. This is Mr. Smith, and he would like to hear your lecture on driving, Professor. Oh, yes. Make it short, Prof. Wilson hasn't much time to convince me I'm a reckless driver. 
Oh, it's quite short to the point. Well, skip the facts and figures. My insurance agent stuffed me with them when he tried to sell me an accident policy. Oh, but you misunderstand, sir. I lecture on how to become a reckless driver. What? Yes. The rules for reckless driving are quite simple. First, you must have a car. The more powerful, the better. But any car will do. Be sure the brakes are faulty. Hey, wait a minute. No. We haven't much time, and bad tires are a tremendous help. Also, only one headlight. Of course, if you must have two headlights to see your victim, be sure to use your brights and blind him so that he can't see you. Well, look here, Wilson. What kind of joke is this? This is not a joke. Exactly, Mr. Smith. Or is it Brown or Jones? It's such a common name. I'm somewhat absent-minded. It's Smith. And I'll say you are. Yes. Being absent-minded helps, too, especially on a crowded highway and fast-moving traffic. Just think about your income tax. Flip one car and your chances are excellent to bag a dozen victims. Wilson, I didn't come here to be kidded. You're not being kidded. Quite so. And now, for other good places for reckless driving, illustrated by my chart... What chart? Oh, dear, I misplaced them again. But no mind... Any blind curve is perfect hunting for victims. With luck, you may get a busload of school children. Wilson, I've had enough of this gag. Not unless you want to break our agreement and pay your fine. Yes. Don't mind fines. Money is cheap. But life is cheaper. And any crossroad is a happy hunting ground. Don't stop. The other fool may not either. That makes it a sporting proposition. What do you hope to gain by this, Wilson? That remains to be seen. Yes. Don't be convinced by slogans, Brown. Or is it Jones? Smith. Oh, yes, Smith. Don't believe that stuff about a rolling ball being followed by a running child. It's silly. Prove it. Win a reckless driving prize. A school block or a play street is the best. Pin a child on your bumper and he'll give you a ribbon for your chrome work dyed red with blood. Listen, you, whoever you are, I've had enough of this. Yes, quite so. My time is almost up. Only one more point. Glasses. If you need glasses, don't ever wear them when driving. Uh, Sorry, Professor, it's time for your next lecture. Oh, yes, I'm late again. There's never time enough. I I must go. You'll excuse me, I'm sure. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, Professor. Let's go back. Yes, we must go. There's never time enough. So little time in life. So much in death. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. All right, Wilson, who is that goof? He was a professor of history in a famous university. What is he now, besides being nutty as a fruitcake? An authority on reckless driving and fatal accidents. How'd he get that way? He started out like you, refusing to believe that at the wheel of a car, carelessness and recklessness are one and the same. What happened? He caused an accident. Killed his wife and two children. What? Oh, wait a minute. That guard. What is this place, prison? In a way, yes. A prison of the mind, Mr. Smith. A nut house. Asylum. A mental hospital, Smith. And the professor? An inmate. And maybe for the rest of his life. Poor guy. But that doesn't prove I'm a... Just a minute. Come in. I didn't expect this to convince you. Steve. Uh, yes, Arlie. Park- Parkway Police Headquarters just got a patrol car flash in a bad accident on Long Hill Curve. Yes, I knew there would be one somewhere every hour. All right, Smith. If a living ghost of past folly doesn't convince you, perhaps the sight of the present and a preview of your own possible future will do it. Let's go. Hey, boss, Miss Kilburn, as my friend Harry the Hack would say. Uh, say it, Joe, and as we would say to Harry, get us to the bottom of Long Hill Curve as quickly as the law allows. Right. We're only about a mile from there now. Are we going to show Mr. Smith some of them slabs? Later, Joe. There's been another accident there just a few minutes ago. Holy mackerel. Doesn't anybody believe in signs? Look at them along here. Slow. Steep hill. 
curve. Well, some drivers would rather look at the scenery, Joe. Well, if this state would spend more money on the roads and less on signs, there wouldn't be as many accidents. Not proven, Mr. Smith, but I promise not to argue with you. Long Hill Curve coming up, Mr. Wilson. Hey, red blinker lights off the road on the right. Uh, there's probably a wrecking car or an ambulance. Uh, pull off the road, Joe. Oh, there is an ambulance, Dave. Somebody must be hurt. Yikes. Look at that wrecked jalop wrapped around that tree. Somebody must have got it sure. Yes, they're putting someone in the ambulance. Come on, Mr. Smith. Now, wait a minute, Wilson. Now, what's the point of rubbernecking on somebody else's bad luck? I've never stopped at the scene of an accident in my life. This is more than rubbernecking. You made a deal with a judge two hours with me or $50 or 10 days. All right. But you've wasted an hour. All right, I hope not. Uh, Steve, there's a trooper coming this way. Sorry. Move on, please. What'd I tell you, Wilson? Wilson? Are you Steve Wilson of the press? Yes, officer. Your headquarters notified us of this accident. Oh, yes. We got the message you'd be here in a few minutes. What can we do for you? Nothing, officer. Now, don't let us get in the way. Anybody seriously injured? Yeah. Kid got it bad in that sedan wrapped around the tree. A child? Dead? No. They're putting her in the ambulance. Want to get some pictures? No, no pictures. How did it happen, officer? Well, the sedan got sideswiped by that convertible over there. Southbound over the double line. The sedan went out of control, crashed into that open. What about the driver of the convertible that caused the accident? Oh, she's over there in the patrol car. Nice woman. Not a scratch, but hysterical. Never had an accident before. Admits it was her fault. Didn't slow down for the curve. There goes the ambulance. Oh, can't they read signs? That ambulance driver is in no hurry to get to the hospital. Well, the doc says there isn't much use. Wilson, let's get out of here. Let's get on with it. No, there's something over there under that tree I want to show you before we go, Smith. All right, show it to me and let's go. You've less than an hour left. I think that will be time enough. Come along. Would you lend me your flashlight, officer? Sure. Who's this guy, Mr. Wilson? Just a driver paroled in my custody for two hours for a traffic violation. Oh, yeah. I made the pinch. He cut in on a guy and almost forced him into the ditch. Nothing happened, officer. Nobody got hurt. You know that. You're just a lucky guy, mister, but don't bank on it lasting. Or you'll draw yourself a ticket to the morgue. Please. Please, officer. That poor child. Please drive me where they're taking her. I've got to do something to help. To help. Ah, take it easy, lady. We'll be going in just a minute. As soon as my partner gets here. Hey, Jack. She wants to go to the hospital. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Please. I must do something. Get the best doctor's. Anything, anything, everything. Go ahead, officer. Okay. Keep the flashlight if you need it, Mr. Wilson. Let's go, Pete. Thanks. I'll return it to you later tonight. Please hurry. There may be so little time. So little time. It's quiet here now, isn't it, Smith? A moment of carelessness. A clash of steel against steel. Man's triumph of engineering against nature's unyielding oak. The frantic efforts to mend and make amends. And suddenly, except for twisted wreckage, peaceful silence. As if it had never been. Save that for an editorial, Wilson. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to preach. I was just thinking out loud. Well, show me what you've got to show me. Let's get away from here. They're right over here, Mr. Smith. They? Yes, haven't you noticed them along the roads? Wherever there's been a fatal accident? No, what? Little white slabs with names and dates and the facts of each death at the wheel. We call them symbolic cemeteries. There's one. Throw the flashlight on it, Steve. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. James Hogan died here New Year's Eve, 1948. Cause intoxication. I, I don't drink. The next one says, Albert Morgan died here, blowout while speeding. I don't speed. And the next one says, Nick Ferreira and Nora Green, age 17, died here, cause one arm driving, believed to have been kissing. The kiss of death. Oh, stop it. I've had enough. I know you mean well, but I don't do these things. Drink, speed, neck. I, I've never had a serious accident, and I'm not going to have one. I'll, let's get out of here. No, wait, Mr. Smith. Look at this last slab. All right. So what? There's nothing on it. No, not now, but tomorrow it may bear the name of that child in the ambulance. Or you, or yours. No, it won't happen to me. Let's get out of here. All right, Mr. Smith, but you still owe me one half hour of your time. All right, let's get it over with. Where are we going? To a place where everyone who drives a car should go before they're taken there. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, will you come with us? I think it will be worth your while when in a moment we rejoin Steve Wilson in tonight's timely story. 
Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors have proved it. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared results. They found that Life Boy, with its quick, rich, purifying lather, cleanses and protects better than any other leading soap. And Life Boy is milder, too. So bathe with mild, refreshing Life Boy every day. Remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Buy Life Boy right away. And now, back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's timely and dramatic story on reckless driving, captioned, Death at the Wheel. This is the children's ward, Miss Kilburn, gentlemen. Are you sure it's all right for us to go through? Yes, if you'll be quiet. It's late, but most of them are asleep. All right, Mr. Smith. Five more minutes and you're free to go. All right. And I, I thought I was getting off easy being paroled in your custody for two hours. You are getting off easy, Smith. I could have taken you to the morgue. Will you step inside the ward, gentlemen? I want to close the door. Yes, please lead the way, nurse. Not all these children are victim of auto accidents, Mr. Wilson. Just point out the ones who are, nurse. And the little girl in the next bed on the right, in the tractions, hit by a truck. Intervertebral rupture. A severe spinal injury. She may not walk again. Mommy? Mommy, when can I go out and play? Please, may I go out and play? Please? 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 The next bed on the left is an amputation case. Car turned over. Father needed glasses, I believe. (laughs) That boy has just been told he's blind. Knocked down in front of his school, according to our admission report. Wilson, get me out of here. There's only a little farther to the other door to the reception room. Get me out of here. child behind the screen is dying. There's nothing we can do. Wilson, in the name of heaven, get me out of here. Steady, Smith. Open the door, nurse. Very well, Mr. Wilson. Shall I get Mr. Smith something, a sedative? No, no. No, I'll be all right. I'll be... I'll be all right in a minute. In a minute. Will that be all, Mr. Wilson? That's all, nurse. Thank you. But, doctor, 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 isn't there anything you can do? Mr. Wilson... That woman, she's the one who caused that accident on Long Hill Curve. Yes, they brought her victim here, but this I did not arrange. Doctor, please, try. Get specialists. Do everything you can. It's my fault I was careless, reckless for just one moment. If anything happens to that child, I'll never forgive myself. Never forget. Never drive a car again. Never, never, never. I'm sorry, madam. Everything that could be done has been done. But neither tears, nor money, nor the best medical skill in the world will help. The child is dead. I'm very sorry. Dead? Oh, no. No. Wait. Wait, doctor. Wilson, listen to me. We made a deal. Yes, and your time is up. You can go. Go on, Smith. Get out of here. No, wait. Wait. I've been a stubborn fool. Now I see what you've been driving at. It only takes one careless moment to make a reckless driver. You made a deal with me. I'll make a deal with you. Yes, what is your deal? Go ahead. Play up my case. Take pictures, all you like. Use me as Exhibit A in any campaign you run to convince folks like me that death is... Always at the wheel of any car. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you have just heard speaks for itself. 
And now we'd like to have you hear from a man who lives with this problem every day of the year. Ned H. Dearborn, president of the National Safety Council, direct from Chicago. Friends, you have just heard a remarkable radio drama. Lever Brothers deserve great credit for thus trying to help reduce the traffic toll in the United States. Few people realize that traffic accidents have taken nearly one million lives since we, as a nation, began to keep traffic death records. That was in 1905. In that year, motor vehicles were involved in 400 deaths. Last year, the toll was 32,000. And in 1949, smash-ups in which injuries will be suffered will average one a minute unless every citizen accepts personal responsibility for the safety of himself, his family, and his fellow citizens. I sincerely hope each of you will accept that personal responsibility. If you do, there will be far fewer funerals in 1949 and far fewer heartaches. So be careful, Mr. and Mrs. America... The life you save may be your own. Thank you very much, Mr. Dearborn. And now, before hearing about next week's big town adventure, here are Steve Wilson and Lorelei. Friends, if you haven't entered Lever's sensational $50,000 travel contest, better hurry. Would you like to explore Paris and London, see Cairo, visit Honolulu and other famous foreign cities? Now, this contest is your chance to win the vacation of a lifetime. Just imagine, friends, you can win a round-the-world trip for two with all travel expenses paid. Or choose $10,000 in cash. Yes, and there are second prizes, too, 15 of them, with an all-expense trip to Europe for each winner. Or $2,500 in cash. Plus 400 other prizes of $10 each. It's easy to enter, but you must act soon. Finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like Bath Size Life Boy because. Send each entry with a box front from Bath Size Life Boy to Lever Tour the World Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That's Box 1, New York 8, New York. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Get a free entry blank with complete rules at your store right away. <laughs> Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you another hard-hitting racket expose captioned The Prisoner's Song, another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting editor Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, he all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and the headline story of The Prisoner's Song, brought to you by Light Boy Health Soap, and of a fine lead for product. Extra, extra... <laughs> Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Casey Allen, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. from that door, Wilson. Danny, don't. Don't use that gun. Hold Mrs. Young, Lorelei. No, no. Step aside, Wilson. I'll give you till I count to ten. 
One. You've got five minutes to confess and stop the execution of Johnny Young. Move. Two. The warden is waiting in his office. I ain't going to the chair. Three. Yes, hear this big town story of an innocent man's final hours brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. It's another story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Big Town Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and tonight's dramatic story of an innocent man's final hours in the death house, captioned... The Prisoner's Song. Listen to the story of Johnny Young. Johnny Young gonna die in the chair tonight. Only the good die young. Yes, the screw's gonna burn Johnny Young tonight. Only the good die young. Here he is, Mrs. Young. You got five minutes. Oh, John. John. Why don't they make that man in the next cell stop singing like that? It's okay, Mary. He's going to the chair, too, tonight. They let him have his guitar. He wanted it instead of his supper. And I kind of like it because he ain't afraid to die. Don't give up hope, Johnny. That newspaper man, Mr. Wilson of the press, still believes you're innocent. He's coming here. Yeah. Yeah, the warden told me. He's trying to help. Yeah, but you know what he's trying to do, Mary? Prove your brother Danny killed that cop. He's wrong about that, Johnny. He has to be wrong. Danny couldn't, wouldn't keep still and let you die. Sure, sure, honey. He's your brother, and you've been father and mother to Danny. I couldn't believe it either if I was in your place. I wish I could take your place, Johnny. Only the killer can take my place. Mr. Wilson will find him. I almost hope he doesn't find him, Mary. He seems so sure that he can. Well, he hasn't much time. Four hours to go. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Crying ain't gonna do any good, honey. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, you stopping at Big Kate's on the top of the hill? Yes. Just for tonight. Mr. Wilson asked me to. Uh-huh. Kate give you the big room overlooking this cell block? Yes. I hear she always does, ever since she had it herself and watched when her husband went to the chair. Oh, don't. Please don't, John. I'm sorry I can't be as brave as you. Well, that's because you've got the hardest part going on after. Where's Danny? Outside, waiting. How's he taking it? He's been drinking. Doesn't he? Can't sleep. You know... Tell him he's welcome to my clothes. They'll fit him like a glove. No, Johnny, no. Why not? I'll only need my one blue suit. Because I know what you're thinking. What Mr. Wilson thinks, that Danny wore your brown suit that night the cop was killed. Oh, forget it, Mary. Twelve good men and women thought different. Because my coat was torn and I had no alibi. I know you didn't do it, Johnny. Couldn't do it. Any more than Danny could. Sure. Sure, honey. <laughs> Look, your time's almost up. You, you'd better go now. You're tearing yourself to bits. No, Johnny. Don't send me up to that house on the hill. Let me stay here with you as long as I can. As long as I can. They say there's a new man fighting a fight For the truth about Johnny Young But he sure gotta get it Get it right tonight, cozy burning Johnny Young. Though they burning Johnny Young. Prison coming up, Wash, Miss Kilpine. I guess that'll be as far as I can hack you. Nice driving, Harry. You made it from Big Town in an hour without breaking a rule of the road. Yes, Harry, and just stop at the gate. 
I want you to drive Miss Kilburn up to Big Kate's house on the hill. Hey, what about this Johnny Young guy, boss? You still figure he's innocent of shooting that cop? Yes, Harry. And so did the prosecutor and the warden. Well, then how come he ain't got another stay of execution? He was duly tried and convicted, Harry. Uh-huh. And the guy had no alibi. And even alibis can be framed, Harry. We've got to get proof. New evidence or the confession of the actual killer. Holy moly, it's 8 o'clock. You only got four hours to do it if it goes at 12. Yeah, and we've been working on this for months. It was the last hours, perhaps the last few minutes, that are going to spell success of my plan or its failure, Lana. We mustn't fail, Steve. Only time will tell. So little time. Anything I can do besides hack Miss Kilbane up the hill? Well, there's very little any of us can do, Harry, except Johnny Young, his wife Mary, and her brother. Okay, Ron, I better go in. Ah, oh, golly, Steve. Through those gates pass the truly tragic people of this world. Yes. Often driven by circumstances beyond their control. Heredity, environment, blind chance. Oh, look. Coming out of the main gate. Mary Young. And her brother and Danny are supporting her. But wait, I don't want you to talk to her until she gets up to Big Kate's heartbreak house on the hill. Oh, it's going to be so cruel, Steve. It's far better an hour of anguish than a lifetime of remorse, Lana. But what if she won't talk to us, won't listen? Well, Big Kate is going to arrange that. I think she can. Uh, how soon will you be up at the house on the hill? As soon as I've had a last talk with Johnny Young. Well, will they let you see him in the death house? The warden has given me special permission. Now go ahead with Harry. Up to the house on the hill. Lana. It's 8 o'clock. Only four hours left to succeed or fail. Time's running out at the clock at the gate. Hurry up, newsman, you're gonna be late. The Lord's gonna make a big mistake and poor Johnny's soul Visitor for you, Johnny. I'll have to lock the cell door, Mr. Wilson. Regulation. It's all right, guard. Thanks. I won't be long. I'll be down the block. Call when you're ready to leave. Thanks, guard. Hello, Johnny. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Thanks for coming and all you've tried to do, but you're wasting your time. I hope not. Mind if I sit down? Sure. Sorry I can't offer you a, an easy chair. They only got one here, and they're saving it. Johnny, I'm not going to ask the impossible. I'm not going to ask you to forget that chair beyond that green door at the end of the corridor. They've been testing it. I could hear it. Johnny, you know there's only one chance of stopping it. I'm not sure I want that chance, Mr. Wilson. Your wife visited you a few minutes ago? Yeah. It's tougher on her than it is on me. Well, not as tough as it will be if she learns the truth after you're dead. Then comes to realize she could have helped stop it. That's the only thing I'm afraid of, Mr. Wilson. Sooner or later, Johnny, her brother Danny is going to crack. Yeah. Yeah, he's drinking. Can't eat. Can't sleep. Well, for his sake and for the sake of the sanity of your wife, Mary... We've got to crack him. Get his confession. Tonight. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm taking the easy way out. It isn't so tough when you know you never did anything wrong. But what can I do but sit here and wait? Tell me just one thing, Johnny. What's that, Mr. Wilson? Did your brother-in-law, Danny, make a habit of wearing your clothes? Yeah, but even if he did, that night the cop got killed and died with a button torn off the coat in his hands... Danny didn't do it to frame me. No, Johnny, there was no premeditation in Danny's killing that policeman in the struggle for the policeman's gun. But there will be premeditation if he lets you die tonight. And even if he lives, he'll suffer the torments of Dan, Johnny. Yeah. And he'll kill Mary. But what can you do? I'm going from here up to Big Kate's heartbreak house on the hill, Johnny. And do what, Mr. Wood? I may have to lie... And cheat and trick your brother-in-law may have to smash your wife's blind faith in her own flesh and blood. But I'm going to get a confession out of Danny before midnight tonight. So long, Johnny. Guard, I'm ready to go. Okay, Mr. Wilson. I heard what you said. Good luck to you. We're all kind of pulling for Johnny around here. Even singing boy over there. 
in the other cell. Hurry up, newsman, get on with the fight. A Johnny will die with me before daylight. John is going to the Lord with me before daylight. Thus, Steve Wilson leaves the prison for the house on the hill to undertake a heartbreaking task. And for the dramatic developments, we'll return in a moment to our big town story. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Because of its purifying ingredient, Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Yes, and it's mild, safe, even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy Health Soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's dramatic newspaper story captioned, The Prisoner's Song. <laughs> oh, Danny. Ten o'clock. Two more hours. Come away from the window looking down on the prison, sis. Watching ain't gonna help. What will help? Maybe that news guy, Wilson, will get Johnny another stay. No. Mr. Wilson told me there's no hope of that. Then why'd he ask you to come up here? Stay here in this dump. Keep up your hopes. I've got to keep hoping or I'll die or go mad, Danny. Don't talk like that, sis. I mean it. Because I know Johnny's innocent. I couldn't go on living if Johnny dies or something someone else did. I suppose you think I did it. Like Wilson thinks. No. No, Danny, you couldn't. Even if you did, not meaning to... You wouldn't, couldn't let Johnny die. Uh, who'd that be? Maybe Mr. Wilson. Tell him to beat it. He's wrote you enough of stories in his lousy illustrated press. Oh, no, he's trying to help us. Come in. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. Young, but Rosemary forgot to tidy up the bathroom. It doesn't matter, Big Kate. Yeah, we're leaving right after 12. <laughs> well, just the same, please let Rosemary tidy up. She feels so bad about forgetting things. She's always forgetting things. Then why don't you fire her? You'll understand when you see her. It's all right. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Okay, Rosemary, you can come in and tidy. Oh, thank you. Thank you kindly. I'm Rosemary for remembrance. I've come to tidy everything up. I'm so happy. So happy am I. What are you so happy about? My sweetheart is coming out soon. Very soon. Isn't he coming out very soon, big Kate? Yeah, honey. Almost any day now. So you finished tidying up Mrs. Young's room and... Go make yourself pretty. Oh, yes, I must be pretty when he comes out. Prettiest when I was young. He'll remember. I remember, for I'm Rosemary for remembrance. And happy we will be. Happy we will be. What do you got that wacky around here for? Danny, don't talk like that. It's all right, Mrs. Young. Won't hurt Rosemary's feelings. She lives in a beautiful world of her own. She's lucky. It's a happy world of make-believe. What do you mean? My sweetheart is never coming out of that prison down there. A lifer? No, he came out years ago in a box. Electrocuted. Dead. Shut up. <laughs> what are you trying to do to my sister? Get out. Get that dizzy dame out of here. No, Danny, don't. Don't hurt her. I may be like that. Let her be. Let her have a happy dream. Let her be. Sis, sis, get away from that window. Quit staring down there at the prison. No, no, no. There. Now everything's tidy and pretty and nice. Oh, you're pretty, too. Is your sweetheart coming out soon? Yes. Yes, Rosemary. Soon. Oh, I'm so happy, so happy for you. Miss Kate has promised me this room when my sweetheart comes. 
Out of the gates and up the hill. Out of the gates and up the hill. Get her out. Get her out or so help me Stop out. it, Danny. Stop it. What's the matter with him? Nothing, Rosemary. This young man just has things on his mind. Go pretty yourself. Oh, yes. I must keep myself young and pretty. For my sweetheart is coming soon. 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 Very soon. What's the idea, you old hag? Danny. Shut up, sis. What's the idea of that act? It wasn't an act, young man. You're a liar. Who put you up to it? What do you mean by that crack? I got something on my mind. You have, Danny. You must have it. You wouldn't act this way. You wouldn't be so cruel. It's not like you. Oh. So they've turned you against me. Made you think I killed that lousy cop. Did you, Danny? No. Accidentally. No, I tell you. Not meaning to. No, I told you before. And nothing they can do will ever make me say any different. I ain't going to take Johnny's place in the chair. No. No, Danny. You couldn't ever do that because I've always known in my heart Johnny doesn't belong in the chair. You can't take his place because he's taking yours. No, sis. Don't believe it. They've lied to you. No, Danny. I've lied to myself all the years I've tried to be father and mother and sister to you. Forgive me, Danny, for letting you be so weak. So weak. Get away from that window. Keep away from that window. No, Danny. Come here. Come wait with me. No. I'm getting out. Leaving. Going back to Big Town now. No, you're not, Danny boy. Who's going to stop me? I'm going to stop you till Mr. Wilson gets here. Wilson? So he's coming up here. This whole thing is a plant, a frame. Call it what you like, but I say you're staying, and I'm Big Kate and strong enough to make it stick. All right. Let Wilson come. I'm not talking. I'm not confessing to killing that cop. If you don't, you'll wish you had. Please, please, Big Kate, let him go. No. Then leave us alone. Let me talk to Danny alone. All right, Mrs. Young, but I'll be waiting for Mr. Wilson in the hall outside this door. Eleven o'clock and all ain't well If they burn Johnny Young Somebody's gonna go to Life in a pool of pain Cause the truth he didn't tell Cause the truth he didn't tell Any word from up on the hill, Chaplain? Not yet. But this last hour is the one that will tell. I sure hope so. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Chaplain. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel fine. Except I'm worried about my wife, Mary. She has great strength, Johnny. Great faith. For all her gentleness, she is the mother of earth. The rock that shelters and upon whom all tides of adversity break. Fear not for her, nor for thyself. But for him who holds in his hands a decision which belongs to God. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want He lead me to pastures by water still Unless something gives up there on the hill Up there on the hill Thanks for all you've done, Big Kate. Glad to do it, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilburn. But I don't mind telling you it's the toughest thing I ever had to do. I'm sure it was, Big Kate. It may be harsh and cruel, but there seems to me to be the one case where the end justifies almost any means. Yes, but that poor girl's having her heart torn to pieces. Is she convinced her brother is guilty? Yeah, I think so, from the way he's acting. It's, it's a quarter of twelve, Steve. Yes, yeah, 15 minutes to go. We can't wait any longer. Is the door locked? No. Every day I put a lock on this door. Too many things have happened in that room, looking out over the prison to folks waiting for their kin to die. All right, come on, Lorelei. Get close and stay close to Mary Young. We're going in. Wilson, get out of here. No, Danny, sorry. Get out of here and leave my sister alone. Please, Danny, listen to Mr. Wilson. There's so little time, so little time. Wait, Mrs. Young, wait. Get out, Wilson. Get out or so help me. So help you if I do get out. 
You're not going to needle me into a confession? Then you no longer deny your guilt. Get away from that door. I'm getting out of here. You may get out of here, but you can't get away from yourself. Maybe not. But I ain't taking Johnny's place. Call him Mr. Young. Stop calling him Johnny. That's reserve. In this hour for his loved ones and his friends. Shut up! No, listen to me if you won't listen to your own conscience. The nickname of Johnny was given to him in his life. It will die with him in this final hour. They don't carve nicknames on stone. Don't soil an endearment with a coward tongue. I'll show you who's a coward. Get out of the way. Oh. A gun. The real coward's magic wand of power. No, Danny, no. Mrs. Young, wait. Hold her, Laurel. I keep her out of this. Let's see if Danny has the courage to do with that gun what he wants the law to do to Johnny Young. Five minutes from now. Thus, Steve takes a desperate gamble in a final effort to save the life of a condemned man. In a moment, the tense and dramatic showdown. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Because of its purifying ingredient, Life Boy is more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Yes, and it's mild, safe even for baby's tender skin. No wonder Life Boy health soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. So bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson as he faces a desperate young man with a gun in tonight's strange and gripping story of The Prisoner's Song. Get away from that door, Wilson. Dad, don't. Don't use that gun. Hold Mrs. Young, Laurel. I keep her out of this. No, don't. Yes, no. Mrs. Young. Leave this to Steve. Step aside, Wilson. I'll give you till I count ten. One. You've less than five minutes to stop the execution of Johnny Young. Move. I'm counting. Two. The warden is waiting in his office, Danny. I ain't going to that chair. Three. There was no premeditation in the killing of that officer with his own gun. That's the difference. They'll burn me anyhow. Four. Not if you confess. I ain't chancing it. Five. You haven't what it takes to let Johnny die. Shut up. Six. Move or so help me. No one can help you, Danny. No one in all this world. Not your sister Mary, who mothered you. Nor Johnny, who's ready to die. Danny! 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 Seven. Eight. Nine. Twelve. It's twelve o'clock. Stop it. Stop it. I, I did it. I, I did it. 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 Johnny. Oh, Steve. It is 12 o'clock. Get on the phone, Lorelei. But it's too late. Dial the warden, Lorelei. Why, Steve? Because I arranged with the warden to have the prison clock set five minutes fast. <laughs> Johnny Young, the warden got the truth. The screws don't have to strap you in. Cause the newsman's got the truth. The 
killer was your in-law kin. He saved himself and he saved his skin. He kept you off that heavenly train. He kept you off that heavenly train. So ended another story of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Say, Dwight, mind if a newspaper man makes a suggestion? Why, go right ahead, Steve. Well, every good reporter knows that why is that why is important. Say why, Dwight. Okay, here's your why, Steve. After 820 scientific tests, the doctors say Life Boy's purifying ingredient is what makes the difference. That's why Life Boy gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. That's right, Dwight. And it helps explain why Life Boy Health Soap is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. <laughs> Next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story entitled The Charity Killers, another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of Fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional, and any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei Kilburn, and is written and produced by Jerry McGill. In tonight's Big Town story, we are proud to announce the singer was Josh White, one of the truly great balladeers of our times, who will be heard at a special concert at YMHA Hall, New York, on February 27th. Special music for the Prisoner Song was composed and arranged by John Gard. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, he roll about it. Steve Wilson and the story of the charity killers... Brought to you by Life Boy Health Soap. Extra, extra. Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weiss, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is NBC, the national broadcast. Extra, extra, extra. Hear the big town story of the charity killers. Extra, extra, extra. Miranda? Yes, Bertha? Lock him up in the storage room with Larson's body and let's get out of here. And leave Mr. Wilson alive to identify us in Larson's murder? They'll have to catch us first. You're wasting time, Bertha. My press photographer has orders to notify the police. You better get going. I'll say I'm going. Oh, no, you're not. Tape up, Wilson, and splatter the place with kerosene. Yes, listen to this dramatic big town story of two strange women racketeers brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. A story of fighting editor Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town, and tonight's racket expose headlined, The Charity Killers. Each year, the great heart of America gives billions to alleviate the suffering of humanity. But into this golden river of generosity, racketeers dip greedy hands. And such is the background of Steve Wilson's story, which began in the parlor of a pretentious old brownstone mansion in a fashionable section of Big Town. Bertha, Bertha, 
Hurry with the tea. Mr. Larson is due any moment. Stop squawking. Save the society act for that crook. I have to get into my lines, into my charity act, don't I? Yeah, but don't overdo it. Make the pitch for a fat contribution and then we'll take them. Like a couple of Danamara doves. Bertha, I do wish you'd drop your prison slang. You've been out long enough this time. And I'm not going back in. I'm getting too old for the pen laundries. What's keeping that shop? He'll be here. I promised him a large contribution to his sweet charity. That dirty crook. Save the professional jealousy and pour me a cup of tea. Ah, pour it yourself. Very well. Where's the gin? In the extra cream pitcher, where it always is when you put on this phony whistler's mother act. Have you uh, fixed the sugar? Sure. The top lumps are soaked in enough stuff to knock Larson out for a week. Good. Uh, there he is. Uh, go let him in while I get out my knitting. All right, but don't drop that gun out of your knitting bag like you did in Denver. Oh, I won't. Oh, dear, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get rid of Bertha like I did my second husband. Now, let's see. Knit one per one. No, knit two per one. Just a moment, please. Good afternoon. I, I'm Mr. Larson, calling on Mrs. Miranda Adams. Oh, yes, Mr. Larson. Madam Adams is expecting you. This way, please. Who is it, Bertha, dear? Mr. Larson, ma'am. Oh, yes. How do you do? Good afternoon. Charmed to meet you, Mrs. Adams. I hope the pleasure will be all mine. You may go, Bertha. I'll go tend the furnace, ma'am. I'll call you if I need you. Very well, ma'am. Are you two ladies alone in this big house? Yes, quite alone. It's so difficult to get help these days, you know. Yes. And now, about your contribution to the general community fund. Oh, yes. Please sit down. Uh, have a cup of tea? Tea? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you brought your list of prominent contributors. Oh, yes, I have them all right here. Uh, but uh, this list is quite confidential. Most of our large contributors wish to remain anonymous, sir. Uh, don't want to get on the circle list. Uh, I mean the list of uh, unscrupulous fund collectors. I understand. And I assure you the list will not leave my hand. Oh, but I can't leave the list. Very well. I'll have Bertha make a copy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You wouldn't care to have me give out your name and the amount of your contribution, would you, Mrs. Adams? Mm, decidedly not. No, of course. Now, uh, and how large a donation did you have in mind? Uh, with a thousand... A thousand? Oh, dear, your tea is getting cold. How many lumps of sugar? Oh, no sugar, thank you. I'm putting on weight. I never touch the stuff. Well, a thousand would be fine. Great help to the many worthy cause. Oh, I'm sure it would. And a little sugar won't hurt you. It's energy building. Yes, I know, but uh, no thanks. Hey, I I'll just take it uh, as, as is while you make out your check. <laughs> no, let me... Uh, oh, dear, I'm sorry. So clumsy of me. Bertha... Oh, it doesn't matter. Don't bother. Yes, ma'am. What's the trouble? Mr. Larson won't take sugar in his tea. Oh, he won't, won't he? Hey, what's the idea? Uh, sit down, Mr. Larson. Hey, what's the idea of that gun, Mrs. Adams? Now, now, put it away. I, I didn't come here to rob you. Yes, you did, you dirty crook. Uh, Bertha, don't slight our profession. This dope is a disgrace to any profession. Hey, you two are con cookies. This is a plant. A scheme to get half a hold of my sucker list. Exactly, Mr. Larson. Take that list, Bertha. No, 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 wait a minute. Listen. Let's make a deal. We can work this charity racket together. Why, well, we'd make a great team. Milk this town dry. That's what we're going to do. Without you. Oh, oh. Here. You've dented the teapot, Bertha. Never mind the teapot. I think I've dented his head. What are we going to do with him? Drag him down in the cellar. Lock him up in the storage closet. We don't want him disturbing the neighbors while we work on his sucker list. Wait a minute, Miranda. Maybe he ain't gonna disturb nobody. Why not? I think I cracked his skull. I think he's dead. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. My first husband went that way. <laughs> wondrous girl reporter. Oh, come in, Lorelei, and close the door on those infernal teletypes. Uh-oh. Now, what have I not done which should have been done, as Harry the Hack would be wont to say if he weren't down with a grip? How would you like to impersonate the confidential secretary of a wealthy philanthropist? Yeah, anything for a story. Who is the philanthropic gent? Well, I'm going to impersonate him. What, are we going to play, charades? Yes. I've had a tip, Lorelei. A couple of larcenous ladies have set up a fake charity racket in Big Town, and I want to get the goods on them before they make a mockery of... One of man's finest impulses. I'm all for that, but how? Well, your suitcase is all packed and ready right there on the table. Uh-uh, the battery recorder. Where am I weekending? You're just going to call on the ladies. 
Well, how do I explain the disguised talk box? You're on your way out of town and just stopped in to tell the ladies I'm calling to make a fat contribution. Oh, why don't I just phone? I'm very eccentric. I have to be humored. Okay. Uh, where'd you get this tip? From our friend, Showboat. Showboat? Shades of Shakespeare. How did he spot these female charity racketeers? Saw them on the street. They're lively ghosts out of his own colorful past, Lorna. Good heavens. Not out of trooping days aboard his Mississippi paddle wheel namesake. Yes, yeah, one of the ladies. The other is a more modern version of feminine larceny. That's a charming combination. Where? Oh. It should be Showboat at the hall door. Let him in. Oh, he'll knock the door off the hinges. Hail and hello, Brother Wilson. Hello, showboat, come in. Thank you. And the Lorelei, lovely lady of the linotype. Hello, showboat. I hear we're going on a charity racket safari. Ah, yes. It has been my good fortune to espy amongst humanity's flock two elderly female wolves in sheep clothing preparing to pounce upon the innocent lambs in the name of sweet charity. Yes, I've given Lorelei the setup and the fact, showboat. She's ready to go. Aye, but stay a moment, Miss Kilber. Though these barges be cloaked with lavender and lace, and though they dwell in marble halls, they are as the scorpion whose sting is verily the kiss of death. Thanks for the warning, showboat. I'll be careful of them. Where is this marble hall? A gloomy relic of the 90s, leased as a lair for the unsuspecting. A stage upon which these demon damosels weave their wanton web upon sweet charity's warp of woe. A perfect setup. What's the address, Showboat? Park is the street, and the number is nine. Number nine Park. Uh, what names are they using, Showboat? My thespian contemporary, the Ophelia to my Hamlet, Lady Macbeth to my immortal Thane, the little Eva to my Uncle Tom. Once went by the name of Memphis Mary. Shot one gambler husband and drowned another in the muddy waters of the Mississippi. Now, silver-haired and mild of mien, she plays her trade in the guise of Madame Miranda Adams. Golly, Miranda Adams. Oh, who's her present partner? Judicious inquiry reveals only the name of Bertha a muscle-bound matronly alumni of many of our better houses of correction. Well, that'll be enough to work on, Showboat. Uh, how much time are you giving me to get their crooked charity pitch on the tape recorder seat? Ten minutes should be enough, Lorelei. Take Dusty and his camera, but have him wait outside until we arrive. We... Well, good heavens, Steve. Madam Adams will surely recognize Showboat. Exactly, Lorelei. And a recording of her reaction should be evidence enough to smash the racket and send the ladies to jail. <laughs> Thus, unaware that a vicious, fake charity racket has become a matter of murder, Steve unknowingly sends Lorelei into a deadly situation. And for the exciting developments, we'll return to Big Town in just a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick, flashing white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and tonight's spine-chilling expose of a vicious racket captioned The Charity Killers. Following up a tip on two elderly women working a charity racket, Lorelei Kilburn arrives at their rented mansion unaware that a murder has been committed. Bertha, 
for heaven's sake, what a time to be out of kerosene. How was I to know that crooked dope would be so stubborn and have a paper skull and we'd have to get rid of the body? Are you quite sure he's dead? Dead as a doornail. Are you sure he'll fit into the furnace? Yeah, I measured the door. Then go down to the store and get a can of kerosene. All right. This gallon can should do. Oh, dear, I do hope he doesn't overheat the house. Miranda, somebody's ringing the front doorbell. My stars, whom could it be? Maybe one of Lawson's charity racket pals come to find out what happened to him. What'll we do? I'll go see. And if it is, simply say he never arrived. What if they've been watching the house and no different? Uh, then I'll invite them in with this gun. All right, go ahead. I'll wait down here in the cellar with Lawson's body. No need to do that. He won't go away. Go get the kerosene and hurry back. Okay. I'll go out the cellar exit. Don't make any mistakes. I won't. Uh, uh, maybe you better get another gallon of kerosene, uh, just in case. All right, all right. Get upstairs and answer that bell. Do come into my parlor, my dear Miss Kilburn. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Adams. Uh, mind if I put my weekend bag right here? Not at all, my dear. <laughs> And it's so kind of you to delay your vacation trip to prepare me for the arrival of your wonderfully philanthropic Mr. Wilson. Yes, uh, you may think it strange you're sending me ahead to get the facts about your charities, but my employer is uh, quite eccentric. I understand. And of course you want to know how the money is being spent, how many worthy causes are being helped, and the other prominent contributors in Big Town. Yes, that would interest and impress Mr. Wilson. Of course. Here is a partial list of our contributors and sponsors. My, that's quite an impressive list. What's the matter, Miss Kilburn? N nothing. nothing. But it must be. You're white as a ghost. Oh, it's, a, it's really nothing. I, I suddenly felt a little faint. It's rather warm in here. Nonsense. The thermostat is set at 68 degrees. Then it's be something I ate. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I'd better go. No, my dear. It's something else. Something that has startled and upset you. Something you saw on the carpet. Yes, Mrs. Adams. What happened here? Whatever do you mean, my dear? Who was hurt? Left that fresh stain on your carpet. Oh, that. Yes, that. Oh, that isn't what you think. I had the most frightfully clumsy housekeeper. She spilled some... Catsup. Catsup? For tea? Yes. I just sent her out to get some cleaning fluid when you called. That's why I answer the door myself. I see. And you're alone in the house? Yes. And what do you see, Miss Kilburn? Just who are you and why are you here? Well, I came to ask you a few questions about your charity fundraising activities, but... But now you are no longer interested in sweet charity. Why not, my dear? I have a feeling something much more important has happened here. And I have a feeling you're not what you pretend to be. Give me your handbag, Miss Kilburn. Uh-oh. That's a rather large gun for such a charitable little lady, Mrs. Adams. Don't get up. Just give me your handbag. Oh, I'll save you the trouble of looking. I'm a newspaper reporter. A reporter. Oh, dear. Yes, I'm investigating a tip on your charity racket. All alone? In the hope of getting a scoop for your newspaper, um, no doubt? Not quite. Now, you better put away that gun or you'll be facing something much more serious than grand larceny, Mrs. Adams. If you aren't already. My stars, you are curious, aren't you, Miss Kilburn? The reporter's stock in trade. Yes, too bad. How so? Oh, dear me, I'm dreadfully afraid I'm going to have to take you down in the cellar and satisfy your feminine curiosity once and for all. Is uh, this the place, Sobald? Aye, Mr. Wilson. Yon musty mausoleum is the lair of these lady leeches. Not that I myself am a model of civic virtue, nor above a little modest chicanery in pursuit of the almighty dollar. Well, your tips have been very valuable, Showboat. Let's go in and see how this one pans out. 
Hey, Steve, Shobo, just a minute. Yes, what is it, Dusty? Well, I don't know exactly, but something is from Denmark around here. What is Laura Lyons, then? Huh? Yep. A little old lady let her in about ten minutes ago. What's worrying you, Dusty? Well, just about the time the little old lady let Miss Kilburn in the front entrance, a buxom battle axe slid out the cellar exit. And she was carrying an empty can that she might fill with kerosene. She ought to be back any time now. Well, in that case, I think we'd better change our plan of action, Shobo. How so, Mr. Wilson? You better wait here with Dusty. Out of sight. I'll go in first, play my part, and then call you in for the showdown. As you wish, Mr. Wilson. A climactic third act entrance is meet enough to test my thespian talents. Go set the stage. Prepare the downfall of these demons of deception. I'll do my best. Meanwhile, keep out of sight in Dusty's car until I call you, Shobo. Very well. I go to the wings to await my cue. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I uh, wish to see the lady of the house, Madam Adams. I am Madam Adams, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Adams. Not at all. Ordinarily, I do not answer the door myself, but my housekeeper has gone to the store for some uh, supplies. I quite understand. Uh, And what can I do for you, sir? Well, I'm Stephen Wilson. Hasn't my confidential secretary arrived to acquaint you with the fact that I wish to make a sizable donation to the many worthwhile charities I... Understand your sponsoring? Why, no, Mr. Wilson. No one has called all afternoon. No one called on you? No, no one. Perhaps she was uh, delayed and will arrive later. But no matter, for I think these things are much better discussed between the principals. Uh, Don't you think? Yes, in this case, I think I do. Then please come in, Mr. Wilson. Thank you very much. Uh Forgive me uh, for locking the door, Mr. Wilson. I have many valuables, and I understand the police are most lax in this neighborhood, and there are sneak thieves and footpads about. So I hear. Makes one nervous. Uh, uh, But do come into my parlor. I was about to have tea. Uh, Won't you join me? It uh, will be a pleasure, Madam Adams. Sit down, Mr. Wilson. You may find it a bit uh, chilly, but uh, my housekeeper will be back in a moment, and we'll have a lovely fire. That will be nice. You've no idea how cozy a nice fire will make this gloomy old place. I can imagine. Please sit down, Mr. Wilson. You seem restless, preoccupied. Have a cup of tea. No, thank you. Let's get something else settled first. Oh, uh, your charitable contribution. No, where is Miss Kilburn? Miss Kilburn? Yes, my so-called confidential secretary. But I told you she hasn't arrived. And you lied. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known my confidential secretary was a woman. Oh, dear, that was a slip of the tongue, wasn't it, Mr. Wilson? And not the only mistake you made. That weekend bag standing there with the cards belongs to Miss Kilburn. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm getting careless in my old age. All right, Mrs. Adams. Let's stop playing games. You apparently know who I am, and I know who you are, and what you're doing in Big Town. Very well, Mr. Wilson of the press. Like all newspaper persons, you're insatiably curious. And I'm frightfully afraid I'm going to have to gratify your wish to see Miss Kilburn. Quit stalling. Where is she? What have you done to her? Merely satisfied her curiosity about a regrettable stain on our landlord's lovely rug there. Stain? Good grief. Yes. Unfortunately, we had a gentleman call her just before Miss Kilburn arrived. What happened? He refused to allow us to muscle in on his charity racket. And Bertha, my impulsive housekeeper, was compelled to knock him cold and overdid it slightly. Killed him? Oh, yes. He's quite dead. Where is Miss Kilburn? Keeping company with Mr. Larson's body. Are you fiendish, Holmes? Just a moment, Mr. Wilson. Sticks and stones will break your bones, and this gun will kill you quite as dead as Mr. Larson. Yes, that's a rather large gun for such a sweet, gentle little old lady. Yes, so your Miss Kilburn said in those very words. What have you done to her? Just taped her up until Bertha gets back. Where is she? Down in the cellar. Go on, Mr. Wilson. Walk out into the hall and down the stairs. It's quite chilly up here. It'll be much warmer down with the furnace. Thus, in a swift turning of the table, Steve and Laura and I are caught in a strange and deadly situation. And for the exciting payoff, we'll return in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Doctors have proved it. 
People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors compared results. They found that Life Boy, with its quick, rich, purifying lather, cleanses and protects better than any other leading soap. And Life Boy is milder, too. So bathe with mild, refreshing Life Boy every day. Remember, Life Boy gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Buy Life Boy right away. Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei, trapped in the basement of an old mansion in the deadly cover-up of the Charity Killers. Keep away from Miss Kilburn, Mr. Wilson. I know how to use this gun. So I understand from an old associate of your Mississippi showboat days. My stars, that was 40 years ago. Who could it be? An actor. And like your first husband, a gambler on the river. Showboat. Showboat. That scene stealer. I would have thought some woman shot him years ago. Unfortunately for you, he's right here in Big Town. It tipped me off to your fake charity racket. Uh, what are you listening for? Expecting, Mr. Wilson? The return of your stupid companion who involved you in murder. I've been involved in murder before. But of your own volition. Not because of the blundering of a stupid associate. Oh, yes, quite so. Bertha is rather stupid. Who's stupid, you cackling old crow? Crow, am I? Yes. And who's this man and that girl laying over there, taped up like a mummy? Newspaper person. What are they doing here? Investigating your charity racket. Oh, my Randy, you old fool. Why did you bring them down here and let them see Larson's body? There was no help for it. And stop calling me a fool. I am old, but you're the fool. Put on that kerosene and tape up Mr. Wilson. Stop giving orders. There isn't time. we got to get out of here. Nonsense. We've spent months lining up suckers. Checks are pouring in every day, and with Larson's list, we can make a real killing. Don't be a complete dope. Those two didn't come along. There's a car out front. And the driver and somebody in it are watching this house like hawks. Why didn't you say so right away? You didn't give me a chance, but I'm telling you now. Let's lock them up in the storage room with Larson's body and get out of here. And leave them alive to identify and testify against us in Larson's murder? They'll have to catch us first. You're wasting time, Bertha. Those men out there in the car have orders to notify the police, and you'd better get going. I'll say I'm going. Oh, no, you're not, Bertha. Tape up Wilson and splatter the place with kerosene. I'm not wasting any more. That'll be all out of that gun, Madam Adams. Oh, hold still. I hate to manhandle a woman, even a murderess. No, hold still. Stop struggling. Oh, dear. Very well. Unhand me, sir. As soon as I make sure you haven't another gun in this knitting bag. Hey, Steve, what cooks? What goes on here? Yes. What gives? Just Dusty, just get the tape on Miss Kilburn. And then shoot a few pictures for the front page. Right. Okay, now hold everything, Lorelei. I'll have you undone in a jiffy. Oh, so... What transpires in this dungeon of dark deeds? Well, if it isn't Shovo to the greatest voice in Salvini. Ah, the Memphis Bell, Milady of the Hemlock, the Dagger, and the One Night Stand. Shut up, you windy old walrus. Ah, time hath touched thy hair with silver, but dip thy tongue with acid, Miranda. Oh, be quiet, Shovo. You haven't changed a bit. Yes, hold the reminiscences, Shovo. Are you all right, Laura and I? Oh, a little bruised and mortified, but otherwise okay, Steve. Good. Go upstairs and call Fletch on city desk. Give him the story. And call Callahan of Homicide. Now, before bringing you the final payoff in tonight's story and the headline news about next week's Big Town Adventure, here are Steve Wilson and Laura and I. Friends... Hurry, hurry. Lever's sensational $50,000 travel contest closes this week. Wouldn't you like to explore Paris and London, see Cairo, visit Honolulu and other famous foreign cities? Well, this contest is your chance to win the vacation of a lifetime. Just imagine, friends, you can win a round-the-world trip for two with all travel expenses paid or choose $10,000 in cash. Yes, and there are second prizes, too, 15 of them, with an all-expense trip to Europe for each winner... Or $2,500 in cash, plus 400 other prizes of $10 each. Just finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like bath size Life Boy because... Send each entry with a box front from Bath Size Life Boy 
to Lever Tour the World Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That's Box 1, New York 8, New York. But hurry, entries must be postmarked no later than this Saturday. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Get a free entry blank with complete rules at your store right away. In tonight's big town expose of the fake charity racketeers, the murderous Miranda was tried, convicted, and imprisoned for the rest of her unnatural life. And next week, the makers of Life Boy bring you a hard-hitting story entitled The Fatal Joke, the strange story of a gangster's revenge after death. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelei Kilburn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. This is Brotherhood Week. At a time when it is vitally important that all Americans stand united, let us recall the American principles of tolerance and understanding toward one another, and let us practice those principles throughout the year. Next Tuesday night, same time, same station, you'll hear the newsboy calling... Extra, extra, hero, about it! The story of Steve Wilson and a fatal joke brought to you by the makers of White Boy Health Soap. Extra, extra... Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure and be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is your narrator, Dwight Weist, bidding you good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting company. NBC, the national broadcasting... Extra, extra, dead man slays gang tipster. Here, big town and the headline story of the fatal joke. Extra, big town, extra, extra. Listen, Wilson, here's a hot tip on a hundred grand payoff. All right, let's have it. Be careful, wise guy. The babe's trigger finger is itchy. She can hardly wait to let you have a load of lead. Neither can I. Oh. Keep on thumping that piano, Mozart, like nothing happened. But plenty happens in this five-star story of Big Town, brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Life Boy Health Soap. The headline drama of fighting editor Steve Wilson, whose newspaper creed stands for freedom and justice against the forces of intolerance and evil. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's story captioned, The Fatal Joke. All practical jokers are a menace, but when they are also gangsters and racketeers, they can be deadly, even after death. And such is the background of the fatal joke that began as Babe Barton, widow of Joker Barton, walked out of woman's prison, having finished a three-year stretch. So long. We'll be seeing you, Babe. Oh, yeah? The pig's eye, you will. Hi, Nettie. Hi, Babe. You look a million. Pile in the heap. Thanks for nothing. Save the line for the lollies. That looked like three lousy years in the can. Hold this job out of sight of this joint. Okay, babe. Hmm. Some gelat. Hot or cold? Like ice. On whose dough? Oh, a couple of odd jobs. Somebody got plenty of sugar for fingering the joker. Uh, not me, babe. Not me. 
Don't put on shoes that ain't made for you, Natty. They're liable to pinch. I just wanted it on the record, babe. In case you forgot, I was your husband's pal and bodyguard. I ain't forgot nothing. Yeah, I bet. Including the newspaper slug that sigged the cops on Joker and got him the chair. And you, three years in the henpen. Wean in my wasteland on a wash tub in the steam laundry. Come on, come on, step on to the best beauty parlor in Big Town. Then what, babe? Want to see the bright lights? Maybe. After I settle with a couple of guys and a dame. Which ones? Wilson of the Press, a femme reporter named Kilborn, and a musical bum called Mozart. Hey, an order like that's liable to send you back for a big stretch, babe. Not the way we're going to work it. Uh-uh, not me, babe. I never pull nothing, except for dough. Yeah, I know you don't. This will get you plenty of dough. Plenty's kind of vague, babe. I like round figures in the lettuce and the ladies. Okay, Natty. Ten grand. To do what? Get Steve Wilson a killbone twist to Joker's old place tonight. What do I use for bait? The hundred grand Joker got in the big shakedown that got him the hot seat. Oh, yeah. What happened to that hundred G's? Send Wilson a tip he may find out about it and get a hot scoop if he comes to Joker's joint tonight. What if he brings the cops? He won't call the cops till he's sure he's got a right steer. The louse is a good noseman. I gotta hand him that. What are you gonna do if you get him there? Play one of the Joker's jokes on him and that lippy laurel eyed dame. What about that piano thumper Mozart? He's still running that waterfront dump called the Harbor Cafe. Never mind, Mozart. You suck a Wilson and Kilburn into the setup. I'll personally take care of that ivory, Ike. Say, boss, as Harry the Hack would say, if he weren't down with the grip. Say it, Lorelei, and close the door on those infernal teletypes, as I am prone to say. How's your calendar? It's pretty crowded. What's on your mind? The date. March 1st, remember? I circled it on your pad. Oh, yes. Now, don't tell me it's your birthday. Oh, heavens no. I've stopped counting birthdays, but I'll give you a long list of my desires when the day comes. Good. But uh, what's so important about this first day of March? The month of Ides, Lions, Lambs, and income tax returns. Today marks the return to freedom from prison of a lady known as the Babe. The babe. Mm-hmm. Who three years ago swore she'd get even with you for helping convict her racketeering husband, Joker Barton. Remember? Good grief, yes. And I remember correctly, she... She also promised to scratch your eyes out, Barbara. And I don't make a habit of forgetting threats of hard-boiled women with one track mind. All right, but are you suggesting we get out of town and hide? No, just remember the lady in question and keep out of dark corners. Well, she's probably forgotten the threat. And thus... Now, you've probably forgotten a little matter of a $100,000 rotten nest egg the Joker salted away before he died in the chair. Uh, oh, that's right, and Babe Barton might come back to get it. Just one more. Mm-hmm. Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Hey, Wilson, want a hot tip? Who are you? Never mind. Want a good hot tip? Well, what do you want for the tip? I want to get even with a dame. What dame? Remember Joker Barton's wife? The babe? The babe? Yes, I remember her. Just a minute. We got a load of this, Lyle. Speak of the she devil. Last the stall, Wilson. This is a payphone call, and I'll be long gone before you can trace it. All right. What's the tip? That con cookie is out of the henpen. We keep track of such events. But you don't know she's going to try to get her mitts on Joker's salted hundred G's and breeze tonight. Logical and interesting, but not very helpful. She's opening Joker's flat on Water Street. When? About now would be a good time to drop around. What did she do to you to bring on this double cross? Plenty of plenty. Take it or leave it. Thanks till you better paid. I'll take it. Steve, that was downright ungrateful of you. That rat is a liar, Lorelei. If he wanted revenge on the babe, he wouldn't call on us to keep her from getting away with Joker's hundred thousand. Granted, but what's the catch? That was bait for some kind of trap. That could include Mozart who also testified at Joker's trial. Oh, golly, yes. We better phone Mozart about this trap, and and let's go get Dusty and drive down to Water Street and take a closer look at the cheese. (laughs) Not that 
ivory thumper ever do anything but beat out the blues? Hello, Mozart. Don't turn around. Um, uh, is that round thing in my back a lipstick or the muzzle of a gun, lady? A gun? Keep on with the melody. And I'll give you the lyrics. You a song plugger, lady? Lost the laughs or I'll plug you. What can I do for you, babe? Huh? How did you know you ain't turned around? Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head. I'll put holes in the back of your head. If you don't louse the laughs and listen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Your ex-hubby, the Joker, never liked anybody stealing his taglines either. That's why I'm here. When'd you get out? Today? Mm-hmm. You didn't waste any time. Except for the beauty shop. How do you know I've been to the hairdresser? You a mind reader or something? Mm. Doesn't take a mind reader to read your mind, babe. It rolls in a rut as old as a lady named Delilah. Who's this dame Delilah? Oh, she, uh... She got sore at a strong guy named Samson who didn't like to go to the barber. And she wanted his head. Did she get it? Yeah, yeah, she got it. And then she went to a dance routine. That's for me. What? Off the music, the laughs, and lay off the keys. I get the idea. Okay, where do we go from here? I got a rat's jalop outside. They're driving us to Joker's old headquarters. You throwing a coming out party? Yeah, and how? Anybody else I know coming? A newspaper pal, Wilson. Now, Kilborn Dame are invited. Never mind the phone. What makes you think they'll come to your housewarming? A hot tip on a hundred grand story. And if they don't come, I'll take my three years over a henpen wash tub out on you. <laughs> Thus, Steve Wilson and Lorelei and Mozart are headed for a dangerous trap. And for the exciting developments of the fatal joke, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. Life Boy Get Skin Cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, Get Skin Cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Keeps you fresh and attractive. Protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson and Lorelei, one of his ace crime reporters, as they drive to Mozart's Cafe on the way to the old headquarters of a dead racketeer in the press car of Dusty, the press photographer. Say, Steve, Lorelei. Uh, say it, Dusty, but get us to Mozart. I don't understand his not answering the phone at the Harbor Cafe. Uh, same here, and if it means tangling with that mad madam called the babe, deal me in with my speedy graphic. Thanks, Dusty, but we hope this can be settled without the help of your camera. Hey, what about this mysterious telephone tipster you've been talking about? I think he hopes to have us pull his chestnuts out of the fire, and we're going to go through the motion of doing it. Well, isn't that kind of a risky occupation, no matter how thin you slice it, Steve? Not as bad as waiting for a vengeful lady to take a pot shot at one of us some dark night. Okay, Mozart's place coming up. Is he also a clay pigeon in the lady's proposed shooting gallery? Yes, pull up and stop at the side entrance to the cafe, Dusty. He should be in the back this time of night. Okay, here you are. And there's a light shining through the frosted glass of what used to be the family entrance. Yes, wait here, Dusty. We'll only be a moment. Yeah, we just want to find out if Mozart has had any calls, tips, or warnings about Joker's not-so-gentle widow. 
Okay, Lorelei. I'll prime my camera and be ready to take you to a rendezvous with that doe. Steve, I don't hear Mozart at the piano. No. And he usually beats out the blues when business is slack. Let's go in. Well, isn't here in the back room. No. Well, there's no one at the bar. Hey, Steve. Look at that smoldering cigarette in the ashtray at the end of the keyboard. That's funny. Yes. Well, he may have stepped out for a moment. Oh, no, Steve. Mozart's never taken a lighted cigarette out of his mouth till it's down to a bud, even to flick the ash. That's right, and there's his inevitable beer glass, half empty. A- and he wouldn't leave the place wide open. He doesn't care about his worldly goods, but he's particular who gets them. There's something... Wait a minute, Laura Lai. Hmm. I'm afraid we're too late. Well, how do you mean? What are you staring at, Steve? Look at the dust on the top of the piano, Laura Lai. Oh, Steve. Finger marks. Yes, look. Spelling out the babe. All right, Moat. Make yourself at home while we wait for Wilson and Kilborn to show. Well, so this is the place where Barton pulled his practical jokes on the public, the law, and rival mobs. Yeah, just the way he left it. I seen to that even while I was in the henpen. Kell's sentiment. What's that? What sentiment? It's a tag of an old French joke you wouldn't understand. Ah, even a piano. It uh, wouldn't be in tune after three years, would it? It better be, or the tuner down the street will get it. But good. He's safe. Well, what'll it be while we wait? Suit yourself. But don't try anything funny. Oh, perish the thought. And, uh, thoughts are all some of us have. Stand between us and the, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, to quote or misquote. And by opposing, end them, or play the coward and the piano. Like a clown. Keep on playing, you ivory thump. I like it. Ah, the guests arrive. Let the wine flow, let the games begin. Shut up, just play. <laughs> the hostess wore red and insisted the guests check their guns at the door while she used hers to keep order. I can see the account in the society page of tomorrow's paper. You should live so long. Who is it? Me, Maddie. Open up, babe. Just a minute. Come on in. Well, so you got the ivory Ike here. Yeah? And I figured you'd come. Hold still. Don't turn around. Hey, what's the idea of the gun in my back? I'm on your side. Uh-uh, wrong, Natty. No, nobody plays on the team of the babe when the prize is a hundred grand. What is this, babe? A double cross? Pull your gun out of that tailor-made shoulder holster you're so proud of, Natty. Pull it out slow and easy. Or I'll shoot your backbone into vest buttons. She will, Natty. Okay. Okay, babe. Now get over there with moats. Yeah, I'll sit down, Natty. Let's make it a duet. Listen, babe. You can't pull this thing alone. You need me. I don't need nobody. I did like you said. Wilson and the Kilburn Dame are coming. They ought to be here any minute now. Swell. I don't need you anymore. But listen, you need me to keep them in line while you get Joker's dough. This gun will keep them in line. Where? Where is the dough, babe? Right in this room, on one of the walls. That was the Joker's last good joke on the cops and everybody else, including you in. How come me? Because he told me you crossed him up to get it when he told me where it was. I didn't. I stuck to him. Like a leech. So, this whole setup was a trick to get me here, same as Wilson, Mozart, and Kilburn. You wasn't invited, but I knew you'd come. You had it all figured out. Yeah. You got a lot of time to figure things. Three years in the pen. Careful, Natty. Don't bunch yourself. You'll bust the seams of that nifty suit. Babe's trigger finger is itchy. She can hardly wait. Yeah. Neither can I. Can I? <laughs> a dope. I was waiting for him to pull that spare rod out of his hip pocket. Go on playing, Moats. Like nothing happened. But nothing, uh... Nothing has happened that's any loss to anyone in this wacky veil of tears. 
When do I get mine? Keep playing. I'm keeping you around for laughs. Uh-huh. And you want my music to sucker Steve Wilson and Lorelei into this booby trap? No thanks. No more. Play music, boy. Make like you're a mechanical piano. Sorry, babe. The cold steel of a gun muzzle on my neck makes my fingers stiff. Play, sucker. Play. Go on, sucker. Play. Huh. Saved by the bell. That's what you think. Stay put on that piano bench. Don't move. Hello, Wilson. Come in. Hello, Mrs. Barton. Thanks for the indirect invitation. Where's Kilbourne? She's... She's right here. Lorelei. I told you to stay down, down in the street. But, Steve, I... You're all through telling anybody anything, Wilson. Get in here, both of you. I'm sorry, Steve. I couldn't let you go through this alone. Hello, Mozart. Hi, Lorelei. Uh-oh. Who's the body on the floor? Oh, uh, a character called Natty. The flashiest-looking cadaver the meat wagon boys will get in many a day. Pipe down, Moats. I don't need you anymore. Uh, watch for that tagline, Steve. That's what she told Natty just before she let him have it. Yes, I heard the shot and got to the door just in time to hear her trying to make you play a come-on to get me in here, Mozart. Thanks for the stall and the try. Don't you make a try, Wilson. I got an extra special gripe on you. All right. It looks like it's your party, babe. You arranged it. You're the hostess. But why go to all this risk and trouble? I want to play a good joke on you, dopes. One good one for joker's sake. Are you quite sure your late husband, the joker, hasn't pulled a good one on you? One that will give him the last laugh, even after death? Sure, I'm sure. I'm going to let you dopes see the payoff with your own eyes. Well, we're... We're honored, aren't we, Steve? Mozart. Shut up, you lippy twist. You had your say in your lousy illustrated press. You flapped your lip and tapped your typewriter and put me away for three years. I couldn't get my hands on Joker's dough. Now it's my turn. Too bad you won't get out of this rat trap to enjoy it. Shut up, Kilburn. I'll bet your teeth in with a barrel of this rod. Yeah, yeah, Norlai. The babe's got a strictly one-track mind. And you lay off the thumping, Mozart. Just sit there on that stool and twiddle your thumbs till I get to you. You're wasting precious time, babe. You better get that money and get out of here before the police come and take you away on the big count for killing your pal, Matty. Matty was no pal of mine. He lied to Joker about me playing around. That's another reason I fixed his wagon. So you better get going before a judge and jury fixes yours for murder. Don't kid me, Wilson. You never call in that cop till you're sure of the facts. Thanks for the compliment, but circumstantial evidence made me fairly sure of the facts in this case, and the police are being notified. Yeah? How? That's my little joke. Now, let's see how yours turns out. Yeah. I've had my fun with you, dopes. I've waited long enough to get my mitts on that hundred grand. Where is it, babe? Right behind you, Kilborn. In that wall. Behind that picture of Joker. Turn around and take it down. I'll take it down. Stay put, Wilson. Get over there at the piano with Moats. I told you to take it down, Kilbourne. All right. Joker looks almost lifelike. As if he were enjoying the result of one of his endless practical jokes. I think he is, Lorelei. Shut up, Wilson. Lift it down, Kilbourne. Okay. Come on, Joker, old boy. I'll put you down here on the floor. Where you can get a good look at Natty. That ought to amuse you no end. You might even laugh out loud. Hurry it up, Kilborn. Save the wisecracks. Now, get out of the way. All right, but I don't see anything but a blank wall. That's all the cops could find. Now, back up, Kilborn. Get over there by the piano with Wilson and Moats. Yes, come away from that wall, Lorelei. Having known the Joker, I have a feeling he wouldn't have been able to resist one last gag. I'll show you if it's a gag or not. Watch what happens when I... Twist this picture hook. Once to the right, twice to the left. Look at it, Wilson. Look at that wall roll back. No wonder the cops couldn't find the combo. It's very ingenious, babe. But now can you open that safe? Yeah, without taking my eyes off of you, dopes. Watch and see what happens. We're watching, babe. Steady, Lorelai. Get back. 
The next few minutes will tell. Tell what, Whether Wilson? the Joker's fatal joke is on you or on us. Thus, Steve, Lorelei, and Mozart are caught in a strange situation. And for the dramatic payoff, we'll return to Big Town in a moment. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. And the cleaner you get your skin, the surer you are of being fresh and attractive. So remember, Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Here's what the doctors proved in 820 scientific tests. People took daily baths with different soaps. Doctors found that Life Boy does more than just remove the grime and perspiration you can see. Life Boy's purifying ingredient makes it more effective than any other leading soap against the invisible dirt that brings on B.O. Life Boy's milder, too. Safe even for baby's tender skin. And you'll like the way Life Boy, made with costly coconut oil, bursts into quick white lather, even in hard water. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can. Bathe with Life Boy every day. Get the big new bath size. Buy Life Boy right away. <laughs> Now, back to Big Town and to Steve Wilson, Lorelei, and their musical friend Mozart in tonight's tense and dramatic story of the fatal joke. All right, Wilson and the rest of you dopes. I've had my fun with you for helping the cops put me away for three years. Now I'm going to get Joker's hundred grand and scram. Be careful, babe. Your late husband spent his life thinking up practical jokes to play on his friends and enemies. He may have arranged one for you. Yes, babe, especially if his bodyguard, Natty, ever sold him on the idea you were playing around. Shut up, Kilborn. Joker trusted me enough to tell me about the secret panel in his office. He gave me the combination to this safe. But is it the right combination? That's the hundred grand question, babe. Stay put and I'll show you. Just like I showed you, he told me how to open the sliding panel that cops couldn't find. Keep on playing, Moats, like we're having a party. There. Now watch. Even so, I'd be careful, babe. Yeah, careful of you, dopes. Don't any of you move. While I get in here and get that dough out of Joker's big tin box. That gun makes you boss for the moment, babe, but I still say you better be careful in that vault. What do you expect, Steve? Get back of me, Lorelei, if that money isn't in there. The babe is liable to go crazy with disappointment and start shooting. Yeah, so don't get any ideas, Wilson. Don't start making any plans to rush me. I'll cut you down now. Just hold everything and I'll show you a joke. It didn't play no joke on me. There. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, Steve. From here it looks like the McCoy. Oh, look at it, you lugs. Looks like the joke's on us, Steve. Get back, Lord and I. Look at it, you lugs. Packets and packets. <laughs> the hundred grand and easy spending tens and twenties. Wait a minute, I'll show you some more. The box is full of them. A hundred grand enough to last me all the <laughs> Lorelei. Mozart. Lorelei. I, I think I'm all right, Steve. The, the blast knocked me down. Yes, me too. Mozart. Okay, Steve. Oh. It almost knocked me off the piano bench. What about what about the babe? <laughs> the smoke of the explosion is clearing, Lorelei, but don't look. Don't look. It must have been in the box she was holding. Under the money. Oh, how oh, horrible. Yeah, she never knew what hit her. She died in a fool's paradise of blood money. Steve, Lord and I, Steve! Uh, just a minute, Jesse. We're okay. I'll unlock the door. Holy cat! What happened in here, Steve? A dead man played a practical joke, Dusty. Get a good shot for page one. Did you call Callahan of homicide? Yeah, and he's on the way, but... It looks more like you need the boys from the morgue. Yes, I see. Thanks to the Joker. A dead man who had to wait three years for the payoff on his last fatal joke. Friends, 
Tonight you've heard an unusual story from the front pages of the Illustrated Press. I hope it helps your interest, for behind the violence and excitement is the sober, all-important fact that all crimes hold the seeds of violence and even murder and are closer and a greater danger to the life and happiness of you and yours than most of us realize. And next week, friends, we'll bring you another vicious racket expose that pulls no punches. It's headlined The Crooked Eye and is the story of a blackmailing private detective such as any of us might mistakenly hire if we were in trouble. Yes, Lorelei. And now here's our narrator, Dwight Weiss, with a message for right now. Yes, remember, doctors have proved it. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner in your daily bath. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Oh, say, Dwight. Yes, Lorelei? Dwight, I want to tell the women about that purifying ingredient of Life Boy's. That's what makes Life Boy milder, so safe and gentle. Yes, and it's the reason Life Boy Health Soap keeps you fresh and attractive, protects you as no other leading soap can, keeps you secure. It's one more reason why today Life Boy is used in the homes of 40 million Americans. Buy Life Boy Health Soap right away. In tonight's dramatization, all na- names, ta- times, and places are fictional. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Collin as Lorelei, and is written and directed by Jerry McGill. Lever Brothers Company have amazing news. New 1950 Rinso with sodium. It's here a year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. The sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new, washable colors brighter than new, and keeps them whiter, brighter than any other soap. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to hands. Get new 1950 Rinso at your dealers now. Be sure to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company will again present Big Town. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.